The story begins with a guy who has traveled the galaxy. It is a place that has no boundaries of any kind. There are countless monsters and constellations lurking here. There were many different monsters traveling in the galaxy, especially dragons. Chief among them was a ferocious seven-headed dragon. They attacked him from all sides, but he managed to escape and fell into the abyss of a volcano. No sooner had he landed than he was surrounded by a crowd of animals who wanted to tear him to shreds. They all looked at him with fierce eyes. The main character's name was Randy. His whole body was tied up in a red web. In front of him, he saw a huge purple spider that was looking at him from all sides. It opened its mouth and wanted to swallow Randy at once. The main character's look shows that he is not afraid of these monsters, but he realizes that he will have to fight with them for many years. Two years later, he finally defeats these monsters. The guy looked at the dead monsters that were lying on top of each other and thought that he had wasted a lot of time and he should hurry back home to Earth. Suddenly, he heard a harsh voice talking to him, and he couldn't realize who was talking to him. But then he looked up at the red sky and realized it was a constellation speaking to him. When the Earth was first connected to the abyss, mankind learned that mythology was not just a product of imagination. The beings dubbed constellations were the closest thing to what humans believed to be divine. They blessed humans and expanded the ranks of their followers. As the number of followers grew, so did the authority of the constellation. Earth, with nearly 10 billion souls, was like a gold mine for constellations that fought to take followers from each other. Among them were some far more evil constellations who wanted to take over the Earth with more than pure power blessings. Randy went back before his good old acquaintance. When they had lunch, he told them all about fighting the monsters, another way they were called constellation. The Goblin King heard this and was just shocked. He couldn't believe his comrade had been fighting monsters for two years. Randy told him that he had suffered a lot during those two years because there was very little food and he had to eat the constellation. So his top priority was to gather ingredients. Since his hobby before was cooking, the Goblin King opened his mouth in shock. He couldn't believe that he had defeated the constellation, but instead of killing for territory, he had just taken the milk. The Goblin King looked at the rent and realized that they are like everyone else. He is much kinder than the others. The Goblin King wanted to hurry up and taste the meat that Randy had taken. According to legends, he heard, whoever eats the constellation meat will become a very powerful king. But when he tasted a small piece, his eyes and mouth burned with savage pain. But he had magical powers. Ogai's power was preserved by the magical power of the constellation. Thanks to the oil from the mystical constellation, the meat was elevated to a higher level. The protagonist looked at him and couldn't understand what was wrong with this goblin. Randy looked up at the stars and missed the earth, his ancestral home. He wanted to get back to Earth as soon as possible. Let's go back to the beginning where Randy's story began. It was a few tens of 1,000 years ago by the standards of the Abyss. Everyone thought Randy was a little weird, and they asked him why he was always pulling that barbell. He always said he wanted to be the strongest, but nobody took him seriously. The guy was obsessed with violence from an early age. He learned from the fact that he was very much abused by high school students when he was a kid. Randy was an orphan from childhood, and he realized that he could only rely on himself alone. He realized that he needed to train to protect himself. He grew stronger and stronger. He wanted to become a hunter. It's a new profession that has emerged in the age of the abyss. What do you do? Protecting people from the dangers of dungeons and monsters. Poisons and items that fall out after killing monsters are very highly valued artifacts from the dungeon. Where monsters appear attracts a lot of people who want money and fame. The warden was telling him that he should calm down a bit and not risk his life. The boss was telling him that going into a dungeon with rank berry monsters was too much. After all, they had fought ranked monsters and suffered many casualties. Even elite hunters die fighting monsters. The next day, Randy went down to the dungeon with his team to fight monsters. One of the monsters attacked the guy at a very high speed and everyone thought Randy was finished, but no one knew how Randy trains very hard. He punched the monster in the jaw. The monster was defeated with one punch. The main character never studied magic and never regretted it. He always thought that martial arts were simple and not as flashy and convenient as magic. But the true nature of the martial arts he gained as much experience in by practicing every day. It was already night. The protagonist sat on the ground and thought to himself that he had already reached with rank with hard training. But there were still a few martial artists who had managed to become stronger than him. He was already pissed off but he told himself that he needed to train even more. Then he would reach his peak. The next day when the guy was training, Mr. Nia came to him. She was the constellation of the abyss, otherwise known as the goddess of scales. She looked at the boy and smiled. 
the goddess of scales got right down to business. She wanted to make a battle deal with him. The protagonist was not outrageous and simply said that he agreed. This surprised the goddess of scales very much, for everyone was afraid of her and no one agreed. Randy was only interested in one thing. Would he get powers if he won this fight? It would be quite enough for him. Andy asked the goddess of scales why she chose him because there are many good hunters in the world who have a higher rating and more fame. The goddess of scales said she could see the future, and in a few years a great danger would come upon the earth. Evil constellations will begin to attack the earth in full force, and when that day comes you will think that the current dungeon and monsters threatening the earth were just kindergarten. Randy was considered the key to preventing this future from happening. The goddess of scales took him by the shoulder and told him not to worry about anything, for she would make him stronger, through long, hard, and inhuman training. At this moment, the goddess of scales was very much afraid, for what kind of madman would agree to such a contract? She was afraid Randy would refuse. The scale goddess held out her hand to him. There was sweat on her face from worry. The protagonist realized if he made a contract with the constellation, he would become the new avatar. It was something super complicated. Because of his soul being bound to the constellation, he would have to live in its permanent confinement. Randy realized that this was a big responsibility, and he was very nervous and thought about whether or not to accept it. After all, he had the whole destiny of mankind on his shoulders. The goddess of scales flew up into the sky and said that she had prepared a training facility in the abyss, for time flows differently in the abyss. You will have to train alone for several hundred years. Even if you refuse during the training, you still won't be able to return home. The guy thought for a very long time, but he wanted to become the strongest hunter. After thinking for a long time, the guy said he agreed and he would go with her. He said he wasn't so tied to this world. Randy just wanted to leave a letter for one person. After saying that, the goddess of scales raised her hands up. A big black hole formed in the sky. The goddess of scales told the guy that he should think carefully about where he wanted to leave his letter and she would send the letter with her mind. The protagonist went to the black hole and touched it to pass the test. After he touched the black hole, he was sucked in completely. Randy looked at the abyss. He was surprised because it almost looked like a dungeon. The main character looked to the side and saw that there was nothing there and just started practicing. At this time, the goddess of scales went to her colleagues and told them that she had found a talented guy and that he would be a great candidate for an avatar. Her subordinates looked at her and were very worried about her because when she is so sure of her prophecies, something bad always happens. The main character was practicing and suddenly a big blue tornado appeared behind him, glowing with lightning. Randy turned around and saw that it looked very dangerous. He realized it must be a test of the goddess of scales. But the main character wasn't the least bit afraid, he said to get stronger. You have to face danger, head on. When the tornado approached the guy, there was a very strong pain. He thought he was going to be torn apart, but he realized that he had to endure, because it was a test from the goddess. After a powerful magical storm blew through, the magic of illusion that covered the territory of the virtuous goddess of scales was dispelled. This magic was used as a basic safety measure, but before Randy could realize it, the magic storm raged again. Not even the goddess could have seen it coming. The queen of scales was worried sick because she should have sensed his presence by now, but the boy hadn't shown up yet. All the servants searched the citadel, but they couldn't find Randy. Then the goddess of scales turned to one of her strongest servants. Her name was Adequaniel. Adequaniel promised that she would find him at any cost and would not let him be harmed. She knew it wouldn't be easy, for he could be in any galaxy in the world. Even the constellations couldn't assimilate the whole world. A couple weeks passed. The protagonist woke up on Earth, looked straight ahead and saw a lot of rocks in front of him. He thought this was the next place where his next challenge would take place. The guy saw a huge monster in front of him and thought the trials were about him defeating it. Randy's first impression when he saw this monster was that it looked like an onyx, and it didn't look like this monster was a rank. He doubted for a very long time, but then he thought that the goddess of scales had planned everything. At that point, the main character didn't know that the goddess of scales had lost him and was looking for him. Randy gathered all his strength in his fist and hit the monster with all his might. But the monster had no reaction because the blow was so weak compared to its size. But the protagonist kept on hitting because he realized that he had to become much stronger to defeat this monster. Randy could feel in his body that he was gaining more and more strength with each punch. After a few thousand blows, he was able to defeat this monster. He realized that after he had defeated it, he was now a B-rank hunter. The guy realized that he didn't have talent like other hunters, but he had perseverance. It would make him the strongest. Suddenly, a monster came to Randy and looked at him with tender eyes. After that, the main character became friends with the monster, 
He sat on the monster's head and went to look for a place for the next training. After a long journey, they met a blue storm which the guy had fallen a long time ago. According to the time of the abyss, it had been gone for 100 years. The protagonist thought it was a gift from the goddess that would lead him to the second trial. After he and the monster got to another place, the protagonist realized that he got an advanced level and realized how incredible the magic storm was. The storm has filled his entire body with chakra and makes him stronger, eliminating his fatigue. The protagonist feels like he's getting stronger and stronger by the minute. He has built up chakra in his fists, and he will not stop using the divine cosmic arts. Randy looked at his hands and realized more and more that he would get a new level of martial arts. He was really looking forward to a new training to get even stronger. The main character looked at the ocean and didn't realize how he could continue to train or be tested. Then the guy got the idea that he would train underwater. He jumped into the water and saw a bunch of scary fish that he had never seen in his normal life. After a little while, he realized that this water was poisonous and it got into his body. Randy was attacked and bitten by the poisonous fish. The protagonist barely got out of the poisonous water. He realized that if he had been in there a little while longer, he would have died. But as the protagonist was getting out of the water, he noticed a bright light at the bottom. He realized that he had to get it out. Randy still thought this was a test from the goddess and that she was giving him these tasks, but he was sorely mistaken. The main character started practicing and concentrating to accumulate more chakra. After all, it would save him from the poisonous ocean and the fish, but it was taking quite a long time. The main character was, of course, very happy that he was getting stronger and stronger, but he was already here 200 years by the time of the abyss. Randy was absorbed thanks to the chakra, but without food, his life became very empty. Suddenly, he saw a dead blue fish that had been washed ashore by the waves. The protagonist looked at this fish with peculiar eyes. After all, he hadn't eaten in 200 years. Randy didn't know how to cut it because it was acidic, and all the kitchen utensils made of stone were melted. The monster decided to help him and gave him adamantium. It's a treasure even among the treasures highly valued among the stone-type monsters. When the guy started to cut the fish with this object, he was very surprised that it didn't melt. When Randy took a bite of the fish, green vapor began to emanate from his body. The main character felt his tongue start to go numb, but at the same time, he felt his strength increase. When he tasted a piece of fish, he realized that he had to start hunting and eating more fish so that his strength would increase much faster. And so another 100 years passed by the measure of the abyss. During this time, the protagonist's mind had changed a lot. During those 100 years of eating fish, Randy gained resistance to countless poisons. The protagonist, Mach, easily increased the level of divine space art. During this time, he became very strong. Randy couldn't understand why the goddess of scales hadn't summoned him yet. After all, he had gained resistance to poisons and reached the expert level. He would never have reached such heights in his world. Afterwards, the protagonist approached the monster and said that their paths were already diverging. He should leave to become even stronger. He didn't want to endanger the monster. So the guy dived into the poisonous ocean. But to him, it was just like a normal one because he had complete resistance to the poison. The fish no longer attacked him as they had on the first day. He was a different man, much stronger than he had been then. He swam a long way across the ocean and finally found the source of the magical power he'd seen the first day. When the main was closer, he saw a blue portal, that it was the portal to the next training session. When he arrived, he saw a bunch of monsters in front of him, looking at him with an evil look. One of the monsters came up to Randy and said he was going to cut his head off. He drew his sword, and he was ready to kill Randy. Randy was ready to fight him with all his might. He put all his chakra into his left fist. When his fist and sword collided, the sword broke into little pieces. Monsters couldn't believe his eyes. He had never seen such a strong man. The protagonist jumped two meters and kicked the monster. After that kick, the monster fell to the ground and was motionless. After that, all the other monsters were just shocked. They had never seen such power from a human before. But the guy didn't want to fight them. He pointed his finger at them and said that he came here to take a test. All the monsters looked at him like he was crazy and asked him what the test was. One of the monsters started yelling at him. The monster thought the man wanted to fight their head. Then a bunch of monsters came at the protagonist. They all wanted to tear him to shreds. There was no mercy. But Randy fought them with ease. In a couple minutes, he had them all scattered to the sides. But the guy realized that even though it was easy... There were too many of them. He realized that with too much open ground, the protagonist couldn't fight them while surrounded on all sides. The monsters couldn't afford to lose to him. After all, it would be shameful for them to lose to an ordinary man. A bunch of mutant dogs came at him. The guy realized there was no end to them, and his power wasn't unlimited. 
the protagonist realized he had nowhere to go but to fight in the territory under the power of this constellation. He fought these monsters for a very long time. After the battle, as he defeated them all, he saw a small building in front of him. He was very curious about what was in there. Rand kicks the doors in with his foot and yells that he's going to borrow the house for a while. In front of him, he saw a smiling monster who greeted him and was making soup. The protagonist was very surprised. Do such restaurants exist even in such places at home, he? The monster answered him affectionately. To fight well, you have to eat well. The guy felt ashamed for kicking in the door of such a good monster. He apologized and asked for some food because he hadn't eaten in a long time. The protagonist started to get some soup. Suddenly, the monster threw a big pot of poison on him. The protagonist didn't care because he was immune to the poison and he didn't even feel it. The monster started stuttering from what he saw. He couldn't understand who he was. If it was a man, the monster thought in his head. A bunch of monsters started coming in near the door to attack Randy. The main character huddled in a corner, took a stool and started yelling for them to come over. Randy said he had enough strength for a long time. After saying that, the protagonist began to fight against the crowd of monsters with one stool. Meanwhile, the goddess of scales was very worried about Randy. Her subordinates didn't understand how they could find the man in the abyss if he could be anywhere. It didn't take long for the protagonist to defeat all the monsters. He didn't realize how many more there would be. Randy's sensitivity increased because of his martial arts skills, and he felt something you me coming from the cauldron. The guy felt a lot of energy coming from that cauldron. He realized that something unusual was in there. Randy wanted to take the cauldron with him and track it down, but one of the surviving monsters took him by the leg and told him not to take the cauldron. The monster had tears in his eyes and begged Randy to keep the cauldron because he had gone to great lengths to get it. But the protagonist had no pity. He punched the monster in the face and said that the only way the monster got the cauldron was by killing others. In a martial arts story, Randy found out that a retired martial arts master owned a little classic diner. Randy had only come here to find a good place to fight, but his sudden acquisition of the diner inspired him. He renovated the diner and named it after himself. Things continued the same way. Randy fought monsters for experience during the day and experimenting with recipes by night and so continued his life as a diner for several hundred years by the standards of the abyss. One day, the former owner of the diner came to exact revenge on Randy and his brothers. The protagonist noticed that he was able to gain harmony of body and mind through prolonged deadly fights. He realized that all martial artists would go crazy with his skills, but to do so, he had to return to Earth. The monsters lay defeated. They didn't understand how an army couldn't defeat one pathetic little man. By the time the demons realized their strategy wasn't working, Randy realized something needed to change. The protagonist realized he was stuck here for a long time, so he stopped evolving. He was absorbing energy through his cooking studies, but his martial arts progress had stopped. The guy realized he could no longer experience things of body and mind harmony. He was very angry about it. One day, the protagonist got pissed off. He opened the door and told the demons to stop finishing this production. As soon as Randy came out, a bunch of monsters jumped on him. Randy was happy to fight because it would increase his true strength and speed up his growth. When the protagonist had dealt with all the monsters, the biggest monster he had ever seen in his life came in front of him. The monster laughed really hard and asked Randy if he was scared. After he said that, the demon came at him with all his might, saying loudly that it was his last day on this planet. But the guy stopped his sword with one hand. He had no problem with it. The demon couldn't believe his eyes. No one had ever stopped his sword so easily. Randy looked him in the eye and said loudly that he was afraid that at this rate, he wouldn't advance in his martial arts. And then all the monsters came at him. During the battle, the protagonist recalled a rank a hunter. He described his strength as feeling overwhelmed by confidence. However, now that he had reached the expert level, he realized that before in battle, he used to feel cornered all the time, attacking randomly in all directions. This feeling he had been experiencing due to his lack of self-confidence had completely disappeared. And now the protagonist was completely at peace with himself. After much fighting, Randy was able to dispel an enemy attack for the first time with the help of divine space art. The protagonist learned to use the enemy's power against him, a power called Kazushi. After a long battle, when all the monsters were on the ground, the protagonist just went into the house and started cooking. The next day, the guy came out of the house and was surprised to see no monsters. But demons were waiting for him from the sky, and they shot beams of fire at him. One of the demons told them to keep firing because Randy's good at close combat. After the attack was over, all they could see was a shadow of a man in the smoke. The protagonist successfully blocked all the attacks with divine space art. His body became even stronger after the demon attacks. 
Randy again started smashing all the monsters in a row. He got the invulnerability skill. The more the demons spent, the stronger Randy became, widening the gap between them. After a few hundred years of these events, all the monsters were lining up to fight Randy. The guy was very surprised that he had gotten close to the demons, but on the one hand, it was natural after hundreds of years of battles. Randy took out a rank card, a magical item obtained when you first register with the association. When the owner fills it with his power, it shows the owner's stats. Randy wanted to see his powers quickly. He hadn't pulled this card in a long time. When he pulled the card, it glowed very brightly and said he was already an expert hunter plus level. Randy had gained so many skills that on earth he could only dream of. His status was already so high because of that he possessed many a rank skills. But the first thing that caught his eye was the divine space art. A rank is a divine art immune to all types of poison. The ability to freely control poison and gain energy by absorbing it. Rank A is the harmony of body and mind, the ability to use the body the way you want. Rank A Kuzushi is to channel the subscriber's power back even if it is greater than yours. Rank A Invulnerability, this ability makes the skin harder than steel and can block most attacks. Randy was surprised. When he read these skills, he thought it was only available to hunters trained in a unique rank of martial art, like the divine twilight art or the divine yin-yang art. Randy didn't know that divine space art is weak in growth speed, but it allows you to create energy stronger than any other martial art. And the guy's been practicing this art for over a thousand years by the standards of the abyss. The main character thought it must be due to magical assault because he never had any innate talent. The boy thought it was all planned by the goddess of scales for his training and development. Through countless fights, his understanding of martial arts has almost reached perfection. He could flawlessly copy any martial art at a glance. But when the protagonist read this, he had never heard of such a skill. It is considered hard to master even one martial art in a lifetime. This skill would allow him to use different techniques depending on the situation, just like a magician. Randy had never heard of the skill before, but he realized it was very powerful. But the protagonist looked at the card and couldn't understand another skill that didn't even have a rank. This skill was called World Resonance. The world resonates with him because he is close to reaching the peak of existence. Randy read it and couldn't understand what it meant. At that moment, he didn't know that this was the thing that would make the whole earth go crazy. The guy had been in this world for 500 years, during which time he had befriended the demons he had been fighting for centuries. The protagonist had loved cooking since he was a kid, and he was very happy to have customers. One day, the protagonist realized that he had completely stopped evolving in this world, and he had to find new adventures. The guy couldn't cultivate energy anymore. His growth was completely halted. The protagonist realized that there was virtually no martial artist stronger than him, and he needed to break down this wall. Randy realized there was only one way to get stronger, and that was to fight a new enemy. He gave himself a goal to fight a foe many times stronger than these weak demons. He needed to fight someone stronger than him. As he was pondering, someone knocked on the door. The protagonist politely opened the door and greeted the guest. He thought it was a new customer to eat his food. He immediately noticed that this demon is not like the others. It looks much stronger and intimidating. The demon immediately approached the guy and told him that he had heard a lot about him and wanted to test his skills. Rerendi felt the energy of this demon. He already knew that he was very strong, much stronger than he was. He had a huge magical power, which was strong even for the demonic race. The protagonist thought that this is a new stage of the beginning of his training, and he needs to test his strength. The demon pulled out a huge ingot of adamantium. It was an unprecedented size. The boy was very surprised. He had never seen such a large stone. The demon approached Randy, said his name was Varagoth. He is the first avatar of the Lord of Blood in battle. He had an offer for the protagonist from his master. The demon said that the master of the Lord of Blood in battle was watching Randy, and he wanted Randy to be his avatar. The Varagoth demon was confident that Randy would accept his offer. Even though he's a wanderer from the outside world, he's not crazy enough to go against the will of a constellation. Especially when offered the honor of becoming an avatar, he thought he'd never turn it down. But the protagonist said he'd say no, because he already has a scale goddess. The demon Varagoth was furious at his refusal because no one had ever refused him before. The protagonist immediately felt a strong pressure on him. He was in anticipation, because this is the strongest opponent he was waiting for. Varagoth told the guy that he didn't feel any constellation inside him. But the protagonist kept thinking that this was all a test that he would become an avatar when he passed all the tests. Varagoth was very surprised to hear this. He thought the guy was being tricked, but the protagonist didn't listen to him. The guy thought it was a demon that wanted to fight him. Varagoth started to explain to him that nothing in his words adds up. 
Varakoth told him that the constellations contract with the Avatar because they want to. No constellation would accept someone unworthy as an Avatar, and being coveted by one constellation means that other constellations are known to covet you as well. So the constellation immediately contracts with the Avatar candidate so that others won't. Or if they want to train their candidate, they do it on their own turf. That's because in case the candidate is intercepted by other constellations while he's wandering around outside. If that happens, then the constellations will laugh at the other constellation for tens of thousands of years. But the protagonist didn't agree with Varagoth. He told him that he had missed a lot. The constellation he promised could see the future. He's sure she chose him because he's the savior of the world. Varagoth told the boy that seeing the future is a rare and special skill, and she trusted such a flawed ability. But the protagonist still didn't believe him. He thought his constellation was the best. After all, she could think of nothing that would happen if he trained in her territory. Then Randy began to brag to him about the training he'd had, the trials he'd been through. After that, the Varagoth demon thought for a moment. After all, the magical abyss storm can't be controlled even by a constellation. It's a dangerous and powerful catastrophe, he said. But the protagonist still didn't believe him. He said that his constellation could control everything. After much thought, Randy didn't think the Varagoth was lying to him. After that, he started to believe him and learned a lot of things. However, he was enjoying the process of becoming stronger so much that he didn't have any thoughts or questions until now. Randy came home very angry. He didn't understand how he could have been so stupid and not asked himself such a question in so many centuries. He realized he couldn't cry because every tear drained his energy and his courage. The next day, Randy approached Varagoth and told him that he already knew he was not at the training facility, and he needed to get back to Earth right away. But Varagoth said he was sorry, but he could no longer leave the territory of the Lord of Blood and Battle. After all, Varagoth showed his true fighting form. He realized that Randy would not go with him, so he would have to fight. Varagoth flew up into the sky and said it would be a shame for him to have to break a gem like Randy. Varagoth immediately recognized Randy's fighting style. He realized that he had a special walking technique, and he didn't feel any magic. Well, his movements were much faster than teleportation magic. Randy said that this technique is a divine space art movement using energy. It's also called moonwalking. Varagoth raised his hands up in a black hole form there. He said it was very funny, and he wasn't surprised that the master was interested in Randy. But Varagoth had no intention of continuing this any longer. He was ready to alienate Randy. Varagoth used the bloody baptism. A large area of the ground was covered in red poison. The protagonist realized he was very powerful to use so much mana. Randy wouldn't be able to last long even with this poison invulnerability skill. The red poison was called bloody baptism. It's a shower of purple mana that melts and destroys everything it touches. It's a technique that shows the difference between Varagoth's strength and Randy's. But the protagonist was able to withstand it. It was thanks to the divine cosmic art that unceremoniously warned him. It was because Randy was in great danger. But when faced with a crisis situation where the enemy was much stronger than him, Randy's mind is very calm. The discomfort of wasting time because of misunderstandings was gone. Randy's mind said he could do it. It was like the moment he was caught in a magical storm. It wasn't the speed that mattered. It was the feeling of the flow of his hands. After meditating, Randy's martial arts proficiency increased. He gained a skill with the rank of incredible speed, this movement technique, allowing the instant eye to move to the desired location. Varagoth was very surprised. He couldn't believe that Randy had completely dodged the bloody baptism. Varagoth had always thought that martial arts were studied by weaklings all the time. After this moment, he realized that he was wrong. After that, Varagoth became more and more angry. He used magic and restricted an unlimited amount of mana from himself. On the other hand, martial arts use up the user's inner strength. Compared to magic, martial arts have an energy limit. Varagoth directed a stream of mana at the protagonist. He started to fight him at full strength. He realized that martial arts are also amazing. Varagoth drew his sword and said he had heard that the slaves had rebelled in some constellation's territory. They wanted to resist the law of this world. Since they went against the constellation, they could no longer use Manu. But quelling the rebellion wasn't easy because of a marvelous skill a skill that could be used without borrowing Manu from the outside. The protagonist became interested in this story. He thought it was a martial art. He asked the demon what would happen if he used magic. Varakoth told him that after your body melted from the bloody baptism, Randy, you would immediately face the Lord of Blood. The fight continued. Varagoth considered him a special man, for no one had ever fought him in battle for so long. But he was confident of his victory, 
for his lord had gifted him with a blood axe. After Varagoth swung the axe, there was a huge explosion. The fight had been going on for an hour. Randy realized if it went on like this, he would lose the fight. He wanted to find the weaknesses of magic, and he hadn't found them yet. For the first time in a long time, the protagonist was on the verge of defeat. He was very angry. He faced an enemy far superior in power. With each attack, he felt himself growing stronger. Randy gathered his energy in one fist. He created a fist of energy, and he struck with all his might. It was a pretty strong blow. Even Varagoth felt it, but it wasn't enough to overpower him. Varagoth asked Randy how long it would take him to use such hard attacks, because they take a lot of strength. Using all the skills like Kazushi or Incredible Speed was born for defense. The problem was attack power. To break through the dozens of layers of defense magic with which the Varagoth defended himself, he had to strike a powerful blow. The protagonist realized that he had to do something because it was coming to an end. Randy decided to make a fist of energy the result of energy compression. But after this attack, he would use up a lot of energy. It was very risky. In theory, the energy fist didn't fully utilize energy compression. It's possible to squeeze energy to the point of materialization. This technique is called materializing energy. Even Xiao Wan, the greatest martial master on earth, was the first to be able to materialize energy. However, he could only hold the materialization for a moment. Because the technique absorbed a huge amount of energy, he couldn't use it in actual combat. Except Randy had already surpassed Xiao Wan in skill over a hundred years ago. He used this technique and went through the Varicot demon. It was a pretty powerful punch. After that blow, black blood came out of the Varicot's mouth, and Randy thought it was the end. The protagonist destroyed the blood shield spell. Randy looked at it and realized that the technique didn't completely kill him. If Randy used any more energy, he would be completely drained and fall to the ground. The other demons were watching from a distance and were shocked by their battle. They were surprised that Sir Varigoth had been fighting him for six months by the time of the Abyss. They thought the man was a true madman and a legend. Varigoth realized that Randy was in a stalemate. Although he could break through Varigoth's defense with a materialized divine space art energy attack, but he couldn't use this deadly attack because of the huge energy consumption. The protagonist tried to regenerate his energy faster and faster while he still needs time to use the cosmic aura again, which gives Varigoth enough time to rebuild his defenses. Varigoth says he spent too much time and energy on this. He would no longer be able to hold off the Lord of Blood in battle. He wanted to finish with one attack. His tremendous energy created a strong wind that almost knocked Randy off his feet. Varigoth began to summon the Lord of Blood in battles, blessing his powers for victory. After this technique, Varigoth's strength grew by leaps and bounds, and fangs and horns began to appear on his body. The protagonist looked on fearfully as he realized he was in great danger. The protagonist understood why the Varigoth had shrunk in size. He did it to increase his speed and the speed of his attacks in the same area. At one point in the fight, Randy realized that his invulnerability had been broken, and he needed time to regain it. The protagonist told himself that if he lost any concentration, he would die immediately. He didn't need to relax for a second. Since entering the abyss, Randy had never used all of his energy in a day. In an abyss full of enemies, using all his energy was suicide. But the guy realized he was in a tough spot and had no way out. The protagonist decided to use all the energy at once because he had nothing else to do. Randy concentrated all the energy in one hand and released a very goth on the demon. After this attack, the demon flew 10 meters away. At that moment, he learned a new technique called Cosmic Energy Burst. Varagoth screamed in pain because this technique was quite powerful and his right arm was torn off. Varagoth felt that no matter what he had to defeat this man, he must end it. If not, Randy would become even stronger, to the point where he could no longer do damage to Randy. Varagoth couldn't let that happen. In the territory ruled by the Lord of Blood in battle, he couldn't just stand by and watch as a new constellation was born in his Grandmaster's territory. Suddenly, a very large light began to shine strongly. Varagoth couldn't understand what was happening. He saw Big Randy. He couldn't believe his eyes how he had grown so big. He couldn't believe his eyes how he had grown so big. At that moment, Randy realized the essence of his power. If he could take Manu outside his body, he had achieved true mastery. The protagonist had achieved perfect understanding of the skill with rank, materialization of energy. He was now free to use materialized energy. His skill was called the Good Giant Killer. It was a ranked skill. His eyes began to glow with blue flames. Lightning formed around his body. He grabbed the Varagoth demon by the neck and was ready to deliver the final blow. At this time, the constellation of the Abyss was watching their fight. She showed interest in Randy. 
The lords of blood and battle were furious. They were also watching their fight. The demon Varagoth lay on the ground and admitted his defeat. He couldn't believe that he had lost to a human because he had never lost to anyone but his master before. The protagonist defeated the first avatar of the Lord of Blood and Battles. For this victory, Randy received power from the world thanks to his master's skill. He was approached by the defeated Varagoth, who was on the verge of death. He told the guy that he had earned his right to reject his offer to become a master. Randy thanked him for a good fight from the bottom of his heart. He was very grateful. Varagoth gave him some advice. He said he didn't know which constellation had offered him to become an avatar. But he advised him not to accept her offer, because Randy could become much stronger. So much so, that no constellation would look down on him. Varagoth wished him to glory in this abyss, and become the constellation's first man. The protagonist looked up to him and said he would heed his words. A make him a master at accepting the world as himself. Randy began to feel a whole new energy. The eyes of the constellations watching him were very surprised at his skills. The protagonist began to feel the constellations' eyes on him. He could feel how very powerful they were. The protagonist felt a shiver run through his body as he imagined that he could become as powerful as the constellations. The constellations were constantly targeting each other's territories. If one accidentally left his post, he would be gone in an instant. That's why the constellations watched the world without leaving their thrones and those worthy of becoming their avatars. Then the protagonist realized that they had been watching him all along, just like the people on the streamers. The Lord of Blood and Battle has set a bounty on Randy. Now every creature in the area is after the protagonist. Then the protagonist told everyone he'd become a constellation while they watched him. He has nothing to fear anymore. The protagonist easily defeated these monsters that began to hunt him. He realized that he could no longer leave his fate to the constellation after he had come this far. Randy went back to the small house to retrieve this cauldron of magic. He noticed that this cauldron had quite a lot of energy in it. Randy stopped looking at the notifications and messages from the constellations. He didn't care about the taunts, the temptation coming from them. Randy decided he would leave this place and go his own way. At this time, the servant angel, the lady of the scales, was looking for Randy, but the animals were very brazen and jumped on her right away. She easily fought them off. The other demons were surprised at her strength. After that, the angel approached them and asked them one more time if they had seen him. Then they politely replied that they had not and asked the angel to have pity on them. This was the angel of the virtuous goddess of scales. Her name was Adequaniel. She was still searching for the man throughout the abyss, talking to races capable of speech and telepathy with monsters after beating them. She wordlessly asked if anyone had seen Randy. Since Avatar rarely leaves her territory, the constellations were curious as to what was going on after all. Also, people support streamers, support avatars of other constellations. For constellations sitting in their own territory and bound by their own rules, watching the avatars of other constellations was quite simply entertainment. Now back to the abandoned sector in Lord of Blood and Battle territory. Randy traveled the world and continued to train along the way. Thanks to the master's degree, the divine space arts had been refined. Now the amount of energy didn't matter, and the martial arts master skill allowed Randy to use all martial arts perfectly. However, he continued to practice his space fist. He felt that the technique was not good enough for him. Just like when he first learned the divine space art, he put his whole soul into every punch. When Randy decided to leave the territory of the Lord of Blood and Battles, after defeating Varagoth, he decided to test his skills in the mysterious skill of World Resonance. Then he picked up his card and saw that it said his title was Invincible Master of Training, which meant that no man or creature had trained more than him. Randy then realized when he had reached the degree of mastery of the divine cosmic arts, he had perfected his skills. Now they were simply flawless, and how exactly was he to become stronger and gain constellation status? Randy then thought that he knew how to do it all. After receiving his degree as a master of the divine space arts, he thought it was as if the world was whispering in his ear. He met a bunch of demons in front of him. They told him that he really thought he could escape them. As long as Randy was in the territory ruled by the Lord of Blood and Battles, it would be very hard for him to escape from the demons. But the protagonist didn't even pay attention to them. He looked at his card and thought that he should strengthen his essence by following his principles. He thought the world was telling him this was the way to become a constellation. The protagonist just walked around the zombies and didn't even pay attention to them. They were too weak for him. And then the hero realized the secret that he had to practice all the time and never lose. Brandy kept traveling and thought that was perfect for him because he loved to train all the time. 
And so he continued to train. He left the corner of the abyss where the gaze of the constellations couldn't reach him. He could feel himself growing stronger. Also in the battle with Varigod, in addition to the new world resonance, he had gotten two new skills related to his essence power. In order for Randy to use this skill, he has to fight someone stronger than him. Well, he realizes if he loses, it's over. It sounded complicated, but the protagonist liked it and wanted to get more serious. The guy kept traveling. He met a real monster in front of him. He hoped that this monster would be stronger than him and he would improve his skill. But it turned out to be an old friend he used to travel with. Randy was very surprised to meet him. The main character notices that the back of his friend is full of his brothers. The guy was very happy for him that he found his family. Suddenly another monster appears out of nowhere, much bigger than the other monsters by a factor of 40. The ground was being torn apart by this monster. It was a super giant monster that had never appeared on Earth before. It was a high-ranking monster. The whole world had to be on full alert against it. The protagonist realized that he was emitting a lot of magical power, giving him goosebumps. It was definitely stronger than a Varigoth. This monster was called a Nine-Headed Hydra, or Nine-Headed Snake. For the moment, Randy found the constellation's attention annoying. There were constellations that had become so by watching Randy's adventures. But most mocked or taunted him. Some were even hostile. Especially constellations like the Lord of Blood and Battle, whose first avatar had been crushingly defeated. To them, Randy was a beast yet to come of age. That's why they must do everything in their power to stop Randy from becoming a constellation. Which is why Randy retreated to a neutral zone where the constellation couldn't follow him. However, the lawless zone was where the strongest ruled. The nine-headed snake began to attack the protagonist with energy. It was a place ruled by monsters of power comparable to the constellation. The protagonist was just shocked. It was just amazing magical power. He was just like a bulldozer that was destroying everything in its path. The guy's good giant killer skill was activated. If Randy defeats the Hydra, his power will essentially increase. Also activated the skill master of his craft. If he defeats the Hydra, his essence power will also increase. The protagonist realized that his skills made him fight this monster. But even without them, his choice will remain the same, for this monster won't just let him go. Randy pointed his finger at the snake and yelled that it was bullying his friend and his family. No matter how strong this snake is, it will regret it. The nine-headed snake came at him with all its might. It is said that even the constellation fell to their knees from their venom. Randy could feel the bloodlust coming from their nine heads. Most opponents would have frozen out of telepathy and bloodlust. But the protagonist is used to this kind of thing. He had already been in many battles in the territory of the Lord of Blood and Battles. They went head to head. There was a massive explosion from their battle. Randy was able to take the snake's head off with his first attack. Eight heads left. They were furious at the brazenness of it. No one had ever fought them so brazenly before. It wasn't that simple. The Hydra regenerated its head with the divine regeneration skill. The nine-headed Hydra began to prepare its attack. It was going to unleash a lot of venom. It was said that even the constellations themselves couldn't withstand their venom. The protagonist wondered why they would say their attack. But the answer was simple because it was a monster that even the constellations feared. The nine-headed Hydra merely announces the fate of the enemy. The enemy has no choice but to accept his fate. But that wasn't Randy's thing. He attacked them from the sky. The Hydra couldn't figure out how he stopped their poison. The guy looked at his hands, and it felt like his head was about to explode because of the telepathic scream. If he didn't have perfect immunity to poisons, he might have gotten hurt. His hands began to glow with blue flames, but the sensation wasn't the same as when fighting a Varigoth. It far surpasses the power of divine space art and energy materialization. The protagonist could fight on equal footing with the nine-headed Hydra itself. Randy was not cornered. On the contrary, he was able to slay the Hydra with a single blow. But the fight didn't end there. The Hydra couldn't keep up with him because he was quite fast. He was generating very quickly. But the protagonist realized if he got caught in the Hydra's breath, he'd be in danger. Randy had an invulnerability skill that should have protected him from any damage. But even in a fight against a Varigoth, he couldn't block all of its powerful magic. And the Hydra was many times stronger than the Varigoth. Blocking invulnerability attacks was impossible. Randy was able to step on it with Moonwalk. He improved his Moonwalking skills so much that he started running on the Hydra's breath. While Randy was moving between safe zones, he lost all the time he needed to be much faster, and a miracle happened. In an instant, the flames and the poison spewed by the Hydra paused. Time slowed down a lot, as if fulfilling Randy's dream of being faster. The Hydra couldn't control its breathing on purpose. But none of Randy's martial arts had the same effect. 
The protagonist attacked at full speed and just started destroying the Hydra. The Hydra couldn't keep up with him. At one point, Randy realized that this was happening for the same reason his attacks were so much stronger, should have been with his level of martial arts and skills. The power of the essence wasn't the same thing that enhanced his magic or martial arts. It was the power that allowed him to alter reality. According to his imagination, he got much more than he wanted. He gained the skill of insight and utilized the full power of essence. The power of essence is the power to change reality. Now he could control that power as he wished. As a result of the epiphany, the skill of essence power has become stronger. The power of essence is the power that allows constellations, beings who have reached the peak of existence, to rule the abyss. Constellations have used this power to transform the abyss, create kingdoms, and bestow gifts and blessings upon their followers. As long as the constellations had enough essence power, they could do anything. Hydra was furious. She already wanted to finish this guy off quickly. Hydra's soulful strong will. With the current power of the essence, Randy couldn't shake or change its will. The protagonist's goal was to change the power of essence. He realized that it would be hard for him to change the Hydra. He must change himself. Randy's powerful essence penetrated his materialized energy and became a sharp blade, capable of cutting through the Hydra's huge body. He cut through one Hydra's head, but it couldn't regenerate because he had sealed the divine regeneration with his blade. The protagonist realized that this wasn't the end and he didn't want to let his emotions get the best of him. He began to defeat the Hydra by slicing their heads off one by one. I thought it was impossible because they don't regenerate. They didn't think they could lose to a lowlife like a human. The Hydra wanted to get away from Randy. It wanted to hide in the cave and wait for the regeneration to return. The Hydra started to run away because there were only two heads left and the rest had been chopped off. But it was very hard for them to hide with such a big body. One of the Hydras was against running away because it was a real humiliation for them. But the other head was wiser and said that they should hide so that the regeneration would return. Otherwise, the Hydra would die. But it was a real shame for them because they'd lived for 10,000 years and they'd never faced such humiliation. But the main character was much faster than them and there was no point in running away. He was already on top of them and he launched his attack. An attack so powerful it tore the Hydra apart. Randy's friends were in shock. No one had ever been able to defeat a Hydra before. After the attack, Randy could barely stand, but he recognized that the snake was a tough opponent. After the victory, Randy's powers of existence increased with the skill of the good giant fighter. The world began to resonate with the protagonist even more strongly. This all happened because the Hydra's blood covered him. He inherited the Hydra's karma, divine regeneration. Now his invulnerable body could regenerate endlessly. Randy looked at his ability card and thought he had a very strange life. As a martial artist, he never thought of getting many skills. On a normal land, even one such skill would make him a rank a hunter. But that no longer mattered. He decided to go beyond being a hunter and enter the path of a constellation. The protagonist asked his friend whether he needed meat scales or bones. The stone serpent bounced. He remembered Randy's long ago actions as he ate the poisonous fish. The Hydra's body was exuding a frightening poisonous aura. It was dangerous even for Randy to touch the Hydra's body. But the protagonist wanted to take a chance, so he cut the Hydra into small pieces. He wanted to eat all the meat before he left on his journey. Before Randy left, the stone serpent decided to give him a necklace because Randy had saved his family from the Hydra. It was an artifact of the space necklace. This necklace had a very good gift. It sucked up all the cooked meat that was cut up from the Hydra. Hydra bones can be used to turn in various items and weapons, and the strong scales of the Hydra can be used to make armor. The main character was happy because he could throw the cauldron there and not enriched ore. It was very convenient for him because he was tired of carrying the cauldron with ore on his shoulders for so long. Randy began to tell the serpent that while they had been away from him, he had collected a lot of adamantium. The adamantium he got from the stone serpent a long time ago is in this cauldron. The protagonist wanted to learn how to dilute this ore. He dreamed of making a frying pan and a cutting board to make his cooking easier. Well, the gifts didn't stop there, and Snake decided to give him a pink crystal. From that moment, when Randy decided to become a constellation, he began to see messages about other constellations. He could also see the amount of power that creatures like Varigoths and Hydras had. The reason he was able to use the subspace necklace. It wasn't that he just became smarter and more observant but that being a creature capable of reaching the peak of existence. The other name for this diamond was unenriched orichalcum, a metal that emits pure magical energy. Orichalcum is the metal that emits the strongest magical energy, 
and adamatium is the strongest metal that absorbs magical energy. But the protagonist thought nothing of making a knife out of orichalcum cutlery. He was obsessed with cooking. The stone serpent began to convince his wife that he might have a problem with his head, but he was a very kind and strong man. Randy studied cooking for thousands of years while he owned the demon pub. His cooking skills were quite advanced. This ingredient wasn't so easy to manage. It was the meat of a powerful creature that came out after refusing to become the avatars of the constellation. Absorbing an abyss monster gives power proportional to the creature being absorbed, but if cooked incorrectly, the dish is deadly poisonous. But Randy refused to back down. For him, cooking with complex ingredients was a kind of training. The protagonist noticed that his constellation power had increased by leaps and bounds. He could feel the energy coming from his snake buddies. Randy finally realized why the constellation wanted to increase their followers, and the real reason the constellation was so interested in Earth. It was a world with billions of potential followers. Any constellation that takes over the Earth will gain the power of an essence that can change the abyss itself. The protagonist wondered how he could find a way to quickly return to Earth, before the future predicted by the goddess of scales. Earth Serpent drew a demon. He wanted to show Randy that this demon was after them. Randy started to look for this demon, he thought in his head. Can someone do any damage to it? After being in the territory of the Lord of Blood in the battles, he had no desire to fight demons. But now he's been told there's a demon stronger than a Varagoth and a Hydra. The protagonist entered an unusual place and saw four creatures in front of him. They addressed him as Invincible Master of Training. The girl informed him that her master wanted to meet Randy. He should take them up on the offer because it was very important. Randy asked them what would happen if he refused the offer, but they calmly replied that they would just let him go and not fight him. The protagonist thought it was very suspicious. He wondered what they wanted from him, but Branda agreed because he was interested in meeting him. On the way, Randy asked the girl if she had heard of a planet like Earth. The girl thought hard and answered that she had heard some rumors. She had heard that some constellation was fighting for the gate leading there. Randy jumped on the girl and shouted if she had heard anything else. The girl was very frightened by this behavior but said she hadn't heard anything else. The girl said that she had heard that there were a lot of souls there, that the master would help him take over the land. But the guy denied it right away. He said he planned to stop the other constellations from taking over the land. The girl didn't expect that answer and said he was not only strong, but noble. The main character didn't understand why these demons are called nightmare demons. It seemed to him that they are good, sociable, and friendly demons. Even if they can't control their Sobolese skill, they don't seem dangerous. On his way to his master's house, the guy met a demon who wanted to eat him. She screamed at him to give her his wishes. She was immediately apprehended by the servants, screaming to be let go because she knows they want to eat him too. Randy asked the girl what it was and who she was. The girl replied that they were nightmare succubi, weak to other people's desires. Then the protagonist realized that they live off of other people's desires. He knew he shouldn't have a strong fascination with desire. He promised himself that he would be fine without his significant other, and he didn't need a good meal or a comfortable place to sleep. They came to the master's chamber, which was called Dreams and Desires. The guy asked the girl why she doesn't go into the palace with him. The girl replied that a creature like her was unworthy to be between the constellation. Randy answered her that he is not a constellation, and he asked the girl to go with him for he didn't know the whole palace. The girl immediately agreed and said he was very nice to her. The protagonist suspected something much more dangerous than he'd realized. Randy wanted to use her as a human shield. He was sure the constellation would never want to lose their prized avatar. This meeting was being held on the territory of another country. This constellation was undoubtedly more adept at handling the power of essence than Randy. A lot could happen. Even though Randy was invited, he never let his guard down. After all, the title of undefeated master trainer doesn't go to just anyone. As soon as Randy entered his room, he felt as if he had just woken up. He turned his head and saw a girl sleeping. He couldn't understand what was going on. Randy didn't notice how the constellation was behind him. He didn't hear it at all. So you're the constellation that's been doing a lot of shows lately. I've been wanting to meet you for a long time. The constellation turned to Randy. Randy smiled and said he didn't want to upset her, but he wasn't a constellation yet. He still has a lot of work to do on this. Constellation didn't agree with Randy, because the one who stepped on the path of constellation can also be a constellation, because he's capable of the same things they are. Constellation said it was also about him. After all, he could use essences like other constellations. The protagonist looked at him very cross because he looked like a child. Randy began to slowly remember what exactly happened when he entered the constellation chamber. 
Randy wondered if I hadn't done enough. After all, he'd been wandering the abyss for 10,000 years. He had perfected the divine cosmic arts and reached the peak of martial arts. He's even reached a level beyond all existing ones. The protagonist asked why he tries to charm or seduce people, because that is the essence of dreams and desires. Beings who enter this room fulfill their desires and find peace. It's hard to refuse my gift if you're not a constellation. Randy was excited, wondering what she wanted from him. Constellation smiled and said she would be happy to explain everything if he would join the Alliance. Randy was surprised at such a suggestion, for it was very unexpected what Constellation could think of people. Constellation smiled and said that he was right. Constellation are selfish. After all, they can't do otherwise. But selfishness doesn't always mean loneliness or brokenness. If anything, he allows them to cooperate with them. After saying that, Randy realized that Constellation had decided to form an alliance because it would be good for her. Constellation said he was right. After all, a mortal looks at them as gods, but the constellation is also not easy. If the constellation shows any hint of weakness, a strong constellation will attack him without thinking. And that's why this constellation wanted to form an alliance. Some constellations don't want a future of survival. The devastation and desolation caused by the constellation's obsession with conquest, it will all lead everyone to a despair in which no desire can exist and the nightmare will no longer be something to feed on. Randy asked, wouldn't expanding the territory solve that problem? Constellation thought he was talking about a farm by way of wishes. Such an idea could only come from Constellation, who was originally human. Constellation said they couldn't enjoy unlimited potential like mortals. Just as Randy was now beyond the reach of brokenness or complacency, the Constellation could not freely control what was beyond dreams and desires. Without the risk of losing the power of essence and becoming weak, the Constellation showed its small town and said that nightmares require high-quality, three-dimensional desires. Not the ones generated by fear and anger, but a desire filled with ambition or a sense of achieving a world of abundance. Constellation said she's just a nightmare god and can't do that in the real world that she's shown. The protagonist realized she wanted to create an alliance of weak and truistic constellations. Randy told her that she revealed too much of her weaknesses, why she wasn't afraid if he turned out to be bad and greedy. She smiled and said she'd thought about it for a long time, but figured he would be easier to negotiate with than other constellations. But she kept silent about the fact that she had decided that way after seeing his desire. So if Randy had known about it, he would have been more careful. In truth, Randy radiated great desire, but none of it was about conquest or power. The only thing on his mind was training. He had always told himself, if he stopped training just because he had achieved perfection in martial arts, he would lose muscle and the will to work. Randy said that sounded like a pretty good deal, but he still had a few questions. Constellation was excited about the questions. She wanted to answer all his questions quickly. Randy asked what he should do if they formed an alliance. After all, he was pretty busy and thought he wouldn't be able to help her. After his questions, she laughed hard. After all, she thought he would start asking for benefits and he started asking for responsibilities. This was a unique person to her. She answered him that as long as the other constellations didn't attack the Alliance, there was nothing to be done. The duties don't make sense. A constellation does not take part in something that is not good for them. She took the bird in her arms and told him he had to do something if he wanted to. The battle between the constellations has been going on so long it's getting boring. So it doesn't matter where you are. We'll be there in time to help each other. They shook hands and Randy said he agreed to form an alliance. Constellation was very happy that he agreed. Randy thought he was a newcomer who had just started on the path to becoming a constellation. He was sure the abyss was full of dangerous and pretend constellations. Being in an alliance seemed safer than trying to go it alone, and he thought he could get help getting back to Earth. Suddenly out of nowhere appeared, a big firestorm that was 40 meters high. The main character was very surprised to see a kitten come out of this firestorm. The kitten said he would have been nice to them if Randy had been his avatar, but instead he had done something stupid by joining the small constellation alliance. When he remembered that they had talked to him before, it was a member of the small constellation alliance. Randy asked why he was talking to him using telepathy since he was standing right in front of him. The girl said that usually a constellation doesn't leave its territory. Randy then realized that it was just the two of them in the alliance. It was obvious from their faces that they were rather embarrassed to admit it. Kitty says angrily. So what? It was still profitable even though there were only three of them. Kitty says he heard Randy collects adamantium and oracalcum. He says he can make them into whatever Randy wants. The girl said this kitten is a famous blacksmith in the abyss. 
He can make Randy any weapon he wants as a gift for joining the Alliance. The protagonist was thrilled with the gift because he'd never thought of it, but he had very little or a calcum, so he asked the girl to do it later when he had more. The girl said that she honestly thought it would be more difficult to negotiate with him, but he accepted her offer before she could bring the gifts. The girl again said that the constellation is by nature an arrogant and selfish creature, so before they met, they prepared something that might interest Randy. After that, he received an orang martial arts scroll called Energy Vampirism. In addition, he received auric alchem ingots. The guy looked at his body and was delighted because it was a martial art that had the effect of absorbing magical energy. The girl said that energy vampirism was a martial art created by nightmares, but she thought it would suit him very well. The girl thought that there was no nightmare who could become a master of this art. Randy began to think that he had achieved greatness in martial arts, but using magic was a much more effective way than studying martial arts. Randy threw all the ingots on the ground and said he'd been collecting them for over 10,000 years. He couldn't wait for them to make him things out of them. Lava Kitten from Magma excitedly asks what kind of armor he wants he would be honored to make it. The kitten says that he with so many materials he could create an epic sword and shield. He suggested he create an indestructible shield out of adamantium and the strongest sword out of orichalcum. But Randy said that's not what he wanted. He wanted kitchenware. He wanted an adamantium skillet and cutting board and a walnut knife and utensils. Lava's kitten thought he was kidding at first and asked him to be serious because this is serious business. But Randy said he was dead serious. From the moment he got his first adamantium nugget in the abyss, his dream changed. He wanted the best kitchen utensils with which to prepare any ingredient in the abyss. Lava's kitten just didn't have anything to say to him. He was in complete shock at his words. The protagonist noticed his reaction and said it felt like he was making him do something terrible. But a promise is a promise, so the cat from Lava honored his request by putting his whole soul into it. The girl said it was time for her to answer Randy's questions. After all, he said he wanted to know what the awakening was. Randy said it's true he's not a full constellation yet. He's just starting to follow the constellation path. When he defeated the Varagoth and reached a degree of mastery, he saw a message from the world that said his world resonance was growing stronger. The world was eager to hear him scream. And the Varagoth in his final moment said, become a constellation, not an avatar. But the guy kept thinking that he was still a human with powerful martial arts, and he needed to take one more step to become a constellation. But the girl just told him that she'd already told him that he was a constellation. She explained to him that there is no such thing as an incomplete constellation. A constellation is a constellation, so it's simple. But Randy still asked further. He was curious about the awakening because she said he still had to awaken. The girl answered that she meant that he still didn't realize he was a constellation. Even at the moment, he thought he wasn't complete. Though the girl realized that he was a very special being, even among constellations. Randy started to complain. After all, she called him special, but he didn't even know how to use magic. The girl touched his nose and told him that mortals very rarely become constellations. The girl started telling her story that she was just born a constellation. The girl said that her power of existence, dream, and desire was unleashed by nightmares. It all came together when they created me. This is the true form of the mistress of dreams and desires. Most other constellations are the same. The Lord of Blood and Battle, the Kitten of Lava and Magma, they are the constellations of birth. It's natural for a being to be a constellation, but the girl explained that the guy was already considered a constellation. The girl told him to accept that he was a constellation. Then Randy just accepted the fact that he was a constellation. He immediately felt a great surge of power. He learned a skill called World Resonance. As the constellation's invincible master trainer, Randy could use the constellation's power. The main character completely changed his hair color and length. It all came from a great surge of energy. The other constellations began to notice that the new constellation was opening its eyes to the depths of the abyss. The protagonist felt very good, for he could give a great blessing and even send a message. The girl said he better not go to the other avatars because they have their own constellations and he could get in trouble. So Randy had to be careful. The main character grabbed his head and said that from now on, if he wanted to do anything, he would have to think ten times. Because the avatar is the most important factor for the existence of a constellation. Because any exposure to other people's avatars could be seen as provocation. Randy could get an answer to any question just by thinking about it. He couldn't understand how he didn't realize he was already a constellation as he kept going from side to side, trying to become the strongest. Even though he was lost and wandering through the abyss, he took it as training from the goddess. Randy even thought that the magic storm was a convenient way to move around and also a training tool. After he remembered his mistakes, he was upset, 
for he really thought he was training, and it was all for nothing. He thought it was all training from the goddess of scales. The girl told him if he had an avatar, he should try to concentrate on it. At first, Randy said he didn't have an avatar, but then he remembered his friend, the stone serpent. The girl added that he could restore his power to his essence. After all, you can accumulate even more essence power than the limit allows, so you don't have to save it. So the constellation can use their avatars to explore the abyss. And you can also look through the eyes of allied avatars. This way you can share vision between worlds. The protagonist pointed his finger at the sleeping girl and said there was a place where he couldn't use all this. The girl said he was talking about imprisoned nightmares. She could hide certain areas if she didn't want them to be seen. Constellation said to greet Randy, she sent a Rooney to him. It was because of the best control I had. After all, it's hard for a nightmare to control his urges. The protagonist remembered the incidents that had happened to him and immediately realized what she was talking about. The girl asked if he had any other questions. Randy said he didn't and thanked her for her explanation. The girl said she was pleased to meet a constellation expressing gratitude. Randy had only recently become a constellation, and the girl advised him that he should rarely encounter other constellations. After all, in a battle between constellations, the one with the most avatars and the most essence power has the advantage. But the place Randy arrived at after much training, it's the beginning of the world, it's the poverty of the constellations. The protagonist asked her if she'd ever heard of planet Earth. The girl replied that she had heard that many strong tidings await the opening of the gate there, because of the fact that there are many souls there, which is rare in the abyss. Randy said he was from that land. The girl told him that the gate between the abyss and the Earth was already open. Everything should be a mess, but luckily it's not that bad. But thanks to your explanation of the girl, Randy finally understood. The constellations that came to Earth only looked at each other, but they didn't collide because they'd only be weakened if they fought each other. Some clever constellation could just take control of the souls and defeat the constellations that were fighting. And so instead of just fighting, they decided to increase the number of their followers Randy pondered. The girl thought he was very lucky. There must have been relatively good constellations nearby when the gate opened, because the evil and cruel constellations wouldn't agree and would just try to take power by force. Because all the constellations behave as they do, they have nothing to lose. The girl was sure Randy was nervous about leaving his home planet to the constellations. It would also be nice to have a constellation in their alliance whose followers are the souls of Earth. Then Randy flew up into the air and cut his long hair because it was in his way. The reason his hair suddenly grew back is because he accepted himself as a constellation. The girl asked Randy what decision he'd made, if he wanted to come back to Earth no matter what. The protagonist just smiled and said that long hair just gets in the way of training. The girl wanted to give the guy some advice since he was planning to return to his native land. If, like the girl said, the gate to Earth was open and the nearest constellations were watching them, Randy didn't think it was necessary to openly show that he was a constellation, because even the good constellations would be hostile to him. If it's a constellation that can fight for the Earth, they're much stronger than he is. And no matter how good a constellation is, they won't turn a blind eye to the fact that they might lose the soul they own. Randy asked the girl, does she really want him to hide that he is a constellation? The girl answered that it would be much better and safer for him, and that he would not have to use the power of the essence. After all, the constellation would not let him out of their sight if they knew that the constellation had returned back to Earth. She advised him to blend in with the normal inhabitants of Earth, and then quietly and carefully acquire his followers, and they would become souls that would take on his essence. After all, it's a constellation on Earth. The protagonist asked the girl if there was a constellation on Earth that knew about him. The girl grabbed her chin and said that it is possible. It would be good to join it in our alliance. After all, it would increase the strength of their alliance. Randy tried to tell the story of how he fell into the abyss after meeting the goddess of scales. The girl replied that it was a very strange story, but she had heard of this constellation. The guy said that even without being able to see the future, it's not that common. Even though it doesn't seem like it, but she could have had a good plan after all. The girl replied that she's heard that she's a constellation that keeps making a fool of itself by getting its prophecies wrong. Well, it seems like it's almost impossible to predict the future very accurately. What's the point of prophecies if she can't capitalize on them? The girl didn't realize if the goddess of scales would help their alliance. Randy said that the way she was trying to stop the evil constellations, she was probably working with the other constellations. Lava Girl and Kitten were very hesitant to bring her into their alliance because she turned out to be very stupid. But they decided to accept her. 
They asked Randy to ask her to join his alliance since he was returning to Earth. Randy was sure she would help them, although he was worried about how she would feel about him becoming a constellation. Randy wondered how to find a way to contact her. He asked his alliance friends if they knew how he could contact her, but they didn't know a thing. They didn't understand how they could know where such a constellation was. Randy awakened as a constellation and joined the alliance. However, he didn't get any closer to returning to Earth at all. The protagonist believed that he personally had to find her. After all, the goddess of scales was a key figure, because the more beings that knew about her, the closer he was to Earth. Randy became very worried about whether he would be able to get back to Earth in time, because his land was in danger. The protagonist turned to the servant who was escorting him around the palace. She asked him where he wanted to go, because the land was full of beautiful places. Randy said that he already had a place in mind. He had heard from his master about the Fountain of Enlightenment. The girl was surprised that he wanted to go to that place. It was a place for their training to learn to control their desires. The protagonist smiled and said, if he had to wait here, then he also had to undergo the training possible only here. When they arrived at the place, the girl said that she had heard that in the old days, many nightmares used this place. But since the nightmare constellation was born, it was forbidden. Randy asked why that was so. The servant replied because it was incredibly dangerous. After all, she had heard that many nightmares went mad during training. Randy walked over to the well and looked down. It was the Well of Enlightenment. Randy knew that the point of training was to drink water from the well. But if that were true, it wouldn't have been sealed and banned. Because the stronger a person's desire to draw water, the heavier the water becomes. The main character started pulling water from the well and noticed that the water was quite heavy. He wanted to meditate and get rid of his desires, but the water wouldn't get any less. When Randy started pulling the water out of the well, the well started telling him his wish. It said if he let go of the water, he'd come back to Earth. Randy's ex-girlfriend comes over and touches him. She said when they broke up, it wasn't on a good note, but Randy realized it was all manipulation and it wasn't really happening. Meanwhile, the girl and Lava's cat were discussing his training. They thought even if he was a master of training, he would have a hard time. After all, this well is arousing and increases desire, and the bucket becomes many times heavier. Lava's kitten was worried if the training master would be okay, but the girl was not worried in the slightest. The sight of the constellation is on a completely different level than nightmares. At least she wouldn't go crazy. The girl wondered what illusions tormented him. She thought it was something incredible. Randy was almost on the verge of letting go of the bucket. The rope was very tight and could break at any moment. But Reddy kept practicing because by using the weight of his own desires, he's getting rid of them. He's addicted to training. No wonder he became a constellation. The girl in Lava the Kitten looked at it and thought it was too much. Then they realized that the point of the training is that he has to pull out a bucket of water as hard as his desire. For he who wants to pull the bucket out of the well sees the illusion corresponding to his wish, and the water gets heavier and heavier. The servant was very worried about Randy for she knew that a lot of nightmares had gone crazy trying to complete this training. She asked Randy, maybe he was in some kind of trouble, but the protagonist nonchalantly replied that he was fine. He just found a good machine for the first time in a long time. He realized that most people couldn't even lift a bucket. After all, they had very little temptation. Randy told himself that he was 100% resilient because he had a consciousness and would not give in to any temptation. Randy spent most of the day practicing with the Well of Enlightenment. He told himself he could do lightweight cardio if he cleansed his heart, and strength training if he felt like it. And the rest of the time he would rest and work on tactics by sparring with Aruni. Constellation Desire told Randy that she thought it would be much harder and longer for him, but apparently he was having a good time. Randy replied, not that he had any reason to give up practicing. When he first had free time, he started practicing right away, hardly something because of his rush. The girl said that he is an army man and a battle constellation, but Randy might have the potential to be much more than that. He may have the potential of nurturing avatars and founding his kingdom. Lava Kitten finished making cutlery for Randy. It was Orichalcum cutlery. When the main character picked it up, he was very happy about it. He told himself that with this, he could cook any ingredient. Plus, he can use the knife as a sharp blade in battle. He swung the knife and spat out a lot of energy, which was a very unpleasant sound. The Wish Constellation was against this kind of fun. After all this, knife was sharpened by the Constellation Blacksmith. If Randy didn't handle it carefully, it would blow the all around him. After the walnut cutlery, it was time for the adamantium utensils. 
The girl and Lava Cat put on their goggles to watch Randy shoot the cutlery and test its durability. He gathered some energy in his fist and was ready to fire. The force of the shot was not weak. It was amazing because after such a powerful attack, they didn't have a scratch on them. Clava Kitty bragged that this stuff was much stronger than magical armor. Randy's little break in the nightmare world was over. Even though he was human when he entered here, he was leaving being constellations. Randy was about to leave. All the servants begged him to visit them more often. Everyone cried after them, for Randy was very kind and everyone liked his good food. They called him Master Gookbab, but just like Randy's invincible training master, the nightmares nicknamed him Master Gookbab. It was all because he made some food with new items. The dish was called Hydra Meat Gookbab. Everyone eyed this dish with caution, for they had heard that Hydra Meat was quite poisonous. Randy told Arnie's servant to call his friends, for he had plenty of meat, so he made for everyone. Wish Constellation convinced her avatar Aruni that she didn't have to taste it if she didn't want to. After all, Hydra Meat contains deadly poison, and there's no need to put herself in that kind of danger. But Aruni ate it all with gusto. She said it was very warming, and she could feel her stats rising. The other nightmares were also asking for food. They were eager to try this dish, and there were quite a few of them. After all, the nightmare's obsession with the gookbop had caused quite a commotion. The situation was resolved only after the hostess intervened. The protagonist thought he could practice cooking and increase the power of the essence, but he was a little uncomfortable. He ended up causing this ugly scene. Randy had reached the border of Nightmare World. Then there was the territory ruled by the Serpent of Plague and Darkness. This territory looked terrifying. Randy thought he should use some of his essence power to keep this dark guy from stressing him out. But he decided to hide his essence from the world. Randy thought he'd be safer that way, so he disappeared from sight of the constellations. He noticed that the world had become very quiet and peaceful. He couldn't believe he was being blown away by the flood of messages from the constellations because he couldn't do something simple. The Serpent Bearer of Plague and Darkness orders all avatars to find an invincible master trainer. He tells his avatars when they find him not to fight him alone because there's no way they can beat Randy. They should never try to use force on him or they'd die. On the way... Randy met a skeleton in front of him. The skeleton said he was trespassing on his master's territory, and such insolence would not go unpunished, but his master is very generous. The skeleton told him to make Randy his master's avatar. If Randy joins him, he'll forget about the disrespect and recognizes Randy as a valuable subordinate. But the protagonist just smiled and thought it was true. It does seem like a generous constellation. I guess Randy hasn't realized what's going on yet. The avatar tried to skim the mammoth, the Abyss Constellation were well prepared for this kind of scenario. The skeleton pointed the sword at him and said if he refused the offer, his master would come and deal with Randy. But the protagonist wasn't the least bit afraid of him. He covered his nose because the skeleton stank of rot. Then Randy shouted that all the heralds of plague and darkness should not hide behind their avatar and show their essence. The skeleton was shocked at his behavior, for he still didn't understand the situation he was in. Randy turned to the skeleton and told him to call his master quickly because it would get worse, but he wouldn't come out, so Randy said he'd make him do it. Then Randy started smashing everything around him, saying he'd smash everything when the constellation wouldn't come out. The main character yelled that he'd think he was a coward if he didn't come out. I mean, he can't even defend his own territory. The meaning of such statements was completely understandable. Then Randy got the skill good and giant bearer. In case of victory, his essence power will be enhanced. Then the nightmare mistress contacted him, and told him it was madness to fight against the constellation. That's when Randy realized they could be watching him, because he'd forgotten all about it. The Mistress of Nightmares said it was reckless to challenge a constellation to a fight. Randy got a base level of Space Tunguska. It was added by the Divine Space Art. Original motive at Master Training, even after Randy fell into the Abyss, he was never a force to be reckoned with. Being a weak person, he had always struggled with hostility. From the point of view of the powerless, he did the best he could, but after he became a constellation, Randy changed a lot, even though he didn't realize it. He was always hiding from the older constellations. Like the last cowards, he stayed in neutral territory, away from the prying eyes of the constellations. Randy lost the point of fighting. He told himself he had to follow his own path, living as a constellation. The fact that Randy's opponent was a constellation didn't change anything in his attitude towards him. He wasn't the least bit afraid of the other constellations. A large green smoke appeared above the protagonist. Randy immediately realized it was a constellation. This flying constellation looked pretty intimidating. It was too late to run. 
It was a mid-ranking constellation called the Herald of Plague and Darkness. He stood before the avatars and those doomed to die. The Herald of Plague and Darkness thought his adversary was crazier than he expected. After all, for some reason, the constellation is much weaker than he is. The Herald of Plague and Darkness didn't understand why such a weak opponent would challenge him. He grabbed his beard and said, If Randy is defeated, though, he will be completely destroyed, even if he knits himself into this battle. The Plague Herald realized that if he won, he would gain nothing. But if he lost, he had a lot to lose. But he had nowhere else to go. If he didn't accept his challenge, his reputation status would plummet and the other constellations would mock him. The protagonist wouldn't even talk to him. He just attacked him. Even though Randy was the first to challenge him, he didn't let his guard down. After all, this was his first battle with the constellation. The constellation of darkness realized that the power differential between them was too great, and he must end it quickly, using his power. But it was to Randy's advantage to end this fight quickly, because if the fight dragged on, Randy would have little chance of winning. Randy immediately decided to start with his powerful attack, called the Space Fist. The constellation of darkness felt pain for the first time, as if its essence was being torn apart. Other constellations, including the Herald of Darkness, rarely fought in person, activating the Herald of Darkness. He realized it was a crazy technique that Randy had used, but he didn't realize if it was magic or not. Randy realized the technique was working and he didn't want to miss his chance. He started to use his best to end this fight quickly. The protagonist jumped up and hit him with his energy cultivation. The force of the blow was so great that the earth broke in half. After this attack, the protagonist realized that his opponent was being weak so that he could suddenly attack and strike a victorious blow. The servants of the Constellation of Darkness watched this fight and were all amazed by the fight between the two constellations. They realized that to this level, they are very, very far away. The servants of Darkness didn't understand how such a pathetic constellation like Randy could stand up to their unimitated master, the messenger of plague and darkness. The guy realized that the fight was just beginning and it would be very, very difficult for him because he knew who his opponent was. Suddenly, the darkness constellation started begging Randy not to hurt him because he was surrendering. But the hero said he couldn't be fooled by that trick, so he punched him hard in the face. But constellation of darkness begged him to stop beating him up. He promised to give him his territory and his avatars. The girl and the lava lava kitten were astonished. They did not expect such a turn of events because it was a great shame for the constellation to admit their defeat especially to give up their territories and avatar. Lava's kitten told Randy that the constellation was actually surrendering, a view the constellation could never take away about the oath of their lives. But Randy didn't understand what he meant, why the constellation would surrender. Kitten says if a constellation is badly hurt, it can surrender. The protagonist smiled. He didn't expect the victory to be so easy. After the victory, Randy's skills improved dramatically. His body began to glow with yellow flames. He felt much stronger than he was. Then Randy held his hand out straight and said that his martial arts were in good condition, for they worked even on the constellations. Randy felt a strange sensation. He began to feel rivers of pus and buildings from the rotten river of tumors. Randy began to feel each avatar, for these were his new avatars and his new kingdom. But when Randy looked at them, he almost threw up. Then he turned to the messenger of darkness and told him he was giving his kingdom back. Randy said he didn't want his kingdom back. As Randy walked away, the messenger of darkness and plague was confused. Because battles between constellations are dangerous, both sides risk the wind. The winner takes everything from the loser. This is what happens to prevent future danger from the loser. The complete erasure of the loser's existence is common for constellations. The constellation of darkness realized that this guy had spared him and left him a kingdom with avatars. He was glad, but that sense of loss was killing him. Kitty told Randy he'd never seen anyone take on a constellation as an avatar. He thought leaving the kingdom and the avatars was a mistake. Well, Randy said he didn't care at all because he wouldn't have been able to control them. Randy felt that this technique he had developed in the battle with the Aruni was his greatest asset. To get so close to the enemy that he couldn't use magic, not give him a chance to use the power of the essence, and then slay him. The protagonist believed that he could fight. Even if he met a constellation much stronger than him, he would be able to resist it. After that, Randy went to the other constellations. They told him that they had seen him defeat the messenger of plague and darkness in the constellation. They were quite impressed. One of the constellations told him he didn't think he'd come here, but he didn't seem to have any sense of fear at all. One of the constellations said he couldn't be defeated as easily as that rotten weakling. 
After all, he had to prepare to face the full force of his kingdom. It was the mid-level constellation of the one who turns back time. That's what Randy was hoping for. He was ready to take them all down with his might. When they heard rumors of what had happened to the messenger of plague and darkness, they prepared for all sorts of scenarios. In other words, now Randy had to fight all the avatars of the kingdom. It took him 200 years by abyss standards before he faced the constellation. Well, Randy did win. Next, he met a mid-level constellation with a voice from the depths of the sea. This constellation said that she had heard a lot about him, that he had defeated many enemies, but the constellation said that it would be hard to defeat him. There'd be no point in fighting him, so Constellation Shark suggested a compromise. Well, Randy said he didn't agree, so he attacked them from behind, taking them by surprise. After 150 years of fighting, Randy emerged victorious. Randy's opponent was a mid-level constellation called the Truth Preacher. Truth Preacher had heard of him. He knew he was called the Undefeated Master of Training. But this constellation was distracted by a lava kitten, at which point Randy could sneak up on him and attack him. Thanks to the kitten, the fight lasted only six hours. It was considered one of the fastest fights between the constellations. One day, the protagonist was cooking a meal and thought he still hadn't found a way back to Earth, but he didn't seem to be in any hurry to do so. After all, it had been a long time since he'd been to his territory. If Randy met a monster, he would fight it, and if he met a monster, he would eat it and make a delicious meal. He had a constant battle in cooking. A friend of Randy's was just having lunch and a blue gate appeared in front of him. These gates randomly appeared in the abyss. Randy thought it was a good way to meet new opponents. Randy didn't know what was beyond this gate, but he decided to take a chance. He hoped that beyond this gate was the planet Earth. It's like the lottery, you gotta take a chance, he told himself. When Randy stepped through the gate, he saw an ordinary forest with mountains in front of him. He couldn't believe his eyes, could this really be planet Earth? He thought he'd won the lottery. The lava kitten would be curious to find out who had brought him here. But first, Randy wanted to find people to make sure this planet was Earth. Well, when Randy entered this village, he saw goblins in front of him. The protagonist first thought it had been a long time since humans had disappeared and goblins had appeared. Then Kitten told him that even though it looked like Earth, it wasn't. It was the Goblin Planet, otherwise known as Goblin Heaven. Though Randy had seen goblins in the dungeons from time to time, he thought they were just monsters. Contrary to his expectations, they could create a real village. Although the Goblin Kingdom looked like Earth, the planet was much closer to planet Earth. That means portals are much more common here. The Goblins of Hades have been fighting monsters from the Abyss for much longer than humans, and so they had a much better system for fighting monsters than humans. But that system only worked when they faced ordinary monsters. Suddenly, a planet-devouring white wolf appears on this planet. It was called Borealis Lupus, said to have the strength of a constellation. The Goblin Commander immediately went to fight it, one of the goblins told him that he shouldn't go there because it was very dangerous. Well, the goblin leader said that he is the commander. If he cannot fight this monster, he will not be able to look his people in the eye. The goblin king said that he was not a coward, said that he would not run away and would answer for his duty. This king's name was Odaigon. He was read as the strongest wizard in Hades. Even if it was the end for Hilt, he promised to at least leave a big scar on this monster so he would never forget it. Suddenly, Randy appears out of nowhere. He attacked this monster with his powerful attack. The monster screamed in pain. The protagonist expected everyone to be surprised by his appearance, but it was expected that everyone would be surprised by his power. Randy realized he only had one chance. This wolf's fighting power was comparable to a mid-level constellation. Well, it wasn't a constellation, since its existence wasn't centered on any one thing. The protagonist realized he had a chance to stop it now, so he attacked it full force. Randy decided to use everything he had. He flew 60 meters high and began to release blue energy from his body. The wolf was unable to fend off this attack and was defeated in one blow. After this victory, Randy's skills improved even more. Luckily, everything went according to Randy's plan and the fight didn't last long. The protagonist always felt a sense of crisis when facing constellations or monsters comparable to them. Randy realized that these are creatures that mortals dare not confront. Kitten said that such powerful beings have little or no experience fighting an opponent equal to them. The kitten praised Randy for his strategy. Randy thanked him for it. But if he had withstood his last attack a little longer or had been prepared in advance, this battle would have lasted several centuries. The protagonist realized that there were still many things he was weak at. When the protagonist landed on the ground in front of the goblins, he hoped they wouldn't attack him, especially after they saw what Randy was capable of. The goblin king walked over to Randy and knelt in front of him. 
He said that the other constellations never helped them, but Randy was the only one who came here and helped his people. Then the goblin bowed even lower and said that now Randy was his god and his master. Then the other goblins bowed to him and swore allegiance to him. Randy was shocked at the behavior of the goblins. Then the power of Randy's constellation increased according to the number of souls who worshipped him. The world resonated with him. After that, his constellation power more began to awaken. He obtained the constellation skill of the constellation territory of belonging to the invincible god. The protagonist looked at his hands and said to himself that his essence had become much stronger. Lava Kitten said that he had become much more powerful in his mind. But Randy thought about not showing his power to humans. He thought that humans are not like goblins, they won't obey. The reality is that they are constantly trying to destroy and fix others for themselves. There were many instances like this. Before Randy was about to leave, the Goblin King ran up behind him and said he wanted to go with him. The protagonist told the Goblin he was headed for the Abyss, and a mortal like him would be very dangerous and difficult to follow. While the Goblin King said it doesn't matter, he would follow him even into the darkest depths of the Abyss. Then the Goblin bowed before him again and said that he was the Goblin King of Odegon. He said that his people must repay their debt to Randy, or they would live with a great desire to do so. The protagonist felt that this goblin had a very powerful magical power that surrounded his entire body. Even compared to Earth Hunters, he has a very powerful force to be reckoned with. Randy then turned his back and said that his mage abilities would be very useful to him. He let him go with him, but told him not to let the goblin regret it later. The goblin asked him what he wanted to find in the abyss. Randy said he wanted to find a planet called Earth. Then he asked the goblin if he had heard of it. Well, it was the first time the goblin had heard of such a planet. The story of how the man Randy became the invincible master of training. And just like that, the goblin king became his subordinate. On their way to the abyss, they saw a very powerful storm. Randy said they should go into that storm to get to the abyss faster. He said to the goblin, yes, that he could refuse because he didn't force him. Well, the goblin king said he would go there for he considered Randy his master after he saved him. A piece of land the size of the mainland was destroyed in an instant. The goblin was very surprised, although the magic curtain was not rare in the abyss, but this particular one was very strong. The goblin king asked Randy. He had once used the magic storm. Ren, I said, if done right, it is a very fast and good way to travel in the abyss. The goblin king heard that even in the constellation avoid him. Well, for the sake of his master, he was willing to go all the way. The Goblin King said, since this size magic storm is too big, it will produce a lot of byproducts and disappear. The protagonist questioned, what does byproduct mean? The Goblin said that many places in the abyss are actually byproducts of the magic storm. And this magical storm will leave behind a dungeon. That's where the abyss monsters appear. If they're not dealt with, they'll just wipe everything out. Ever since magic and the abyss monsters infiltrated the land, people's lives have changed a lot. A core island with magical power an environmentally friendly way to generate energy on Earth. By connecting the Earth to the abyss, humanity had a new environmentally friendly way of obtaining energy. In addition, other parts of the monsters are also very useful. Thanks to all this, the level of biology and other sciences has risen greatly. Amidst these many opportunities, Parker's Pound grew rapidly. Kaiser Pharmaceutical Company, a company specializing in artifacts, major players in the abyss industry. The Goblin and Randy continued to travel the galaxy to find Earth. The Goblin was very nauseous because he couldn't move through space. The Goblin was very surprised that Randy could easily move through space and he didn't even get sick. Randy said that magic was a handy thing. The Goblin was very happy that the Master appreciated his skills. He said if the Master needed to learn magic, he would help him. But the protagonist refused. He wasn't interested in magic. He asked the Goblin to check out the area he'd flown through. It was like watching in a game. The constellations can see through the eyes of their avatars. The goblin was hovering in the air. Reggie ordered him to check what was in the shadow of the building in front of him. In the distance, they saw some things scattered about. As the goblin flew closer, he saw that it was something unusual. It had some symbols written on it that the goblin didn't understand. The main character began to look closely. He could tell that this was used to wrap a special magical weapon. Most likely it was made by the same tribe that built this temple. When the goblin looked down, his gaze immediately changed. He said that Randy was right. His prediction had come true. It was a huge horde of ghouls, a couple thousand for sure. The goblin said he could kill them all if his master finished it. With the seventh circle effect zone spell, he could wipe out those wretched goons and the temple in one fell swoop, turning them to ash. Then they could take care of the boss who was hiding somewhere. 
The goblin asked to do it to prove to Randy that he was his proud avatar. But the protagonist told him to calm down, because if the ghouls were crowding in, it could mean they had someone or something surrounded. Randy started running as fast as he could, saying he had to save those trapped. He had already killed over 500 zombies with just one attack, because he had read that they were holding people and or monsters that knew how to get to the ground. He believed that they would lead him to Earth. Then the protagonist realized what they found in the square was Earth food. When Randy was fighting the monsters, he asked the goblin to turn into something small using magic. After all, if he presented like that to whoever was trapped there, there would be a lot of trouble. Because not all goblins are adequate creatures. Most of them are very evil and bloodthirsty goblins. Hunters from the land are used to encountering goblins in the dungeons. The goblin was furious, for he didn't understand how he could be considered a monster since he was very kind. Randy sighed heavily and said that such people and he had to accept it, it would be better for him to reincarnate. The goblin began to transform. He could use the magic of the sixth circle polymorphism. The goblin transformed into a very handsome man. He immediately said that among goblins he was known for his beauty. Randy was very surprised because he looked like a perfect man, and he was dressed like a wizard. Randy noticed that the zombies just surrounded the hunters and did nothing. He wondered what kind of boss was here. The zombies started climbing up the rock. The goblin said that if they had intelligence, they wouldn't just surround this mountain. Maybe sending zombies is all he can do. Then there was a very high probability that Goulet was controlling a really strong army. In the abyss, these zombies were known as the Goulet Kings. They were quite strong and fearsome. King Ghoulie Terran, it's a monster made up of thousands of ghouls. Those who see only ghouls and try to find the one who controls them risk suffering a surprise attack. The goblin in a human body then made a verdict that they are not very dangerous. For most, they are not much of a threat, but those whose skills are above average are crushed by numbers. There was a group of hunters in captivity. They were very careful with their food because they realized that they were here for a long time. They did not hope that someone would rescue them. It was their 28th day of captivity, the first day they lost some of their provisions. But they found a shelter underground where they could hide from the ghoulies. Then they managed to close the door, but they couldn't get out because they were surrounded by thousands of zombies. One of the zombies almost got to them, but was swatted by the stone door. Then one of the hunters used the arrow flame to kill him. The commander banged his head on a rock and cried. He realized that he had let his team down, but there was no other way out. His team had spent a month without being able to do anything. Randy shows up and kicks the stone door down with his strength. It was quite a surprise, because they didn't expect to be rescued. The main character immediately asked them if there was anyone from planet Earth. The captain was shocked. He thought they were just going to die. He didn't expect anyone to save them. The other hunters started to rejoice very much. My eyes were tears of happiness. They thought it was a rescue team coming for them. One of the hunters said that his team were idiots and they should get ready to fight. This hunter's name was Gan, and he read that these were not liberators but their enemies who wanted to kill them. He pointed his finger at them and said that the restrictions on entering the dungeon would only allow one person. How could there be two? Randy held his head up and said he didn't realize there was a one-person limit. He apologized for the misunderstanding. The protagonist said he didn't come here through the dungeon entrance. Then Gan asked him how he got here. He said they came here through the abyss. They had a long way to go, and you could see the surprise on the hunters' faces. Randy made up a story that they were lost in the abyss. After the gate was opened, accidents often happened. Many were drawn to the gate or the dungeon where they disappeared. Most never returned, but there were some lucky ones who did. But Hunter Gan didn't continue to believe them. He asked them how they could prove it. How could they prove they weren't monsters, but real people? Randy said it didn't matter if they believed him or not. Even if they didn't believe him, they had no choice. After all, they were two energetic individuals of unknown strength who could have come here from the abyss, and exhausted, conflict-torn hunters who had been starving for a long time, simple hunters below B rank. Then the hunters agreed with him. Even if they don't believe in this situation, they have no choice. The protagonist said not to be so suspicious of their saviors. Anyway, you're all from planet Earth. The commander asked what happened to the 1,000 zombies that surrounded them. Randy coldly replied that they were all dead. The captain wondered very much how one man could have handled them. Randy then pointed his finger at the goblin who had transformed into a man. Randy said he was a great wizard. The protagonist remembered the plan to return to Earth, which he shared with his Alliance allies. He recalled them telling him to keep the attention of the Earth constellations away from him, to discreetly expand the number of his supporters. Instead of attracting undue attention, 
he was going to carefully scout the current situation on Earth. Hunter Gann asked if this was also the missing man from the abyss. Randy replied that yes, he had an even more tragic story than he did, because he had lost his memory. The people started to feel sorry for him. The goblin could barely contain himself from sassing them. He thought to himself that these lowlifes still felt sorry for him. Hunter Gang asked Randy if he was a mage too because they couldn't have done it alone. The protagonist smiled and said he wasn't a mage. He used martial arts. After saying that, Randy noticed that all the hunters were stunned by his answer. After all, to reach such a level with just martial arts was simply impossible for them. He couldn't believe his words. After all, he was using martial arts. This was the first time he had ever seen such a thing. He wondered how long ago he had fallen into the abyss. The main character asked them why they were looking at him so strangely. Gan replied that they were very surprised and that they had not seen a martial artist for a long time. You're 90% more into magic now. Randy started to tell them that when he was in the abyss, martial artists were not honored at all. Randy asked what year it was. They told him it was 2039. Then they realized he had been in the abyss for 30 years. Everyone looked at him like he was crazy. The record was 28 years. But this man is in a mental institution, so Randy set a new record in the abyss. After that, Randy showed his fighting skills. He threw a huge rock and smashed it into small pieces with one kick. Everybody's mouths were open in amazement because it was the first time they'd ever seen it. Randy thought that they must really have no martial artists there. He was upset that nothing had changed in 30 years. They started to go outside because the dungeon was set up so that zombies were only ordinary monsters, but also a mob forming a boss. They wanted to take out all the monsters to clear the dungeon, so they only had one choice to break free. We have to finish off the rest of them. One of the hunters asked the goblin in a human body, he was thought to be, if a ranked hunter who rebelled against Richard, they thought he had lost his memory and started to feel sorry for him. The goblin thought he would let them do what they wanted because the protagonist asked him to behave carefully, but to him it was very disgusting. Gan told Randy that it is hard to find a strong hunter who can lead other high-ranked dungeons. Randy replied that he was aware of this and asked why they were so polite. Gan replied that they are their saviors. Since he had been in the abyss for 30 years, they considered Randy an old man. Randy became very uncomfortable with his age and asked them to consider only his earthly age, 28. The protagonist noticed that all the hunters were starting to approach the Odaigon. He turned to the other hunters and said, Even though Odaigon is a powerful mage, why don't they approach me? Randy was outraged. Gan said it was because he was a martial artist. Randy was very upset that they disrespected a martial artist so much. Then he started talking about a ranking martial artist and it was Master Lee. But the hunters were amazed by his words. They said that in 2009, just as Randy had fallen into the abyss. Like Randy, there were hunters who chose the path of martial arts, even though martial arts were considered inferior to magic. Most of these hunters traveled to China instead of their greatest concentration. Though the martial masters were weaker with the recruitment of more disciples, the revival of the martial arts era was possible. Also, there was a living legend reached the rank. Martial arts had a bright future, at least that's what everyone thought. When there was no shocking news on TV, in that news it was that a master was involved in a rank manipulation scandal. In 2011, similar scandals came to light in China, America, and other countries. In simple terms, hunters were bribing judges to change their ranks. S ranks became B ranks, B ranks became A ranks, and they played heroes. Randy's reaction was one of surprise. Then Mr. Weather, he was also considered a ranked hero of China, but he was actually a rank B. After saying that, Randy's world turned upside down. Because to him, Master Lee was just perfect. He even bought pictures and posters of him. The hunter took him by the shoulder and said that after the scandal, the reputation of martial artists had suffered greatly. A lot of people have abandoned the martial arts. I mean, it's impossible to achieve rank with this method. The captain said that no one uses martial arts now. Because after the incident, the tradition has disappeared. There are no more martial arts students or schools. Randy was in a panic. He didn't understand how his idol could be so eager to talk about it. The main character tried to calm down because the more he worried, the more his energy was gone. Sadness would only cause muscle atrophy. He asked the hunters if everything was all right on earth, but the hunters didn't understand what he was asking. So he decided to ask them directly if there had been a constellation invasion of planet earth. One of the hunters approached Randy and said he must be referring to the 2011 incident. The hunter thought it was a real disaster. He asked Randy how he knew it had happened since Randy was in the abyss. Randy was getting worried because while he was in the abyss, 
The prophecy of the goddess had come true. He hoped he wasn't too late and the earth was fine. The fall of that year when a case of rank manipulation was uncovered. On that day, it wasn't business as usual. All the people started looking up at the sky. There was a big flash in the sky and it scared people a lot. The fire beams started shooting on the ground. It was a real disaster for the people. Many people killed and injured. Then the gate was different from a normal dungeon gate and the monsters had minds. It was a real army of killers, an army that had one goal, that followed orders and acted according to strategy. The only strategy they had was to take over the earth and kill more souls of earthlings. The protagonist grabbed the hunter by the shoulders and started screaming at him hard. He asked him what happened next, what happened on earth, if the earth was taken over by evil constellations. Hunter Gan asked him to calm down. He said they gave them a good fight. Randy couldn't believe what he heard. How could ordinary people fight back? Because constellations and avatars are very strong. The hunter said that there were a lot of human casualties, but they were able to stop them and fight back. All the countries mobilized their best hunters who stopped the invasion. The guy fell to his knees from shock. He asked himself only one question. Then he didn't have to do anything else. He didn't understand why he was skimming the abyss. He didn't realize the goddess's prophecy wasn't wrong or she had miscalculated. Nightmare Constellation joined this conversation. For her, it was very strange. For this was not just a small skirmish, but a full-fledged invasion of the constellations. Even if a mortal sent their forces, would it even be realistic to stop them? It wasn't just a matter of different power levels. A constellation and a mortal are completely different. Even if there are many hunters, they are just like small insects to them. Randy agreed with the girl. It seemed very strange to him too. He asked them how the humans stopped the constellation. Gan replied that they didn't exactly stop them. It was more like a truce. They weren't sure if they needed to expand the territory they were occupying. And the people suffered too many casualties if you tried to retake the lost territories. But the people were very worried about whether the truce with these demons would last. And oddly enough, it still does. It was probably because the constellations promised to protect the land. The girl was sitting on the grass at the time and she understood. She said if there were constellations here in the first place, it makes sense. Even if new constellations took over the land, they could transfer their power to the avatars and make them fight. Unlike Randy, constellations rarely fight on their own. But against Randy, they'd have to go out and fight in person. That's when the protagonist realized why the truce had lasted so many years. The invasion of the constellations had changed the hierarchy, and it was this that was causing the abyss to connect to the Earth. To avoid a full-scale war, a compromise was reached to restore the balance of power. The truce was possible because they either didn't want to fight themselves or they didn't want to lose their avatars. Randy then said he had no business being here anyway. He said to stop the invasion of the evil constellations, he went into the abyss but came back too late. The protagonist felt guilty for not being able to save people. Lava Kitten said it wasn't like that, even though they were a couple decades too late, but the situation was over. The girl also said that the truce can't last forever. There are so many other constellations in the abyss that may still decide to invade Earth. This meant if the situation worsened, the Earth would become a battlefield where constellations would fight for dominance over the Earth. Odegon spotted a living zombie and shot it with magic. The other hunters began to praise him, saying that his magic was truly marvelous. The hunter said he had never seen anyone use first circle magic like that. But the human goblin replied that it was only first circle magic. The hunters kept praising him more and more. This made the goblin very angry because he realized that it was not sincere and he held back thanks to Randy's request. The main character watched it from the side and realized that the goblin would not last long. He could see that they were really pissing him off. Nightmare Constellation told him to be careful. The species on Earth is not enough to hide the power of existence, for there could be a great battle between the constellations. If Randy didn't properly conceal his identity, he could provoke a great conflict. Randy was well aware of this and said he would be very careful. The protagonist asked the hunter what they do with people who come back from the abyss. Hunter Hans said that they were given physical examinations and asked about their experiences. Most of them were just crazy. No one could stand the strain on their brains. After the invasion, there was a new law on Earth. It was forbidden to become avatars of evil constellations. Randy understood their anger at the constellations because they had come and destroyed their home. After the war, people became very strict. Anyway, the procedure is not that complicated. The hunter asked what country he was from. Randy answered that he was Korean. Hunter Gan said he would have a new citizenship. The main character approached the Odegon and told him that he had gotten enough information about the situation on Earth. 
Randy wondered what the skill level of the hunters was. Then the code from Lava replied that there's a spell called Level Estimation. It shows the level and characteristics. That should be enough. But the protagonist couldn't use his essence power because then the constellation would notice him immediately. So he was told that he wouldn't need to use his essence power for this spell. They said it was quite easy and any constellation could do it. Then the main character used the eye of Sauron. After looking at the captain, it immediately revealed the essence of him. If Randy internalized this ability, who could give out much more information? This was a skill Randy could also train. After a long journey, the dungeon was cleared. The joy on the hunters' faces was very visible, for they wanted to return home to the land faster. The dungeon would soon close. Randy was very happy that he was finally heading to the land. At this time on the land of the Mojave Desert, Nevada, the group of hunters couldn't make it to the dungeon. A great storm appeared. It was seen that this storm had made a constellation. But out of this storm came Randy and his friends. He looked up at the sky and sighed hard. I'm finally home, said Randy. The dungeon mirrors the demonic illusions that Hans's hunters in the Mojave cleaned out. This was his final rank. It was a rank. The captain was very angry because he thought he deserved better. He said it wasn't fair because there were thousands of zombies. He said the rank of a dungeon was determined by the strength of the boss. They learned their numbers when they tested them, so he was given a rank of C instead of F. Since they didn't know about King Gulai Taruna on Earth, they didn't realize they could survive in a rank a dungeon. It turned out the captain was royalty. They called him Prince Parker of the group, and Randy wondered why there were so many paparazzi. It looked like his friend was a star. The goblin was quite surprised that the man was royalty, but you couldn't tell. Randy, lying on the couch, said a real king wouldn't be happy with him. Even though Randy wasn't that good at English, somehow they understood what it said. At this point, Lava's Kitten says that Constellation Eye can see through lower entities, and adds that it would be strange if the Constellation couldn't understand the language of mortals. At that moment, the doctor comes in and says the examination is complete. Randy is perfectly healthy. The doctor said she'd never seen such a perfect body. It was as if God had given Randy such a body. The doctor was very surprised. Randy's mental health seemed to be excellent, too. The doctor said that 30 years would be a difficult rehabilitation. If Randy wanted to, he could move to another country, and they would help him. He smiled sweetly and said he'd think about it. At that moment, a man came up to the goblin in a human body and told him not to worry if he lost his memory. He promised that the American government would help him regain his memory. Well, the goblin told them the same thing, that he refused and he would follow Mr. Randy. The journalist asked him what was going on in the abyss, why he was so attached to him. The guy laughed and replied, how would he know? Because when they met, he had already lost his memory. Randy wasn't going to tell the whole truth, so they decided to make up a hoax. He didn't want to reveal to people that he was a constellation. The reporter suspected it was because of the first person he met after losing his memory. The reporter asked Randy if he had ever considered moving to another country. They urged him to move to America. They said there was no better country for a hunter than America. But Randy was totally against it. He always said he'd think about it, but he realized he'd never leave. The four journalists started whispering behind Randy's back. They were curious to know more and more about him. He was the first person who had been there for 30 years. The goblin told Randy that with his magic, he could easily overhear them. Randy agreed. He was curious about what they were discussing. Randy heard what they were talking about. They wanted to force him to move to America. They had a plan to give him a lot of money and buy him an expensive house. They thought it would work. They wanted to send a spy to him so other countries wouldn't lure him to another country. Goblin asked Randy if I could get rid of them, but Randy immediately calmed him down and told him not to make life so difficult. Randy wanted to get a hunter's green card and to get a hunter's green card. The returnee had to go through a lot of procedures. The professor told Randy that he would now change the amount of his mana. He asked him to pour his mana into the crystal ball. When Randy did, the crystal ball just burst. The professor couldn't believe his eyes because it was the first time he had ever seen such a thing. After the ball burst, the protagonist said he still had a lot of mana left. Randy turned to the professor and said he needed to improve his rank beyond 30 years ago. The bow crystal ball, created to measure mana, contains many times more mana than a normal hunter has. A lot of hunters couldn't handle this orb, because when a hunter puts mana into it, the color of the orb changes to show his rank. Randy said he wasn't used to holding back, but he had his own reasons for using all the power. The girl realized that he did it on purpose. She was worried that he didn't overdo it so that he wouldn't be noticed by other constellations, because Earth is different from the abyss. It has its own rules. 
The protagonist could easily find strong opponents in the abyss, but you can't do that on Earth. Randy wanted to get a rank A because no one had ever gotten a rank A in martial arts. If he wanted to get a hero rank, he should raise his rank at every opportunity. The protagonist wanted to see what rank he had gotten. He was very surprised to see that he was still rank C. He was even more surprised that the card said his age was 57. Even though Randy wasn't aging a bit in the abyss, he was still 28. The captain of the hunters came up to them. He said that Randy had saved his life. Now he had to repay him for it. He asked them if they could stay on the land after 30 years of absence. He wanted to take them home and told them to feel free to stay as long as they wanted. They agreed because they had no other choice. They got into a luxury limousine and drove home. Randy asked Richard when he was going to give away all his savings. Richard didn't expect such a question. He couldn't understand what he was talking about. Randy smiled and said he heard him say he would give away all the jewelry if someone asked him. Well, it was all a joke. On the way home, a limo crashed into a Lamborghini. Randy was immediately worried that maybe an evil constellation had found out he was on Earth. But it was unlikely the constellation would come alone to fight him alone. When they got out of the car, they saw a man with glasses. Randy and Goblin immediately sensed that he was different. He was an unusual man. It turned out to be a dragon. Richard immediately started to panic. It was obvious that this was a famous person. Well, Randy didn't realize who he was or who he was. He came up to Randy, didn't tell him he knew him. They'd known each other a long time. Then Randy recognized him. It was his former boss who had encouraged him in his endeavors. Richard's guards were all amazed because his boss was a star. They called him a dragon, for he was a hunter of rank. Then Randy heard from the guards that he was one of the strongest hunters on this earth. And he got married last week. It was his 19th marriage. He couldn't believe his boss had grown so much in hunter knowledge. Randy remembered him urging him not to go after monsters a rank above their strength. Let's go back to 2011, when evil constellations simultaneously invaded the world. Back then, they were called the Soul Scourge. Every hunter fought against the monsters, and the head of the Invincible Huang clan was also among them. Thanks to the efforts of these hunters, South Korea was able to resist the invasion. After this incident, they were called heroes. The government also called them heroes to the world, but they received nothing but the title. And after this incident, he moved from Korea to America. After all, their hunters were treated much better and paid more. He got good support, caught some monsters, started a company, and appeared on TV a couple times. And that's how he became a superstar. The boss said Randy hadn't changed a bit. He was still just as quiet. He remembered the letter Randy left before he went into the abyss. And after that, he disappeared for 30 years. Some people started saying that Randy was dead and should be reported dead because no one had ever come back from the abyss before. The boss said they even held a memorial ceremony in Randy's honor. They were very surprised to see his name on the list of those who had returned from the abyss. Then the boss turned to Richard and asked him why they were riding in his car. Richard replied that he just wanted to pay him for saving his life. The boss took him gently by the head and said he thought he was taking them to some estate to tear them apart or something. Just think what a grateful reason that would be. Randy looked around at the city, and it looked like it had been 30 years because there were a lot of cars flying around. This town was Los Angeles. After his brother arrived, hunters came here hungry for fortune and glory. Clans of hunters, hunters who want to be part of those clans, and hunters who want to do business with hunters. This place became a hunter town. And when the boss came to the States, he asked for immediate reports on who came back from the abyss. If they missed any, he'd move to another country. Randy looked out the window and saw that there were a lot of people outside. He wondered why there were so many of them. The boss said they were waiting their turn to meet him. Randy didn't understand why they were there. He said the people wanted to ask him for a chance and said he would explain it to Randy later. Randy was very surprised to see that there were pandas in his house. The boss said he got them from the Chinese government. One of his employees thought it was too much. But the boss didn't bother with him. He asked him his name and then fired him. When Randy saw this, he was shocked. He said his boss had turned into a shitty person. The boss asked why. Randy didn't understand how you could fire a man for one mistake. But the boss didn't agree with him because he was paying him a lot of money. Then the boss called his secretary. He asked him how long he had been working here and how much he had earned. The secretary said he'd been working here two weeks and made $230,000. But Randy didn't agree with him. He said it wasn't about the paycheck. After all, he had treated them badly. The boss said he warned them when he hired them because they get the highest paycheck. If they make a mistake, he fires them right away. Randy said that Hyung, as the former head of his clan, should be a role model. One of the boss's assistants gave a short talk about the events on Earth that happened in the last 30 years. She talked for over 30 minutes. 
Then Randy learned that evil constellations had taken over China, North Korea, Central Europe, South America, and Mexico. Because the evil constellation invasion of North Asia was May 2012. And South Korea, where Randy was born, was not occupied. In fact, it was one of the countries that handled the invasion well. But afterward, many Koreans left the country. Their immigration played into America's hands. Randy asked about the head of the clan. He wondered when he left Korea. Randy wondered what his boss had been through. After all, women had always despised him before, and he was hesitant to go to the dungeon. Well, after living to be 70 and having 19 marriages, he's a rank dragon and swimming in money. Then Lava Kitty suggested that Randy make him his avatar, but he was hesitant, for he didn't really trust this boss. Randy started thinking about how he was going to tell him, because it seemed really weird. Randy thought that if he explained it well, the boss would understand. But the main character decided that he would try to take him on as an avatar. Vitya, the head of the clan, wouldn't give up and had been looking for him for all 30 years. Randy read him as a trustworthy man, so he didn't really want the boss to get involved in constellation business. The next day, he and the boss went to the gaming gym. After that, the boss used magic. The lava kitten was very surprised and said that it is the magic of the other side of the world because this magic is popular among the constellations. Mortals don't know how to use it. The boss said that on the other side of the world, if Randy got hurt in battle, nothing would happen to him in real life. It's like an incredibly immersive game. Constellation used this kind of magic to train their avatars. Randy asked boss how he learned about this magic. Randy thought he learned it from Constellation, but the boss replied that it was a very common magic. Then the boss thought about it and said that maybe the Constellation had taught it to someone. The protagonist was very surprised. For such a military training ground, Earth Hunters are very well prepared. Well, the boss corrected him immediately. He said that this training ground is more for sport. A lot of hunters appeared on the hologram. It was called a hunting sport. They called it the Six Star League, a game where six hunters battle it out against another team. Of course, this game has a lot of rules, killing monsters, time attack, and death fights. Randy wanted to try his hand at this game. The program asked Randy to limit his power. Otherwise, the other side of the world might collapse. Randy realized that it was human magic and it was not strong enough for the constellations. Randy was surprised because after they limited his power, he felt like he was strapped to something heavy. The boy realized that his power was increasing while he was fighting the limited powers on the other side of the world. The kitten said it was a good opportunity. The other constellations can't watch him when he's in the dungeon on the other side of the world. However, he could still use the power of essence if he wished. But Randy still wasn't 100% sure if he should reveal Hyuna and make him his avatar. Because as Randy had said earlier, he didn't want to interfere with someone's peaceful fate. And it's not Randy's style to be in charge of avatars to begin with. Kitten said if he fights a constellation, there will come a time when he'll need avatars. It's pretty rare for a constellation to fight alone. Randy said that the magic of the other side of the world makes hunter training look much more realistic. But the boss again said it's not training. It's a sport that's the best and most popular sport on earth. Then Randy realized they weren't doing it to train. They were doing it for fun. The sport evolved from a competition where hunters fight one-on-one. -on -one. Most people love the sport. Randy was confused. All he could think about before was the crisis on earth. He kept practicing and worrying that he wouldn't make it. Worried and kept looking for a way back. Then Randy said that the hunters on earth had become sports stars. Well, then Kitty said that Raid had to learn that constellations are known in SSL and WCHO Cho. Randy may not realize it because he didn't have avatars, but for constellations with avatars, it's like indirect warfare. Probably the spread of magic, the other side of peace on earth, somehow mediated warfare. Then Randy had a thought. If they're doing this, maybe they're spreading magic on purpose in order to find new avatars. And because of this game, very few hunters go underground. Then Randy asked the boss why people become hunters if they don't go to the dungeon. The boss said it was for the money and the glory. If a man likes a sport, he can try it. With a little success, he'll make more money than he'll ever be able to spend. Everybody lined up in front of the boss's house wanting a chance. Then the boss said enough talk and asked Randy why he went to the abyss. He thought he'd been cheated. Then Randy said before he explained everything he wanted to ask a favor of the boss. Randy asked him to raise the limit of magic power on the other side of the world. After all, he was sick of the limit. Then the boss shouted that it was a room for hunters a rank. Randy replied that he was a rank plus. His skills couldn't be properly evaluated. Randy said he broke a measuring device, but that wasn't enough to get him promoted. The boss was shocked to hear this. He noticed how Randy had changed a lot. 
The boss said they'd been bribed and he'd help bring justice. The boss noticed Randy was uncomfortable. He realized Randy had become really strong. Then Randy told him the whole truth why he went to the abyss. He said he went there to protect the earth. Then Randy told him the whole story of his journey into the abyss. Then the boss realized that he had been hanging around and became a constellation. And now he was back here to protect the earth. Boss came up to him and started saying he wouldn't believe it. He read that it's impossible for a man to become a constellation. Then Randy said he'd prove it to him and show him what he could do. Then the boss realized that's why Randy asked him to raise the power limit here. Then Hyung was going to spar with Randy. He was curious to see what he could do. The boss was not weak because when he died, he gained a rank A skill and activated a level up through death. The boss jumped up and was about to attack Randy. Randy noticed that tattoos were starting to appear on his body, called artifact tattoos. Then the boss attacked him with a magic missile technique. Purple beams started flying around the boss. But Randy was calm. He didn't need to dodge. He concentrated a small energy in just one finger. That beam flew right over his head. The protagonist did it on purpose so he wouldn't kill his comrade. Then the boss realized he wasn't weak, but he didn't realize Randy's strength yet. He knew he had to make his opponent focus on defense by attacking before they did. Then boss used the sixth circle magic technique of Lava Path. Lava appeared around him. Randy was surprised by his skills and asked him when did he learn it. But boss thought he was looking down on him, didn't want to put him in his place. Then he made a straightforward attack and attacked him head on, shooting him with his red ray. Randy noticed he was using six circle magic again. Then Randy used his shield technique. Boss's attack didn't even come close to penetrating Randy's shield. There was a big difference in power class. Then the boss shouted something skill in China. A false rumor started to spread. Randy asked him what he meant. The boss replied that there are viral fake videos with similar skills as Randy's. The protagonist then remembered his idol master, Lee. He had not yet fully recovered from the fact that his idol was a cheat and a con artist. Randy looked at his hand and noticed that he had little energy left after the first use of the energy shield. I guess it was unavoidable since Randy's power was limited. Randy needed to control his power so that he wouldn't destroy the world back. After all, it had been a long time since he had fought as a human. Then the protagonist promised himself that he would maximize his effectiveness. He began to control his energy into one small ball. He concentrated it in one hand and threw it at the boss. The boss realized that things were bad and he didn't have enough speed to dodge. So he used a quick teleportation technique. But he didn't have time to teleport. His magic was destroyed by a powerful aura. The boss took damage from the hit. He was very surprised by Randy's power. He didn't understand how his skill could be used so quickly. After that, Hyung decided to strengthen his body with magic. His body started to be covered with pink lightning. But Randy was very fast for him. He grabbed his right arm and knocked him to the ground. Then Randy said to him, Are you trying to go into a melee against someone who uses martial arts? He immediately started making excuses for himself, saying he was confused because he had never fought a martial artist before. After the fight, Hyun held his right hand and said that Randy had reached the highest level of martial arts. Randy told him that he had surpassed that level. After all, he has the supreme level. And if you go one step further, you can go beyond mortality. Then Hyung fully believed he was a constellation because he thought it was very ridiculous of him. Then he asked him what Randy wanted from him. Randy said that he originally wanted to ask for help. Then he began his explanation. Although the constellations have agreed to a truce, the treaty is only temporary, for new constellations could emerge from the abyss at any time, and the constellations currently in a state of truce. They may be plotting to take over the land behind our backs, because the other constellations already have many servants on Earth, and they're well known. On the other hand, Randy had to start from scratch, so he thought it was a disadvantageous proposition. Everything replied that the youngest of the clan had been protecting the land of the abyss for 10,000 years, and he was trying to act cool because he was older. Hyung then slammed his fist on the ground and said he'd be worried about Randy. Then he asked him what he meant when he said he wasn't going to ask for his help. Randy said that Hyung was living his life so he didn't want to get him into trouble. He got angry when he said that. He yelled that he'd help him and he was in a bad position not to accept his help. Hyung didn't want the man he knew to be dragged into a battle between constellations, but he realized that Randy wouldn't back down. The next day they sat in a cafe and discussed the future from Earth. Hyung said that in his whole life, he never thought he'd make a pact with a constellation. He realized that to serve under a constellation, it meant selling his soul to them. Hen asked Randy, If he makes this pact, won't every action of his clan be monitored? Randy replied he wouldn't do that if he wanted to. Randy thought of a plan. The plan was to first hide the fact that he was a constellation. 
Then Hyung realized that he had to hide his power as well as the constellations so they wouldn't be burned. Randy said that anyway. He is going to continue to increase the number of servants while hiding the fact that he is a constellation. He said he would need servants when he encounters other constellations. Hyung was already setting himself up for the battle. He wasn't scared at all about how hard the battle would be, even if it was against a constellation. Randy said that the magic that is often used in sports is called alternate universe. It's also used by constellations. After all, it was quite strange that people participating in hunter competitions were using this magic. The reason why this magic is so widespread is because the constellations fight in this way. Because the servants of the constellations are sent to fight each other. There's a good chance that the constellations intended to make it a hunter-hunter competition so that they could more easily choose servants based on their level of effectiveness. But Goblin disagreed with Randy. He thought it was speculation. He didn't believe a constellation could look at such nonsense. Even now, most of the constellations were agonizing with boredom. In any case, Hyung realized that if the meadow were to be fought like the hunters on Earth, it could be a great advantage for him, since he had been in such battles. Randy thought it would be important to increase the servants. He should be the envy of the servants. Hyung said he knew what he was talking about. Randy had to become famous as a hunter. He should be the strongest hunter. After all, when the A-class dungeon opens, this is the type of hunter that the country's government will be begging for help. Even though people claim that their country's hunter is the strongest, they know deep down which hunter is the strongest. Then he said he understood and thought Randy certainly had the necessary abilities. But the problem is how they'll show them to the world. Hyung said he knows how many groups he's responsible for, and it's not just one clan. All the cores and items in the dungeons are bought by the company, as well as the extra support with bonuses and so on. As long as Hyun's servants prove their loyalty, they will reward you generously. That's why people want to get into this clan all the time. Well, Randy didn't understand why he was telling him to join the clan, if he can do it without him. Then Hyung slammed his fist hard on the table and yelled that Randy wanted to hide the fact that he is a constellation. He needs to hide his power properly. Randy said that he was right, but Randy decided to limit his power to the maximum level. So as long as he can control his energy, he should be fine. Hyung said he would send him to a clan that accepts the best candidates, so he could look for some nuggets there. After all, Randy could take them as servants if they proved useful enough. Randy agreed and said it was a good idea. But Randy was afraid they would be against it, since few people like hunters who use martial arts. Hyung Tai also agreed that they wouldn't like it at all. Because once they reach a class, they will become strategic weapons that will rule the state. Only those who have achieved high performance can be recognized as S-Class. If you think about it that way, it's pretty amazing. After all, less than 10 people around the world have been honored with this title. Hyung pointed his finger at Randy and said he wanted to get started and do his best. They were going to go to the qualifying round. This qualifying round was called Woos. Hyung said that a lot of hunters would be attending, and Randy would have to qualify and win to be accepted as a pro in the league. He advised him to go to the preliminary round in a week, and he'd have to get settled in here. Then Hyung gave him a smartphone, because a lot has changed in the last 30 years. Randy picked up the smartphone and couldn't figure out how to use it. Randy walked by the arena. The arena was very big and had a blue ball at the top. Randy immediately realized it was the new qualifying round. At that time, one of the hunters came out near them. He was driving a gold sports car. Randy realized the hunters hadn't changed a bit. He wondered if the man who won the tournament would turn pro. One of the guards said that it was the qualifying rounds for the S-Class League. Well, there would be a lot of D and E-Class hunters here, too. After all, they always have other options. So he told Randy not to worry and to see this as a rewarding experience. The guard didn't know Randy's full strength yet. At this time, Odagon was having fun on his phone and playing games. He was interested in learning what this thing was. Randy said he had stopped playing those games. He said he would be back soon. He needed to look at the building. Randy watched his head for hours because he realized it would take all day. He was interested in competing with the other hunters. The main character went into the tournament room of the hall. There were a lot of reporters, TV people, and YouTubers. Randy walked into the center of the building. He entered the virtual world. He realized that he had to keep his power under control or the virtual world would be destroyed. The protagonist began to concentrate his energy in his hands. He realized that after a while his first fight would begin. He didn't need to overdo it to keep his opponent alive. He successfully entered the virtual world. His strength and agility were limited. Randy hoped to use his fist of energy within certain limits. If he fought in the virtual world with limited strength, his existential and strength would increase, and then he could use various other techniques. 
but Randy was in anticipation. The harder it was for him, the more his strength increased, and it was working well. His opponent was twice as big as he was physically. It was obvious that he was very aggressive against him. He was ready to stomp Randy in the fight. His opponent said he'd destroy him. He had to run away so he wouldn't kill him. At that moment, the referee intervened and yelled that they'd be disqualified if the fight started before the whistle blew. His opponent found out that his opponent was a martial arts master. He was a bit surprised because it was the first time he would be fighting against a martial arts master. He had always fought only against mages. His opponent immediately came up with a plan for the fight. He was going to keep a distance between them, use the magic of the second circle of steaming, and then use the amplification of the magic missile. He hoped that Randy didn't know that he had passive skill-guided missiles. The fight had just started when Randy's fist was already near his opponent's face. It was obvious that Randy was faster than him, and he punched him in the face so hard that he flew 10 meters away. The audience was shocked because it was very fast and very powerful. They didn't expect Randy to win. The match was over. Randy won after five seconds. Randy thought it would be much harder. He was very disappointed in his opponent. The referee raised Randy's hand and his opponent was carried out on the decks. It was a good day for him. As Randy was having a cup of tea and relaxing in his dressing room, a man approached him and wanted to tell him important things. He said that Randy was very different from the hunters of today, and he was very impressed with him. The man said that most of the hunters of yesteryear were no match for Randy. You couldn't call them hunters in a real fight. Randy answered that he had thought so at first, but now it seemed to him that it wasn't so bad. After all, what difference does it make where you train if the strength is the same in the end? The man then asked Randy if he knew why he was here. Randy replied that he was a scout and had come to recruit him for his team. The man replied that he was absolutely right and wanted to ask Randy to join the Ambitus clan. Randy said it was the first time he had ever heard of such a clan. After all, he was a returnee from the Abyss, and not much time had passed since his return. Randy wouldn't have heard of him, but the man stood his ground he said he must have, which made Randy laborious to get his bearings, that he was worried about what to do next and which team to join, but he didn't even have to worry about that because their plan promised to help it all. They promised to guarantee a one-and-a-half-man share with a percentage of the raids. The man also promised that he would provide great support and he would be personally trained in magic by top-level hunters. But the protagonist was against it because he was used to martial arts only. The man didn't know what to say next. He said that Randy would be able to go to the dungeon together and provide growth, thus gaining new skills. But Randy smiled affectionately and said that he would look for a clan with martial arts users. The man said he in no way wanted to downplay his potential, but he thought Randy was still a rank-up hunter. Rank advancement is not such a simple matter. The man said that Randy would regret it because their clan is the best. Randy wondered why he'd regret it. He wondered how much they would pay him and why they decided to come to him right away since he had only fought his first fight. The man said that was the strength of their clan. He said it was courage. Well, Randy thought it was more of a trick than courage. The man waved his hands and asked anxiously what kind of trick. Randy said that, for example, the man had gotten some information on him beforehand. That's been done a lot in the past. The main one was to keep the newbie hunters for himself by bribing the appraiser. The secretary came in and told Randy to get ready for his next fight. The man said he'd support him in his next fight too. Randy was warming up and thinking how he would fight his next opponent. He didn't want to reveal his full strength yet. Randy decided to show what he could do first. He was itching for a fight. Before he went in, Randy decided to tap into 90% of his inner speed power and limited the power of martial arts. His true power is steadily increasing, but his speed is too slow. Lava Kitten thinks this is nonsense and asks what kind of speed he wants. He said a good solution would be to recruit avatars and prepare a constellation temple, or to increase the number of worshippers. It was almost starting. The judge was spreading his arms and telling the rules of the competition. Randy decided to test his level with his eye. He saw the essence of his opponent. His level was 81, strength 155, agility 80, stamina 68, mana 100, intelligence 63. His opponent's name was Gregory Martinez. He was close to ranked, specialized in close combat. Only Randy didn't understand why he needed a bow in close combat. As the fight began, Martinez immediately drew his bow and started shooting. As he raised his bow, Randy was already underneath him and hit Martinez. His opponent flew 10 meters away from the blow. Martinez is trying to figure out how he got that kind of speed. Martinez got angry and started to save energy. His mom was red in color. He decided to start right away with his melee trumps. He attacked Randy with his strongest attack. 
This attack was called the Thousand Fist Attack. All the spectators of the fight were shocked. They thought that after this technique, Randy would be finished. After all, this is the technique of Shah's martial arts user. But a close fight with Martinez is very dangerous. But it didn't work for Randy. He hit Martinez and he flew to the edge of the arena. The reporters thought he was a monster because he had already beaten two hunters with one punch. A man said he had to sign Randy to a contract any way he could. One of the men said that if you think about it, he's finished all his fights with one punch. The other man added that this is true because these are qualifiers from Randy. But it's still not often you see all the fights end with one punch. Randy was on TV. He was a revelation. Everybody was talking about him. One of the journalists said that Randy was very good, but he read that he was not the strongest hunter on the planet Earth. There are much stronger hunters than him among the contestants. He believed that Hunter Eugene was much stronger. He specializes in one-on-one -on -one combat. That's why he doesn't go on raids, but only against humans. The protagonist kept beating his opponents one by one. Even Eugene lost to him, even though he was considered a real contender for Randy. The audience thought Randy was crazy in a good way, because they had never seen a hunter defeat a hunter so easily, not even Eugene. Now it was time for the finals, and his opponent's name was Laurels from the Rainbow Clan. He thought Randy's moves were obvious, and it would be an easy win for him. Well, his opponent lost in literally a matter of seconds. He couldn't block his punches because they were powerful and fast. The judge raised Randy's hand and said he was the winner of the ranked qualifier. Randy looked up and thought it was a total cakewalk for him. People couldn't believe that a martial arts user had beaten a mage. To them, it was beyond reason. In song alone, he's been practicing martial arts for about 10,000 years. His level can determine the tactics of the enemy just by his breath. Even hunters considered experts in single combat, for Randy was a mere trifle. The protagonist stood on a pedestal and raised the trophy up, but to him it was just a small thing. Randy walked the red carpet and was immediately surrounded by people asking questions and taking pictures. Randy wanted to win the competition over by any means necessary, but he noticed the stairs. They weren't looking at him well. However, even if even in a qualifier with rank, well winning over all the competitors was a significant event. In the eyes of the constellations, Randy began to look like a true treasure. Randy realized he had been burned. He had to hide his power, but it was hard enough. One of the constellations was red. You could see from his face that he was very serious. He warned Randy to stay out of their business. The Kitten of Lava and Magma says that the contract on the Avatar has nothing to do with the agreement, so he can do whatever he wants. The warrior shrouded in madness, and Blood warns that he can attack a constellation without an agreement at any time. There's been a big skirmish between a constellation and a Magma Kitten, also a constellation. Even though it's only an exchange of messages, the pressure is simply murderous. The Kitten answered the warriors with such confidence because no one knew where his territory was. A warrior wrapped in madness and blood warns that he will never forget it and declares that he will avenge all his avatars. Randy overhears the whole conversation and says he's not going to sign a contract with a loser like that, so get out. Constellation of Madness told Randy he didn't know what he was talking about. He didn't know that all arrogant mortals are inevitable punishment. Randy replied that the Constellation of Madness could not even go on a rampage in front of the other constellations but still called himself a warrior wrapped in madness and blood. Randy reiterated again that he wasn't going to make a contract with him and asked him to get the hell out of here. The constellation of madness left and promised him revenge. Other constellations were impressed with Randy's courage, such as the constellation monk chasing glory and the constellation sweat and blood fighter. Randy said he didn't know if he'd ever do battle with this constellation. The kitten of lava and magma, impressed by the mortal's answer, gave him ten soul shards. The other constellations interrupted in shock. Randy asked him what he was doing and didn't understand what the kitten was doing it for. The kitten of lava and magma. Whispers in his ear that this is part of the strategy and he needs to accept it. Shards of soul among the constellations acts as currency. Now the kitten of lava and magma gave them to Randy on purpose to provoke the other constellations. On the one hand, Randy needed those crystals so the other constellations would look down on him. Randy thought that up to this point he'd only cared about power because he had never even thought about such things. Anyway, he thanked Lava's Kitten for that. Lava's Kitten said it was important, for he was a little surprised that Randy only realized it now. Hyung's servant comes in, he bows to him and says he didn't succeed. Hyung was furious and told them to get the damn appraiser alive. But at this point, there was an investigation to catch him. He grabbed his head and yelled out which clan the bastard was from because he could assume that the Ambitus plan was involved. The Ambitus clan, 
though considered a powerful clan, is no match. After all, a powerful clan is empowered by the government itself. While the Ambitus clan is just a newcomer who's just starting to gain power, everything began to wonder what this clan was up to against them. After all, they knew it was dangerous to deal with them in their current position, and there was a very clear provocation. He thought that the Ambitus clan was enlisting the support of another powerful clan that was trying to oppress them. At that moment, a girl comes in and tells Hyung that the results of the qualifying round are in. She said that Hunter Randy had won the preliminaries. The man bowed and said he'd call the appraiser right away to assign the new rank. And if there were any problems, he would take full responsibility. Hyung said that he was thinking right. He was very happy to hear that he was pleased. The next day, the rank evaluator came and said Randy had a B rank. Young didn't agree with him. He said the rank evaluator was blind and should give him a higher rank. But the evaluator disagreed with him and said he gave him a decent rank. Plus, he knew what martial arts users do in real combat. The man almost attacked the evaluator after saying that, but Randy stopped him. He told Young not to embarrass him. Then the protagonist whispered in his ear that he had to be careful because the constellation was starting to show a lot of interest in him. And there's nothing wrong with taking things slow. Hyung calmed down a bit. He scratched his head and said that in any case, a rank of B is good too. Hyung said he wanted to get him into the Arakos clan, but if he was ranked, he'd be looked down on. Randy said martial arts users even with a B rank would be ignored. Hyung then tapped Randy on the back and said it didn't matter at all. After all, they knew Randy was a thousand times stronger than them, and he would show them what he was all about. Hyung reached into his bag and said he had a nice weapon in his collection and he decided to give it to Randy, but Randy didn't understand why he wanted it. Randy said he didn't even know what he was getting him. Hyung said it would look so much cooler this way. He pulled out a very beautiful sword. You could see it was very sharp. It was called the Sacred Moon Sword. It had a strength of 450 and an attack power of 400. He could use the skills of burning vengeance and mana regeneration after slaying an enemy. Randy said it was much better than he expected. Well, isn't this a Chinese artifact of a rank? Hyung said it was given to him in China. Randy said that's what all thieves say, but Hyung refuted that and said he was telling the truth, that the Chinese government gave it to him as payment for his help. Randy still didn't believe it was a rank weapon. At the time, China was on the verge of annihilation because of the invasion of the evil constellations in the north. He discovered several extreme problem dungeons. And from there, three rank A monsters broke out. The first monster was Ubumi, the second monster was King Meihu, and the third monster was Baiji. Then Hyung went to help and received the gift of this. These three animals gave him strength. Then Hyung said they should forget about it because he wanted to introduce Randy to the manager. He said he already had a daughter. Randy couldn't believe it. He thought his daughter was his niece, even though they were about the same age, because Randy had been in the abyss for 30 years. The next day, Randy cooked a nice steak for the girl. He really liked cooking. She knew right away it was her favorite dish. It was Texas barbecue, brisket. Weighty pieces of meat marinated with seasonings and then smoked for a very long time. However, this spicy brisket turned out to be much more flavorful. The girl's name was Ain. Randy said the secret to the flavor was magic. There is actually a special magical flavor that cannot be compared to other flavors and aftertastes. Unlike the dishes, the meat that the Aina were given was abundant with magic. The Randy goblins looked at her and whispered because they didn't understand what was happening to her. Suddenly, she jumped up out of her chair and said Randy should become a chef because it was delicious. She suggested that Randy open a restaurant and she would be an investor. Randy was confused and said he liked Korean food better. When the food was gone, the girl suggested that they should get back to business and said she'd be Randy's manager and asked if he knew her duties. Randy replied something like overseeing schedules and movements, but the girl said a first-class manager is a little different. The girl said she knows what ability the hunter is at, what it takes to make him stronger. Analyzing all of that is part of her duties as a first-class manager. The girl said that she is a top class and that she liked the way Randy handled his fights with confidence. And she and her daddy Hyung thought they needed a real raid team. Then the girl got up from the table and said that Randy was very uninformed. I know that the government gave this vegetable garden to rich MPs. That's the way the world is now, said the girl. She went to the window and said that the Ikaros clan was full of nutcases, but their abilities are commensurate with the pay they get. If Randy was going to join her, he'd have to be trained to match them. After that, the girl gave her number in case Randy needed him to call. After the girl walked out the door, she thought, as her father Hyung had said that he looked too normal for a returnee from the abyss, and he had a very huge amount of self-confidence. 
she wanted to teach him so that he could resist magic users. After all, he would soon have to face the monsters from the B-Rank League. Well, the girl didn't know what Randy was capable of. The next day, Randy and the Goblin were working out at the gym. The Goblin said if anyone from the clan came after him, he'd take them down right away. But the protagonist said he didn't have to do that. If he wanted someone, he'd have to ask him first. After that, Randy wanted to do a test. He closed his eyes and concentrated on meditation. This meditation allowed one to connect to the broadcast of the constellations. For the sake of learning in advance the countless constellations he would encounter in the future. At this moment, Randy, who was the constellation invincible training master, wanted to challenge any constellation to a fight. Well, not one constellation decided to fight him. They all ignored him. Lava Kitten and Magma says only constellations not on the same level respond. A constellation fight is when two constellations each pick an avatar and compete. The loser pays the appropriate price. By all means, they should be on the same level. But the name of the training master isn't familiar to anyone. There is no reason to accept a fight from the constellations. What to take? The protagonist scratched his head and said he had nothing else to do but to make himself known and recruit avatars. Then Randy wondered why there was no news about the virtuous goddess of scales. Randy began to worry about her in case something might have happened to her. The next morning, this is the Ikaros clan training facility. The manager said there were individual training rooms and dormitories. Plus, he added that everyone has a different set of abilities and everyone trains differently. Anyway, he'd let them know if they needed it. Then Randy said he was going to the training room and asked where Goblin would be during that time. Well, Goblin had something to do. He showed him a toy he was going to play with. It was called Golden Escape, and the Goblin liked it a lot. Then the protagonist realized that he was really hooked on this game, but he wasn't really paying attention, and he wanted to get a jump start on his muscle strength training. Randy had just walked into the gym, and he saw a very muscular girl in front of him, and she was doing bench presses, and she had an incredible weight on the barbell. Randy got closer and noticed that the weight on that barbell was about five tons. He realized that this was a very strong close-range hunter. The girl noticed him and asked the guy if he cared about her since it was her first time seeing him. Randy smiled and said he was impressed with the girl's training. The girl smiled, saying she was very pleased for the compliment. She greeted the guy and said her name was Beth. When they shook hands, the girl pulled her hand away in fear. She was shocked because it was the first time she'd ever seen a man stronger than her. Then she realized that he was also a melee mage. Norma said he was a martial arts user. They are totally different things. Randy asked her if she was surprised. Beth said yes, how could she not be surprised? Because she didn't expect to meet a martial arts user of B rank. She wondered where Randy trained. The protagonist wondered if she was telling it like it is, because she was unlikely to believe him that he had been 30 years in the abyss. The girl realized that martial arts weren't so useless. After all, she thought she was capable of learning anything she could use. The girl was very determined, and she said she was willing to learn any sport. She showed Randy her fighting moves. Randy was quite surprised. Freddy said she could fight back zombies and monsters. Beth said she was a member of the Ranked League and Ranked 19th. But this was the first time Randy had heard of the League. The girl wanted to test the guy to see what he could do, so she told him to follow him. They arrived at the Hunter's Training Center, which was pretty big. There was a white-haired guy waiting for them. He was practicing and holding a bag. He asked the girl who the guy next to her was. The girl pointed at him and said he was a beginner martial arts user. He said his name was Anthony, but he thought they'd recognize Randy because he's a popular personality. So Randy said it was the first time he'd seen him. Anthony started telling us that he had cleared a dungeon called Siege of Akarach and set a new record for night raids and made it to rank B in no time. The girl said he came back from the abyss and couldn't know about him in any way. Then Anthony said there was nothing to be done about it and said he was the ruler of the clan. He invited Randy into his clan and said he had to obey him, and then all problems would be solved. Randy asked the girl if Anthony was a psycho because his behavior was very strange. The girl told him to drop it because he's always like that. They got in the ring and they were ready to fight. Randy noticed that the girl was eager to fight, and he wanted to teach her one thing so she wouldn't go near the martial artist. He attacked her with a very fast attack, but the girl blocked it with her sword. Then Ben started to fight very seriously. She then realized that martial arts are very dangerous. Randy was surprised that she was able to block his blow. He immediately realized that she had a great reaction. The protagonist cornered her and attacked her with powerful blows and fast punches. After all, he had read that no matter how fast the magic was, the girl was still inferior to a martial arts user. 
Ben decided to just spice it up with magic. She almost hit Randy. You could tell Randy was surprised. No one had ever hit him like that before. The protagonist realized she was a very good fighter and had a pretty good attack speed for a magic user. Randy immediately wanted to recruit her into the avatars. The girl wanted to use defensive energy. She had a lot of mana in her right hand. But Randy just punched her in the stomach. It was just a normal weak punch for him. He didn't want to overdo it so he wouldn't accidentally hurt her. Ben lay on his knees and asked how his punch went, because she was sure she had activated magic. Randy said he used a different force for the punch. It's different from strengthening muscles with magic. But the girl wouldn't give up and decided to attack again. The protagonist started to play with her. It was obvious that she didn't have the strength to continue the fight. He wanted to demonstrate his abilities so he could recruit this girl into the avatars. But Randy doubted she'd go for it the first time. The protagonist looked at her face and thought he'd overdone it with his attacks. But Ben liked it a lot and she wanted to continue the fight. But the main character attacked her one more time and she fell to the ground. So Randy asked her if she'd had enough. The girl said he had really good fighting strength, but she wanted to fight him again. The guy asked her, you're not going to fight until victory because she chose the wrong opponent. But the girl could barely stand, but she wanted to continue the fight. The protagonist started kneading his fists because he liked that kind of persistence. The other people in the gym were watching the fight with their mouths open. The girl was pathetic to look at. Her whole face was like a tomato, and she said she was done for the day. Randy got excited. He started telling her she was being weak because the fun is about to begin. But the girl screamed to be rescued from the psycho. Ben was lying on the couch, and she couldn't get up. She said she'd never been so tired in a sparring session. Randy said he hadn't had enough training, and he asked the girl if she was interested in martial arts. Beth said she wasn't because she was sure she could beat Randy with her own strength, and she promised herself she'd train harder and get stronger. Randy said that with martial arts she could remove her weaknesses. But the girl didn't want to hear about it because it was a matter of pride. She pointed her finger at him and said that pride didn't allow one to train with the enemy. And from that moment on, she considered Randy her enemy. It went without saying that they would say hello when they met, but she would no longer accept help from him. You could see by the look on Randy's face how surprised he was by this conversation. After saying that, the girl just turned and went about her business. Magma and Lava's kitten said they should have taken better care of their rival. But Randy disagreed, because to lose on purpose is humiliating. The next day, Icaro's training, which was a hall for practicing inside the imagination. There Randy met his old friend Richard. Richard was happy to see them. The main character asked him if he was joining the Icaro's clan too. Richard smiled and said it was just the way things were. Randy was a little surprised because Richard was from a rich family, and it was strange that their family didn't have a clan. When everyone was gathered, the clan's mentor came, a hunter of a rank. His name was Ernest. He said he hoped to find good hunters in his clan. Ernest asked the boys what the hunter's main weapon against the monster was, and Ernest answered that he himself was the main weapon, and that was the correct answer. Because the power of unshakable faith in oneself, without it, nothing would work. Because of the belief that he could become stronger, Randy also survived a long time in the abyss. One of the hunters approached Ernest and said that last year he had said different things. Ernest replied that believing in oneself is also considered a true answer, and his faith is sincere. Richard answered that it was teamwork, and it was also the right answer, because the hunter's weapon that can fight back against monsters, non-magi, and not objects. The most powerful weapon is unity. Even a ranked hunter won't go into a dungeon alone. Ernest concentrated mana in his hand and said, after all, even if he is awakened or has a high rank, people are naturally weaker than monsters. After all, no one knows what can happen in the dungeon. That's why you have to be prepared for anything. Then Ernest raised his right hand up and distributed his power to the other participants. Today was a pair training. Randy at this moment was looking at his friend Goblin Odagon. He was very happy to have him around. Then the protagonist noticed the guy who'd insulted him in the gym. He thought he was weird. This guy immediately turned to Krenda. He thought that Rent was afraid of him and said that he wouldn't worry, he wouldn't hurt him so much. The protagonist was shocked by such words and such arrogance. Randy thought to himself that he was a constellation and he should be paired with this weirdo. When Ernest had paired everyone up, he used the art of illusion at the highest level. After this technique, a purple hole appeared behind them. From this hole, a very scary monster began to emerge. This monster was called a wyvern. It was like a dragon, a strong monster defined as a B rank and above. You could see how the others were worried, but Randy didn't care because he had seen much scarier ones, and the goblin was playing his own game. Ernest noticed that the newcomers weren't even afraid, 
but he wasn't surprised because the chairman wouldn't recommend just anyone. Then Ernest ordered his animal to attack them and told them to duck. Most of the contestants were terrified. They realized they were too slow to dodge such a big monster. The blonde guy wasn't afraid either because he thought that despite his wide breathing range, his magic would allow him to dodge easily. Then this guy used a third level magic called Hashin's Acceleration. The protagonist realized that they were bound by magic and he was about to be dragged after him. It was very presumptuous. Then Randy hit him in the neck and knocked him out so he wouldn't be a burden to him. The mighty dragon fired his flame straight at Randy and the blonde, but the protagonist flew up and saved his life and the guys. The rest of the handlers were very surprised. Ernest's assistant asked if martial arts allowed for such speed. Ernest replied that they surpass magic in terms of speed and evasion, and this guy was the most outstanding martial arts user he had ever seen. Ernest thought it might be because of the influence of the abyss. Ernest thought that the power of his skills was incredible, regardless of rank. This kind of hunter is very strong in real combat. Then Ernest realized why the chairman liked him so much, at which point the blonde woke up and was very angry that Randy had hit him. But the main character said it was because he was too slow. Randy advised him to move even faster next time. The blonde man advised Randy that he would be at a disadvantage. He wanted to use magic and for the sake of it, he would just adjust to it. The blonde was very angry that Randy didn't listen to him. Beth was watching them from the side. She was wondering what they were doing. At that point, Ernest snapped his fingers and said, let's stop here for now. He liked the way most of the hunters worked out, especially Randy. Ernest then asked all those who had failed to complete the task to leave. Ernest said the next task would be an attack. Most of the hunters were very tortured. They didn't expect there would be no break. Randy started to feel that the attack would be down for he had a very good sense of distance. Then Randy grabbed the blonde man and flew up because he sensed something dangerous down below. And Randy was right because out from under the earth came a huge worm called the sand monster by the ancients, shaped like a rock eater. It always lurked in the ground and picking up a vibration, it would attack and devour its prey. It's a very terrifying predator that dwells in dungeons rank B and above. The other hunters were in a panic. They thought it was too tough for them. There was a look of great fear in their eyes. Then Ernest told them that if they couldn't even react to it, then they had no right to be called hunters, and advised them to focus on training instead of grumbling. But Randy had expected such a challenge in the Ascaros clan. He said it was to his liking. After the battle, only Randy and the human goblin could stand on their feet. Randy was approached by a B-rank hunter named Smallwood. He asked Randy how he knew the monster would come out from below. Randy replied that he knew by the sound. Smallwood was surprised, for he had not heard any sound. Thus continued the training of the clan. The next exercise was dodging in threes, then practicing resisting magic, restraining comrades caught in the effects of illusion magic. It was obvious that after these training sessions, most of them were very tired. The chief of the guys said that it was just a warm up and said that the next training is the dungeon sweep. The main character was surprised. He didn't believe that they would really enter the dungeon. But Smallwood said that in their time, the dungeon can be modeled in the underside of the world. Smallwood added that Randy was from the Abyss. He thought Randy had seen a lot of things in that world. Randy began to study his opponent's personality and noticed that he was also a melee fighter. When the protagonist saw his stats, he was quite a bit stronger than he thought. At that time, Randy said that you shouldn't judge people by their appearance. By the way, if he's going to recruit him as an avatar, skill information is needed. Smallwood was only happy about that because he didn't expect someone to teach him martial arts. Randy said that even if he taught him without effort, he wouldn't get anywhere. After all, out of 100 people, only one succeeds. Plus, to make it to the top of the class, it would take at least 100 years. Smallwood ran after Randy and asked him to teach him martial arts. Smallwood stopped Randy and said that he was a martial arts fan as a kid. Randy asked him why he didn't learn the arts back then. Smallwood looked at him and said that in his time, almost everyone who used martial arts of the first generation retired. There was nowhere to learn. Randy clenched his fists and said that was fine, and he agreed to be his mentor. Worth showing ability, and the prestige of the martial arts would rise by itself. The protagonist gave him a very strange exercise, and Smallwood was very uncomfortable, but the protagonist told him to be quiet and feel the flow in his body. Then Randy held his head on both sides and told him to hold the pose. When Randy asked him if magic users don't use mana to enhance the body, Smallwood replied that it was not through the body, but through the use of one's own mana, because they attracted magic from the outside. Randy was surprised because he didn't know how it really worked. Then he thought to start the circulation of his own mana. 
Randy put his hands on his back and told him to take his time anyway. If he couldn't control it, Randy would contain it with his own mana. Randy decided to take a chance since he thought mana and Nigun were similar, but luckily it worked out. Smallwood asked Randy if there is any other way. Randy said no, and this is the best way he knows in martial arts for a magic user. And that's okay, it's a big expense. It's all about getting the punch right. Smallwood hit the air with his right hand. From his hand, he got a lot of mana, and he got the skill of mana shrouded punch. This technique reinforces the mana strike replacing Nagun. The higher the user's level of understanding, the lower the chance of failure. Smallwood was pleased, after all. He didn't expect it to work. It felt completely different from a simple strike. Then Randy thought about using mana in martial arts, but his punching level was very low. It was a little while after the inner training room. Then the commander clapped his hands and said that the break was over and they had to get ready for the next training session. He looked at his logbook and said he would explain what training was in store for them. He said that the six of them would form a group and go into the dungeon. Your task is to clear it quickly and safely. The participants were excited. You could see on their faces that they wanted to tear everyone apart and pass the test. Randy could see the ferocity in their eyes. Then Smallwood said that in his clan, only the first team participated in real fights. If you show up at practice, Randy can get in too. Smallwood said he's not anchored to the first team, but he does participate in their competitions quite often. Then the main character looked at him and said that it's okay because you don't have to be ashamed of your weakness. Smallwood said he wasn't weak at all, and there was nothing to be ashamed of. Then Randy grabbed him by the shoulder and told him he was good. After all, he's making up for it with effort. At that point, the head snapped his fingers and said they were starting to formulate groups. Then he showed them a table and said that they would use it to find their group members and they should start practicing. Then, the protagonist noticed that they didn't overlap with the Odagon in any way. He wondered if they did it on purpose. The girl got in over her head and said that she was unlucky with the group and their group was doomed to failure. Randy said she was insulting him because she underestimated his strength. Then the commanders began to look at the contestants. The first contestant was Randy. He was a hunter who was still reeling from his return from the abyss, back from the abyss after 30 years. The next contestant was Richard Parker, third son of the Parker family. The next contestant is Anthony Schnander. This was a guy who had no team spirit whatsoever. And then there were two contestants, Smallwood and Hitaker. Elizabeth got in over her head and said she'd never been kicked off the first team, but this time she was sure they'd lose. But Anthony told her not to worry because he would protect her and that she should trust him. Then he said that Anthony was trying to take the lead. Randy didn't mind. He didn't care who was the leader of their team. Anthony said that they should obey him and follow his every order. The protagonist asked the girl what Anthony's abilities were. Elizabeth answered that he is a generalist, he likes long-distance fighting, and he excels at close-range fighting. Aside from his super weird personality, he has some pretty rare skills. Then the chief used his eye to look at his stats. After all, he wasn't planning on recruiting him as an avatar, but after the girl's words, he felt it was necessary to look at his stats. When Randy looked at his skills, he was quite surprised because he was strong. The protagonist thought he was a natural psycho because he was too narcissistic. For a hunter, using his abilities is also a kind of training. The more you use them, the better you get at them. The two skills that Anthony has, they are mental defense and narcissism, each above B rank. As Randy watched him, he realized that these skills could help him maintain his spiritual power. At that moment, one of the contestants came up. His name was Whitebacker. He was on the same team as them. But it was obvious from their reactions that they were treating him very badly. Randy asked the girl why they were acting that way. Elizabeth said that this guy only had money on his mind. He's the kind of guy who judges people based on personal gain. Then the guy said he's not such a bad person. It's all about giving and getting back. People just can't accept it. The guy read that he gives as much as he gets out of it. The main character said that sounds very reasonable. Smallwood threw up his hands and told the guy not to let himself be fooled. Smallwood pointed his finger at him and said that when he was on the first team, he treated him friendly. Well, as soon as he could get on the second team, he completely blocked him. The guy said that he was a B-class hunter and he was a highly sought-after healer and he suggested that everyone work together because it was good for him and everyone else. Randy was surprised and said he didn't need it. The protagonist said that he could fight just fine without all that stuff. After all, he thought that every hunter should need his abilities. The guy walked up to Randy and said that even if he uses martial arts, you should try his magic that will work on everyone. Randy said that he really didn't need it. 
You could see by the look on the guy's face that he was very unhappy. He thought that all hunters needed his abilities, and here he was, rejected and humiliated in front of everyone. The Whitecracker turned around and walked away thinking that Randy hadn't really adapted to Earth after his wanderings through the abyss. The guy thought that Randy would soon realize that he was missing a big opportunity. It was a while before the team descended into the dungeon that was called the Snake Trail Trial. The girl opened the map and said that the rules say that you have to clear it as fast as you can without disturbing the opposing team. Elizabeth then suggested that they need to make sure they have food and supplies for two weeks and then split up and go inside. But Anthony disagreed because he thought he should be able to focus on magic. The girl said if he didn't like something, he should just leave. Anthony took three steps forward and said he would stand in the front. Elizabeth started yelling at him. She thought he was talking nonsense because he could be ambushed and would be forced into close combat. The girl thought that she, as a close combat expert, should have been in the front instead of him. Elizabeth approached him and told him that he should obey her orders because it made a lot of sense. After all, she didn't think he was as good at close combat as she was. Then the guy turned to her and pointed his finger at her and said that he was better than her and not to be ashamed of it because she would be an incredible hunter if she could handle him. The girl could hardly contain herself. She wanted to hit him hard to send him flying, but she realized that they were a team and fighting was not an option. Anthony again said he would go first and that his partners could help him from the back. Randy ran forward, much to Anthony's surprise as he didn't know what he was doing. Ahead he met a monster stone chameleon. He was considered quite dangerous. But the protagonist destroyed this chameleon with just one hand. It was very easy for him. Randy looked back and told them to hurry up and start joining him. Anthony ran forward to overtake Randy, for he thought he was the commander and should be the strongest. Then he saw a chameleon in front of him. This chameleon was quite big and dangerous to him. He used the Hashan's acceleration technique to attack it faster from the back, but he couldn't succeed for he was outpaced by Randy. Then Randy pulled out a sword that was given to him by an old young friend. This sword was considered the national treasure of China. It was called the Heavenly Moon Sword. Randy changed the kind of spatial storage device obtained from the stone serpent and now carries it on his belt. In this way, he could reach any item he needed at any time. He picked up this sword then and thought he should try it with a faster sword. Anthony turned to him and shouted that it was his chameleon. Then the main character told him, shouldn't he save his strength for a stronger monster? You're our trump. Randy said it sarcastically, but Anthony took the word seriously, Anthony thought and said that Randy's logic was perfect. Anthony waved his arms and told Randy that he would deal with a monster stronger than Randy. The protagonist continued to crush the monsters one by one. It was very easy for him. Anthony was very unhappy because he couldn't keep up with Randy to kill the monsters. Then he held his head up and told himself that he was strong and he wouldn't lose. You didn't go up to Randy and tell him that from now on he'd be dead serious. And you promised to show Randy your ability 100%. Elizabeth was very unhappy with Randy and Anthony's actions. She thought they couldn't do whatever they wanted. There were traps everywhere, and they had to be careful. The girl thought it was only Anthony she should worry about, but they were both sick bastards in the girl's opinion. At that moment, the commander watched them from the conditions room. The partner asked Ernesto if he planned to permanently attach Anthony to the first group. Because objectively speaking, Anthony is pretty good in combat, the commander agreed, but he has cooperation problems. Every time he gets involved, Teamwork is completely lost. The guy said his growth has slowed down a lot lately. Obviously, he's not interested in training properly. But he's a hunter who would be worse off if he made the second team. Then Ernest said they'd have to observe them to draw a conclusion. If things continue as they are, he'll make a decision. Ernest approached the girl and asked what was wrong. The girl said it would be better if he saw it for himself. They saw that their teamwork is fully adjusted. Even Anthony calmed down a little and obeyed the commander. The main character said he would take the three monsters in front and the girls would give the monsters on the side. In this way, they divided the number of kills so that there would be no quarrels and everything would be fair. They killed these monsters in packs. Randy said that's not all they need to get even more prepared. Ken said the girls need to take care of the monsters because there are others coming. Elizabeth was angry that she was being given orders. She thought she knew everything so well. As Ernest watched this, he was shocked. After all, he didn't expect this team to work together. Elizabeth couldn't believe it either. She didn't expect to pass this test so steadily with such a group. The girl turned around and suggested that they rest for a while. After all, she thought they needed to regain their magical power. Stalwood thought that was a good idea and said that he and Whitaker would stand guard. But the protagonist shouted that there was no time to rest, 
for there were enemies everywhere and they had to prepare for battle. Anthony seconded his words and said they must hurry. The girl was surprised that he trusted someone else's words. Anthony approached Randy again and told him he would show him what he could do. Anthony told Randy that he doesn't need to be discouraged. Although you're not as impressive, you're pretty good, Anthony said. The protagonist sensed danger and fended off the attack with a right leg kick. Elizabeth was surprised because she couldn't see where the attack came from. Anthony began to mock her and said that this monster was called a stone gargoyle. Stone gargoyle. It has high stamina and attack power. The stone chameleon shaped like a devil. They are able to disguise themselves as stone, so this enemy can be a real pain in the ass. The protagonist said they have nothing to worry about, as they always attack when we're distracted. Ernest's crew watched this from the sidelines and were pretty surprised that Randy controls Anthony's character. Ernest said he had leadership qualities. No wonder the chairman recommended him so highly. But Ernest was upset that he was a martial artist and not a magician. The aide told Ernest that this group was moving too fast and it was quite dangerous. Well, the Armenians said that they knew what they were doing, and if they were destroyed, it would be a lesson to them. Ernest believed that luck was also, in a sense, an ability, and it's something you have to be able to wield. The Serpent's Path Trials, one of the dungeons I'm open to the public. This is the dungeon where 17 years ago, China invited a group of Class A hunters to raid. Although the monsters appeared there only B-Class, such a combination of monsters inside is very cruel. Removal is hard to cope. That's why it is an A-Class dungeon. At one point, the protagonist was attacked by a stone gargoyle. It was quite a quick attack. But the protagonist fended off its attack and killed it with one hit. When Ernest and his assistants watched this, they were quite surprised how he managed to deal with this monster so quickly. Ernest then thought that he might have fought them in the abyss, because the way Reggie reacted to her attack said that he had met them before. Ernest wondered how long he had been in the abyss. Elizabeth said it was a trap and said they should stop here to look around instead of pushing forward recklessly. Most people thought that was a good idea, for as long as they were open on all sides of the tracks, their situation would get too bad, and they'd just go back by the road. But Randy was against it because he said that this monster was too easy for him and they should move on, because this monster had a B-class. Elizabeth remembered Ernest's words to be destroyed also a type of training. After all, she thought that they would fail and not give until the end for they acted recklessly in Elizabeth's opinion. The protagonist made a tent and said that in the past, he had to make everything with his own hands. Then he turned back and noticed that everyone was looking at him very askew and asked why they were all looking at him like that. Then the girl took out a magic thing and said it was a new acquisition. The girl put it on the ground and said they would use it as a sentry. The protagonist said it wouldn't work on the stone gargoyles. Elizabeth agreed with him, but it would be better than just doing nothing. The White Cracker used a magic called Ignis Motion Detection, a circle formed in his hands. After this magic, a blue shield appeared that surrounded the tent. Whitaker said that magic to detect the movement of living beings is very useful. Then he asked the girl, isn't he useful in this situation? The girl replied that all these conversations started just because of the use of magic and that he started acting like Anthony was very arrogant. Whitaker smiled and said that he can heal, buff, and also set alarms for the camp. When it comes to non-combat situations, you really can't find a great hunter like me. Elizabeth replied that even if he says that, he's not exempt from being on duty. The boy got angry and told her who she thought he was because he didn't try to give up his duty. The girl took him for a money-grubbing idiot. Smallwood saw him as a bad guy who didn't think about anything but money. Anthony saw him as just plain trash. After saying that, Whitaker ran up to Randy and said that their words were too harsh and asked Randy if he thought so. Whitaker took Randy by the shoulder and said that his comrades were too harsh in their words. They were evil men who insulted their own comrades. Elizabeth and Smallwood were surprised that he acted that way. They thought that maybe he had realized Randy's value during today's hunt. For everyone involved realized who had played an important role today. The one who played the biggest role was Randy, who led the group in the vanguard a martial arts master who had returned from the abyss. Everyone was running low on food. Then Randy said he would cook them a stone chameleon. His comrades looked at him like he was crazy. They realized that he had been in the abyss for a long time, but it was very strange to them. At the same time in the instructor's room, they saw that another group was moving towards the center, and they realized that the gargoyles would be moving soon. They wondered if the team would be able to repel the gargoyle attack. The entire secret group was wiped out. Half of Agnes' team has also been wiped out. All survivors are retreating. Ernest said that it was too difficult for them, and they failed the mission. 
One of the assistants said that since some of the hunters are fleeing, the others will have a hard time now, especially this team. Then he noticed Randy's team and wondered what they were doing now. At this time, the main character was cooking a stone golem. He was cooking it on his golden skillet that the lava cat gave him because of joining the alliance. The girl said it looked pretty tasty. Stallwood thought they should all calm down since it only looked like that, but they were all curious to try his food. When Ernest cooked it, it looked pretty very tasty. He combined chameleon meat and rice, but the main character didn't say that he wasn't going to treat them to it. You could see from his team's reaction that they were very angry. Well, Randy added that they said the monster meat looked bad, so he just wanted to show them how it should be. Anthony took two steps forward and said he didn't say that. Pillar was behind him and was very angry because Anthony had said such a thing and many times. Then Anthony held his head up and said he had a right to eat it. He started sucking up to Randy and said he had a lot of respect for his abilities, since he read Randy as a strong hunter like him. The main character held out a plate of food and said, since he said so, he would give him some. You could see by the look on Anthony's face how hungry and excited he was for this food. When Anthony tasted it, who said that it was delicious and it was just yummy, Anthony felt that he had regained his magical power as he ate the food containing a large amount of magical energy. He was quite surprised that such a food quickly restored his magical power. The protagonist thought since the alternate world is a virtual world, even if he uses the ingredients, they just revolve around him. Then the protagonist wanted to try to use more ingredients and fry them with rice and meat. Then Elizabeth and Whitaker ran up to Pretzels and started saying that only Smallwood said that. And they didn't say that. Smallwood told them to be cursed because they said that too. Then the main character held out a plate of food and told them all to come to him and eat because Smallwood looked so miserable, so stop teasing him. The crew who were watching were surprised that they were eating a chameleon. They thought it was very abnormal. Ernest smiled and said it was unbelievable. The assistant asked him if we could stop them because this chameleon could be poisonous. Ernest told him that in such a case, they would not be able to eat it. If it was a bit poisonous, they would spit it out immediately. Obviously, he must have a rare skill that allowed him to cook a monster. The assistant then asked if he could have gotten this skill in the abyss due to the lack of food. Ernest replied that considering that the air without was full of mana, there was no particular need to eat anything. Then they realized that it was because he just wanted to eat. Although in the abyss, Randy didn't need it. The main character sensed that there were monsters around them and yelled to everyone that it was an ambush and everyone should wake up. Then Randy said that there are not only stone gargoyles here, but there are other different monsters as well. The protagonist sensed that a much bigger monster was coming. They were attacked by a huge number of stone gargoyles. They all started to surround the dungeon boss. When Ernest saw this, he couldn't believe his eyes. He knew they were intelligent monsters. He had read that Randy first had to realize that it would be hard for him to face them, for there was another monster called the Stone Hunter. It's a huge monster worm with powers on a whole other level. It passes through earth and rocks. Their diet consists of rocks. Well, this is a ferocious monster that also ruthlessly stalks hunters. Ernest thought it was the end for them. They were unlucky to be spotted by the Stone Hunter. Randy used a technique called celestial maneuvering. Clones started coming out of him. The protagonist began destroying the monsters one by one. Anthony didn't want to back down, so he decided to use a technique called high-speed ice bullet. But he didn't succeed, Randy yelled out that he had a monster down below. It was a stone hunter. The main character managed to grab Anthony and get him out of the monster's mouth. This monster was quite big. When Randy saw it, he noticed that it looked like his old friend, the stone serpent he met in the abyss. The stone serpent attacked them and spewed poison from its mouth. The protagonist jumped up and was in front of this monster. At this moment, Randy wondered if he should straighten it out without using his sword. At this moment, Randy used his sword and did a very large amount of damage to this monster in the neck area. The protagonist started attacking it from all sides. This snake couldn't keep track of Randy's speed and counter it with something. When the comrades were watching it, they all had their mouths open because it was quite powerful. Elizabeth said that he definitely didn't have the skill of a rank B hunter, but much more. Then Randy decided to finish him off with one blow and chopped the monster in two. Ernest couldn't believe his eyes. He realized that Randy's hunter wasn't just an untreated diamond. Ernest realized that Randy had reached his full potential. He couldn't believe that the chairman had been able to attract a good hunter like Randy. The next day in the Dragon Hyung building, Ernest showed up and it was clear he was determined. Still expecting to see him here, he asked how the guy he recommended was doing. Ernest replied that he should have said he had recruited an A-class hunter. Hyung was drinking tea and replied that if he had said that, he wouldn't have believed it. Ernest agreed with him, yet he felt that the government would later express displeasure about it. 
that they had not informed them that they had an A-class hunter with them. But Hyung didn't think so, because he thought it was their mistake to tell us. To realize the importance of something, people need to lose it. Ernest thought it would be a problem to get him recognized as an A-class hunter, but it was only a matter of time. They just needed to make sure he would show real results. Ernest asked if he would still be interested in working with them and being an A-class hunter, since there would be plenty of other companies that would want him. Hyung said he didn't have to worry about that because he'd take care of everything. He gave him a stern look and told Ernest to trust him because he knows everything. At this time, the lobby of the clan building, the members were looking at the lineup of the first team. In this team were Randy, Anthony, Elizabeth, Smallwood, Whitaker, and Richard. Some of the contestants were surprised that Randy had made it too because he was a martial artist and they weren't treated very well. This conversation was overheard by Anthony, who went up to them and told them that they were distant idiots because they called others weak because they were weak. I mean, how can a hunter be so prejudiced? One of the guys started to get mad at him. The other guy wanted to calm him down because they knew they couldn't handle them. Anthony turned around and said they were nothing. He thought his news opponent was very worthy and his name was Randy. The next day, the White Cracker started showing the town to Randy. He did this because of having been in the abyss for 30 years. They arrived in town at the Chino Town. It's a town popular with the black market. Randy was surprised that the government allows illegal trade. Whitaker replied that as long as they don't export to other countries, the government doesn't touch them. Organizations doing business in black markets do so legally. One of the perks is that you can easily buy questionable stuff. When they were picking out things for themselves near the counter, someone was following them. They wanted to avenge their master, for they had insulted him. Their master was a constellation of madness and blood warriors. It was his avatars who found Randy on Earth. After all the walking, Randy and Odegon bought a lot of food. Randy said it would all become the food we were sitting down to eat. Whitaker said he would definitely need it, since he knows how to cook monster meat. They came to the Castle of Magic. This building uses a lot of magic. At the entrance, they were already waiting for them. A guard greeted them. He recognized Whitaker and said he would take him inside. Whitaker said to rent clothes and change into them. Randy didn't understand why they had to change clothes. Whitaker said that after all, they need to learn the basic rules of decorum. There are also a few other rules here. You can't tell anyone outside. You can't say anything if you get caught. And lastly, you don't have to be inconvenienced. These rules must be followed by everyone. When they walked into the center of the building, they were all dressed nicely. Whitaker said that the auction would not start right away and they should play roulette to have fun. He bragged that he was an expert roulette player and had never lost before. Then Randy thought they were letting him win because he was an Icaros hunter. The guard was on the phone and said there were three Akaros hunters here. He was told to focus on their time of service, and orders were given for him to make sure things didn't go smoothly. He gave information about these three hunters. One of them debuted as a professional mercenary by the number of wins of the current preliminary tournament, and another was a martial arts master. Then he remembered about the Hua Sect Mountain running the illegal auction. He was a martial arts clan representing the Chinese martial arts. They kept their identity secret as the martial arts had become weaker recently. At this time, they can't help, but they are very eager to see the Icaros hunter who is a martial arts master. One of the guards told the other that maybe they should just ask the hunter what martial arts he has and what he uses. The other guard replied that he's a crazy idiot and that's bullshit because he'll know their agents. Plus, other people will know that this auction is being organized. Randy couldn't wait for the auction to start. He wondered what was in it. A couple of minutes later, it started. Whitaker told Randy to watch it carefully. During the auction, the spear sold for $50,000. Randy immediately checked the stats on this spear. It was called a Fetrin spear. It looks great, but it has low efficiency. Something like this for that much money. The next weapon was a small knife. Randy was very surprised, for after such a good spear, they slipped such a small knife. It was called the Flaming Thunder Dagger. Strength 100, attack 150, can be used with the subspace vault skill. Subspace summoning skill can be used. At that time, Randy thought that these skills were very good and they were very useful. The protagonist wanted to buy it. He read that he would need this dagger very much. He took out his card, the card Hyung gave him. Hyung gave him the card. Randy asked what it was. He said it's an unlimited black card. As long as Randy doesn't use the deposit from his clan, then he can use this card whenever he wants and buy himself something. Then Randy replied, that he didn't think he was going to buy anything. So Hyung took him by the shoulder and told him he was trying to look cool here. You want to shut me up to make yourself feel better. 
The protagonist didn't understand this behavior and said it's okay, and he'll take this card. And this dagger wasn't being offered very much money. Randy asked why this dagger was so cheap. Whitaker said it was just not a good item, since only people with perception in their eyes or similar skills come here. Then Randy said he would buy it. Whitaker didn't understand why he would buy it. There's a reason people don't want to buy it. He didn't understand what Randy was trying to accomplish. So Randy raised his hand and bid $8,000. No one else raised their hand and he bought the dagger. Whitaker didn't understand even if it was cheap. Why would you buy something like that? Randy replied that it's good to have something you can never forget how to use. But he still didn't understand where to use this dagger. At that moment, someone grabbed Randy's shoulder. The protagonist didn't realize who it was. The man in the cloak said that Randy couldn't live normally anymore after insulting the warrior of madness and blood. A very strong wind came up. It was all because of the mana. People didn't understand what was going on here. At that moment, the guards ran up and told them to stop right now or they would leave this place. But the man in the cloak only threw them off with energy. Randy noticed that he had risen to rank B and it seemed the warrior was not completely reckless, Randy thought. After all, he was trying to avenge what had happened before. The protagonist noticed that he was acting very arrogant while these people were hiding behind him. But Randy decided that he shouldn't make the first move, although he thought it was a very great opportunity for him. The protagonist threw out his jacket and pointed his finger at him and shouted that he demanded battles and constellations in the name of undefeated Avatarat training. And as a member of his family, he must deal with him. Odegon watched what Randy was doing, and he thought Randy was bluffing very well. But since the warrior had never heard the name of the Avatar of Training once he ignores him. But the protagonist kept bluffing and provoking. He said he was scared of a dual guess. He's just a real coward controlling his subordinates. And it worked. His, he said he'd accept his challenge to a battle of the constellations. Randy thought he'd better get out of here after that. The man said he had now sealed the place, and now his blood festival would begin. The protagonist smiled and said that he was the one who was now trapped. Odegon started using magic and said that he had to handle him first. Randy grabbed his shoulder and said he was grateful for his help, but leave everything to him. Odegon didn't understand why Randy was doing this. After that, Randy used his technique called the Heavenly Finger. After this attack, he stabbed his enemy through with his sword. When the guard was watching from the side, he was shocked because he had never seen such martial arts at such a high level. After this attack, Randy, the man was still alive and said he would take his blood. But these words did not scare Randy one bit, for he had seen much scarier enemies in his life. The power that Randy got from the nightmare demons is called the basics of absorption. It was obvious that after these words, the monster was a little nervous, because he did not expect Randy to be so strong. As Randy absorbed the energy, he blasted the monster into small pieces. His other partners were panicked because they had already realized how strong he was and they wanted to stop him fast. They decided to pounce on him and finish him off with a single attack. At this time, the warrior's subordinates lost their power, and they fell to the ground. The warrior descended to directly take hold of his minion. His face began to be covered in red fire. The warrior then gathered the splattered blood and increased his power. There was a lot of energy from him. The protagonist realized that he was bouncing between his subordinates and controlling them. He thought it was a bit greedy. Randy realized if he looked at the amount of magical power he had now, he must surpass even a rank a hunter. Randy realized if he stopped him here, he would just destroy himself. So it was best for Randy to dodge his attack. Then Randy activated the skill of suppress the strong, help the weak. If Randy faced the warrior's subordinate directly, without beating him, his strength would increase many times over. The warrior was already over Randy's head. Randy noticed that it was yours pretty quickly. The protagonist perfectly repelled his opponent's attack using a full counter skill. Then Randy passed his sword through his body again. The sword went through the life-important organ. After that, the warrior recognized his strength. Arendi was preparing for the constellation battle. The warrior summoned Randy as his family member, who would participate in the constellation battle. At that moment, the code of lava and magma tells Randy that everything is going according to plan. Randy asked his partners how he acted, or did he act too eagerly, for the battle after becoming a high-ranking constellation could make a strong conflict. Lava and Magma Code said everything was fine and nothing to worry about. The guard ran up to Randy and bowed to him and said he was sorry. He was ashamed that he missed someone of proper identification. It was a mistake on the part of the auction house. But the main character wasn't mad at him and said that he wouldn't spread this information, so they may not worry. Then the guard asked Randy to give him some time. It was about martial arts. He invited him to his office and gave him a cup of tea. 
Randy said that these days it was very difficult to meet someone who used martial arts. He was very interested in how the security guards started learning them. The protagonist apologized for asking. He was just happy to meet other martial artists. At that moment, an old grandfather without a left leg came out and asked Randy if he had heard of the Mount Hua sect. The protagonist replied that he had heard that it was some group that was popular in China about 30 years ago. Randy also remembered that his idol named Li Xiaowan lived there. Grandpa replied that he was Li Xiaowan. He thanked Randy for remembering him. The protagonist was just happy about the meeting. He took a pencil and a piece of paper and asked for his autograph. Li Xiaowan was very pleased that someone remembered him, so he happily signed the paper for Randy. Randy was also very happy because he had waited 10000 years to meet his idol and get his autograph. After the autograph, Randy asked if the Hunter Clan was part of the Hua Mountain sect. Xiuan replied that it was. Then Randy realized that they wanted to ask him for something. Li Xiuan said he wanted to learn martial arts from Randy. Then he remembered the story that China treated any hunter who refused to swear allegiance to them ruthlessly. Foot hunters left China using the Great Invasion as an excuse, dreaming of an independent life or seeking revenge. The Mount Hua sect is a clan made up of such hunters. Once upon a time, they decided that one day they would return, but it wasn't easy to do so. During the Great Invasion, the leader of the Hua Mountain sect, whose name was John, lost an arm and a leg. His skills gradually became weaker. After this story, Randy appeared. The elders who came to see what the commotion was about saw Randy's fight and couldn't believe their eyes. At that moment, Li Xiaowan ordered that Randy be asked to come here. Li Xiaowan said that Randy was one of the strongest fighters he'd ever seen. Then Randy remembered that the Abyss had told him that Li Xiaowan was a fake. And after that, the number of fighters dropped significantly. The guards also wondered what they had to do to reach the level Randy had reached. The Lava Cat told Randy to tell Randy it was true. Even if it isn't, they'll be interested in you. And Randy could appropriate them to be his avatars. Randy thought about what he said and said he was right and he needed to increase his avatar population. Then the protagonist admitted that he did help him in his training. After this truth, the amount of faith directed at avatar training increased. Randy felt a surge of strength and his existential power increased. At this moment, a yellow ball appeared in Randy's hand. Then Randy realized how the other factions were gaining strength. Li Xiaowan said he wasn't going to learn from Randy for free, and they were offering him their loyalty in exchange for him teaching them. Then Randy thought their loyalty, he wasn't sure their loyalty was what he wanted, and said their offer was too harsh, and asked them to think before they responded. After he said that, they all bowed to him and said they'd wait for his answer. The next day, Randy went to see his friend Hyung, who was in a big building. As soon as Randy walked in, Hyung immediately asked him if Randy had been able to adjust to the Akaros clan. Randy answered that he thought he had, and he had read that he had done pretty well. Randy said that there are a lot of weird guys there. Hyun said they're not weird, and it's probably Randy who's weird. Hyun said Randy used all his power to read his mind. Randy said that it wasn't necessary and he had it written all over his face. After that conversation, Randy cut to the chase and asked if he remembered the Hua Mountain sect. Hyun thought about it and replied that they used to be a martial arts clan in China a long time ago. They were destroyed during the first wave of chaos that occurred in China after the Great Invasion. The second time they were wiped out was when the Li and Savan had scuffled their rank. The scuffling of the rank, however, was probably ordered by the government. After all, he could not do it by his own efforts alone. Then Hyung asked why he was asking this and thought he was looking for Weather Savan, but Randy replied that he had met them and wanted to take them on as his disciples. Hyung was surprised because he thought they had broken up or died since there was no news about them. Randy said that as the owner of this town, his information gathering skills weren't that great. Hyun replied that he doesn't keep track of what's going on with the guys. Hyung pointed a finger at Randy and said that anyway, if he needed help from them, just ask. If they say no, just turn them away. After all, they knew what they were getting into when they asked you for a favor. There's no need to worry about them. After saying that, Randy said he was going to have a battle with a warrior. Hyung didn't expect it to start so quickly. He thought Randy was unprepared and didn't have enough helpers. Then Randy smiled and said, it's okay because this guy doesn't know he's a constellation and he's going to fight this battle himself. Hyung said you're a very smart move, but he suggested he was a little worried about Randy, but he knew he was fighting well, and he thought Randy would win. The next day, the All-Star Game began. The Avatar of Training accepted a request for a battle from a warrior. The events of the battle are being judged fairly. 
all constellations agree to the terms of a fair constellation battle. The Avatar of Training has offered the battle to himself, and offered the Avatar himself. His opponent was convinced that he would win 100% because he believed that the warrior announced the constellation battle to another constellation. The warrior is betting on the strength of his blood. If he wins, he gets the blood fortress. Randy covered his nose. He was disgusted by the land of orcs. The cat exclaims and says that this place must be pretty expensive. Dreams and Greed said that this place is a territory that only high-ranking constellations can possess. Randy couldn't believe something good territory, but he had nothing to offer as a bet. If Randy wanted to balance the bet, he should bet everything he had. The Avatar of Training bet on the Cardinals of Plague and Darkness, a creature that reverses time and a voice that lives from the abyss. Both sides agreed and the contract was finalized. If one loses, their existential power will increase. The cat says that all he has to do is win. The protagonist jokingly said that's what he would do. One of the constellations looked at the other constellation who was fighting the trend and said that he would definitely suffer if he became a subordinate of that constellation. Some of the subordinates prayed that the avatar of training would win. The battle of the constellations had begun. They would fight until one of them would admit defeat or die. Randy was already looking at his enemy and was ready to fight him at full strength. His opponent was a demon of contract and order. He watched the fight with great interest. The order demon made a surprise attack and attacked Randy from behind. Randy blocked the attack with the sword Young gave him. During the battle, the protagonist realized that he was making it so that Randy couldn't resist anymore. After that, there was a very serious attack from his opponent, but Randy dodged to the right side. His opponent was surprised that he dodged it because most of his opponents had not dodged this attack before. The demon of order came at Randy again. It missed him by hitting him with its axe in the empty zone. Then Randy realized that his opponent was a berserker. If he is strong in magical defense, he is also able to defend well against much more serious contact. Then Randy's opponent realized that he had underestimated him. He was stronger than he expected. Just think that there were other constellations under Randy. But the constellation considered them very weak to me. If even that servant is a good martial artist, he is probably in the early 300s in terms of level. And he will never be able to beat Avatar Akrata. Akrata wanted to get rid of him, wanted to kill him and stomp his dead body. He didn't want to let down his boss, who had placed great expectations on him. Beyond the abyss, in the territory of the Cardinal of Plague and Darkness, there was a skeleton constellation Rani had defeated earlier. He had been devastated when he lost the Avatar training, but it wasn't really all that bad. After all, he took pity on him and didn't take his servants or dead territory, and that was pretty generous of Randy. Then an announcement popped up in front of him that the Avatar of Learning was making a bid for the Cardinals of Plague and Darkness, a being that reverses time, a voice that calls from the abyss a frantic searcher in a battle of constellations. When Constellation Plague read this, he was rather surprised that the Avatar himself, it not training, had made a big bet on him. He contacted Randy and asked what was wrong. Randy said if he had to fight, he should call to fight for everyone and asked to borrow his servants. Roddy was very hesitant to take his help. After all, he didn't know his servants after all. He didn't trust them. The fight began. It was obvious by the size of his opponent was much bigger than him physically. They immediately responded to Agrady's magic with a full counter skill. After the collision, Agrady's axe pointed at his shoulder. After that, Agrady fell into Curse of Madness. After using the side regeneration, the power of the skill Crimson Regeneration increased due to the Curse of Madness. The protagonist noticed that after this technique, his opponent's strength increased many times over. Arenda then wondered if this meant that he would become stronger when he took more damage. If he was a hunter, he was somewhere in the S in class. Taking into account how restless he is, he might even be higher than S class. In the next encounter with him, Randy used Divine Finger to fend off his attack. The hero placed his hands on his chest and used artificial absorption. One could see the power leaving him. Randy began to absorb the magic power with the skill of Art of Absorption. The narrator, who loves rumors and explanations, says that he is reckless because Randy was taking a risk when he used this technique. The protagonist understood that the battle was dragging on, and he used the three-color skill at the peak of blooming. The pure internal energy of this skill absorbs the magical power of Akrata as it is. But Randy's opponent didn't want to wonder. He took it from his hand and told the man to let it go. But Randy added more power. His rival couldn't withstand such pressure on his brain. Agrat lay on the ground and begged Randy to kill him. After all, he would never give up as a gladiator of war. Then the protagonist looked up and asked should he kill him to end this fight. Then Dima agreed with Randy that the fight was already over. 
The sweat fighter and Kulikov also agreed. He asked for a dignified ending. After Randy's victory, the madness and blood warrior passed the blood fortress to him. His first constellation battle is over, and now he can join the ranks of the constellations on Earth. The protagonist noticed that his current rank is 127. He was very curious to know what it was. Then Randy saw the goddess of scales, which thanks to her he became a constellation. He was very happy that she was alive because he couldn't find her. The next day, the Alliance of Small and Medium Constellations had a discussion meeting. The topic was what they should do with the goddess. The cat from Lava and Mama wanted to speak. He talks about how they need to be careful of stupid constellations. Then in Constellation Desire backed him up and said she agreed with him. After all, the goddess of scales looks a little incompetent. Then the goddess of desire turned to Randy and said he wanted to ally himself with the goddess. But he must be careful. Just because she has no ill intentions towards him doesn't mean she's harmless. Then the protagonist thought and said that there's a good chance the goddess of scales knows who he is, and it would be good to get her on his side. Then Randy asked his alliance friends what the constellation rankings were. Then the catman said that earlier we should ask the goddess of scales this question. The next day, the main character came to the territory of the goddess of scales. When Randy saw this territory, he thought he was in the wrong place and didn't believe that this was the territory of the goddess. Randy was surprised that she didn't have any favors or subordinates. Code is stunned and asks, could this all be a trap? Then the dream constellation guesses that the scale goddess situation is pretty dire. Then Randy tells them not to jump to conclusions. After all, it doesn't mean she's finished just because she doesn't have subordinates. When the protagonist went inside, he saw the goddess of scales who didn't react to him. Well, the scale goddess bowed down to Randy right away and started apologizing. Said she should have sent him to the tower last time. But Randy wasn't mad at her. He said it was in the past and it was no big deal. The main character said that when they last saw each other, nothing had changed. He was very happy to see her. Then Military Temple asked Laurenti, Didn't the invincible avatar of training mind you coming here? The protagonist realized she thought he was the avatar's servant. Randy decided not to tell her right away and said that this Terra here is a generous and kind man, so he gave him permission to meet the goddess of scales. Then Randy said he was here for another reason and his team wants to make an alliance with the Scale Goddess. Then the Goddess of Scales said that she will be honest with him. Multiple times or later, Randy will find out about it anyway. Scale Goddess took her head, and with a nervous smile said that she was left with nothing. The Goddess was a strong constellation that was around the higher constellations. When the other constellations wanted to know about the future, they would bring gifts and bow to her head. And whenever that happens, her alliance will grow. But that's all in the past now. Now the goddess's power is comparable to that of a low-ranking constellation, and she barely maintains that status. The scale goddess said that she keeps losing her battles to the constellation. Then Randy said that constellation battle is a very scary thing. Just think that such a strong constellation would fall in the wounds just because it lost a few battles. Then the goddess of scales said to find it, she sent her strongest angel, so it kept losing. By the time she realized it, it was too late. Randy said that his teacher was looking for very reliable constellations compared to strong constellations. After all, the world is a constellation that is usually judged by how strong it is. The goddess felt both touched and jealous at the same time. Then the protagonist said that the avatar is everywhere. He is generous and takes care of his servants. He is also very careful in battles. Then the goddess all but said that she would like to make an alliance with him, but doubts he wants to make one with her. She was afraid that they would both end up disappointed in her. Her ability to foresee the future was also severely diminished. Randy says it's not a big deal. After all, his master only wants some advice on the current battle. Even if her power has weakened, seeing the future is still strong. The goddess of scales started to cool down and said it was a generous constellation. I felt a little defeated. And in that case, I decided that she would join the alliance. Ever since the first gate opened on Earth, a constellation has been fighting over this planet. It's a treasure that holds billions of souls that can't be found anywhere else. But the constellations could not easily come to any conclusion in their battles. Eventually, the strongest constellations that were on Earth made some rules. They made a contract left by the strongest constellation that puts its existence on the line and swears by it. Therefore, it has the power that makes it indestructible. Then Roddy said that the constellation that would be first in rank would rule the Earth. After all, the number one spot is still vacant at the moment. The condition to become number one is unknown not only to me, but also to the rest of the constellation.
The goddess of scales suggested that it requires a huge amount of extrinsic power. The protagonist then asked then, who is number two? The goddess of scales replied that constellations cannot know the rank of other constellations, but she guessed who it was. It is the master of slowness and silence. He has a strong and evil constellation that has occupied the northern part of China. Then the protagonist asked how many battles he needed to fight in the games to become number two. Randy asked what rank the goddess of scales was. She said 198, but Randy didn't think rank was the most important thing. The goddess of scales put her hand near Randy's hand. After that, Randy got the skill of clairvoyance. The protagonist asked his alliance partners what they thought about the goddess. They said it was okay. After all, she is one of the constellations that existed from the beginning and can still predict the future. The goddess seems to be very reliable. The cat from Lava said that she has a very good character, and it's unlikely that she will give her alliance. That sounded a little sad, but it will be to their advantage. Lava and Magma Cat said he feels like the goddesses don't like the avatar of training. Randy asked why. The Wish constellation replied that it's very natural. After all, this was the constellation that stole the man she was going to make her servant. In any case, until Randy found a counselor, he should try to remember to gather faith and belief. The cat decided to act as if he couldn't hear it. The constellation of dreams and greed also pretend not to hear it. The next day, Randy came to Hyung's house. It was obvious he wasn't expecting to see him today. It was obvious from the face that he was worried about Randy. He knew that Randy was going to fight against the constellation. Well, Randy said he won the fight. That you grabbed his shoulder and said he knew Randy would win, and he believed in him, and asked him to tell you what happened in that fight. Randy told that the constellation of warrior and blood and madness was so idiotic. Hyun drank water and said he was always an idiot. Randy then asked if he had met him. He said they hadn't met in person, but he had seen his servants. Rennie said he needed to look over what he had acquired and get ready for the next battle. Well, Randy realized he shouldn't be in a hurry. So Hyung smiled and said that Reggie should help him. But then Hyung's daughter came in and slammed the door hard and yelled why he wasn't answering her calls. He said he answered every call she called him. But the girl said it was about Randy because she wanted to cooperate with him. The girl said she tried to call him dozens of times. The girl came closer to him and asked him to tell the truth if Randy didn't want to work with her. Randy then gave the phone and said he forgot to charge his phone. The girl held her head in her hands and said there was nothing she could do about it. She started calling about the date of the fight. Randy didn't know what she was talking about because he didn't have a fight planned anytime soon. The girl said, why is he so surprised? The parties are asking for all the fights beforehand, so now he has to participate. Then Hyung said he also has a request for Ryendi. The girl pointed her finger at her father and told him to look for another hunter anyway. Bo Randy will be busy building his career. The girl asked Randy to come with her and she would explain everything to him on the way. A couple hours later, they arrived in a limo to a beautiful place. It was then that Randy realized how rich Hyung was, since he had used the whole ship for a measly dinner. Randy asked Lawrence if she often dined like this. She replied that she comes here to talk quietly. They went into the restaurant. The girl said it was Chef Morella and that he was here for us tonight. Randy looked into the commoner's slumbering skills. His power increased. The more Randy used the eye of the constellations, the more powerful he became. Randy was able to tap into the essence of the Morella. He possessed a top-grade cooking skill. He used the same similar skill as Randy. Randy said he was a very good cook. The girl smiled and said she didn't know he had heard of him before. The main growth said he could recognize the essence of a person by looking at their energy and told the girl it was an inner instinct. Moved over to the guy and said she was bored. Well, Randy said the food tasted delicious, but what the girl meant was that there was no magic in the food. Then Randy realized what she meant. The girl was saying that she would be satisfied with this food if it was filled with magic power. Then the girl got down to business, for she had already talked about the upcoming competition. After all, normal beginners don't get many challenges to fight, especially if the hunter isn't famous. Then Randy asked about himself. The girl asked him not to take offense. But people and viewers thought Randy won his title by cheating, meaning that Randy could move up to B class. After all, he'd tricked others into thinking he was in the S class. But the main character wasn't surprised one bit. The girl asked why he wasn't surprised. Randy said he's past the age of being surprised. The girl said that Randy has all the qualities to be a superstar. Randy replied that he was glad to hear that, and he was just about to give it a try. The girl was a little surprised that Randy agreed to do it. It wasn't like him. At that moment, the press conference room, one of the fighters was being interviewed. His name was Maximilian. He's a class B hunter at level 21, a word, a constellation of arrogant elf. 
He said some very bad things about Randy, said he was a coward and a pervert, and said Randy would be a total coward if he refused to fight him. When Randy saw this passage, he immediately knew that this was his next opponent. He asked the girl if there were many such elves on earth. Lawrence replied that there weren't many, but they see them all the time when the gate opened. Randy said he was going to beat the crap out of that elf, but there was no need for him to be angry right now. The girl smiled. After all, she was very glad he agreed and said that he should beat that arrogant elf until he was at least half dead. Then Randy realized that she was definitely Hyung's daughter because she sounded just like him. Randy asked when the battle would be fought. Lawrence replied if it was convenient, it would be in the next two days. She promised that she would gather information about the opponent and send it before the match. The protagonist then said he would gladly accept his challenge. Lawrence was adjusting his crib and said he needed to listen to all the questions and answer in a moderately provocative way. Randy needs to drill each other with glances and pose for the camera a little. So the main character sat down at a table in front of the reporters and they started asking questions. The journalist asked Randy if he thought a martial arts user could last in a B-rank league. Freddie answered calmly and said that they would only know if they had a fight. There is a debate about the gimmick for Barang qualifiers. What do you think about it was asked by a reporter, and he asked Randy why did he lower the ranking. Randy replied that it's the fault of whoever measured it wrong, and that's not for me to ask, Randy answered quite coldly. The reporters were stunned because they didn't understand why he was so unstitchable, and with this behavior they had nothing more to say. At that moment Randy's rival entered the dialogue, he started to insult him again and called him a shameless asshole. He thought Randy had shuffled his rank. He then pointed his finger at him and said that Randy was a very sneaky guy. The elf said that for Randy their fight would be a real verdict for him. But the protagonist didn't even look in his direction and said if he was so gold would have already attacked if he had a beef with him. The opponent didn't understand what he was talking about. Randy said he was saying that if his opponent was so unhappy he could have found him by now and pummeled him and he's venting his anger after waiting to set up the match schedule. Then Roddy turned to him and told him he was giving him a chance to get his ass kicked and fight in real life right now. The reporters were surprised at Randy's behavior. It was a show for them. Randy's opponent said it was against the rules. Randy said he was angry, but still followed the rules. And if it were him, he would have hit already. The main character then went to the microphone and yelled that they all saw he gave him a chance to fight, but the jerk chickened out and ran away. Randy reminded him that his opponent didn't even have any dungeon cleaning experience. And if it were him, he wouldn't show his nose in shame. The main character warmed up the fight very well. All the people were interested in going to this fight and watching it. Randy said he didn't care whether he fought in the virtual world or in reality. The girl watched it from the side and was quite surprised by Randy's behavior. She thought it was kind of barbaric and thought she should have told him that he should have told his parents. Then the girl said she'd yelled since it was like that. The other side was trying to trample him too. Randy has to win this by any means necessary. The deputy said they contacted Sifola, and she promised to come and help right away. Lawrence said that was great information and he should keep in touch. The girl thought to edit the practice match and release it to the masses. It might improve Randy's image. The girl promised herself she'd use all the cards. Randy said it would be better if they didn't schedule a practice match. The girl asked why. Randy said that the match wouldn't help him and he was wasting his time. The girl told him to think again, because even though he has a lot of experience in fighting, fighting a hunter is different. Randy said he knows everything, but he's fine, and he asked to cancel the practice match. The girl replied that was fine, since she had nowhere else to go. The main character started to leave and said he was glad he met such an understanding manager, and said that he would train alone until the match, and that she should call him if she needed him. The guards were surprised at Randy's behavior. They were against canceling practice matches because it was already a tradition, and if he lost, there would be more consequences but the girl said that he wanted it that way and they should trust him. Lawrence wondered if something would change if she expressed her opinion, but it would not work with Randy. The main character of our prepare for the fight, he came to the Icaros gym. He met his comrades, Anthony and Elizabeth. You didn't say you saw his interview. That was pretty bold. Elizabeth said it was a cool provocation and he was a master at it. Elizabeth said they were very surprised to see him in that gym. Anthony said he wasn't going to help Randy, just thought he'd give him some tips for his growth in the future. Well, Randy didn't even pay attention to him, just said thank you. Anthony said he was better than Randy's opponent. The girl was not happy because Anthony didn't even fight him, and she was able to beat him. The main character said he plans to train alone until the match. The girl asked Randy if he really didn't need their help. 
The protagonist started meditating. He said he was turning on his imagination. A scary devil appeared in front of his eyes. Randy had recently fought against his avatar. The power of the constellation increased a notch. The principle of spiritual training was learned. A rank of spiritual training skill was obtained. The girl didn't understand what it was and why she was seeing it too. Then she thought it was illusion magic. But wasn't it too high a level for magic? Randy continued to fight it all night. He was really exhausted. You could tell by his clothes how hard he was working. In fact, his clothes were practically all torn. The day of the Hunter Stadium competition came. Quite a few spectators had come. This was because of the well cheered in the audience for the press conference. Lawrence approached Randy and asked him if he'd had a good breakfast. After all, you can't skip breakfast. Even if you're not afraid, it won't digest. The protagonist calmly replied that he had eaten. The girl took him by the shoulder and told him not to be nervous. She didn't realize how cold-blooded and fearless Randy was. The protagonist entered the arena. He looked around and noticed that there were quite a lot of spectators, and it was very impressive. He recalled that in the past, hunters had died fighting monsters, but now they had become celebrities. Most of the audience booed him, saying he was a fraud and belonged in jail. Only one audience member yelled for Randy to win. Randy was very surprised by this. The main character promised that he would show what martial arts means. You tonight's match would signal the revival of martial arts. The commentators started to sound them off. They said that Maximiliana is aiming for the top 10. His popularity is astounding. His opponent is hunter newcomer Randy. It's only been a little while since he's been in the league since he ranked up, and at the moment he has his rank set to be. There has been a lot of controversy about this, but the commentator said he didn't think Randy had shuffled rank. After all, Randy came back from the abyss after 30 years. After spending that much time in the abyss, it's not unusual to get all sorts of complications. There could also be an oddity with the rank measurement. After all, if he defeats Maximilian, that will be the proof. So the match begins. For the first time in a long time, a martial arts user enters the arena everyone has been looking forward to. Freddy noticed that it was a ruin. Inside, they had actually implemented virtual reality. Everyone was excited because the fight was going to be great. Randy's opponent said he would be the winner and called him a hillbilly from the abyss. The fight began and Randy went on the attack. Randy wanted to grab him, but his opponent used flying magic and flew into the air. Hunter Maximilian increased the distance, but Hunter Randy was not far behind at all. Maximilian was shocked by his speed. He realized that Randy would have grabbed him if he didn't take off immediately. Randy had to do something. He couldn't just stand there and do nothing. Maximilian came out of hiding and fired his green bow. This attack was pretty good. Great piercing ability, also a homing function. But the protagonist used the divine space art skill, and all the arrows aimed at him were reflected. His actions made the elf very angry. Kitten Magma screams for the sake of embarrassing this aristocrat. Randy recognized his location and what rushed at full speed towards him. He didn't even pay attention to the arrows. The protagonist quickly found out where his rival was hiding. Randy told him to attack and he would repel all his attacks. Well, Maximilian said he was caught using the green bow technique. Green symbols started appearing above Randy's head. It was quite dangerous. But the protagonist said it was very slow for him and the technique lacked agility. Randy easily scattered these arrows to all sides of the arena. Suddenly, Maximilian realized that he had completely depleted his mana, and Randy was in the prime of his life. Suddenly, the first round had passed. Randy didn't know about it, and so he was stalling the fight with his opponent. The protagonist turned around and said they would see each other in the second round. Maximilian told his trainer that Randy was a real monster and needed to be tested for his honesty. Coach told him to listen to him carefully. He needs to forget about the bow and keep his distance and focus on recovery. Coach said he should forget about magic and stall with the first and second circle. Maximilian said it would be very hard against a guy like that. Coach said it's better than losing, because without victory, he'd be nothing. Maximilian yelled for him to shut his mouth, for Constellation had chosen him as her avatar. Round two began. It was a completely different location. Maximilian used acceleration and began to run away from the Rendi. The protagonist stood up and told them to get it over with so his opponent wouldn't finally embarrass himself. Randy easily caught up with Maximilian. Maximilian didn't understand how he could be so fast. The Suti were very surprised at how fast the two hunters were moving. Maximilian swung his left hand to hit the market's face. But the protagonist used a milky strike and hit Maximilian's face with his left foot. After this kick, Maximilian lay on the earth completely knocked out. The referee yelled that Hunter Randy had finished off Hunter Maximilian in the second round. Looks like the top 10 hunters should start to worry. They have a new opponent, a truly outstanding martial artist. So much so that everyone wondered why martial arts users had disappeared. 
After this battle, Hunter Randy was ready to be interviewed. The reporter said it was just a perfect match, and Randy didn't miss a single punch, finishing the second round with a knockout. Randy said that nothing special happened, just the opponent was too weak. All the spectators said that Randy was the best fighter, although before the fight, everyone said that he was a real thief. Randy felt that he had earned new skills, and he had a burst of power because of his popularity. The power of the essence had definitely increased, even a little. Randy's friend's right eye became sick, it began to glow red, and his future prediction skill was suddenly activated. He didn't understand why the goddess of scale skill suddenly activated. The protagonist began to see that Las Vegas was engulfed in flames. Many monsters appeared and attacked the city. They all threw up because in the limited time it was not possible to mop up the dungeon. When Randy realized it was going to be a real disaster, Hyun was watching Randy's interview. He was quite interested to see what questions he was answering. At that moment, a servant comes in and says he has a personal call. Hyung thought it was his ex-wife or ex-ex-wife calling him. He said he would give them pockets of money and didn't understand why they were bothering him. Well, the servant said it wasn't that, and Samu introduced himself as a Chan Sheik. He didn't expect to hear this. After all, they had a fight when he moved to America and hadn't contacted each other for a long time. Hyun thought he had seen Randy's match, so he got in touch with the former. He was immediately asked why he didn't say Randy was back. Hyung said he didn't remember them being that close, especially after berating him before he left. Chan Shik told him to knock it off and put Randy on the phone. Hyung replied that he doesn't have to give him the phone. If he needs it, he can call him, especially now that he's not around. Then, Chan Shik asked him not to take offense and asked him to put them in touch with Randy. Hyun said that God apologized for what he said when he was already in America, then promised to forgive. Chan Shik shouted that no way would he apologize to him. Then Hyung told him that he would contact him himself and said he was blocking him. Hyung gave the servant's phone back and didn't understand why he didn't want to apologize since it wasn't that hard. Randy noticed that the girl was very depressed. The girl thought she should be stripped of her manager's license because she couldn't even determine her client's ability. Come to think of it, Randy was very confident. As a manager, she should have trusted him more. Then Randy asked her what she thought his chances of winning were. The girl replied that it was nine to one that he would lose. The protagonist thought that was too much and she was grossly underestimating him. The protagonist said that she had never seen him fight and she shouldn't get too discouraged. On the way they met two guys, they knelt in front of Randy and asked him to teach him martial arts. The main character said he had seen them before and said they must have a teacher. Randy didn't understand why they needed one. They told him that the main residence of the Hoshan school. He went straight from stance to fifth position. They remembered that their teacher taught them different techniques, but their trainer was a rather mean and nasty man and scolded them for every little thing. So they came and kneeled before Randy because the elder's training was too outdated. Randy took his chin and said he understood the problem. Besides, they had already asked to be trained. Then the protagonist thought it was a chance to increase their faith and their credibility. Randy answered well. The girl and the guard were quite surprised by this answer. Then Randy ordered them to go and pass on his words that he was the avatar of the invincible god of training. He said that he would teach martial arts to those who become a follower of the god of training. They were very excited. One of the guys said that there was no problem as they wanted to learn and train. Another said that the clan was originally founded because they love martial arts. The next day, a bloody fortress obtained in a fight with a warrior shrouded in madness and blood. Randy went in there and noticed something very local. After all, these possessions were obtained after the Constellation's fight with the warrior. This was the first time the protagonist was entering Orc territory on his own. Randy was quite curious how the Odagon were doing, whether they were getting better without him. He was too busy, and so he put them in charge of everything. At this time, Odagon was very angry with his students, for they are fools not to learn even such an easy element of spell. Randy came to visit his friend. The Odagon was very happy that his master had arrived although Randy had asked him not to call him that. Rene said that he could see that teaching magic would not bring any results, so he decided to teach them martial arts. Then the protagonist took an axe and said he would teach them how to use it. The protagonist showed all his techniques. He successfully applied the martial arts skill C, plus this technique was called Green Dragon Axe. Randy asked, would it be easier for them to train like this, but there was silence in response. The monsters were discussing and still didn't understand how to do it all correctly. Randy started kneading his fists and said there was nothing to be done. If they didn't understand with words, they'd have to learn with their bodies. They practiced for a very long time. The monster had successfully mastered the green dragon axe technique. 
The monster's name was Goragoza. His face was pitiful to look at because it was all battered from training. The main character started to smile and said that this time they were making the technique a little harder. But Garaganza didn't want to train anymore. He wanted to rest. After training, Randy looked up at the sky and dreamed that he wanted to build a monster training base here. But he realized that the construction would take a long time. So if he wanted to get things done quickly, he had to visit the Constellation store. The protagonist started looking for constellations that sell the building. He was very curious if there were any at all. Then the protagonist met a constellation called the Dancing Snake. She would show her special building, and Drendi could inspect everything properly. She offered all her items, but they were very expensive. Randy thought he made a lot of money, but he just didn't have enough money catastrophically. The Dancing Snake decided to treat Randy and gave him a great rice vodka called Eight Sins. It's the vodka from the TV show All Wounds. Randy thanked her for it and said he would never forget her kindness. They said goodbye, but Randy thought his problems were not yet solved. After all, he had very few points and hardly enough to buy any more. The protagonist met another constellation called a traveling merchant selling fortunes. The protagonist waved his arms and said he was looking for soul stones now. The traveling merchant says not to worry about that. He's looking for what he needs for all the constellations, from the highest to the lowest ranks. Randy's excited, but Lava's kitten says he's kind of suspicious. Then he showed all his prices. A box with a random building cost $100, another box cost $200, and a third box cost $500. The traveling salesman swears on his name and reputation that there is no cheating here. Since this is the first transaction, he promises to give a good discount on the purchase of two boxes. Randy only hesitated and decided to gladly take advantage of the offer. Then the traveling salesman wished him to use the goods for a long time. Randy opened the box assignment. Chaos is broken free, deciding your fate. This model is a type of small temple, an ancient and dilapidated warrior sanctuary. If installed, all inhabitants will gain the ancient warrior power skill. The dilapidated structure will collapse in 30 days. The main character said it didn't suit him. I opened another box. House again broke free, deciding his fate. Fate power increased. His determined fate increased by one step. Temple of the Radiant Elf, if installed, can learn the skill. Randy remembered that this was the building of the elf he had fought. He remembered that this was the magic that the Elf of Light gave to his avatar. The protagonist thought he had sold it because he didn't need it anymore. Randy set up this house. It was quite large and beautiful. Kitty says there's a huge problem. Randy said not to worry about it being an elven temple. There are no people among the God of Training subordinates who can master the Shining Elf bow, but the fact that it's there won't make it any worse, and they decided it could be used later. Randy opened the door and returned to his friend Young. Before Randy can even fully enter the room, Hyung is there to greet him, and he's yelling that he's the fist star of Korea. Randy asked what the fist star was, and was told it was his new nickname, and people loved it. So Randy said it sounded bad. Randy did a great job this time, but he was advised not to get too comfortable. I mean, the top ten are real. First of all, most of them are avatars. Randy said he'd take care of it somehow. Hyun said the Chanshik called. The protagonist was surprised he didn't expect such a call. Young thought Randy was overjoyed and jealous because he was feeding him, helping him, acting as your avatar, and supporting him financially. Randy said he didn't even say a word about it and thought it was a small thing. He denied it and said he wasn't petty. Just that he was a very bad man and advised Randy not to get involved with him. Randy said he was here for a different reason. Randy then detailed what the goddess strike had shown them, the destroyed city of Los Angeles that had gone up in flames, and the invasion of the Skulk Drakes. Hyung was surprised that it was Las Vegas, one of the most protected cities in the world. Well, Randy said it was definitely Las Vegas and asked him to show him support and he'd deal with them himself. And he threw it at Pot and said, you can't go to Las Vegas. He said Las Vegas is not under his jurisdiction and it would be very hard for him to help Randy. Hyung said all they can do now is go there and explain the situation and try to convince them. Randy was surprised since he himself said he went to the sauna with the president and didn't even have any influence. Hyung grabbed Randy by the shoulders and said it would be better if he went instead. After all, they wouldn't see any sincerity in his appearance. Rengi replied that he should have lived a more righteous life, so he wouldn't have to hide from anyone. Hyung said that he just organized a merger of businesses and had a couple of divorces, that's all. Randy exhaled and said he'd talk to them himself. Hyung said he probably thought so since he was new to the hunters, and they were less suspicious of him. At this time in Las Vegas, the big clan controlling Las Vegas called the Black Cactus. Randy went up to them and said he came from the Icaros clan. A Calton hunter was talking to him. Randy wanted to see the head of the clan. 
Calton said he couldn't just meet the head, he had to make an appointment first. Randy said that in that case, they had to make the appointment quickly. Calton told him to give his name and not to be so cocky. Randy gave all his details and that he was a hunter of rank B. Calton recognized him. He'd seen him on TV when Randy had beaten Maximilian and said he was just beautiful. He gave him the thumbs up and said Randy's fight was killer, and he was sorry he didn't go to their match. Then the security guard asked if Calton was okay. He said sure. He said if Randy wanted to take us down, he could easily do it. Then Randy asked where the head of the clan was. Calton apologized and said that he was inside and that he was just being visited a lot by the scum. Calton said the clan leader let them in and offered his help to help him find out where it was. As soon as they entered, she immediately started reprimanding Calton for wearing glasses while he worked. Randy watched from the side and immediately realized that this is the head of the clan girl and that this girl has a temper and thought to gauge her strength. Her name was Roxanne, level 288. She was wondering what an Icaros man was doing here. Roxanne told Randy to drop the formalities and get right to the point. Randy said their clan was going to lose to the monsters and he was here to offer help. Roxanne immediately got angry and focused the fire in her right hand. She asked him to repeat what that meant because she thought he thought they couldn't clear the dungeon. Randy said the situation is getting worse. There's going to be an explosion in your neighborhood, rank B or higher. If the dungeon is not cleared in a timely manner, hordes of monsters will come out. The release monsters were nothing short of a natural disaster for human society. The girl asked him if he meant to say that he had found out about the appearance of a dungeon we had never heard of. Randy said he used the latest magic and saw what would happen to Los Angeles. The girl began to suspect Randy that they would destroy the dungeon and completely ignore them. But Randy said they would never do such a thing. Randy asked to be allowed to watch outside so he could react in time if there was an explosion, because one mistake could get a lot of people killed. Roxanne said he had come back from the abyss and had been there for 30 years, then he could be called a first-generation hunter. Randy asked what she was getting at. Calton said most first-generation hunters are considered heroes. They were always on the side of the people. The girl thought it would be good for them since he would only be watching anyway. Randy said he would intervene if they couldn't shut him down. But they didn't understand what that was for, since they could clean up the rank B dungeons themselves. Roxanne said okay, but she said to check him out and never forgives those who lie to her. She grabbed him by the shoulder and said, if suddenly he cheats her even once, she will follow even hell to punish him. A Las Vegas street, the markets were watching and so far it was business as usual. People were quietly walking around and going to work. Randy asked if the dungeon is rank B, then the boss is rank B. That means the clan leader is in the way. Randy wanted to know about her powers. Calton said she was just the best and called her sister. Then he realized he'd blurted it out, so he asked Randy to pretend he hadn't heard. After all, he'd be screwed if word got out that they were related. Suddenly, there was an emergency message saying that a dungeon had been discovered and the clan was gathering. There was an abandoned building on the outskirts of town. A blue portal appeared and people said they were unrealistically lucky. Then people realized that this Icaros hunter was telling the truth. But that wasn't what was important right now, because they wondered what rank the dungeon was. After all, with that much mana, it was definitely a rank. The entrance was limited to one person at a time. Then people realized that only one person could enter, and it was quite dangerous. Everyone started to raise a ruckus. After all, there was an emergency and an evacuation order had been announced. Randy was surprised that no one was running and people just continued on their way. So Randy went up to one of the guys and told him there was an evacuation order. The guy said he was some kind of sicko because he knew it wasn't going to be dangerous. And if they stepped back, they wouldn't see any show. Lava and Magma's kitten, annoyed, tells them to leave these assholes, but the main character says he can't. Can't he just let them die? Randy tells them to get the hell out of here alive, but the guy replies that he doesn't want to, and they have a free country. He grabbed the support and left big cuts there with just his hand, and repeatedly told them to get lost. Then the head of the Roxans stepped in and told everyone to start evacuating, or they'd kill them. Randy asked why so many people stayed behind to watch. Calton replied that they always do, and they are very much into monster hunting. Then Randy realized that they had gotten too used to the dungeons, because you were all standing around in time to get away. Suddenly there was a massive earthquake, magnitude 9. Roxanne told them to check the screen and launch the drone and check the monsters to not let anyone go. Monsters started coming out of the portal, there were quite a few of them. Roxanne was surprised because there were more monsters than they thought and they couldn't find the boss. Mac Lizard Loot uses the artifact more often, exposing erosion. Unless the Mac Lizard Man is caught, they won't be able to get out of the more often, subject to erosion. Green strands of wood began to cover the city. The guard asked what they would do with the humans. 
The girl answered that there was nothing they could do because those who didn't listen to them and evacuate would die. Then Randy asked if his help was needed because it seemed that the BA had shrunk the headquarters considerably. The girl said that without an agreement between the clans, it could end in a lawsuit and asked him to go somewhere safe. Roxanne ordered everyone to get ready for battle because the monsters were getting bigger and bigger. Calton said that it was a shame because he really wanted to see Randy on the skill. The fight started. It was quite a hard fight because there were so many monsters and they kept coming out of the portal more and more often. It was an S-class monster called a Viogosaurus. The hunters fought back as best they could, but it was obvious that their strength was exhausted and the monsters were getting bigger and bigger. Then she said that she had to deal with these monsters as quickly as possible, so she made a technique to increase the magic power of Yenos. She used the infant's flaming whip technique. With this technique, she killed three monsters at once. The girl said that Carlton should guard the Icaros hunter, otherwise they would be in trouble if he got hurt. The girl didn't know how strong Randy was yet, and she underestimated him a lot. But he said he had gone somewhere. They started to panic that someone had killed him or hurt him. At this point, the monsters attacked the couple and were ready to eat them. But the protagonist succeeded and fought off the attack with his sword. Randy used his sword and used a technique called the Moon Moon. With this technique, he destroyed five monsters at once. Carlton was watching from the sidelines, and I'm telling you, it was pretty damn cool. People started thanking Randy for saving them. Next time, they promised that they would definitely obey and leave this place. Roxanne ran to Randy. She yelled that he was thinking when he ran away from them. If he gets involved in the affairs of a neighborhood he's not responsible for and gets hurt, it could cause a lot of legal problems. The main character told her not to worry and promised to take care of the problems on the other side. The girl said that Ikaros wouldn't just forget everything to them, from what he said. Roxanne thought that with his abilities, he could be one of Ikaros' strongest hunters. And she thought that with a guy like that, she could turn a blind eye to what had happened. The girl thanked him for his help and thanked him formally in appreciation. Randy said, let's save it for later. There are still plenty of monsters to kill. Randy went on the attack. He realized that judging by the movement of the monsters, someone was controlling them all. In that case, there must be only one person behind all this. Roxanne thought it was the reckless idiot of the Icaros clan. Where could they even find a monster like him? Randy said there was a monster ahead on the left at the intersection and said that the mages were preparing for battle. The mages started shooting at the monster, but all the shots missed the monster even though they were close by. The girl noticed this and told them to prepare defense magic, but Roddy interrupted her and said it was not necessary. With just one swing of his sword, he killed the monster by cutting it in two. The dungeon boss appeared. He was bigger than those monsters by a factor of 100 because he was the head. Randy immediately realized that he had seen this monster in his prediction. Then the protagonist thought that for such a large monster to be under someone's control, the owner must be somewhere nearby. Then Randy noticed it two minutes later. It was on top of the roof of a building. Randy immediately wanted to kill this monster, so he attacked it with all his speed. He had a scepter in his hands, making him such a big monster. The protagonist slashed its head with his sword. The army of hunters tried to hold back this monster, but he was very powerful. Roxanne promised herself that she would destroy this monster at any cost and used her powerful technique. She covered the entire monster with fire. Everyone thought that after this attack, this monster could not survive. The magician Lizard Man was defeated. All the monsters began to disappear. The forest that covered the city also began to disappear from the top of the buildings. People began to notice this and they were overjoyed. One of the hunters said that Randy had saved them all and everyone was calling him a real hero. The reporter started to ask him questions. One of the questions was that a lot of people considered him a real hero because he had made an invaluable contribution to closing the dungeon. And they asked Randy to make some comments. Well, the main character was as serious as always and started to lie that he wasn't trying to save people at all. The reporter said that Randy meant something natural to humans. Randy replied that he had gotten rid of the Marines before they started killing, so it might look like he was saving the town. But the reporter thought it was Randy who saved the whole thing. Randy touched his finger to his throat and used a point block. Then Randy repeated again that he didn't save anyone. The journalist couldn't speak for a while because Randy had blocked his ligaments. Randy asked not to be made a hero because he didn't like that the most. The protagonist thought that no way I should become a good man in the eyes of people. Otherwise, I would be criticized if I helped at least once. Randy thought that you can't show yourself to be a good-natured simpleton. Calton admired Randy and said he was incredible and wanted to be like him. 
The girl told him not to take any nonsense because what happened is only possible because his very existence is unique. Master martial artists are extremely rare nowadays. A power that has reached its highest point as a result of hard training and vast martial experience. He became a completely unique person. The girl said that honestly, after meeting him, she stopped understanding why there are so few martial arts users left. She felt it was worth it to get closer to the Icaros clan, and there was nothing wrong with befriending Hunter Randy. On the internet, it was very publicized that Randy had attacked a journalist, even though he had just cut his ligaments for a minute. When Hyung read that, he almost fell off his chair laughing. Randy asked him what's so funny, Hyung replied that it was very funny to watch. Then Randy reminded him that he had also punched a journalist, but Hyung said that on the internet, they write all kinds of nasty things about him, and they embellish it a lot. Randy replied that it's not worth his attention, and he said that the cactus showed his appreciation. They'd split the rewards for Reed this time, too. And Young said it's trillions of dollars, and asked Randy if he was being a little pissy. He asked him not to be, because when you're running a company, every dime counts. Randy replied that he didn't run the company and didn't see a problem with it. He smiled and said that Randy never thought it was very similar to running a company. The protagonist said that getting a well-deserved award was in order, but he didn't want to talk about it and asked, when will they raise his rank? Hyung said, I don't know, because after Bajrang, grading gets more complicated. It all comes down to clearing the dungeons. The protagonist got up from the table and said he would go because he had to train some guys in martial arts. Hyung looked at Randy and thought he was training Ikaro's clan hunters. He thought he was a very good man. The training field controlled by the Ikaro's clan. Randy brought in some guys who asked him to train them. They were very embarrassed that Randy brought them to a place like this. The main character noticed this and told them to make themselves at home. Everything was amazing to these guys, and they were looking at every wall and every corner. After all, they had only trained in dilapidated gyms, and here everything looked amazing. Another girl came in. She said she represented the young hunters from the Huashan school. This girl's name was Iris. Then Randy asked if it was true. The man said yes, she was the best among us. Then Randy asked the girl if she was related to teacher Zhao. The girl said she was his daughter, and how did Randy know that? The protagonist didn't want to talk about it so he abruptly changed the subject and offered her water. The guy apologized and said he didn't mean to embarrass her. The girl said it was okay. Then Randy thought her father was in L.A. too. Eros apologized and asked when practice would start. Randy turned around and wondered if he had completely forgotten they were here for practice and told them all to follow him. The main character said they would start the barbell squats. Since they were all hunters, this shouldn't be too hard for them, Randy thought. The guys didn't really like working out in gyms and thought something would be much easier. Randy said they should start squatting. After all, they should feel the power of their inner energy and the strength of their muscles. With the title of Avatar of Training, his subordinates would get extra bonuses during their workouts. They didn't realize that the training they were going through was an amazing opportunity for them. No constellation would fit them as well as Randy had fit them so well. The main character told them that they would train like madmen, no, no mercy for the body. The guys were completely exhausted. They had almost no energy left. Randy said they were done with the warm-up. The guys were shocked because they thought it was the end of the workout, but it was just a warm-up. The next workout began in the Icaros training room. Everyone was surprised because there was a very nice beauty from the inside. All the guys realized this was the place to get great results. Randy said that for martial arts training, there was nothing better to use the terrain of the area. He used a swamp that was very sticky. The swamp was knee-deep. The boys had a very hard time moving around. Their bodies were frozen, and it was very hard to walk. When they reached the end, they saw a wooden mannequin in front of them. They didn't take it seriously. Suddenly, this mannequin hits the guy in the chin with his knee. The partner was just shocked. After that incident, everybody went after the mannequin. Well, the dummy was a lot faster than they were, and they couldn't hit it. Randy said that first they trained their muscles in the gym, and now they had to fight against the mannequin. The girl asked, and that was it. Randy replied that they had to pass this step to move on to the next workout. Randy then turned and started to walk away and said, if you can handle her, let me know he will be waiting. They continued to attack. They hoped to finish this dummy off quickly. At this time, Anthony, Elizabeth, and Randy were sitting in the lounge of the Ikaros clan. Anthony complimented Randy on his work in Las Vegas, but said that Randy was a long way from him. The girl replied that he was delusional and asked him if he could have done better. Anthony started fixing his hair and said that Elizabeth was really turning his words around. That's why she can't be a good hunter. The main character told them to shut that topic down and asked which one of them wanted to learn the arts. They thought it was very suspicious. Anthony asked if there were any stipulations or conditions. 
Randy told them to cut the crap. He's not going to make anyone do anything in return if they don't want to. Let them tell him that. Elizabeth said if he trains her, she'd teach him something too. Randy wondered what she could teach him. The girl said magic. What else could she teach him? The kitten of lava and magma said that was a great idea. The constellation of dreams and desire also supported that idea. Virtuous goddess of scales also urged to try something new. The protagonist thought of agreeing to it or not. But his friends from the Alliance said that at this rate, he would become a dumb jock who knew nothing but martial arts. Randy thought about it and decided he could use magic and Randy asked him what he would study and what he would like to do. Elizabeth said she would teach him defense type magic. Anthony said that since he uses martial arts, he would definitely teach him long range magic. But the protagonist said he wanted to learn healing magic. From the look on their faces, the protagonist realized that neither of them knew how to use it. The protagonist stood up and said he was sorry and needed to find someone who had it. The girl told him to stand and asked why he needed this healing magic since he was an attacking warrior. He should leave it to the healer and his business is to fight. Then the protagonist thought that maybe he could ask for training on the constellation of the goddess. She would surely possess some healing skills. Randy came to the goddess constellation's territory. She was sleeping on the big table at the time. Randy told her he wanted to learn healing magic and asked her to help him with it. The scale goddess said that the avatar of training probably couldn't teach him that. The goddess of scales didn't know Randy was a constellation yet. The virtuous goddess of scales grants him divine healing of the fifth circle. Divine healing Ranka. Randy used this power healing in the name of the virtuous goddess of scales. Randy noticed that it wasn't easy to immediately master such a power. The goddess of scales apologized. She doesn't have much power and she can't give Randy more power. Scale goddess said that originally he was supposed to be her avatar, so she should do at least that. She asked him to wait and was sure she'd find more if she looked hard enough. Randy said it was okay and not to worry so much. He made a mental note never to ask her for help again because she was very emotional. The next day there was a competition in the main hall of the Icaros. When everyone was assembled, they were taken into the infinite tower dungeon that had been created. Randy didn't understand why everyone on the outside was so surprised after all this was the first time he had heard of this dungeon. The Endless Tower Dungeon, a couple decades ago, had appeared in a dungeon of such complexity that it had broken endless hunters. And if the first floor was inhabited by F-rank monsters top in the world of Ascension, their strength increased. It was a rank, a dungeon that later just exploded as no hunter was able to clear it to the end. Ernest said that in this training session, the winner would be the one who surpassed the opponents and reached the highest floor. He hastened to assure something underground more difficult than his original. The contestants looked at him and couldn't believe they were given such a difficult task. Randy says this dungeon has a very horrible fame. Lisa would say that, of course, yes, there is a reason why no one can completely clean up the dungeon. The main character began to wonder who the creator of this dungeon was because it was just awesome. The lava and magma kitten asked Randy not to marvel at such things. In any case, he thought it was better to go as a group. Even if the difficulty increased, he thought that by mopping up the team, we would have an advantage in the battle. Anthony waved his hands and waited for Randy to invite him to join his team. But Randy approached the girl and said they would go to the tower together. Anthony yelled that he shouldn't trust her because who knows what she has in mind. The protagonist asked him if he was in or not. He didn't say that, of course he was. Before the mission started, Randy noticed a girl who was wearing school clothes. He thought she was a schoolgirl or a student. He started to look at her essence. Her name was Ile. She is currently a servant of a constellation. Irendi couldn't see her essence completely. The protagonist was surprised that she serves the constellation, and she also has quite rare skills. Elizabeth noticed that Rennie was staring at this girl and said that judging by the clothes she was wearing, she was Ivy. Randy asked what Ivy was. Elizabeth said it would be hard to explain, but she would try. Lately, there are tons of private schools that teach the awakened. One of the most popular among them is Ivy. Anthony started bragging again and said he graduated from an Ivy school too. Randy replied that they didn't ask and they weren't interested. The girl noticed that they were looking at her and decided to approach them to meet them. Randy extended his hand and said it was his pleasure and asked if she spoke English. The girl wondered how he could understand her. Randy replied that he had that skill and he understood the language. The girl said she knows French well for Contra to talk. She spoke a little more Korean. Anthony and Elizabeth watched this and couldn't figure out what language they were speaking. It didn't say it didn't even know what language they were speaking, but they looked pretty happy. Randy decided to be curious and ask what constellation she was serving, but the girl replied that she could reveal his name because of the treaty. 
Then Randy realized that it was a constellation with complicated arrangements. The protagonist said that they are forming a team and invited the girl to join them. The girl said that she is happy with this offer and will fight with them until the end. Randy said that it would be very awkward if they communicate in different languages and asked her to switch to Korean. And after that, they got out a translation device to make it easier for them to communicate. At this point, another partner of their acquaintance, Smallwood, came in. Meanwhile, the Avatar's training area is a fortress of blood. The monsters continue to train on the tactics of the Odegon. At this time, Randy asked Odegon to go with him to a good place. Odegon happily agreed. He was very happy that his master finally needed him. He thought there was a big crisis. Before leaving, he told the Marine not to even think about resting from training and promised them to come back soon. Odegon realized that this was a fake dungeon. He really liked this is the dungeon because of the different monsters. Anthony said about Odegon that he was just a hunter with a pretty face. People should be like me. Anthony thought he was beautiful and extremely capable in everything. Odegon got very angry with Anthony and said he would show him how capable he was. Randy held him by the shoulder so he wouldn't do anything stupid. The main character pointed his finger at him and said he would be replacing the hitman. Randy asked if he knew how to use healing magic. The Odegon said he would know a little, but it wasn't what he specialized in. Randy took him by the neck and told him to use healing magic this time. Their team came out of the portal and were ready to do the tasks. Before they began their assignments, Randy wanted to show them something. They were books about the entry-level martial arts that his avatar training master had given him as gifts. The comrades looked at these books and didn't understand why such strange titles and should they read it. Constellation said that if you learn these books, you can prepare even better for this fight. Elizabeth said okay, and she will study and practice everything. Elizabeth told Ari that Randy would teach them free martial arts. Ari didn't understand why he would do that and thought Randy had nothing better to do. They walked into the first room. There was a crowd of skeleton monsters in front of them. The protagonist immediately said that he would keep them under control and divert all the attack on himself. The fight began. The protagonist immediately began to smash all the monsters in a row. After they destroyed them all, Randy thought it was too easy than he thought. Smallwood laughed and said there wasn't even any work left for him. Anthony was as arrogant as ever and said he could do it himself. Randy said they were done with the first floor and were ready to go up to the second floor. They went up to the second floor of the tower and were greeted by angry boars. Anthony didn't understand what was such an evil kind of monsters doing here, and there were quite a few of them. The Odagon immediately started using magic to restrain these boars. This technique was the great illusion of deception, a type of illusionary magic that destroys the mind of the monsters. After this technique, the monsters were very scared and crouched down in fear. Randy didn't wait either and attacked them with all his might and called out to his comrades. He destroyed those boars with one attack. The boars scattered in different directions. It was still easy for him. Later on, the B-class monsters, the special wild boars, appeared. They were much bigger than the regular ones. Elizabeth said that they were coming closer and closer and told Aaliyah to get ready to fight them. Lisa would realize that it would take her a long time to activate the magic and decided that she would start with the beginning sword technique. Elizabeth performed a technique called martial art elemental sword technique. The girl used this magic and shot the boar with all her strength. Elia also acted well and chopped the boar in two with her attack. Elia said that martial arts are a very powerful ability, that they are very good and very easy to use. Randy stood behind them and said that they did a good job with those boars. They need to get to the next floor without delay. They went up to the third floor of the tower and there were blue ogres. They dealt with them easily. Then they went up to the fourth floor of the tower. A B-class ice wyvern monster was waiting for them there. Elizabeth was shocked as it was quite a strong monster. Smallwood also didn't understand what such a strong monster was doing on such a small floor. The monster fired its technique. Blue fire came out of its mouth. Elizabeth and Smallwood thought that they were finished because the attack was quite powerful. When they opened their eyes, they didn't understand why there was no damage. It was Odigon. He healed them with his healing technique. He said it was an ancient magic circle that was very different from what humans use. Randy told him not to abuse this technique and concentrate more on attacking. The whole team attacked the monster from all sides. After that, the monster was defeated because it couldn't handle everyone. Randy stood on the defeated monster and said that they did a great job and the fifth floor was waiting for them next. The fifth floor of the tower. Elizabeth was curious which monster would appear this time. A flying witch woman appeared in front of them with a strong wind and energy coming out of her. She was called a banshee. Since she's a spirit, most don't go by her like that. It was said to be a class of monster. Randy was stretching his arms. He thought you were a great warm-up for him. And tonight, they were in for a great fight. 
You could see by the look on the faces of the comrades that they were shocked and a little scared. Suddenly there was a strong ultrasound that was very hard on the ears. But this technique didn't work on the Renda and Odigon. Randy told him to use the treatment and he would try to buy them some time. The battle between them went on for quite a while. Randy realized that this was not an easy opponent. He attacked from the back and thought he was going to finish her off now, but his attack went right through her. You could see the shock on his face. He didn't expect the attack to go through. Then the protagonist realized that he had to finish her off with a single blow because there was no other way to defeat her. Randy said he needed the help of the Odyssey but he wasn't done with the treatment yet. But the Odegon realized that Rennie was more important to him, so he ran to help him. His partners didn't understand how he could just quit using recovery magic halfway through. Then they noticed that the magic was still working on them, and that he was able to use such high-level recovery magic on the go. Then they realized that he is definitely a special class healer, and he is very incredible, and he is better than a hitcaster. Randy asked him to use enhancement magic on him, so that this magic would be strong enough for Randy to trigger and destroy it with one attack. The protagonist used the glowing sword technique. It gave him an increase in damage. His body was all burning yellow. There was a very strong energy. Randy attacked with all his might and wanted to destroy her with one blow. He went right through her. Everyone thought that after this attack, she wouldn't survive. Then Randy noticed that she was using amplifying magic and it was stronger than he thought. So much so that Randy could not fight without any with limitations. The protagonist noticed that we were badly wounded and took his chance by cutting her body into pieces. After that, she self-destructed, and there was a very large explosion. Suddenly, they were informed that the dungeon had been cleared. Elizabeth didn't understand why it was so quick and so easy. No one understood what was happening. Then they thought that the fifth floor was the last floor, and they didn't understand what was the meaning of the name of the Endless Tower dungeon, if it only has five floors. Then the protagonist thought they really didn't know they were in a real fight. Smallwood said there was no deeper meaning. Then the head of Ernest came up to them and told them to get ready to go to New York. There was a plane waiting for them. Then he told them that there was a new dungeon, because the clan responsible for it had failed, and now it was time for Icaros to try their luck. Everyone rejoiced, for they finally wanted to fight in a real battle. They arrived at the east coast of America, Lego Long Beach. A lot of journalists were waiting for them at once, and wanted to ask a lot of different questions. The protagonist noticed that there were a lot of people. Burns asked what class the dungeon was. He was told that originally it was B-class, but because of the failure of the clan arrest. But Ernest said that it should not be underestimated. He asked how many people were allowed. He was told 300 with 23 already inside. Raddick was on his way in when he realized that his clairvoyance skill was activated. The protagonist began to see a vision of very many frightened fighters. There was a constellation of a demonic god by a crazy bastard who had a contract with him. Everyone started to evacuate and run away. Realized that someone had contracted a constellation in the demon god. The lava kitten asked him to be more careful. If Randy entered the dungeon, no one else would be able to help him. If a minion enters the dungeon, whoever the constellation has to watch him. This works even hard on the demon god constellation. Lava and magma kitten said that even the constellation is excited about it, so please be careful. Randy said okay and said not to worry so much about it knows his powers. Elizabeth grabbed a beer and offered it to everyone before entering the dungeon. Smallwood offered to let Randy rest a bit and have a beer, but the protagonist said no. Feeder said he didn't want to lose his muscles, but then he said he was kidding and he just doesn't like alcohol and he'd rather drink a protein shake instead of alcohol. The girl said that these people weren't going to come up with a plan and then she asked Randy to teach them a little lesson, but the protagonist said, who is he to teach them? Iris started yelling at them that they were very rude. Then Randy thought that teaching Korean and Korean dramas has its side effects. Then Randy started thinking more and more. After all, Ilea is the servant of the constellation. Maybe she's the one who made a contract with the demon god constellation, even though the clan scout checked her out. Then Randy told her to go with them. The girl was surprised and agreed. The Icaros clan started to enter the dungeon. One of the men thought that if others went in, wouldn't that be stealing the bounty? And don't assume that only the Icaros clan has a chance. Anyone who clears the dungeon first will be the winner. The clans are just holding each other back. There's nothing wrong with that. This conversation was overheard by one of the hunters. He shouted that he would also enter the dungeon in an hour when you finish preparing. They entered the dungeon, but Elizabeth didn't understand what it was because they seemed to have entered a portal. But for some reason, they ended up in some strange place. There was a very strong wind, a wind called the Wind of Chaos. It started to separate the contenders. 
Randy realized this was very bad. Then the parents ported to another place. He realized that he was alone and they were separated. In front of him lay a strange man. You could see he was tortured. He was very thirsty and asked for water. Randy took the water and started to give it to him. He told him not to hurry and to drink the water slowly, for if he hurried, he might hurt himself. While he was drinking the water, Randy asked him what clan he was from. The boy answered that he was from New York and his name was Aranaz. The protagonist asked if he had seen any of the other hunters from his clan, and Aranaz said he hadn't. Then he recognized him because he's Randy himself. He's the Korean hunter, a martial artist from Las Vegas. Randy said this was no time for chit-chat, and asked what happened here, and asked him to summarize the current state of affairs. Then Aranaz told him everything. The hunters grunted into the dungeon first. As soon as they entered the dungeon, they were immediately separated like us. And while they were searching for their comrades, they were attacked by monsters. Besides losing their weapons, Arinaz broke his leg and fell. Then Randy thought it was a two-headed chaos hound. After all, it's pretty hard to port after something like that. The guy was surprised by its skills and said that it was expected from the Icaros clan because he even had information about the monster. The protagonist stood in front of him and said they had no choice. Aranaz was scared because he thought Randy was going to kill him. Randy said he was just going to heal him early and wouldn't do anything to him. Aranaz told him not to say such stupid things, for he didn't believe Randy would be so benevolent. Randy went up to him and said he was going to help him straighten his bone first. There was a very strong scream, for the pain was terrible. Randy said that now he had to use healing magic, but concentration was important since he wasn't that good at it yet. He used the scale's goddess healing technique. The goddess healing power increased a bit. The guy's legs started to heal, for Randy had used high-level healing magic. The guy was surprised that he stood on his leg, for it was still broken a second ago. The main character took him by the shoulder and told him that he was done and would take care of himself. Aranaz thought that it was the first time anyone had ever seen someone use healing magic on a human. When he ran after Randy and asked him to join him, Randy told him that he didn't even know what monsters were or what they were like. Aranaz said that although I don't know much about them, he was familiar with the area. Randy contacted the Odegon through magic. Odegon was very happy to hear from him, for he did not know where he had disappeared to. He had found the other hunters of the Icaros clan, and very quickly. For his own safety, he had put magical markings on their belongings. That's why he was able to find them so quickly. Randy said he was going deeper into the forest anyway, so he asked them to bring the others to him. Along the way, they came across a two-headed monster. Randy said that it was a chaos hound. The protagonist had already fought this monster often. This monster was about level 150 and could improve its skills every day. Randy used the heavenly finger and shot at the monster. He hit them in the face. He managed to blind them for a while. Randy realized that he had to take his chance and cut this monster into two pieces. Randy said that knowledge and strength, it's a lot easier to defeat, and he just needed to understand its attack, dodge it, and attack. Randy began to cut the monster into pieces. Aragaz was puzzled and asked what he was doing. The protagonist said he had no supplies left at all and there is no poison in this meat and we can eat it. Aragos was shocked that in the Icaros clan they have valuable information, but he thought that monster meat was nasty. Randy felt a few hunters on his right side. He couldn't figure out who they were. Aragos said there was no one there and he was imagining things, but Randy insisted and said that he heard some talking and they should go check it out. They saw a bunch of hunters in front of them. Aragos didn't understand how he knew about it or how he heard them if they were far away from them. One of the hunters recognized Arinaz. His name was Ichidori. They were surprised that he had survived and asked what had happened. They wondered who was near him. Said he to you from Icaros, he told them that Randy had saved him and healed him and gave him water. The other hunters thought this was nonsense for they were surprised that he had helped another clan. Randy was revered, his existential system increased. Randy couldn't understand why it was getting higher and higher. He hadn't felt such a rush of power in a long time. Aragaz said Randy was using a healing technique. Although he had nothing to do with him, Randy asked him to stop because he didn't like praise very much, but he wouldn't stop. Then Randy said he was stubborn and knocked him out so he wouldn't talk too much. Randy warned him to stop. Better to hear the man who saved his life. The other hunters were shocked at Randy's behavior. They thought he was crazy for hitting a member of his clan in front of them. They didn't understand why he hit the hunter who praised him, but they thought he knew his business. Randy asked why there were so many people here, and was told to look to the right, and then he would understand. The protagonist saw a golden sandbox in front of him that was counting time. Randy felt a very strong magic from this device. Then he was asked what it was. Randy replied that there was summoning magic. He was told that the sand had been falling off since they came here. 
Randy thought the boss would probably be summoned, and they were waiting to kill him. Then there's a chance the constellation of the demonic god and the guy who made the contract with him are here. Randy used his eye power to see who was capable of what. He started looking at everyone to see who was cooperating with the demon boss. But he couldn't discover which one of them even used the eye constellation. Well, Randy was sure they would reveal themselves when the time came. Traitor with a poison dagger. That's the name of the constellation of the demon god who contracted with the hunter of the Ambitus clan. It's actually not such a strong constellation. But compared to mortals, it is too powerful. With a bow, it's also difficult to determine how strong their master is. Jurors mistakenly believes that his master is one of the strongest in the abyss. He always said that he would make sure to do his best, because his master should be satisfied. Probably when the sand in this watch is finished falling, the boss will appear, and that will be Randy's chance. The clan suspected Randy had something wrong with him. They cared a lot about him. Especially the Eurus lawyer was worried about him. But later said it didn't matter, because he had the master dagger himself. Then the clan leader asked Randy to join their clan for a while. It would be suicide to wander the dungeon alone. The protagonist thought he would be fine, but it didn't matter. And he agreed, because it would be more convenient for him to keep an eye on people. They offered him food because they were worried that Randy was hungry. One man said he could give his portion and give it to Randy, but the leader said he'd only recently recovered and he shouldn't. Everyone started to eat lunch. It was obvious that everyone was hungry, yet they were trying to eat their rations sparingly. The main character said that their meeting was faded and said he would treat them. Randy pulled out a large piece of meat from a slain monster. Everyone was surprised that it was monster meat, but Randy said they had nothing to worry about because it was non-poisonous and very tasty. The protagonist went the other direction and told them to wait for him here. The head said he shouldn't go anywhere because it's very dangerous. After a while, Randy came and he had more food. The head was surprised how he got it so fast. Randy was glad he had all the ingredients and could start cooking. The main character started cooking and chopping the monster meat into small pieces. The head asked how and where he got the dimensional artifact from. Randy wondered why he was asking, was this really the first time he had seen such a thing? The head said no, and that was absolutely not the point. It just seemed to him that he had gotten some spices from there. But that made sense, because Randy couldn't have gotten them here from the dungeon. The head thought it was suspicious, because normally people would add poison or medicine to food. However, he added spices. Randy used a pure blast of internal energy. This was the technique he used to roast meat. The other men from the clan were surprised how a martial arts master could cook so well. The main character prepared the food. It looked very appetizing. He was the first to offer Arenaz a taste. The food was making him drool. Arenaz asked, really, can he try this? And he started to cut the food and eat. When he tasted the food, his body began to glow with happiness. He said that every bite melted in his mouth and he regained his magic power. Randy asked him if he liked his food. Arenaz said it was the most delicious meal he had ever tasted in his life and asked for more. Randy held out his hand and said, of course he could, and wished him bon appetit. The whole clan was eager to taste the food because they had seen the reaction of their clanmates' food. When they tasted it, they were shocked at how good the food was. They couldn't believe that the Icaros clan was developing such things. Then the leader of the Ambitus clan showed up. He suggested that Randy go with him until his clan arrived. After all, they didn't even have a healer. The leader was nervous because he said they had a healer and not to lie. The head of the Ambitus began to convince Randy to go with him. After all, the New York Fire Clan is a very weak clan. The two heads started to fight very badly. Randy stood between them and asked them to calm down. The avatar of the demonic constellation appeared. At that time, no one knew it was him yet, and asked the chapter if they had to take this hunter with them. After all, there are many other clans here. The head said that he was talking nonsense, because he was the one who was eating his food right now. The other guys were saying that their magical power had been restored to the limit of our endurance. It would be difficult for them to launch a surprise attack here. Suddenly, everyone noticed that the time on the clock had run out and waited for danger. Time ran out and the night of sloth and defeat appeared. Everyone was in a panic because it was the boss, and everyone began to prepare for battle. From this gate, a demonic constellation began to emerge. Yes, this constellation completely came out. He was very big and strong. People could not believe their eyes and said, What kind of monster is this monster after all? They have never seen such a monster in their lives. His ally did not know when to start. He waited until all the hunters and draw their power and he attacked them. The demon said the knight who served the goddess of sloth and defeat and said that whoever passed his test first would be the first to be defeated. Then Randy realized it wasn't a constellation, just a knight who obeyed a constellation. This dungeon is called the Shrine of Defeat and Lenny. Maybe it's the trap constellation of the demon god. 
Creating a dungeon requires probable amounts of existential power, but no one knew how much a constellation had to be to be able to control such a thing. The knight asked everyone who would pass his test and said he wouldn't wait long. The leader of the Schreiber clan was very scared and said he was talking nonsense. The hunters started attacking him and started using fifth circle long-range magic. It was no problem for the knight to repel this powerful attack with one swing of his sword. The head was shocked. He blasted the magic. While doing so without making any movements, almost everyone began to realize that it was an S-class monster. The protagonist looked at it and felt the existential power of the constellation. The knight proceeded to tell them to protest and said that the test could only be taken by one person at a time. He chose the leader of the Schreiber clan, but the leader didn't want to not ask to be spared. Then the knight stood beside him and wanted to do the forced teleportation technique. He pointed his sword at him and said that he was starting to do it. After that, the man just fell to the ground and was motionless. Everyone looked around at him and couldn't understand what happened because he hadn't even touched him. The knight said he was conducting a test and said he would be testing the next applicant. After that, three more people fell to the ground. People couldn't understand what was going on. The knight said they all lost and didn't pass his training. He didn't calm down and asked who would be next. These men started to wake up, everyone around them asking what happened to him and if he was alive. One of the men said he didn't know anything. The moment he faced his sword, his strength suddenly ran out and he couldn't move. He couldn't figure out what to do with it, for attacks on it were useless. The best way out would be to run away. Randy walked up to him and told him he was challenging him. The men were shocked at his bravery. The guy told Randy not to take any chances because that guy was out due to luck and he could really die. The knight asked him if he was ready for the challenge. Randy confidently said yes. He put his sword near the relay and said he was starting the test. Lenny's knight started using the line shackles. The shackles started to load Randy from all sides. Then the protagonist realized everything as he stripped them of their will to fight. These are fetters from which it is quite difficult for a mere mortal to free himself. These fetters were called the fetters of Lenny. But Randy, however, is a constellation, and he is the invincible avatar of training. Randy realized that this constellation possesses qualities that are completely opposite to his. The protagonist told himself that he couldn't lose because he always wanted to get stronger. And he told himself that he wanted to get stronger. He promised himself that he would get stronger. The protagonist began to release his power and broke those chains apart. Then the knight said that he had passed the test. The protagonist was surprised and asked if that was the whole test. The knight said yes. After all, it is very difficult to free oneself from laziness. This test shows who has the will to overcome laziness. Since Randy passed the test, the knight let him face his master. He raised his sword up and pointed it towards the sky. The sword lit up with yellow flames. The power that sustained the sanctuary of laziness and defeat was gone, and the dungeon would soon disappear. The protagonist thought this was very strange. Other monsters started running away. Then Randy asked the knight what he promised that he would meet the master. The knight said that these monsters are also part of the test and he asked to pass it. The knight raised his sword up again and said he could already feel her presence, and then said to Randy something is not over yet. The protagonist realized that these monsters would be here soon, and that's too bad. He would not only have to fight, but he would have to protect everyone. The other people didn't know about the danger and smiled because they didn't think they were about to return to Earth. Randy realized that if he didn't avoid such a disadvantageous situation, he would have no reason to grow further. Then he developed the skill to crush the strong to help the weak and overcome himself, all these skills were activated. If Randy protects the weak, his existential system will grow. They began to spot monsters 730 meters to the east. The drones were destroyed. Heat sources of strange medium-sized monsters were detected in the south. People didn't understand why can you get more, since they had already enlisted the dungeon. Nevertheless, it was a special place, and they needed to hold out until the dungeon disappeared. Everyone began to prepare to use magic. Then they realized that they weren't even waves of monsters, and they didn't realize there would be this kind of trouble here. Then Randy shouted to everyone very loudly for them all to get together and fight until the end. The head said, why should they get together? Because if they do that, they will provoke the monsters to attack more. Randy replied that they are coming here anyway, and asked that they listen to him and get together if they didn't want to die. This was the important part. His level had reached its limit and he was thinking about what martial arts to use right now. The protagonist decided he'd get their full attention, and he ran at full speed towards them. He appeared around these monsters and he was serious. He dodged the monster's attack and used the heavenly finger. Randy made the monster very angry and started running away from them to get their attention. 
the protagonist noticed that more and more monsters started running after him. Hunters did not understand what was going on there, because there was a very big sound and a lot of monster. No one has never seen such raids in their lives. One of the heads shouted for them to help Randy because it was hard for him alone. They said he was right and started using skills as the monsters gathered in one place and used an area spell. The protagonist told them to keep shooting at them and not to worry about him because he dodged their attacks. The head said that the martial master was much stronger than he thought and had never seen such strong warriors. One of the guys thought that because he had attracted the monster's attention, they were able to focus on attacking. And after that, he wanted to become a martial artist himself. Randy continued to distract the two-headed monster from the hunters. This monster was quite fast and big. The protagonist used the golden blade technique. Its speed was so fast that a strong blue smoke formed behind it. The monster fell to the ground. There was a very strong sound as it was very big. The other hunters couldn't believe their eyes because he had knocked such a big monster to the ground with one attack. Randy sighed heavily and said it was over. The other hunters began to come up to him and tell him how incredible a fighter he was and how cool he was. One of the traders realized that he needed to kill as many people as he could before the dungeon closed, otherwise his master would be furious. He realized he had to get rid of Randy first, because he was the most dangerous fighter he'd ever seen. Looking and seeing that no one was looking, he wanted to sneak up from behind and attack him. He swung his blade and yelled, die, he had a big bloodlust. At first he thought it was very easy and surprisingly simple, but Randy just blocked his arm and he poked himself with the knife on his own arm. Randy asked him what he was doing when he asked Randy if he suspected him from the beginning. The main character told him to get on his knees and drop his dagger. If he agrees to cooperate, Randy will pity him. He starts threatening Randy and says he doesn't even know who his master is. Randy replied that whoever he is, there is nothing he can do right now. But he replied that it's not over and Randy is just a weak hunter. He then started yelling hard that Randy attacked him and wanted to kill him. They couldn't understand what was going on and who was attacking who. He showed his wounded arm and said that Randy poked his arm. But the main character said the man was trying to stealthily kill him and the dagger was stuck there because he fought back. The man said he was lying. I mean, how could he fight back if he said he jumped out of nowhere? Two men said that they were recording the raid and watching it on camera, but it was hard for them to see the picture because they couldn't see the scene. The man kept saying that he had attacked him and should be detained, but the head doubted it. The man said that we were from the same clan and they should protect him. The chief replied that he didn't believe Randy had attacked him and could do that. Well, the other hunters were more suspicious of the man and thought he wanted to kill Randy out of jealousy. Then the man said they believed him because he gave them meat, but the chief said he ate the most and there was nothing wrong with that. The head said he wasn't a bad man. If he didn't stop, they would blame him. The man got very angry that his clansmen didn't believe him, so he drew his dagger. He released a poisonous mist to poison them all. One of the hunters said he'd take care of him, but Randy said it was dangerous and best to stay away for now. But the hunter was very confident, because he considered himself a B-rank hunter, and Juras was a C-rank hunter at best. He was sure he would deal with him. Randy said that he had contracted the demon god constellation. He better not be underestimated. Juras used a fourth circle magic called Wave Snake Fang. This attack dealt a good amount of damage to the overconfident hunter. After this attack, his amulet shattered. This amulet protected him for a long time. After this attack, he fell to the ground and started squirming in pain. Juras began to gloat at him and said that a B-rank hunter was squirming in pain because of his attack. Then he wanted to use that attack to kill the hunter and wish them dead. The protagonist started to approach him and said that he was the only one who was finished. Juras yelled at him not to make him laugh. Use the cursed dagger technique. Randy used the top of the soft series, its power from martial arts, a perfect body for martial arts, a heavenly martial body. Excellent understanding of martial arts principles, a state of perfection. When combining all this, the current ball technique is obtained. Then Randy turned in a new martial art and his existential strength grows. Randy easily repelled his attack with a single swing of his sword. It was amazing that he repelled such an attack with just one move. Juras was shocked, for such a skill was given to him by the constellation itself. The protagonist came even closer to him and told him that he shouldn't rely on his constellation so much. After that, the protagonist used a technique in the palm of the soul source. This technique was a high rank technique. Juras was very badly damaged after being hit, but he escaped thanks to his technique. The traitor's magic power protects Juras' body. He escaped instant death because of it. So he promised to kill as many hunters as he could thanks to his master. After that, he raised his dagger and made a poisonous cloud of life force transfer. In simple words, 
he turned his blood into poison. The protagonist thought that Real was a jerk for not stopping and decided to kill them with his own life. At that moment, Randy's group appeared. Behind him was an Odegon who shouted to him in joy. He apologized for taking so long and promised that he would take care of everything now. Odegon used a technique called detoxifying raindrops. A large circle of magic formed over the sky. From this circle, a heavy rain fell. Odegon's technique neutralized Juris's technique. That's when Juris realized it was over. Randy was not happy because he came much later than Randy expected and asked if they had met any monsters along the way. Odegon said that no one listened to him and everyone had their own whims. Anthony said he was exaggerating and how could they trust and listen to a healer. Elizabeth said she likes it better when the leader is a melee fighter. Irene said she was always taught not to trust anyone. Odegon then asked Randy not to leave him with them anymore. The protagonist noticed his tantrum and said he was good and he was wrong. They returned from the dungeon. The portal to the original location was activated. Randy looked at the screen to see his prizes and merits for a job well done. Randy had been given a dungeon award because he had passed the shrine test. This is a reward given personally to those who fulfill certain conditions in the dungeon. It's different from a survival reward. This time, the only one who received the reward was Randy. As a reward, he was chosen to succeed the goddess of defeat and laziness. He inherited the power of the said constellation. Then the protagonist saw a very bright light in front of him. He almost couldn't open his eyes. When the light faded, he saw a girl in front of him whose left eye was glowing. The girl said that it had been a long time since her last awakening and called Randy his successor. The girl said she would teach him everything he should do as a constellation servant. Randy apologized and said he was a constellation too. The girl said she didn't hear because only mortals can enter the dungeon, so he can't be a constellation. The protagonist said he didn't want to upset her, but she was wrong. She then asked how he got in here. Randy replied that he was here to trick the other constellations. The girl looked at him and realized that whatever it was for, he certainly had great ambition and thought him a delightful constellation. Randy agreed with her and said that the constellation always finds successors like that and passes on its power to them. The girl said it was an unusual practice and this place has a long history. In the distant past, it possessed the most powerful kingdom in the abyss. But despite her will to lose in laziness, she just kept winning time after time, which increased the amount of work they had to do. Eventually, she got tired of winning in her power, and after a while, she got sick of it all and sealed herself away. How much Randy got mixed up in all this, acting like a mortal, the girl said he was a pretty interesting constellation too. Anyway, she couldn't believe that her successor would be a constellation and considered that he didn't need her. After all, he could get the authority himself and increase it, and said that in that case, goodbye. Randy didn't understand what she meant. After all, it was a constellation she was trying to transfer her status to a constellation. But Randy had more questions. Said he inherited power. Well, his existential power didn't increase. Randy asked what happened and how it could be explained. The girl replied that the reason was that she had almost no existential power left, and he had inherited those crumbs. Then she told him that authority was much more important, and there are always ways to increase existential power. But Randy didn't understand her, and said he was an avatar of training shouldn't he be forbidden to get a reputation for defeat and laziness. Then she pointed her finger at him and said her successor had misunderstood her. After all, winning and losing are two sides of the same coin. The same goes for training and laziness. For example, let's pretend you lost for the purpose of cheating. Would that be considered a defeat or a victory? Or let's imagine that Randy took a break to recuperate. This should be considered training or laziness. She said that Randy is a young constellation, so he needs to train according to his qualities. But with the passage of time, when Randy fully realizes what reputation is, then he will have that quality automatically. A lot of constellations are busy increasing their existential power and starting wars. But in the end, what is much more important for a constellation is to awaken the power of its own qualities. Then the protagonist realized everything and he gained the skill of understanding the constellation's qualities. His strength grew. Randy discovered a new skill called enlightenment. Thanks to the great enlightenment, Randy is no longer bound by the constellation quality. Randy thanked her for explaining it to him, and he learned a lot more. It was obvious that the girl was sad and said she was glad too, and said goodbye. Randy said he was her successor and asked her for a favor, so he could call her in times of need. The girl smiled and said that of course he could, but he was kind so she thought he wouldn't do it. Randy disagreed and said he would call her if he had to. She grabbed him by the shoulders and said she hoped he wouldn't do it often. Randy said he would try, but made no promises. His meeting with Goddess Lenny was over. 
After Randy left the shrine, he would return to Earth. Then Randy thought about many things to ponder over things of great magnitude and realize their essence. Then the protagonist remembered that he used to be devoted to his martial arts, but now he will try his hand at cooking, magic, and others. Randy instinctively realized this, that training wasn't just a small part of life. Anything that happens every day could be considered training. Then Randy thought his mindset should become more flexible and promised himself to train without limits. Randy came to visit his friends from the Alliance. The protagonist asked if they were expecting him. The goddess of desire answered that of course they were because they had lost contact with him as soon as he entered the dungeon. The girl said that the servant contracted by the constellations of the demon god and also contracted by the constellation in Lenny. If the contract is valid, there's nothing wrong with it. When Randy can figure it out, it will become his power. Randy got the impression that what they say conditionally is their business. He waved his hands and said he had no idea how he could use his reputation when it came to defeat and laziness. Then the goddess of desire suggested that he use defeat because of laziness. But Randy said that didn't make sense. Randy asked them, they found something about a traitor with a poison dagger. The goddess of desire said it didn't seem like the traitor was strong enough for the constellation. In terms of rank in the constellation war, then Randy is about on the same level with him. Then the protagonist said he didn't have to worry about him much. But there's a bad rumor going around about him. That the traitor specializes in various schemes and tricks because he's a nuisance, as his servant or subordinates can launch a surprise attack. The goddess of desire said that his name is Constellation Randy, the beginning of the constellation mentioned in the game. Cat says that what happened to the warrior Madness and Blood and in the dungeon certainly attracted the attention of the constellation. The next day their team was all assembled, they came for lunch. Randy didn't understand why they asked him to eat here, because he thought they could eat anywhere. Smallwood told him that being in New York, he should go to George's Hunters. Anthony also added that Randy had said he'd never been to that restaurant and promised he'd like it. Hunter George's, one of the few restaurants in the world that cooks monster meat. When they entered this building, they saw in front of them an aristocrat who complains about everything in this life. The aristocrat said that it should be oily. From biting into it, the oil should drip off. Anthony said that of all places, it was George's hunters that he complained about and thought he was a strange guy. Then he greeted them and asked them if they were of the Icaros clan. Elizabeth recognized him. It was clan leader Schreiber. Randy had met him when he fought against the knight in the dungeon. Schreiber was happy to see them too. Schreiber shook Randy's hand and thanked him again for what had happened in the dungeon. The protagonist replied that it was nothing special and asked what was wrong with the food. Schreiber said that he asked them to recreate the monster dish that Randy had made, but they couldn't do it no matter how hard they tried. This conversation was overheard by George Manuel, the owner and chef of a restaurant called Hunter George. He was very surprised to hear that Randy had cooked a monster dish. Monster cooking is a very rare skill. George is a master at cooking only monster dish. People who have the same talent but a different vision is of real interest to him. George approached Randy and wanted to ask him for a favor. He asked him to give him a master class on a dish that Randy had made dungeon. Randy told them right away that he wasn't a real chef and that they shouldn't expect too much from him. George said he wouldn't get his hopes up, although he looks like he's looking forward to it like crazy. Randy put the minotaur meat on the table. It was some of the best meat ever. Randy touched the meat and wanted to make the ingredients soft by injecting internal energy into the hard meat. This is the recipe for meat Randy trained in the abyss. George Mita looked at it, and it was very surprising to him. After all, normally they would have had to accumulate mana for several hours. Randy said that he was preparing this meat using martial arts. He started slicing the meat at a very high speed. His movement made the meat fly upwards of two meters. The other chefs couldn't believe what they were seeing. Randy asked if he could use any seasoning. George, with a shaky voice, told him to feel free and take what he wanted. The protagonist put the meat in a skillet and used Meiji to start a fire and to create a unique flavor. Randy showed him what he'd done and said there was nothing supernatural about it. George said there wasn't, and he was very unbelievable. Then they served Randy's meat to the customers to try. They really liked it. It was very tasty. The next day, Hyung asked Randy a question about the dungeon. Randy said that nothing happened. The demon god constellation servant attacked me but was not very strong. However, just by looking at the published information, Hyung realized that Randy had done a great job. And to think even better, would it be considered normal since he's a constellation? Hyung said that in any case, that he had called Randy in time. Then President Nguyen, otherwise known as the head of the dragon artifact, walked in the door. Hyun asked Randy if he had any idea what he was doing. Randy replied briefly that he didn't. Hyung asked if he knew what a monster's core was. 
It is a monster's total mana. Nowadays, many companies are developing their energy business. They even make artifacts out of it these days. Among them, one of the leading companies in the field of artifacts made from the core is our subsidiary's Dragon Artifact Company. Randy didn't understand why they were getting to know each other and what they had in common. Hyun said it's always great to have more useful connections. To develop artifacts, we need a hunter to help test them. So Hyun wanted to introduce you two to each other so Randy could work with him on the same team and collaborate. The protagonist replied that he agreed and he would give it a try. Hyung looked out the window and told Randy to get used to it. After all, he will ask him to be the president of this company later. Randy asked what he should do regarding the development and artifacts. Nguyen replied that research and development is very important in this business, but actually, since there are a lot of people who are interested in this business, what goes on behind the scenes is pretty brutal. And in the end, its power will come in handy. Randy asked again, so what was he supposed to help with? He didn't understand his entire position. He had been asked to help them find a researcher. Ronald Totten, a prominent artifact researcher, he successfully developed the latest third circle magic, the Apria double barrier in a man-made artifact, which means he's mastered techniques that have exceeded current limits. Then the head said that their company tried to sign him to an official contract, but unfortunately, they lost contact with him. Randy asked if he was sure he would have accepted, but the head was 100% sure he would, and he thought another clan had gotten to him. Among them, the artifact developer legend is the most suspicious. It's owned by the Parkers, a pretty well-known company in the field. Randy realized that this was a good acquaintance of his. He needed Randy to go to legend and get the researcher, Ronald. The protagonist turned around and said it was nothing to him and he would be back soon. The chapter asked, is he really going there by himself? Randy replied, of course, because it was a regular thing for him. Randy was pretty sure that was not the case and remembered that he had his comrades and thought, why don't you take this opportunity to teach them martial arts? The CEO had mentioned his recklessness. He was glad Randy was behaving normally. The next day Randy got there, it was the Legend Research Center. Randy said they needed to get inside and get a man named Totten out. The main character said that not all of us will be able to get in, so Randy will only guide only those who qualify. Randy told them to raise their hand if they were sure they would be hidden. Two people raised their hand. Randy said the two of them would follow him, but he said he would repeat again that he's not forcing anyone to go with him and he doesn't want loyalty that jeopardizes their lives. Iris said it's okay, and they'll go there because they want to. They started to break into the building, and the other three men were watching them, not sure how they were going to get in, because the security was very tight. One of the guys said he was sure he already had plans for it. Maybe Randy had prepared some kind of equipment that could disable the defenses. After all, this guy's an Icaros guy. Suddenly the alarm started. Randy couldn't figure out where they were coming from. Randy said it was on the other side of the building and there was something going on. The protagonist closed his eyes and started to listen to the sound. Randy heard that they were talking about the Servant Master illusion. Then Randy remembered. A powerful constellation of the Word of God that has taken over Mexico. Kat says then, if the constellation can take over one of the countries on Earth, it should be in the top 20 rankings. Randy sighs and says it's only 127th in the rankings, and it would be hard for him to handle it. So Randy decided to ask the goddess Lenny for help. At that moment, she was relaxing and watching a soap opera. Randy turned to her, and you could see on her face that she wasn't expecting it. The goddess said he should only call her once every thousand years. Randy said he had told her before that he would come when he needed to. Anyway, he asked if she knew about the master of illusion. The goddess replied that he was a brat. Randy didn't understand her words. He said he was in the top 20 constellations and how could he be a brat? Then the goddess said that during her time of activity, she was always attentive to what the other constellations thought and kept an eye on the different constellations around. He was a willful child. He spent time with the master of slowness and silence. Master of slowness and silence, one of the most famous constellations of God's word on earth, though it did not perform any notable actions. But during the great invasion, it took over Northern China with overwhelming force. Then Randy thought that the Master of Illusions must also be a very powerful constellation. Moreover, he was a subordinate of the Master of Silence himself. Then Randy asked the goddess if she knew anything about the Master of Silence. The goddess replied that yes, then he was also a strong constellation. So the goddess advised him to focus on the Master of Illusion now. Randy said he would and thanked her. The character said he would call her out until the fight was over. Randy said someone is already confronting the Hunter of Legend. In the meantime, we're going to try to get Ronald... The girl said that's a good idea. Randy said for them to hold on to him as he plans to run with them in his arms holding the two of them. 
He took the two of them in his arms. It was pretty weird to watch. They were very light for him. According to the information from Nguyen, Randy thought that was where the hostage was. Then Randy jumped up. The height was very high. Their faces showed everything. They climbed to the highest floor and started looking for Ronald. It didn't take them long to find him. He was tied to a chair and blindfolded. Randy said they were from the dragon artifact and asked him his name. They took off his blindfold and said there was some fighting going on outside and there was a major clash. I was told it was another group of people. Either way, he said he was brought here against his will. The protagonist said that was great and promised to rescue him and take him right away. Then Totten asked to save his friend who was in the next room. Randy said sure and drew his sword. He slashed that wall with ease. It was pretty loud, and the girl was afraid lest they be heard. They saw a black-haired guy who was also blindfolded and blindfolded. Randy realized that he was also Korean like him and wanted to check his information with his eye. His name was Kim, level 97, strength 93. Dexterity 91, endurance 98, magic power 171, intelligence 125, rank T's plus. So Randy pointed his sword at him and told him he knew he was a hunter. Didn't give him three seconds to tell him his purpose. Kim said he too had come here to save Ronald, but earlier said industrial spy, and couldn't believe that Korean clans have industrial spies too. It was amazing to him. Randy said they would give details later. It was in their best interest to get out of here first. Suddenly there was a big earthquake, and everyone had only one question what was going on. Up above they saw something glowing. It was a shining octahedron of illusions. This is the servant master of illusions. Randy realized that they had to be careful with it. Randy attacked this red crystal with his mighty sword. From this attack, the building started to collapse, and everyone realized that this building would not last long and they might die. Randy shouted for them to follow him and promised that they would get out. They landed in time while Randy thought they'd finally get caught. After all, they were very loud. They were asked to reveal their identities, who they were. The girl was ready to fight because she realized there was no other way out. Then Randy asked them that they were in danger because of the servant constellation, and they are here to help them. Then one of the bosses said that he didn't know who he was and why they suddenly appeared without any warning. Randy said there might be spies among them. The boss didn't even know whether to believe him or not because they seemed suspicious, but he speaks very confidently. The girl said that he wanted to deal with the servant and the pawns of the constellation from the beginning, but she wasn't sure. Randy asked how that red thing came to be, but was told that they didn't know, that people had suddenly summoned countries and it had appeared. Randy said he thought it probably wouldn't last long, and it would come to the area again once some time had passed. Cole said it looks like it's being held back because Randy is a servant who is getting a lot of attention lately. It also seemed like the constellation was interested in him. Octahedron wants to see what Randy can do. Randy's ability, then he would be guaranteed a place among the lower-ranked servants. So Randy ordered his boys to protect Ronald and keep him safe. Randy drew his sword and fought off the octahedron's attack. The fight went on for a long time. Suddenly he spread black chains and they were quite dangerous. Randy was shocked by this technique and asked the goddess what this ability was. The goddess said it was a power that makes time betray its allies. Randy saw an eerie scene in front of him. All his allies were turned against him, and their eyes were red. Then Randy realized what the power of the constellation was. He realized that he would have a hard time fighting against his allies. The other guards were surprised. They didn't understand why their partners were attacking them. Randy asked Iris to send a signal for help to all the members of the Mountain Hua sect. Randy had the skill of subduing the powerful activated and help glory. If he managed to protect the hunters in this area, his existential power would increase. Plus, the skill of self-control was also activated. In case your services managed to overcome the situation, then his strength would increase. Randy realized he had to be careful with them and not kill them. So he used the point block technique to paralyze them. Randy did it pretty quickly because his opponents were weak. His partners looked at it and said it was unbelievable. They wondered how he trained to get such good results. The head said that Brandy had to stop because he could hurt normal people. Randy replied that he chooses his targets carefully and said not to worry. A shining octahedron of illusions. He's thrilled with Randy's abilities. He thinks that Randy is well suited for the role of his rumors. Randy promised that he would definitely take care of stomping his master in the constellation battle. After sealing Randy's sword, he was sure he would stab him with one blow. Well, this attacking him wasn't even for a cause as he had a pretty powerful barrier. Otkaeter said the attack wasn't that bad, and he was presenting Randy the authority of his skill with a red illusion. The protagonist didn't understand why he decided to suddenly give him a gift, since they were fighting to the death a second ago. After this gift, the Okahedron said goodbye and retreated. 
Randy didn't know what to make of it. He just said what he wanted and left. There were other people watching. They were in the black squares. They were the ones who summoned this monster and spent a lot of effort. But they were very upset that Randy kicked him out. The boss got to his feet and said that almost all of Paul's hunters had fallen after fighting with each other and started smashing everything. The men who were hiding in the cloaks attacked them, and they believed they could do it without the Constellation servants. The protagonist told everyone to keep in line behind him. Randy trained and led the mortals, plus a new power was awakened. Roddy discovered the skill of forming a six-man ball. Randy and his team attacked them with all their might. People who believe in avatar training will get extra augmentation bonuses to the skill. Randy noticed that something was wrong here. He didn't understand why they weren't supposed to attack. These people are using some weird combination attack. Iris spotted her opponent and stabbed him in the back with all her might. The clan chief said what a surprise. After asking around, he realized Randy was a high-class hunter. A visit to help Richard Parker, since he's in the same clan, the clan leader thought. The leader asked how many dead we had on our side, but was told there were none. The head couldn't believe his ears and asked to double-check the reports. He was told that the information was absolutely correct. After all, they only fainted, but they're all alive. The head thought he thought Randy was just rampaging aimlessly. He couldn't believe there was no death. So he thought Randy was just lucky. That's when Richard came in and said he was fine. The head tells Richard that he has a very good comrade because he came here to help since he received news of the upcoming ambush. The next day, the headquarters of the dragon artifacts. Nguyen was very happy. He realized that Randy had accomplished his task. The head said worried because the servants of the demon god constellation had appeared. Randy pointed his finger at his assistants and said that those guys helped too and asked to reward them separately. The boss replied that no problem and said that they could inspect his company. The main character looked up and said, Sounds like a good idea because he was pretty interested to see what kind of company it was. When Randy looked over the company, he thought that this is where artifacts are created like a blacksmith. Cat says he's looking forward to seeing the blacksmiths of the humans. Cat asked Trendy not to forget who made his tools. Nguyen pointed to the door with his hand and said that this is where the prototypes are made and invited us to go inside. There were many scientists inside, experimenting and discussing their work. The protagonist asked what it was because it was the first time he had seen this mechanism. Randy thought that this work required a blacksmith. He didn't know that there were already special robots. Lava Cat was furious. He yelled and resented that this was not a forge. A forge is a place where craftsmen work in the face of scorching flames. And these horrible human bumblers just use robots and saying it's wrong. Cat says he's going to show these people what a forge should be. Randy asked Nguyen to come in and get involved too. Guyan didn't know how to answer and didn't understand why Rennie wanted to get involved. The protagonist smiled and said he wanted to try the craft for once and said he'd appreciate it if he'd let him do it. The scientist looked at him sideways and couldn't understand how he could create artifacts easily. They thought he was making himself look important just because Randy was a hunter. Randy gathered energy in his right hand and swung it hard. There was a very strong sound and a very strong flame. The scientists were shocked because he hit with a normal fist. The scientist wanted to stop him, but Randy said he'd pay if he broke anything. So Randy used martial arts. The men stood behind him and couldn't figure out how he used a laser iron stone, used in artifact creation, in such a similar way. The cat exclaimed that his art was quite useful, and telling Randy to keep punching a few hundred more times. A fist inscribed with internal energy, stronger than any blacksmithing tool. Turning any piece of metal into dust is simple. Code exclaimed, saying that he took Randy's abilities lightly. The protagonist made a very good sword. Brandy said that Laser Ironstone has the attribute of ice, hence he should use martial arts and ice energy. He made an ice short azure sword, strength 200 out of 200, attack power 120, the skill blessing storm energy can be used. The protagonist held the sword up and said he was done making it and asked if they had done this before. The protagonist said it was the first time for him and told them to check its function. The guy held the sword in his hand and said he couldn't feel them, even without checking. And to him, it was an amazing product and says that after the evaluation, he'll let Randy know the details in order to do a thorough analysis. Hyun calls for the sake and says he feels delighted with how their company is making money. The protagonist says he doesn't feel delight at all and money isn't important to him. Hyun goes to the window and says he got an invitation from Alex Parker. Randy realized he was talking about the chairman of Parker's company and asked what business he might have with Randy. Then Randy suspected that he wanted to get even for what had happened to Ronald. He was told that he didn't think so, because it was they who had originally kidnapped him and they had the right to avenge him. But this old man is pretty unlucky. He's the kind of guy who's always scheming. 
Then Randy said that if he had a problem, took the whole settlement so that he would just destroy them. Hyung said he didn't think so, because then he'd have to justify him alone. The next day at the Icaros clan, Randy was getting ready for an important meeting. He dressed well to be prepared. He was greeted by the Hyung's daughter, who said her father had told them everything and told him to get in the car. Roddy asked if Hyung seemed to hate the Parker family. Is Alex Parker really that evil a person? The girl hesitated and said she wasn't sure about that. She replied that not all rich chairmen are like that and took the bottle of champagne in her hands. After all, maybe he'd invited Randy to the meeting because he wanted to see what he could do. After all, rich people can't resist curiosity. The girl smiled and said he didn't have to worry because she would be there for him. She promised to show Randy how to introduce himself and get along with the others. When they entered the room, they saw in front of them many aristocrats who were drinking a glass of champagne. Three aristocrats were talking about politics and the future government. Their future and their state of money depended on this. The girl told Randy that they are all successful presidents of their companies and are very popular. The main character did not understand why he should say this because he saw these people for the first time. The girl said that all these people belong to a very famous company called Parker. Randy didn't pay much attention to it and just started memorizing their faces. One of the men recognized Randy. He came up from behind and asked if he was a hunter. This man was beautifully dressed in a very expensive suit, and he said that their squat would like to see Randy and ask them to follow him. When they followed the aristocrat, the main character noticed that there were a lot of guards around them who were very vigilantly monitoring their movements. They had a very sidelong glance. It was clear that they were all in tension. Randy was very surprised when he saw even more guards. He was wondering what it was for. He understood that it was all for the sake of security. But there were a lot of them. They arrived at their destination. The aristocrat waved his hand, smiling, and said that they were expected in the office. He knocked on the door and shouted that he had brought the hunter Randy. From the other side of the door, they shouted that they could enter. When the main character entered the door, it was clear from his gaze that he was a little perplexed. He saw in front of him two men who were talking about all sorts of matters related to business. The director waved his hand and asked them to wait a little because he was busy. Randy looked at him and realized that something was wrong with this man. There was bad energy coming from him. It was strange for him to feel such a level of magical power from an ordinary person. It looks like this man is carrying a bunch of artifacts. The subordinate scratched his head and said excitedly that the chairman should trust him in this matter. The chairman said that he could leave. The man bowed and thanked him for this honor. It was clear that all his subordinates were very afraid of him. When the man left, the main character was able to check his data using his abilities. This man's name was Jerry Cooper. He was not awakened. Rank C+, plus, power given by the demon of contract and order. Any form of power associated with the contract will increase. Constellation with which the contract was concluded. This is a traitor with a hunted blade and a demon of contract and order. Randy understood that someone was entering into a contract with the constellations of the demonic god and with two at once. The girl approached Randy and whispered in his ear that this was the president of the food fisk and he was a rather difficult president. The main character answered without any reaction that everything was clear to him. Randy thought why he was able to examine that guy, because the details should have been revealed by the mask skill. The president told them not to stand and sit down because he had a very serious conversation. The girl began to worry very much because Randy addressed him informally. Because of this, there were a lot of consequences. The president poured himself some tea and said that he had heard a lot about Randy. After all, he was recently proclaimed the first star of Korea. The main character did not begin to be modest and said that he had heard that lately he had been called that often. The president handed him a mug of tea and said that in any case, he called him here because he wanted to express his gratitude to him. Randy didn't understand why he should be grateful because this was the first time he had seen him. The president smiled and said that Randy not only protected his research laboratory from the attack of the demon god constellation. After all, the president heard that Randy saved his hunters from harm. The main character drank tea and thought that it was worth thanking him for this. The girl thought that he himself had penetrated their laboratories, but practically no one knew about it. The president called his guard and ordered him to be brought here. The guard bowed and said that everything would be done in a matter of minutes. The security guard began to take out a large object which could be heard because of the large sound. It was a heavenly sword. The main character could not believe his eyes that he saw it because they were very rare. Heavenly sword. Durability 380. Attack power. The heavenly sword path skill can be used. Passive effect of the skill perfect plan. When the user follows what the sword wants them to do, 
it regains magical power. Although this is not the guidance of the Nine Heavens Moon Sword, these are top-level artifacts. Randy looked at the sword and said as far as he remembers that this is an artifact that was previously used by a hunter from China. The president replied that he was absolutely right. It was his way of thanking Randy for his help. The girl looked at Randy and thought that he would give up this sword. After all, it was very dangerous to accept it from the president. After all, as soon as he accepts this sword, he will immediately play into the hands of Alex Parker. The girl was thinking whether she should say this so that he would refuse. Randy grabbed his chin and began to think whether he should accept this gift. But he didn't think long. He smiled and joyfully accepted this gift. The girl was absolutely against him accepting the sword. The president said that he was very grateful that he agreed and would like to ask him for a favor since he is giving him a gift. The girl held her head and said that he was deceived by the dragon Juan. The main character did not understand what she was talking about and how he was deceived. The girl said that he is a very amazing man, but Randy needs to be more cool-headed when it comes to his own future. A subordinate brought him a purple core from which a lot of energy emanated. President Parker held out this core and said that this was a core made using revolutionary processing technology 20 years ago. Its frequency is as much as 88%. There were many offers to buy out the company developing this kernel. Well, all these proposals were rejected. Parker asked Randy if he knew what happened to these people. The main character replied that he had been in the abyss for 30 years, and how could he know about it? Parker continued his story and said that the next year they developed technology that allowed them to achieve 89% purity and a year later they achieved 90%. In the end, the company went very bankrupt. The president again held out this cannonball and said that this cannonball was right in front of him. A lot of people are now looking for this core, but none of them knows what will happen to this core tomorrow. The president put this cannonball on the table and asked Randy if he understood what he wanted to convey to him. The protagonist suggested that he should be where he would get the most benefits while he was highly valued. The president replied that he was absolutely right and he understood him 100%. Randy realized that the president wanted to hire him, but he was interested in one question. Why does he need it? The president replied that the first step would be to prepare users. The president is thinking about using Randy for training many martial arts users. After all, martial arts are not as good as magic due to the slower growth that people experience during the training process. The president knew Randy's greatest strength, who had overcome all the limitations of martial arts. He started drinking tea again, and said that martial arts were definitely useful. The greatest advantage is that they can be used in a wide variety of situations. After all, if the president manages to get a monopoly on martial arts users and train them, he will earn a lot of money. The main character looked at the president and realized that this man was surprisingly well informed about what martial arts had to offer. One of the assistants approached the president and said that the time was up. President Parker was very upset because he enjoyed the conversation with Randy. They began to say goodbye. In parting, the president said that in any case, he hoped that he would think carefully about his proposal. After all, this is something that will benefit everyone. Randy replied that he would think very carefully about his proposal and would give him an answer in the near future. When they came out, it was clear from the girl that she was upset and asked if you really wanted to escape from the ship. The main character smiled and said that he didn't even think about it. The girl was just surprised because Randy was very interested in his proposal. The main character said that if he had refused directly, we would not have been able to negotiate anything. It was necessary to give the president some hope. The girl was shocked and asked, are you really going to play games with such a dangerous person? The main character answered, why not? Because he was not afraid of anything on his way. At this time, he received a message that the constellation Lava Cat was urgently calling him. It was clear from Randy's face that he was unhappy and asked what was the matter. Lava Cat said that the constellation of dreams and greed says that Randy needs to prepare for the battle of the constellations. The main character was surprised because he did not expect this to happen very quickly and asked who his opponent would be. His opponent was a constellation named Traitor with a poisoned blade. He requested a battle against Randy, who was called Constellation the Invincible Training Avatar. The main character thought that he had finally made his move, but for him, it was very sudden. Randy began to look at all the news that was happening and wondered if this Jerry Cooper, whom he saw with the president, understood what was happening. The goddess was resting and said that nothing like that had happened. He just harbored a big grudge against Randy. The main character wondered what kind of grudge he could harbor against him because he didn't remember anything. 
The goddess said that he crushed his performer. This was a great shame for the constellations. The events of the Battle of the Constellations must be fair. All the constellations on Earth guarantee this. The constellation angrily said that he would not rush into battle, which was beneficial for the avatar of training. After all, it will be an absolute shame in front of other constellations. Suddenly he received a message that a traitor was recommending the creation of traitors. The main character looked at this and could not understand what it meant. Then they explained to him that the creation of traitors. This is a battle of the constellations, where victory is determined by whether you can convince the performer's servant to betray his constellation. Of course, such a constellation battle mainly benefits the traitor constellation. The system began to show him that throughout the history of the battle in the constellations, there were a lot of traitors. And you have to be very careful and not trust anyone. The warrior of madness and blood says that the avatar of training is not a fool and would not accept such a ridiculous offer. The main character looked at this message and did not understand what he was doing here. Traitor made the constellation battle private so that other constellations could not watch it. The other constellations were very angry with him because on the one hand it was disrespect for the other constellations. Constellation is a traitor, arrogantly provokes Randy and says that he is afraid of him. The main character found this quite interesting because this was the first time he had heard about it in all his time in the abyss and he thought about convincing the enemy's servant to come over to his side. Randy began to think, and one thought came into his head. After all, if you think about the people who directly entered into a contract with him, there are only two commas, Hyung and Odaigon. More importantly, Randy already knew one person who had entered into a contract with this constellation. Without thinking twice, the main character said that he accepted this challenge. The Avatar began using Blood Fortress as a bet. Another constellation was very surprised by this, and he asked himself the question, should he agree? He smiled and said that this is very stupid because does the training avatar really think that in the creation of traitors, you can win with the help of force? He decided to agree to Randy's proposal. The constellation trader began to install a box for storing the disappeared relics as a bet. Both sides made equivalent bets. The contract was concluded with the consent of both constellations. In case of defeat, a person's existential strength will be significantly weakened and he may lose his position in the constellation. Randy thought that this was rather unfair because he was exhibiting territory and his opponent was a product. However, the contract has already been concluded and there is nowhere to go. The main character thought that there was a very powerful item in this box. He was very curious about what it was. The traitor avatar sent him a message and thanked him for accepting his offer. The main character did not want to talk to him much and asked if he was ready for battle. The Avatar of Betrayal said that he would throw his avatars at him and they would see how Randy dealt with them. Randy noticed that his opponent was very confident in himself and understood that he would have to start fighting right now. At this time at night on Earth, the sound was very audible in the Parker mansion. Jerry Cooper got into his car and called Parker an old git and hoped that he would die soon. The security guard thanked Jerry for the very hard work he is doing. They started driving when a policeman was in front of them. They understood that this could end very badly because their business was illegal. A policeman approached the car and said that they were speeding. I asked them to get out of the car for a moment. The driver was very unhappy and did not agree that they were speeding. Jerry Cooper asked what the problem was. The guard replied that he was very sorry, and he promised that they would quickly sort out this problem. The security guard got out of the car and immediately began to threaten the policeman. After all, how dare he stop Parker's assistance? Randy was wearing a police uniform. The guard grabbed him by the shoulder and said that he had made a big mistake, and he asked where this policeman was from. The main character did not talk to him and knocked him out using the point block ability. The blow was directly to the carotid artery. The security guard fell unconscious, and his glasses flew out from the fall. The other guard driving was very surprised because no one had ever treated them like that before. The main character sat in the back seat of Jerry Cooper and told the driver to start the car because he would feel bad. Jerry Cooper immediately started shouting at him and saying that he had attacked the wrong person. He asked him if he knew who he was. Randy replied that if he didn't know, he wouldn't be in that car. Jerry Cooper began to worry. He was afraid that he might be deprived of his life. He promised that he would give him a lot of money if he left him alone. If he disappears, a big hunt will begin for Randy. Other hunters will pursue him. The main character did not listen to this and hit his neck to stun his ligaments for a while. After all, he thought that Jerry Cooper was very noisy. Jerry Cooper did not understand what was happening to him because he could not utter a word. 
Randy pointed his finger forward and told them to drive straight. If the driver did not listen to him, he would make a hole in his head. The driver was very afraid and said that he would obey any of his orders. Jer Cooper began to understand a little. He had heard about the constellation of the invincible avatar of training. He asked Randy what constellation this was. The main character realized that he did not know that he was a constellation and replied that you are an amazing and strong constellation. He looked at Jerry and said that he had no right to choose. After all, if he refuses Randy, then in case of refusal, he will kill the constellation that Jerry serves. Jerry realized that there was no point in deceiving because he knew that Jerry served two constellations at once. He took Randy's side and said that he would trust the avatar of training. After these words, Randy's existential strength increased greatly. The main character said that there would be a big hunt for Jerry because he changed sides. Randy promised to take care and would not let him be offended. Jerry grabbed his head and thought that he had already contacted three constellations in his life and could not understand how he got to this point. At that moment, Randy's phone rang. He couldn't figure out who it was because there was an unknown number written on the phone. The main character got out of the car and one constellation addressed him. And Randy asked if he didn't want to take everything that the Huang Dragon had. The main character thought for a couple of seconds and realized that you were in the constellation of a traitor. He smiled and realized that the constellation had called him. I didn't know that Randy was a constellation himself. The constellation thought Randy was the Avatar. That's it. The only known minion of the Avatar of training is Randy himself. They believed that these were two different people. That's why the constellation trader called Randy to force him to give the Avatar training. The trader constellation will never guess that Randy is the Avatar of training. The constellation told him to think about it. After all, he will have the enormous wealth of the Huang Dragon. The main character decided to get confused by the constellation and said that his master told him that the battle was over a long time ago. The constellation of betrayal thought that Randy was starting to bluff. Constellation thought that the avatar of training warned him to say this. The main character raised his hand and it was revealed that the training avatar announced his victory. According to the rules of the battle of the constellations, which all the constellations swore to abide by the rules, therefore the avatar of the tones won. The constellation of betrayal was very shocked and did not understand how he succeeded. He held his head and did not understand how he could lose, because he did everything right as he always did. At this time, there is a fortress of blood in the world. The moon was shining very bright. The main character was there and began to receive his good prize. A chest appeared in his hands. Ownership of a vault of faded relics. Placed as a bet in the battle of the constellations, this principle passed on to the main character. Although he was curious, Randy decided not to open it now and decided to open this chest later. A notification came from the system. It was written there that his rank among the earthly constellations had increased. And now the main character is in 125th place. Randy thought that he was stronger. And after this victory, he only moved up two places. At that moment, a message came from the constellation of betrayal. He asked how he did it. The constellation of betrayal thought that he was able to find out who is who, otherwise it is simply impossible. The main character said that he had no reason to answer these questions, and with the help of his technology, he turned off this message. He looked and saw the monsters whom he taught martial arts. They were working in the field at that time. They worked for a very long time. Sweat was all over their bodies. But they liked the smell of sweat because it calmed them very much. No one believed that this was once a red fortress of orcs. Randy realized that Odegon had tried very hard. The main character could not understand why the orcs plowed with their axes. He thought it was part of their training. For the main character, it was very touching. The orcs noticed Randy. They called him master. It was clear from their faces how much they respected him and were glad to see him. All the orcs began to run up to Randy and inquire about his adventures. Randy said it must have taken a lot of work to make this place so beautiful. The first orc said that not at all. It was just great training. The second orc boasted and said that he could collect grain stalks with one swing of his axe. They shouted that they wanted to work even more. One orc promised that he would do more of the earth and collect even more grain. The main character was shocked. He did not expect that the orcs had changed so much and became prettier. After all, at first they were not particularly trusting, but now they began to train so hard through sweat and tears. Randy raised his hands up and shouted good. He promised that he would increase the sowing and harvest even more and he shouted that this was all one big training session. The orcs supported his words, and everyone began to shout with joy. The main character paid attention to the harvested crop and thought that first he would need to test this harvested rice and cooking. After all, he hasn't done his favorite thing, 
cooking for a long time. One of the orcs ran to Randy with very high speed. He knelt before him and said that he had a request. Swear an oath with your life and honor. This orc's name was Garagancha. Randy asked what happened to him and how he could help him. Garagancha shouted that he wanted to raise animals because this was his big dream. Randy thought that he was leading someone like a hydra. The orc said no. Odaigon once said that his race fattened and killed livestock for food, and they wanted to try it too. The main character thought that they needed to smoke cows and the like. He thought that this would be a very good experience for them. Randy said that was good and promised that he would find a couple of animals and give them to them. The orc said that his kindness knew no bounds, and they began to swear allegiance to Randy. The main character turned and said that he would return in time. He picked up the chest and began to think, maybe he should already see what's inside. He threw this chest up because this was the only way this chest could open. When the chest began to open, a very large yellow flash appeared. The seal on the vault of faded relics has been lifted. This is a sacred object containing the power of an elf of ambitious light. It was a sacred necklace containing the power of light. The goddess said that this is a sacred object. Sacred object. An item created for the minions of the constellations to use their powers. Such artifacts work like clones since they contain part of the stential power of the constellation. The main character looked at this necklace and did not understand where it came from. In the constellation of the traitor. After all, the Elf of Light is quite a strong constellation. Follower the constellation actually doesn't think as much as he imagined it. It is highly likely that he simply stole it and was not noticed. Then the main character realized that this was the temple of the Elf of Ambitious Light. He reached out his hand and decided to take this necklace. And I thought that maybe he would do something with this one territory. Randy hoped that this necklace would help the orcs as well. The main character decided to bring cattle for the orcs from his planet and just decided to test his skills with soul stones. When he looked at the screen, he was surprised that there were a lot, although on the one hand, the constellation of the traitor did not put many soul stones. A lot of holograms appeared. The main character was shocked that he had not read so many messages and did not know quite a lot about the abyss. Randy decided to share a little with the goddess of Libra. The goddess of Libra used to give him precious stones when Randy needed it. On the one hand, the goddess of scales was quite poor, and this would have been very useful to her. Even though Randy has more of them now, it's not nearly enough. He wanted to give the orcs buildings to use. A traveling merchant appeared selling destinies, and he asked Randy what he was looking for. The main character looked at him and remembered that he had seen him before, and I bought various items from him that did not always help. The goddess looked at it from the side and was surprised that this seller was still selling. After all, he started his trade a long time ago. The main character asked the goddess if she knew him. The goddess said that she knew him a little. It seemed to her that he had stopped doing business because he had made too many enemies, but apparently the goddess was wrong. Randy wondered if he was selling illegal goods. On the one hand, Randy thought that this was just a business for him, and there was no point in doing it. The main character recalled that he had made a deal with him in the past and was sure that everything would go fine. After all, last time he sold him the goods honestly. Randy decided that he would buy goods from him and asked the merchant what he had for him to buy. The merchant handed him a blue box. He was called the traveling merchant of selling fate. He recommended to him a decent box of onions that he had just received. This box had a middle-class feel. Randy felt that this was not suitable for him and replied that he needed buildings. The traveling merchant says that he just needs servants who are good at building buildings. The main character heard his answer and was surprised that he had not thought of it himself. The goddess told Randy that even the thought of orcs becoming farmers was laughable. Randy asked what's wrong. Are servants capable of training orcs to build buildings? He believed that this would not harm him. The goddess began to think and thought that the orcs became capable of farming thanks to the power of the avatar of training. After all, thanks to the power of the avatar of training, they became much smarter and more hardworking. Truly, it was incredible power. Randy decided to look in his wallet and saw that he did not have enough money. The main character was very scared to talk, but he asked the merchant to give him a discount. The traveling merchant is confused by Randy's question and asks if you just won the Battle of the Constellations. And what kind of discount do you want? The main character said that he could not give more than 7,770. The traveling merchant was shocked by his shamelessness. The traveling merchant says that he provides such a service only this time and that this will not happen again. Randy smiled and thanked the traveling merchant for his understanding. When the merchant comes and leaves, Randy holds this box in his hands, and I decided that I could open it right now. 
When he just opened the box, a very bright yellow light came from this box. The box opened completely, strong steam came from this box and the bright light increased even more. The main character looked up and began to understand that something incomprehensible was being formed from this steam. From this steam, the shin of a wonderful mountain was formed. He was very tall. Lava's kitten suggested calling him Rocky. The main character did not know what to call him because it seemed to him that even the most devoted would hate such a name. Randy began to think about what to call him, and after five minutes he decided that his name would be the Heavenly King Guardian of the Weather. The main character pointed his finger at him and said that from now on, he will be the Heavenly King protecting the weather. Heavenly King. The Guardian of the Weather is touched by the name given to him. After all, no one had called him before, and he was very pleased that they had come up with a name for him. Randy asked what skills the Heavenly King had. The Heavenly King replied that he was able to control stones. Randy was very happy with this answer and asked him to teach the orcs how to build a building out of them. The golem was stunned, and he asked Randy if he really wanted him to train the orcs to build a building. The main character did not understand why he was so surprised, and answered what was wrong here. The next day, many people gathered in one of the most expensive cafes. To this cafe inside the building of the Icaros clan, Randy was with his manager. The girl began to congratulate him because she heard that he had been promoted to B-rank. Randy did not give any reaction and said that everything was clear to me. The girl was surprised by his reaction and asked why he was not happy. The main character replied that as you get older, you stop enjoying your promotion. The girl smiled and said that it was strange to hear this from a person who looked so young. The girl almost forgot but told him this news. She reached for her purse and said that there was a request for a match. The main character became interested in what kind of match it was. She took out a white piece of paper from her bag and said that, of course, this was a fighting match. The girl thought that Randy would refuse this time because he had a lot to do and Urendi would have less time to prepare. The main character asked her why she thought so. The girl replied that because it is obvious that this time they just want to get even for Maximilian. In addition, this time the opponent will be a hunter who has entered into a contract with an elf of ambitious light. The main character looked at the piece of paper and saw a picture of his opponent. His opponent's name was Christopher Winter, B-Rank Hunter. The girl added that he is not yet included in the rating since he became ranked relatively recently. The girl said that Randy could refuse since they proposed the fight suddenly and Randy will have less time to prepare. Without thinking twice, the main character said that he agreed because he believed that this fight would only be a plus for him if he won this fight. Randy said that this is not just a match. After all, he also wanted to take advantage of this opportunity to promote martial arts. The girl couldn't understand what he was talking about, what martial arts he could use on himself. This was Randy's plan. Before the fight, he would tell the people what skill he was going to use in the arena and then use it to win in the arena. This will make people delighted and interested in martial arts. The main character asked the girl what she thought about his plan. The girl partially agreed with him. It seemed to her that this would greatly increase the interest of the crowd, but you don't think that many people will analyze your skills. Randy thought about it and said that this would also need to be taken into account. The girl asked if he could do something about it because your military techniques will be on public display. The girl bent over a little and said that she agreed with him. After all, he won't listen to her anyway. The girl promised that she would prepare everything that was needed, but she understood that he would not be able to train alone, and she asked Randy if he had anyone in mind. The main character smiled and said that of course there is. After some time, he came to the Ikaros training center, in which I often trained. He asked Elizabeth for a request and told her all about his plan. The girl didn't think for a long time and answered that of course she would help him. The main character told her that this is not just training. It will be removed and used for advertising purposes. The girl didn't think for a long time and said that this completely suited her. Elizabeth told them to go to the ring and train a little and prepare for this event. After all, this should be 100%. They stood opposite each other. The girl believed that she was ready for this fight and wanted to take revenge on Randy for the previous defeat. She took a fighting stance and wanted Randy to notice how she had grown in martial arts and more because she had been training for this all the time. Randy looked at her and thought that she realized that she would be severely beaten if she closed the distance too much with a martial artist like me. The girl said that she was not going to attack him and shouted for Randy to start attacking her. The main character was surprised that she was not going to attack. Randy smiled. He took a fighting stance and said, if she wants it so bad, then I will attack first. The main character used his speed and collected some mana into his fist. 
he understood that he should not overdo it too much because one mistake and he could injure his friend. With great difficulty, the girl was able to repel his attack, but she understood that he was too fast and she could not keep up with his speed. Elizabeth leaned back. She thought that she was very lucky that she was able to repel such a quick attack, but the push was still too strong. The girl told herself that she needed to come to her senses and calmly start the magic counter, but she had to do it very quickly because if she became even a little slower, Randy would not let her do it. The girl used one of her fastest attacks. She called this attack Earth Slash. Elizabeth used her sword to create powerful pink energy. The main character understood that this was not a hindrance for him and concentrated quite a lot of energy in his right hand. Randy didn't even get close and attacked his long ranges with a technique called energy laser. The girl began to get angry with herself. Well, as expected, this did not give anything. Since the girl has no time for magic, she needed to transform her remaining magical powers into martial arts. Randy was right in front of her. The girl used her fast technique and released blue energy. She understood that this was one of the last ones and the one she had. Randy was surprised. He didn't expect that she was capable of this. He thought that she was slower and weaker. The main character stopped this blow without straining. The girl was shocked how he was able to calmly hold the sword with both hands. Randy smiled. I answered the girl that it was not a bad attack at all, and he did not expect such a technique from her. He decided to increase his strength a little and hit the girl with a pinwheel. This blow sent the girl flying a fairly long distance. After this blow, the girl could no longer get up and continue the battle. She lost this fight. After a while, when the girl came to her senses, she found herself in the restroom. The girl held her head and was very angry because she was sure that this time she would definitely defeat Randy and she couldn't forgive herself for such an offensive defeat. Randy looked at her from the side and did not understand why she was so upset and decided to ask her about it. The main character noticed that compared to the first fight, the girl had significantly improved her abilities and decided to look at her skill using his eye. He received the full details of the girl, Elizabeth Gutierrez, level 247, strength 541, agility 305, stamina 24, mana 26, intelligence advanced magic, acceleration. The magic sword was quite strong. The girl had a B rank. Randy was a little surprised and told the girl that her martial art of rank F had already become B. And he asked, did she really eat and train all the time? The girl was very happy that Randy appreciated her abilities. Elizabeth asked how he knew. Does it really become visible when you reach a certain level in martial arts? Brandy didn't tell her about the ability of the constellation's eyes and replied that it could be seen from the outside. Elizabeth began to be a little modest. She was very pleased that Randy praised her. She hid it for the sake of her own pride. The main character couldn't believe it a little that they were telling him this. Then he began to understand more what it means to be a constellation. Randy continued talking to the girl when he suddenly heard someone address him by name. He looked at his face and remembered that he had seen it on the piece of paper of his future opponent. The elf said that he was very glad that he was able to meet Randy. The goddess also felt his mana and said that he was a mortal who had entered into a contract with an elf of ambitious light. The elf extended her hand to Randy and began to introduce himself, saying that his name was Christopher. The main character said that this is the private territory of the Akaros clan, and he asked if he had permission to enter. Christopher smiled and said that he did not have this permission. Well, since we are fellow hunters, then there is no great need for this. Randy began to stretch his hands because he was very angry that he is one of those who thinks that he can do whatever he wants since he is a hunter. Christopher said that he was not like that and would never take advantage of it. And he said that he was a nobleman with dignity. Randy thought he was joking with him and said that there is no nobility in America. Christopher began to prove his point and said that he was telling the complete truth. I am a nobleman from the United Kingdom. In simple words, he called himself a count. Randy said that he completely understood him. Well, in any case, what did the hunter from the UK forget here? Elizabeth told Randy that the United Kingdom is one of the places ruled by a constellation of demonic gods. Christopher pointed his finger at the rent and said that his master wanted to see him as his servant. Randy was very surprised by his words and did not understand one bit what kind of owner he was talking about. Christopher said that he understands how surprised they are now. You most likely think that you are unworthy of my master, who is chasing beauty. Randy asked Christopher, are you trying to compete with me now? Elizabeth replied that it seemed true. Christopher said that more importantly, I already have a master whom I serve, and he heard about the invincible training avatars. 
Christopher threw up his hands and said that it didn't matter to him at all. The main character began to understand what he was leading to and asked whether he really hopes that Brandy will betray his clan. Christopher said that in no case because you can have two owners, of course, if the constellation agrees to it. Randy said that he was not sure about this and asked why his constellation was willing to go so far for him. Christopher said that it was because of Randy's battles. The constellation really liked how Randy fought and decided to hire him as his avatar. The main character said that he is absolutely right because the martial arts that I have honed for more than 10,000 years have beauty of the highest grade. Randy asked if he would receive any benefit from the help of the Elf of Light. The goddess said that there is no useless power from the constellations. The main character, without thinking twice, replied that he accepted the offer. Christopher was surprised and did not expect Randy to accept the offer and so quickly. Christopher said that right now he can't become a servant. First, you need to show your beauty in a battle with me, which will happen soon. The main character asked what beauty and what does it mean? Elizabeth herself did not understand what he was saying. Randy whispered to Elizabeth, maybe he wants to beat him to a pulp like I did before. The girl replied that there was a very high probability that this was so. Christopher turned and said that it was time for him to go, since all our differences had been resolved. Randy grabbed him by the shoulder and told him to wait another minute because he still had a couple of questions. The main character said that he arrived just in time. After all, he needs help with filming. Christopher couldn't understand what Randy was talking about and what kind of filming he was talking about. At this time in Korea, Lee chang Sik's office. The man looked at the hunters and did not understand how it was possible to be such weak hunters. You can't even call them a team. The man held his head and said that they are now everywhere. Plus, these participants simply have zero teamwork. Suddenly, he saw an incomprehensible video that was displayed to him. He read that these were the basics of martial arts. He saw Randy in the video. He was very surprised that your art had not yet lost popularity. The man clicked on the video. He was very interested in what would happen. In the video... Randy said that he wanted to take this chance to tell people interested in martial arts what it is and how to practice it. Christopher looked at it from the side and could not understand what was happening. Randy said that his opponent would be Christopher from Europe. Christopher immediately said that this was not so, that he was from the UK. Randy took a fighting stance and said that then they would begin. And first he will show basic brush techniques. Christopher still didn't understand what was happening and was afraid that he was going to be beaten. The man looked at this video with his mouth open. I couldn't believe that he was teaching this for free. At the same time, at Hyun's house, he was talking on the phone with his daughter. His daughter told him that Randy started making videos on YouTube. This video was about martial arts training videos. Hyun was simply shocked by this news and could not believe that Randy was being taught this absolutely free of charge. The girl said that what has been done cannot be returned. This will become part of his image in advertising. Young looked at the comments under the video and was surprised that people took it quite well. The girl added that the wallpaper interview was about to begin and advised him to watch it if he wanted it. The first question was asked by journalist Randy, Hunter Randy, you published a martial arts video right before the fight. Does this mean that we are confident in our victory? Surprisingly, Hunter Christopher also appeared in this video, you two know each other. The main character replied that they knew each other and said that Christopher was looking for him to help him with the video. Christopher was unhappy with his answer and said that it was not true. The journalist asked Christopher a question and asked him why he chose the hunter Randy. Doesn't he have a huge selection of opponents? Christopher was very excited and didn't even know what to answer them. One of the journalists said that this was revenge for Maximilian. After all, they have the same constellations. But one journalist said that he and Randy appeared in one video and they would have a pretty good relationship. The journalist began to think that he was paid. The main character interrupted the journalist and said that the answer is very simple, that Christopher wanted to study with him. All the journalists were surprised by this answer. The magazine asked Christopher if this was really true and asked him to answer. Christopher was very angry with Randy. He was angry and thought that he could not say anything because the Christopher constellation wanted to get Randy. Christopher looked at Randy. He wanted to quickly see how good he was during the fight. The next day, all the people gathered in the arena to watch Randy and Christopher fight. Most people supported Randy. In the last fight against Maximilian, almost no one supported Randy. The main character entered the arena and was quite surprised when he saw so many people who came to watch his fight. Randy said that there are a lot of people here. If this fight became known at the last minute, the girl took him by the shoulder and said that Randy should be happy about this. After all, this speaks volumes about Randy's popularity. Its popularity is growing rapidly. The main character felt even stronger. He felt a huge fluctuation in loyalty. 
If he wins, he will be able to maintain this devotion. This is Randy's advantage over other constellations. He can receive devotion from mere mortals. The girl waved her hand at him and told him to do everything as usual. In any case, his opponent does not represent anything. They both entered the arena, they looked into each other's eyes, and the two of them wanted the fight to begin quickly. The public looked at it from the outside. They also wanted this fight to start quickly, because they paid a lot of money to watch this fight. One viewer asked another viewer if he had seen the videos Randy uploaded. The guy replied that he saw it, and he tried to repeat after him, and it turned out to be too easy. One of the spectators says that he liked the footwork technique. I think they will be effective in dodging monster attacks. But no one understood why Randy revealed this to the public. You other hunters kept this an absolute secret and gave such information for crazy money. The main character took a fighting stance. Personal seconds remained before the battle. Randy told himself that he should not relax under any circumstances. Christopher began to use his power. He was excited to see how Randy would pass his test. And will he get to his avatar? Christopher used a fragment of light. His body turned into lightning. It was a constellation technique that he acquired quite recently. Christopher used a technique called the baptism of light. A circle appeared behind him, which made a very strange sound and gave strength to Christopher. The main character did not understand what was happening. Suddenly, he was surrounded by yellow flashes filled with energy. He understood that now they would start shooting at him. This technique was called the vortex of light. It was effective in that the technique struck from all sides. But thanks to his speed, the main character managed to defend himself and dodge this attack. Commentators were in complete shock and said that this was an incredible attack from Christopher. No one thought that Christopher was so strong and had such powerful techniques. Everyone thought that Randy could handle it in a couple of seconds. The main character appeared above Christopher and was sure that he would give him a good blow. While Christopher managed to use his technique and dodge Randy's blow, the main character realized that he was quite strong, even if no one dodged his attack so confidently. Christopher appeared above Randy and said that this is a very dazzling and strong speed. The main character began to understand what was happening because Christopher said that this was a test. Then he borrowed the powers of his constellation. But Randy's powers are much limited. Randy thought that it had been a long time since he had fought with such interference. Christopher said that it was his turn to attack and used his next attack, which was no weaker than the previous one. This attack hit over a large radius, but the main character with the help of his speed could dodge this attack. Randy was wondering what the power is in the constellation elf. Now he sees that it is quite complex and has a number of applications. The main character understood that he was a better warrior and a rather difficult opponent. Randy said that there might be a little trouble with him. However, since it is not magic, but a borrowed existential power. The main character used great power and tried to hit Christopher again, but it was no use. Christopher Christopher was able to dodge his attack again. From this blow, there was a very powerful vibration. Shards of stone scattered throughout the arena. After this blow, the main character began to understand his power, that he was using only half of his existential power. Christopher realized that Randy was quite smart because he used shadows to compensate for the power of the light bullets. Christopher said that he was amazed by him because he has very quick wits in a dangerous situation, and for him it was very beautiful. Christopher used his next attack. He gathered energy in his finger and said that he wanted to look at Randy's close combat. This was quite dangerous because the main character was very dangerous at close range as a martial artist. Christopher said that he hopes that he will also pass this last test well. Randy said he was tired of it and needed to talk less. They faced close combat. It was incredibly fast speed on both sides. The main character had blue mana. Christopher had yellow mana. Randy's fist collided with Christopher's sword, and it was a fairly even battle. Randy looked at this and was shocked that the constellation sword was quite strong. Well, even if that was the case, Randy had plenty of such battles in the abyss. The main character managed to land the first blow on Christopher and hit him right in the chin. This blow caused him to bleed from his mouth. This blow caused him very severe damage. Randy said the sword may be powerful, but his new body is weak in comparison. The main character began to beat him. Christopher's face was completely covered in wounds on all sides. He couldn't believe that his recovery speed couldn't keep up with him. At that moment, Christopher realized that this is the advantage of martial arts. He realized how powerful martial arts are. He blocked and said that it was simply incredible. He would never have thought that he was winning so gracefully. Randy smiled and thanked Christopher for the compliments that were given in battle. Christopher began to wave his arms and shouted that this battle was over for him, and he was honored to fight against Randy. After this blow, 
Randy stood on his feet, and his opponent lay practically unconscious. Christopher stood up and said that he didn't remember anything, not even the fight itself, and asked why his body hurt so much. The main character thought that as expected, he doesn't remember anything at all. After all, his body was controlled by a constellation. Christopher pointed his finger at him and said that his master recognizes such beauty in his work. Randy passed the test. All the spectators were simply delighted. They all stood up and started clapping for both fighters for such a good fight. The Elf of Light gives him the thanks of light. The main character held quite powerful energy in his hands, which will give him quite a lot of power in the future. Randy received the thanks of the light, rank A. He became stronger in using the power of light to protect his beauty and dignity. Randy was surprised that this was a rank skill. He thought that this constellation was quite generous. The next day in Hyun's office, he looked at the screen monitor and said that the inevitable message had arrived. His daughter also came in and asked why her father called her. After all, he knows that she is very busy at this time. Hyun got straight to the point and said that Korea had contacted them. The girl was very interested in this, and she asked about what. The girl immediately got scared and thought that the Korean government was asking for Randy to be returned to them. And he said that's not true, and they asked us for sparring. International sparring. During the Great Hunter era, the countries decided to work closely with each other. America and Korea have become so close that they even hold clan sparring matches. The girl immediately understood what it was about and asked if they asked for a fight with Randy. Hyung replied that she was right. The girl said that they should decline their request and believe that this would be the right decision. Hyun said that this is so, but there is one reason. He said that it would be good if he came after all. It was a good opportunity for the Hyung to increase his existential power. The girl waved her hands and said that since there is a reason, then you just need to take it and accept this offer. Isn't sparring necessary for both sides to learn something? Hyung was very worried that Randy would become very close to these people. The girl asked her father why he was acting like a child. At this time, near the large building of the clan and Koros, the girl told Randy not to get too close to them because they could be quite dangerous. The main character thought that this was a good offer for him because he had not traveled to his homeland Korea for a long time. Randy thought it would be great if someone went with him. He asked Elizabeth to go with him to Korea, but the girl said she didn't want to, and she's busy training and learning new skills. Smallwood said that he really likes Korea, but this time he will not be able to go there. Randy began to get upset because he thought that someone would go with him. This was very unexpected for him. Anthony shouted at Randy that he didn't even ask him and that this offended him very much. The main character was surprised. He did not expect that Anthony was waiting for him to ask him. Anthony shouted that he is not as simple as he seems. Anthony turned on his character again and said if Randy calls him, he won't refuse. Plus, he wanted to show him the results of his martial arts training. Smallwood said that it was very wonderful and advised Randy that he should take it because together it is much more fun. At that moment, Elea ran up to them. She found out that Randy was going to Korea from Elizabeth. She asked him to take her with him. The main character began to think about who to take. On the one hand, he could take Alea because she spoke a little Korean. The next day, they flew to Korea by plane. The journey was quite long and tiring. The girl asked why they were flying to Seoul, because they would be sparring in Chungju. Randy replied that first he needed to go somewhere important. They flew to North Korea, in Seoul National Cemetery. The main character bought flowers and went to the person he wanted to remember. He didn't say anything at all and asked why they came here. The main character did not want to reveal who he wanted to meet and simply said that he needed to meet someone. He approached the largest monument in the cemetery, it was a monument to the hunters who died during the gate invasion. Randy was very upset. Most likely, if he had not gone into the wasteland, he still would not have saved these hunters. Well, I read that their death will forever remain a heavy burden in his heart. When he laid flowers on the monument, he noticed that there was another bouquet of flowers. And I was surprised that someone had already come here and left flowers. Anthony saw a familiar face and said that this was a hunter of the first generation rank, Ice Emperor of Iron Blood. The main character heard his name. He became interested in who could have such a great name. It turns out they knew each other. This guy's name was Chansik. He told Randy that he did not choose this name for himself because those around him gave him this name for his exploits. Chansik told Randy that quite a long time had passed and he suggested letting go of these different conversations and asked Randy why he came to Korea. Anthony was very surprised why he didn't know each other and asked Chansik how they knew each other. Chansik said that he still clearly remembers the same blow that killed the Forderinger demon during the invasion. 
Anthony was a fan of his and said that you were the most beautiful blow in the history of hunters. Chunsik thanked him for such praise, however. He asked Anthony to talk to his old friend whom he had not seen for so long. Ilya thought that Hyung said that the girl should prevent our conversation with the Iron Blood Ice Emperor when we meet. Randy asked Chansik if he had really been waiting for so many years to meet him. Chansik said that he was wrong, and it just happened that they met. Chansik wanted Randy to go back to Korea and train with him. The main character said that he is not sure about this, and so far he hasn't thought about it. Chansik told Randy if he was thinking about going back to Korea, he better not do it and not come back. The main character was surprised by this because he thought that he would call him in Korea, and she asked, what does this mean? Chansik said that he is just saying that since he is doing well in America, there is no need to return to Korea. Chansik turned and said that Hyung, with the strength of the head of his clan, would be much more comfortable living in America. The main character said to Chansik, no matter how much he is offended by him, he will come to his aid at any moment. Chansik smiled and said that he is a rank here, so on the contrary, he should help Randy. Chansik took him by the shoulder and said that in any case, he hopes that the sparring will go very well. After all, Randy's martial arts will be a very good experience for Korean hunters. Chansik turned and began to say goodbye, and he said, perhaps they will meet again if the opportunity arises for them. They came to Jeju Island, Jeju International Airport. All three of them looked around. Anthony was very glad that he saw this large and famous place. The girl asked what they should do at the international battle. The main character said that he had no idea because he had never participated in this. Anthony was very surprised that they did not participate in international battles. And he began to tell that usually, each clan or their hunters share a video from one of their raids. You can choose to show your skills or not, but most just show a small part. There are many cases where important skills were hidden. Therefore, negotiations come into play. The main character asked what kind of negotiations there were. Anthony said it's using things like money, artifacts, and skill information that everyone has. You can exchange them for anything you want. At that moment, one guy approached them. He recognized Randy and asked, just in case, what his name was. The guy's name was Chanwook. He was greeted affectionately. The main character looked at him for a long time. He looked very familiar and was somewhat similar to a Chansik. Randy decided to ask if something connects him with the hunter Chansik Youngwook without thinking for a long time, answered that it was his father. Anthony and Randy shouted in shock. They couldn't believe that Chansik was his father. Changwu couldn't understand why they were so surprised and asked what was wrong here. Randy didn't tell him everything and said that he just looked a lot like his father. And he asked Chanwook what he was doing here at these competitions. Chanwook said that his father did not ask to say anything unnecessary. He just wanted to say hello to Randy. He had heard a lot about him. The main character turned to leave and asked Chanwook if he was hungry. Chanwook replied that he wasn't very hungry. And what did Randy mean? The main character showed his thumb and told him to follow them. They came to an ordinary bar that had already been operating for many years in Korea. And I met a nice woman who was holding a notebook in her hands. She was shocked that Randy came into the kitchen and began to examine all the dishes. The main character smiled and asked kindly for the hostess to lend him the kitchen for a while. The owner said that she allowed him to use her because Randy gave him a lot of money. But she was worried whether everything would be okay and whether he wouldn't destroy her kitchen. He used his mana to heat up the soup. Usually, for a soup to have a deep flavor, it needs to be cooked for a long time. The main character continued to heat the soup and thought that he wouldn't need it if he used martial arts. He took a large package of rice and poured most of it into the slow cooker. He took this rice out of the field that the orcs had grown, and Randy couldn't wait to eat it. After all, the orcs told him that they tried very hard and everything should turn out delicious. Everyone else was sitting at the table, and there was complete silence. Anthony was very tense. He thought that he was very embarrassed and asked himself why everyone was silent. Anthony wanted Randy to come back quickly. After some time, the main character returned with delicious food. This food had a very tasty smell. Everyone looked at the food and said that it looked very appetizing and tasty. Chanwook wasn't very hungry, so he decided to try Randy's food, but the taste. When he ate just one spoon, he shouted that it was very tasty and he had never eaten anything tastier. Anthony continued to eat and said that for the sake of this, it's not a pity to come here. Chanwook supported his words and said that this is the complete truth and the taste is simply excellent. Ilya was in my mood and shouted what he did with the rice. The main character did not understand her reaction and thought that she liked it. The hostess didn't understand why they were making so much noise. She looks completely ill-mannered. The hostess herself wanted to try Randy's food, wanted to try what the food tasted like. When she ate one spoon, 
She was very shocked at how tasty it was and said that she had never eaten anything tastier in her life. They were already leaving the cafe. Chanwook bowed and said that he was very grateful to them. He didn't expect Randy to cook such delicious food. Randy replied that he was just feeding his nephew. Chanwook began to feel that thanks to food, his strength increased greatly. The main character decided to check how much their abilities had increased thanks to him and use the constellation eye. He looked at the three of them and was shocked that their reflexes and strength temporarily increased greatly. Randy began to think that his training ground was his territory. This is because they ate the food made from this rice. Their abilities grew from eating food. The goddess entered the conversation and said that this is the power of the constellation. It is common for things created by a constellation to affect others. The goddess wanted to remind him so that he would not forget that the power of the constellation has no limitations. Chanwick said that he had business in his clan. He had to go. Randy said that he was glad to see him and in any case they would see each other again. The main character looked at him and remembered his childhood friend's father. His son was very polite, just like his father, Chansik. Randy told his friends that it was time for them to move out too. Ilya asked where they were going this time. The main character wanted to say a word when suddenly clairvoyance began in his head. Clairvoyance was activated. He saw a large underwater dragon that would destroy cities. This is the underwater dragon Argo, a dragon monster that will cause enormous damage to the coast of East Asia after breaking out from the sea dungeon. This is a wild monster that spreads destruction, so it is at least class B. This dragon has the same dimensions as an A class, or even higher. People will start to panic. For them, it will be an emergency situation. An underwater dragon appeared near Jeju International Airport. The main character grabbed his head and thought that this spawn had even attacked residential areas. First, you need to let Chansik and Hyung know about this. Ilya noticed that Randy began to behave strangely and asked if he was okay and if everything was fine with him. At the same time in Hyun's office, he was calmly working and minding his own business. I received a text message from Randy saying that they are now on Jeju Island. He told everything, you will soon see the underwater dragon Argo. People here don't know about this yet, so please help them start preparing for this without causing too much panic among them. Hyung was shocked and shouted that he sent him to an international battle a long time ago and did not understand what the hell was going on there. Randy was even more excited to send such important information in such a simple manner. In one of the establishments, a lot of hunters gathered. One of the hunters said that this time our raiding party was able to clear 15 dungeons. One of the hunters couldn't believe that he was bragging about such nonsense and said that they had cleared a B-class dungeon. He pointed his finger at him and said that this was absolutely fair because A was a rank hunter on his team. The guy replied that this is absolutely fair. There are different powers of hunters. The main character passed by and thought that the hunters were quarreling all the time and nothing had changed in such a long time. All the hunters looked at Randy. They heard that he became famous thanks to Inns and his videos using martial arts. Randy was walking straight when he saw a healthy, pumped-up man in front of him. He extended his hand to Randy and said that he had heard a lot about him and was very pleased to meet him. This was a rank six hunter from China. His name was Wei Wei. Randy took his hand and realized that he was a melee damage dealer hunter. He was also very pleased to meet him. The main character felt that Wei Wei was trying to shake his hand with the help of mana. Hunters do this to increase their superiority over their opponents. Randy gained a little strength and won this fight. Vive was in quite a lot of pain. The main character said that he has the right strength and he is quite strong. Vive held his hand and answered that Randy is also very strong. Randy went on his way and told Vive that they would see each other later. Vive's friend was shocked that he lost this fight and heard a crack in his hand. Vive did not want to humiliate himself and said that it seemed to him. Chanwick replied that everything was fine and asked no one to worry about him. After all, Vive likes to show off his strength. Randy asked him if he knew what the international battle would be this time. Chanwook replied that he didn't know anything until the head of the clan said something. Randy said that everything was clear to him, that there was a possibility that it would be climbing a mountain. Chanwook didn't understand what he was talking about and didn't think that there would be climbing a mountain. The main character noticed two hunters laughing. They laughed because of Randy's words about the mountain. Randy approached them and asked, is it really that funny? The hunter replied that, of course, because it was complete nonsense. And they continued to laugh with Randy. The blonde hunter said loudly that if this was really the case, Tonic would climb this mountain naked. At that moment, a man came with his assistance. He was an A-class hunter of Korea's laser dragon sword. His name was Chan. Randy asked Anthony if this is by any chance the piranha leader, 
the team that is holding international battles this time. Anthony said that it was him. This is the laser dragon sword, named Chan. In battle, he can be called an artist. He uses dozens of types of magic with his sword, tearing monsters apart like pieces. Randy remembered meeting him in the past. He was the guy who wet himself in the dungeon. He was very scared then. The main character asked who the girl was standing next to him. After all, she looked pretty strong. Anthony said that Randy should remember these hunters because they are high-ranking hunters. The girl's name was Seika. This is a hunter who received a rank at an early age. The main character looked at her and said that somewhere at least she looks Anthony said that her twin sister fights in the B-class Inns League. Previously, he continued to look at her with big eyes and said that he was not talking about that. After all, she looked very familiar, although in theory, she should have existed because Randy was in the dungeon for 30 years. Chan began to give his speech. On this wonderful day, I would like to thank everyone for participating in the international battle. I will now explain the events that unfolded in this battle. Chan asked everyone to look at the window and said that there they would understand what their test was. He pointed to the mountain and said that this mountain is very high and is called Halasan. He said that this is a beautiful spiritual mountain of our people. This was the case until the gates appeared. When the gate appeared, the mountain was influenced by the abyss and began to appear strange. Climbing a mountain has always been a great workout. Therefore, Chan would like to declare the first event of climbing the mountain. The other hunters were shocked because they said that they would go naked if there was such a task. Chan asked how they liked this idea. Most of the hunters said it was excellent, as expected from a class A hunter. That's why it was called the Laser Dragon Sword, and it was very famous. The main character turned to them and told these hunters not to forget what they need to do with their clothes before starting to climb the mountain. Everyone began to prepare and set off on their way to the mountain. Randy said that they should not hesitate. They should also begin their journey. When they were about to leave, they were met by a girl who had previously seemed familiar to Randy. The main character noticed that she was looking at him unusually and asked her what he did wrong. The girl came closer to him and asked if he knew her. Randy was a little surprised. I couldn't remember where he saw her. Randy said that she is an A-class hunter named Seika. The girl said that she's not talking about that. I'm talking about something completely different. Seika asked him if he really didn't know about her. Randy began to cry out of worry and could not understand who she was. Anthony noticed that Randy was very worried and did not understand what was happening because Randy never behaved like that. The main character asked what her mother's name was. The girl replied that her name was Ju. Sehu was less than 30 years old and that Randy didn't make any assumptions. The main character sighed and said that they were not the same age, and this greatly calmed him down. Her name was Ju, a hunter and also Randy's ex-girlfriend. The main character recalled that Ju told Randy that drinking a chicken breast cocktail was too much. Those were her last words before leaving Randy. Randy remembered two bouquets on the grave and asked Seika if it was she who left this bouquet. The girl replied that it was her and was surprised that Randy was also at this grave. Sehu told everything that her mother died when she was very little. Randy said that he was very sorry. It was very difficult for him to hear this. The girl said that everything was fine and there was no need to talk about it. After all, she just came to say hello since her mother talked a lot about Randy. Sehu turned around and said that she would go. She was very pleased to talk to him. Anthony approached Randy and said that he did not understand the situation, but it seemed to him that he was very much mistaken. The main character said that this situation would be very difficult to explain. Anthony asked if she could be your daughter. The main character replied that it was impossible, but he had doubts in his heart. He looked at her with sadness in his eyes. I remember her mother. After all, she was a very beautiful and intelligent woman. Friends decided to distract him from this sad news. Anthony took him by the shoulder and asked if he could really fly up that mountain. Ilya also took his tooth and said if it was very difficult for him, we would help. Everyone went to Mount Holosan. This mountain was saturated with demons. People began to climb the mountains. There was a very strong fog around them. The hunter was barely visible if he was 2M from the other hunter. Randy looked at everything around him and said that it reminded him very much of the abyss. He couldn't believe that Mount Halasan was in such bad condition. The main character went forward and told his friends to be on their guard because anything could happen. The hunters were monitored by certain cameras that could track all the movements of the hunters. International Battle Control Center Hunters of the highest rank were watching them. They were very interested in who would get there first and who would survive. The girl watched Randy. She was very interested in what he was capable of because he had met her mother before. Chan asked the girl if she knew this hunter, Randy. After all, 
He noticed how she talked to him. The girl asked Chan if he really didn't remember him. You get the feeling that they knew each other in the past. Chan laughed and said that he had met him a couple of times in the dungeon. But that was a long time ago. Suhi decided to question Chan and asked what kind of person he was. The man was taken aback by this question because he didn't know him very well. Chan began to remember Randy and said that he was very obsessed with training. Well, he has always been a hunter who gives his best to whatever he takes on. And he has a good character. The girl smiled and remembered that her mother said the same words to her as a child. Chan could not understand what her mother had to do with it. She began to explain that her mother often praised him for taking care of his body and for his strong sense of justice. The girl suggested that next time they should meet together and talk. After all, they were previously very strongly connected with each other. Anthony looked at the map, and it showed the path where they should go. He told Randy that next would be the Guanuemsa Trail. This trail turned out to be better than the Songpanak Corpse. The main character, without thinking twice, said that he also thought that this path would be much better. Suddenly, an incomprehensible situation happened. Many people began to fly. Illy pointed her finger at them and shouted that someone was flying over there. There were quite a lot of them. Randy said that there is nothing surprising here, and this is the magic of flight. But the main character thought that this was not a very good idea. After a while, these hunters began to have big problems. There was a very strong big magic of space, which did not allow them to advance and fly further. The girl again pointed her finger at them and shouted that they were all falling. Randy was not surprised and said that he needed to prove it. Using the abyss technique, he took out the celestial sword that the president gave him on their last meeting. With a couple of movements of the ball, he cut the tree into pieces. Randy took these parts of the trees and scattered them at the hunters who fell. He did it so he could jump through the air with the help of pieces of trees that he threw. Other hunters watched this, and from the outside it seemed to them that he was jumping through the air. The girl thought it was an air stage. She believed that this was a very powerful technique. Air steps, one of the highest level martial arts, the owner of which is able to walk on air. But Randy simply used his endless internal energy to fly through the sky. It was walking on air, the main character grabbed the hunters who were falling and began to save their lives. Randy grabbed these hunters and brought them down to earth with the help of his martial arts. The main character said that he understands that the competition is important. Well, they should refrain from flying magic in such unstable places. All the hunters thanked him for his help. They were shocked that he had just used the air stages. Randy said they were wrong, and don't you dare say anything strange about it. Which hunters listened to him and said that they would remain silent. Vivi couldn't believe that he was using air stages. And this is only possible for a person who has achieved something incomprehensible to the highest level. One guy from his team asked what he was muttering about, and he asked him to move away so that they could move on. Vive turned and smiled terribly. He said that they arrived just in time. Everyone had a shiver. The Vive team gathered. It was clear to everyone that they were going to do something bad to them. One of the hunters began to understand that their team of strength was getting rid of other teams. In this way, they remove competition and increase their chances of winning. Vivi said that they are absolutely right. They attacked the hunters in order to completely destroy them. Randy at this time told the hunter that his flow of mana had become reversed due to the magic of flight. It will be better for you to take a break. The main character said that this is just a friendly competition. Why get injured here? The hunter agreed with him, and he asked if he was a Randy hunter because they had heard a lot about him. The main character did not answer his question and asked what this meant. The hunter realized that it was him. He smiled and said that he had heard a lot about him and thanked him for saving and helping. Randy began to gain more power. This technique was called the Dignity of Light. This is the power skill that the Elf of the Ambitious Light gave him. The main character did not understand why he suddenly activated, and I didn't understand how it happened. Lava Kitten says that this seems to be a creation skill. Randy wondered what kind of creation, because this is what he specializes in. Randy took the sword in his hands, and said that it would be difficult to make this sword right away. He wondered what would happen to this sword if he put light on top of this sword. Anthony shouted to Randy that they were in big trouble. After all, someone is fighting up there. The main character was a little surprised. He didn't understand why he should do this. It's just a friendly competition. Randy climbed up and saw many unconscious hunters in front of him. He didn't understand who did it and who needed it. Randy thought they were Japanese hunters. He didn't think that the monsters were trying here. The main character began to explain that if they lost to the monsters, then it would be simply impossible to survive. Most likely, they fought with Chinese hunters. Anthony asked Randy if he could figure out who their opponent was. Randy picked up one hunter and said that the wounds were left here thanks to martial arts techniques. 
the hunter woke up and said that Randy was absolutely right, that they were attacked by Chinese hunters, they suddenly went against them in a crowd. Anthony realized that in this way they eliminate competitors. On the one hand, it was very clever. The main character said that he couldn't just leave them and promised to provide him with first aid. The hunter did not understand what he was going to do and asked if he really possesses healing magic. Randy said he wasn't very good at it yet, but he had a couple of experiences. Randy sang his hand and realized that it was just a fracture. Using goddess magic would be overkill. Thanks to martial arts, the main character evened his hand using brute force. It was clear from the hunter's face that he did not expect this. He began to scream loudly because the pain was simply unbearable, but the hand was no longer broken. The hunter was deprived on the ground and died in pain. The main character thought that he thanked him in Japanese, and he said that right now he would help him with his broken leg. Randy touched his leg and asked for forgiveness that he did not understand Japanese. The guy screamed loudly again because the pain was unbearable. Randy said that although it hurts a little, it will be much better later, and he called the next hunter to cure him. The hunters began to say that everything was fine with them and nothing hurt. They were afraid that Randy would cure them because they saw how the partner was yelling. The main character told them not to bullshit him, and I noticed that one hunter's arm was bent. The Chinese hunters continued their journey. They were among the very first. After all, they eliminated almost all competitors. Vive smiled and said that there are no hunters better than them. He really wanted to be the first. For him, it was a matter of honor. One of the assistants started yelling at him and said that they had big problems. Vive asked what happened. He still had a thumbs up and shouted that that person had appeared again. Vive could not understand who he was talking about and what kind of person he was. Vive ordered his assistant to speed up their pace. After all, they can lose because of this. He looked up and saw a hunter using air steps. He realized that it was Randy because no one else could do this except him. The main character was at the top. The road was on his back. It was clear that he was not afraid of heights. It had been his phobia since childhood. He was afraid that Randy would not hold him and would let him go. The main character shouted that they were wrong and these were not air steps. Vive did not hear him and asked what he said. Randy, a man who began his training with an abyssal mana tornado, some kind of space magic won't be able to stop him in the air. Vive was very shocked and did not understand what he was doing. He was very angry that they were driven away. He ordered them to follow Randy. They wanted to eliminate him so that he would not interfere with them. They reached the Panoctum Crater. This crater was said to be one of the largest craters in Korea. Quite a few hunters used to train there. The main character decided to land near this crater and inspect the situation if anyone is near them. Randy began to look in different directions and noticed that no one had reached here yet. He was very interested in where Chanwick was now. Until he became very interested in where they landed and asked Randy what kind of lake it was. The main character replied that this is the Panictum Crater. But Randy heard that he is usually dry, and I didn't understand why it was now filled with water. Randy thought it was all due to the influence of mana. Suddenly everyone notices that very strong bubbles appear from this crater, and a large shadow appears. The main character shouted to his friends so that they all get ready for battle because it will be very difficult. From this crater, a large snake appears. It was this snake that seemed like Randy's introduction. The main character looked at him and realized that it was Argo, big Amugi monster rated as a class. The monster concentrated a lot of energy in its mouth and was about to shoot at Randy and his friends. Everyone wondered what it was. The main character answered that it was the flame of a dragon and they needed to be very careful. Randy used his ability to fight off this attack. This technique was called ultrasound constellation. This collision caused a very strong explosion a lot of fragments that scattered in different directions. Anthony was shocked that Randy could do this too. Ilya was very scared and said that this was a Class A monster and she needed to retreat. The main character looked at this monster and understood where it came from. Although unexpected, it is necessary to stop him here so that the civilians do not get hurt. Randy said that they would not retreat anywhere and shouted that they would kill him. Anthony said he was crazy because there were only three of them and even the strongest hunters could not cope with this monster. The main character told them not to worry, and he will use the power given to him by the constellation. Anthony did not understand his words and what constellation he was talking about. Anthony got angry. He was offended that he was weaker than Randy, and he shouted that he would fight too. Anthony was very afraid and said that even though it was dangerous, since we have the power of the constellations, which Randy serves. Anthony began to use his magic. He was ready to give it his all. He was filled with curiosity. With the help of Anthony's technique, he surrounded this monster with his magic. 
but it was not a very powerful technique compared to this monster. The main character said that, L, you didn't do a great job. Now it's the turn to fight this monster. The main character attacked this monster thanks to his speed in only a couple of seconds. He was near this monster. Randy hit this monster very hard. The monster's jaw broke from this blow. Anthony watched this from the side. He said that it was quite powerful. Well, isn't it too simple for the power of the constellation? Ilya replied that no, and told him to look at Randy's mana reserves. Anthony, thanks to his technique, began to look at his stocks. Magic has been discovered. He looked at him and did not understand how this was possible. After all, he had never seen anything like this. He had mana reserves that only high-ranked hunters have. That is, the power of the constellation gives an increase in mana. There's something fancy. The main character, Bill, is this monster from all sides, but he had to deal more damage to defeat such a big monster. Randy understood something more complicated than he thought, but there was nothing he could do to kill this monster. Advanced martial art, destroying the insides while ignoring muscles and armor. Randy had to learn this technique to survive in the abyss. Argo summoned a huge whirlwind, which began to surround him from all sides. Very strong wind and rain began. This did not say that the weather was becoming simply terrible and unbearable. Well, there was nothing to be done. The main character looked at this monster and said that apparently, he was trying to destroy the surrounding area and return to the sea to recuperate. Well, Randy promised he wouldn't let that happen. He began to fight with full force using the existential power of the constellation. Capture the territory of the invincible avatar of training. His body was filled with mana, which reflected a yellow color. He used the capture of the territory of the invincible avatar of training. His existential power changes this world. Using the name and existence of the avatar, an honorable stage was created for a one-on-one -on -one duel. The main character changed the location of the fight and shouted that no one could escape this fight. His hair turned white because he used all the power of the constellation. After all, he himself was a constellation. Randy felt very good and very strong. Chan and the girl ran to help the hunters. The girl asked Chan why he chose this mountain. Chan replied that he absolutely did not know that there was a ranking monster on this big mountain. The girl shouted that he was to blame, and this must be checked, because because of this monster, a lot of hunters could die. The girl said that this is a very problematic situation. She didn't think that a couple of Ikaro's clan hunters could stop him. After all, this monster is really very strong. Chan remembered Randy and said that he was crazy, and it was unlikely that he would escape from this monster. Chan said that they needed to hurry up and help them defeat this monster. When they got there, they were simply shocked when they saw it. Ilya told Randy to act differently because the photographs would not turn out very beautiful. The main character was already starting to get angry because she had been photographing him for a whole hour. Chanwook said that you are a very good moment and it needs to be captured. Chan and the girl were simply shocked. Chan asked what they were taking pictures against because there was a very huge monster here. They looked carefully and saw a dead snake. They looked at it from the outside and could not believe their eyes. They did not understand how they coped with such a huge and strong A-class monster. Chan came closer and asked how they did it. He believed that it was impossible for you to defeat such a monster so quickly. Chanwook pointed his finger at Randy and said that this hunter did it all alone. Randy defeated such a strong monster quite quickly. Chanwook smiled and said that he was a little late so he didn't see the whole fight. But he was truly amazing. The main character touched the snake and said that he borrowed power from his constellation. After this power, he defeated this monster. Chan was still shocked because he didn't understand how he could defeat a ranked monster, and even alone. The main character turned his back and said that later he would tell about everything, and first we need to cut this monster apart. Everyone was surprised what it meant to cut up. Randy took out a sword and said that he was used to cutting up monsters. After all, they have very tasty meat. The main character began to butcher him. His sword was quite sharp, and he pierced the skin of this monster without difficulty. Chan did not understand how he did it and how he succeeded in everything. He read Randy as a professional monster butcher. The main character cut his stomach and opened it in half. When he looked closer, he noticed something unusual. He put his hand inside this monster and could not understand what it was. He took out a blue crystal. The main character realized that it was called the Soul Stone. The goddess said that the constellation had definitely placed this stone there. Perhaps it was some kind of message. Soul stone, the product is condensed energy of the constellation, can only be used by the constellation. Constellation controlled Argo using the soul stone. The stronger the monsters of the abyss, the more difficult it is to control. Most likely someone was going to use this monster, but ended up abandoning it. Brandy continued to look at that stone and told himself that something was wrong here. 
but first, he decided to finish cutting up this big monster. Quite a long time passed, the main character finally stripped this monster. Quite a lot of meat came out of this monster. Randy smiled because he was very hungry and loved monster meat. He decided to feed it to those who worked hard. Hunters from China were already approaching them. They were very angry that Randy overtook them. One of the hunters pointed with his finger and told them all to look at it. Everyone was surprised and did not understand anything. One of the hunters said that we have finally found them and they are very close to us. They met a hunter who had been beaten by a crowd the last time. Vi Wei was very shocked and did not understand how they recovered so quickly. Come here so that we can break everything for you once again. The hunter told Vive to watch his tongue. They looked into each other's eyes and were very angry with each other. Each of them had a grudge and wanted to take revenge. Suddenly a very tasty smell appeared. Viwe asked what kind of smell it was. It seemed to him that this smell was coming from the top. Another hunter said it looked like someone was frying meat. Vive suggested to the hunter that they postpone their fight for a while. The hunter absolutely agreed with him and said that first we need to check where this smell is coming from. They ran to the very mountain and saw in front of them Randy frying the monster's meat. They were both very surprised and did not expect to see this. The main character said that they arrived just in time. There is a lot of meat, so I thought it would be nice to share it with everyone. Viwei did not understand what was happening and how you could eat monster meat because it could be poisoned. Randy held out his hand with the food and he said that there was a monster here and this is his meat. Vivi took the plate in his hands and didn't know what to do. He was afraid to eat monster meat. After all, there were a lot of rumors about monster meat. The main character looked at his friends and said that they were already gobbling up this meat on both cheeks. After all, it was so delicious. Viwei decided to try this meat because he was ashamed to show fear in front of his clanmates. When he tasted a piece of meat, he had very strong emotions. After all, the cake was very tasty. Chan looked at this from the side and was shocked at what was happening. He looked at all the hunters. Everyone was having fun and talking to each other. They ate monster meat. This has never happened before. Before hunters fought each other to the death. Chen approached Randy and said that these hunters recently fought with each other just like that. The main character continued cooking and said that they had concluded a truce in order to eat. As soon as he finishes, they will most likely fight again. Chan laughed and said that it was still very incredible and he asked for a portion of meat. The main character handed him a plate of meat and told him to help himself because soon this meat will end if everyone continues to eat it at this pace. Randy gave one more portion and asked that the meat be given to Sei. Tell her to strengthen her body with this. The next day, they were at Incheon International Airport. Ilya thanks Randy for making the international battle interesting this time. Randy replied that although a rank A monster suddenly appeared, it seemed that everything ended well. They noticed a man in front of them, the man asked with a serious look. Are you the hunter, Randy? The man said that he was from the Hunter Bureau in Korea, and he asked Randy to talk to him a little because he had a couple of questions. The main character took a piece of paper and read that it said the Bureau of Hunters Affairs in Korea. Randy asked him if he was a high-ranking government official and a hunter at the same time. The man said that this is true and this has been happening for a long time. He said that he came here to resolve a misunderstanding. The main character asked what misunderstanding he might have. The man said that he knows that Randy hates Korea and he came here to talk about this situation directly with him. Randy replied that he feels good about Korea. And what does he mean by this? The man began to explain that he was talking about a great invasion in the past. Due to the fact that our country did not take any serious countermeasures, the Hyung and other great hunters left here. There is no justification for the way the government behaved then. We admit this and repent for our mistakes. The main character apologized and said that he didn't need anything from Korea. He's not looking for any benefit. The man asked what Randy meant. Arena said that of course he was very sad to see how his former Sacklin members were dying or how they were denied compensation. Well, let's start with the fact that I wasn't even in Korea then. Randy said that at that time he was in the abyss. The man asked Randy why he was friends with his Hyung. After all, everyone hates Korea very much because of how the government treated him. Randy replied that he was with him simply because he came to America upon his return and we used to be close with him. The man was surprised because he thought that the situation was much worse than it was. The man was sweating with excitement and thought that he needed to resolve any misunderstandings and build a good relationship with him, but he doesn't even hold any grudges. Then the man asked himself another question, how to persuade Randy to stay in Korea. Randy turned with the first one and said that he had to go because his flight was coming soon. And he asked the man if their conversation was over. 
the man replied that he was very pleased to talk with him and hoped that in the future they would also work together. The main character began to leave and thought that this was a very strange person. He could not understand how he could even rise to such a position because he was not confident in himself. The next day, when Randy returned from the flight, he came to the representative of the dragon before his young. The main character opened the door and said that he had returned from this long trip. He smiled because he was very happy to see Randy. He hadn't seen him for quite some time. Hyun said that he did a great job in Korea and asked what his impression of Korea was. Randy replied that overall, it was pretty good. The main character just sat in the chair and said that something has changed, but some things remained the same. Hyun couldn't understand what he was talking about and said that something else was more important now. He was interested in what happened to the monster Argo. The main character told him the whole story. When Hyung heard the whole story, he thought about the monster that the demon god constellation sent. The main character said that this is most likely. After all, he believed that it was necessary to study this as best as possible. Hyun replied that he completely agreed with him and said that if Randy needed help, he could contact him. Young remembered that one hunter wanted to meet Randy, and Randy asked if he was ready to meet with them. The main character replied that he didn't mind, and he asked who this hunter was. Just at that moment, a hunter came in. He greeted himself and said that his name was Mackenzie Jr. He was very glad to meet him. Mackenzie Jr., Hunter B plus rank from the United Kingdom. A promising first-class hunter, occupying fourth place in the ranking league ends. Hyun said that he would leave them alone. Mackenzie thanked you for your understanding. Mackenzie smiled and said that he had been watching Randy all this time. Randy thanked him for such nice words. Mackenzie took out a ticket and said that Randy probably knows what it is. He put the ticket on the table, and I say that thanks to this ticket, Randy can challenge. League B ranked champion named Glenn Douglas. Glenn Douglas. When it comes to America's most adored hunters, he will always be at the top of that list. At least all participants want to fight the champion. In a place where the battle takes place only by agreement of the two parties, this means that in order to fight a champion, you need to be chosen by the champion. Mackenzie says that due to special circumstances, he can provide this ticket to Randy. The main character was interested in this, but he asked Mackenzie why he needed it. How does he benefit from this? Mackenzie said that Randy is also aiming for the A rank. If you use this chance and become a champion, then he will greatly help himself in achieving the A rank. Randy thought that it was true that defeating monsters alone would not earn him an A rank. The main character asked what he wanted in return. Mackenzie asked Randy to join him in a 2v2 constellation battle. Randy thought about it and said that first we need to clarify everything so that the situation is completely clear. Randy asked McCandy if he served the constellation. Mackenzie replied that yes, his constellation is the fighter of sweat and blood. The main character began to remember what kind of constellation this was. Randy heard that this constellation is not often shown in person. The main character took the ticket and said that although he wants to accept the challenge and help him, but to participate in the battle of the constellations, I don't know anything. It's a little dangerous and strange. The fighter promises Randy a huge amount of soul stones. The fighter says that he will tell him who is behind the Argo incident. The fighter says that he will pay for everything needed for the battle of the constellations. After that, Randy thought a little. He thought and said that from these conditions, he loses nothing. After all, he's even going to tell who is behind the incident with the Argo. Apparently, he really wants to win. The main character asked Mackenzie what this battle was about, and that would be the enemy. Randy was told that it would be a race. Our opponents will be endless explosions, and an observer returning from a cold place. We will fight their minions. Randy began to wonder if this race was coming out of nowhere. He wondered if the goddess knew anything about this. The goddess replied that there was nothing. Perhaps this was an offer made by the constellation, which had a useful toy for the sake of fun. Race of constellations. Each of the constellation servants will strive for the finish line, and whoever reaches it first will win. This is a very simple rule. However, not only is it difficult to even run in the territory of the abyss, it is also possible to attack other participants in various ways, although direct attacks are prohibited. The goddess thought about it and told Randy that he had nothing to ride. The main character said that she was right and he could run. Mackenzie asked him again if he agreed to this unusual deal. Randy thought for a moment, and he replied that he agreed. He decided to take part in this two-on-two -two battle of the constellations. You could see from Mackenzie's face how happy he was about this. He said that he would contact Randy as soon as the exact date of the competition was confirmed. After a while, Constellation Battle Day, Dimension of the Abyss. They started the race. Mackenzie was in his transport. 
and the main character was on normal legs. Everyone was shocked and did not understand what he would drive. Their rivals looked at them. It seemed to them from the outside that they were very weak, and for them it will be a very easy victory. Ice Dragon, it must be from an observer returning from a cold place. The main character noticed that one of his rivals was on a mechanical dragon, and I thought that it was probably from the endless explosions. Although Randy had never seen the mechanical civilizations of the Abyss, they were more advanced than the Earth. Mackenzie asked Randy if his constellation really gave him nothing to drive. The main character replied that he was absolutely right. Mackenzie smiled and said that they need to try very hard. After all, this race will be very difficult. The main character decided to ask him one more question and said that his constellation hates him. Mackenzie didn't understand what he was talking about and asked what Randy meant. Rink said that his animal looks very, very slow. Mackenzie smiled and said, although it doesn't look very fast, in reality it's not like that. This animal is quite very fast. One of the avatars said that these are ordinary people. Weak flesh, bones, and fatigue cannot defeat us. After these words, Randy got angry and thought that this must be entertainment for the constellations. But the servants are serious. The main character promised himself that he would also be very serious and take this 100%. Both parties placed equal bids. The contract has been drawn up. His existential power will not diminish even if Randy loses the battle of the constellations. The battle had already begun. There was very little time left before the race started. The race began. The competitors all rushed forward, but the main character was behind. Randy noticed that he began to lag behind them. He was a little shocked that this pig was much faster than it seemed. There were still rivals ahead of him. These animals were also very fast. One of the opponents looked back and saw Randy running. He believed that the match was between the three of them. That martial arts user can't be counted. They looked at Randy and did not believe that his constellation gave him nothing to ride. It was very heartless. At that moment, meteorites were flying from the sky. There were more than a hundred of them. Randy couldn't believe his eyes. It was moon rain without. One hit and the main character is out and the competition is over. Boulders rain. A phenomenon without in which clouds appear from other areas and rain boulders. Mackenzie was also shocked. He did not expect such a turn of events to happen. Mackenzie began to dodge these meteorites using his fast pig. One meteorite fell very close to Mackenzie. The rivals easily dealt with these meteorites. Their dragons were equipped with laser cannons. The opponent noticed that Randy was sitting on his vehicle and was shocked by such impudence. He shouted at Randy to get off his vehicle immediately. The main character smiled and suggested that they go together because his place is very cozy. The opponent began to push him and shouted that this vehicle was given to him by his owner. The main character did not begin to answer him in response because violence was prohibited in these competitions. A rival robot gave his dragon a task to throw Randy out of his saddle. The dragon began to wag its head to throw it away. Randy could barely restrain himself with both hands because the power of this dragon was quite powerful. Another competitor did not understand what his friend was doing and advised him to concentrate on the race. And then at the end, it drags along. The robot understood that there was nothing to be done here and it was necessary to go forward. A little time passed before the system began to show danger. A danger zone has been discovered. The main character is a saint directly and noticed that it was the poisonous fog of the abyss. This fog can easily carry any system. Mackenzie understood that it would be very difficult and began to drive around this fog. The opponent decided to go ahead and with the help of the dragon, he dispelled this fog. The ice dragon used his technique, which was called a laser beam. This technique is capable of dispelling toxic fog. The robot started using analysis when the analysis was completed. The system has determined that there is no threat. There is a chance that they will be able to get rid of the intruder. The robot looked behind him and was shocked when he saw Randy there. He thought that he had fallen a long time ago. He looked at Randy and didn't understand how he could just sit on a dragon that was swaying in different directions. The robot began scanning his data. Intruder skill confirmed. He has the skill of resisting poison. A person who is immune to the poison of the abyss. The robot believed that this was impossible. The robot was distracted by Randy and did not notice how he fell into a trap. It was a swamp that pulled them down. The main character looked at this trap and thought that this opponent was finishing his competition. Randy jumped out of the dragon and ran further to neutralize another opponent. The robot could not understand how he did it, how weakly the human body is capable of this. The main character began to catch up with them. His task was to distract his opponent. The main character looked at his opponent and realized that he was faster than his ally. 
The main character thought to use some internal energy to break away, even though it would lead to exhaustion. Randy, look ahead and saw in front of you a large tornado that is sucking in everything. Mackenzie was shocked by what he saw and did not understand what the hell it was doing here. Randy smiled and said that something familiar appeared. It was in this tornado that the main character found himself at the very beginning of the abyss. Randy jumped right inside this tornado. No one understood this act because everyone else avoided him from the side. When the main character was inside, he closed his eyes and concentrated. It was similar to what he had encountered in the abyss before. Randy decided to follow the flow, and in this way he plans to get ahead. Jobs was shocked. He did not understand why Randy jumped into this tornado. After all, surviving the mana tornado of the abyss is incredibly difficult. But the main character easily escaped from this tornado. The opponent's constellation was shocked. No one understood how he was able to get out of the mana tornado. Moreover, he increased his mana volume significantly. Randy increased his speed ten times thanks to the power that this tornado gave him. Mackenzie was shocked he had never seen such incredible speed. It was very powerful. Randy crossed the finish line and won the race by a wide margin. The constellation of explosions recognized his abilities. The observer, returning from the cold place, admires what Randy has created. Constellation Mackenzie thanked Randy for such a brilliant victory. After all, he never wanted to lose to this opponent. The constellation gathered round mana in his hand and said that he could not give much, because he himself did not have very much. He hoped that this number of soul stones would be enough as a reward for Randy. The main character became interested in how many soul stones he gave. He saw a package of soul stones. There were more than 50,000 stones. Randy was shocked by such a large number. For him, 50,000 is generally a lot of stones, but on the contrary, it's a lot. After all, throughout his entire life, he did a lot to get just a couple of thousand stones. Constellation Mackenzie, I remembered that I also promised to give him something as a reward. The constellation that called Argo to Jeju Island was the Collector of Noble Crowns. Collector of Noble Crowns, the constellation that destroyed the hunters of Europe and captured the United Kingdoms. Randy said he wouldn't be surprised if it was a demon god constellation. But why would the UK constellation bother with Jeju? Constellation said that the news does not end there and said that the opponent with whom your servant will have to fight is the human champion, Glenn Douglas. He serves the collector. The b rank league champion entered into a contract with the demonic god Constellation. It was very bad. When fighting him, you need to be extremely careful. His powers are both incredibly powerful and evil. The main character listened to him and thanked him for such valuable information. The next day, Randy arrived at Dragon Industries. It was a very rich place. The main character got out of the limousine, as one man had already met him. He was very friendly and congratulated Randy on winning the Battle of the Constellations race. The main character gave him his hand and thanked him for such kind words. But he still had the question of why this man suddenly asked him to meet. The man said that he would tell everything later and asked to go to the laboratory first. Randy was here recently. He again saw familiar faces who were exploring various discoveries. They showed him a sword. Very strong energy came from it. It was called the Frosty Blue Short Sword. The man said that this sword is several times stronger than all other artifacts, made from existing azure iron rock. The main character remembered that when he was last here, he created such a sword. The man asked Randy how he could create something like this. The main character began to think about what to invent, because he could not tell the whole truth. He understood that it would not be possible to cram everything into martial arts. Randy said that he was taught by the constellation he serves. The man said that everything was clear and was shocked by Randy's skills. The man did not understand how it was possible to create such an artifact for the first time. Your constellation must really love you. Randy replied that probably yes. For him it was a funny situation because he was this constellation. The man shook Randy's hand and thought that he had a path in creating artifacts. The man did not stop there and asked the main character to look at the rest of the artifacts. The man asked what Randy thinks powers this huge city. The main character replied that this was probably the core of the monster. The man was very emotional that day. He emotionally shouted that being a hunter makes everyone proud of themselves. Well, technologies like ours are the foundation of the civilization in which they live. Hunter Randy, you must create artifacts. The man believed that in this way he would do more for humanity. The main character noticed how happy the man was, but asked for forgiveness for this. Randy said that he is not going to stop his work as hunters because he needs to help and save people. The man was very upset. In a sad voice, she said that she assumed that this would not work. The main character said that he shouldn't be too upset because he will still help from time to time. The man was very happy about this news and asked Randy if he was seriously saying this. 
Randy replied that he would help in any case. It's not hard for him. Still, by killing monsters, Randy believed that he would go far in pumping up his strength, and I decided to try different options. The man gave him a card and said that he was very happy. Randy asked what it was. The man said that this was his name card and asked him to use this card wherever he went. The card said CEO. Randy asked indignantly what that meant. The man replied that he was the new general director. Randy began to remember Hyun. After all, when he wants something, he will do anything to get it, and he suspected that it was he who gathered all the researchers. The man told him not to worry. After all, he needed only one help from him. The main character asked what kind of help he could get. The man touched the box and told him to create artifacts like this sword, which are highly valued on the market. Randy looked at this and thought, if they were talking about production, then it must be mass production. Will human technology be able to copy what Randy did? The goddess said that she had done this before. She had quite a lot of fun doing it. This was the first time Randy had heard that the goddess was a blacksmith in the past. The goddess said that this is not the point. She was talking about a very long time ago, about your servant. The goddess said that she had a servant, an outstanding black magician. However, servants tend to resemble their masters. That black magician also became lazy. He was tired of killing thousands of skeletons and monsters. He simply ordered the living workers around him to do the work and take care of the food. He couldn't cope with many tasks, but the goddess cannot use the undead for simple matters. Randy heard all the words of the goddess and thought that the undead had gone crazy. The lava kitten was also shocked by this story. Randy began to think it was not dying and not aging quite an efficient workforce, and he couldn't understand what was happening to that servant now. The goddess said that she kept him away because he was useless and a thorn in his side. At this time, filming was taking place. The strongest warrior of rank six was photographed. The manager approached Glenn and began to say that he was simply magnificent in this drama. Gleb smiled and said that he was flattered. The manager pointed at the fans and said that these fans were crazy about him. The manager began to make an offer to him. What about the ride? You haven't participated in them for a long time. I think even more people will come and they will scream even louder when they see you entering the dungeon. Glenn found his words interesting. A little boy ran out of the crowd. He shouted to Hunter Glenn that he was his fan. There was great joy on the boy's face. The boy handed a piece of paper with a pen to Glenn and asked him to leave his autograph. The manager was shocked. He didn't know how Glenn would react to this. The manager picked up the boy and started yelling at him that he couldn't come here. Glenn asked the manager to stop and waited a minute. Glenn took the boy by the shoulder and gently said that everything was fine. He needs to come in line and he will give his autograph. The girl cried and said that Clay had a very wonderful character. The manager knew that he was top one in the B-rank league, but remained very modest. The boy received his autograph. He thanked him very much for this autograph. He ran about his business and shouted that he would root for Glenn at any cost. Glenn smiled affectionately. He didn't like giving out these autographs. Even though it's also a headache, he needed it to maintain his popularity and reputation. The manager told Glenn another piece of news. You remember the challenge ticket you gave to Mackenzie? Glenn was surprised and said that of course he remembers it. The manager said that Mackenzie gave this ticket. Glenn was surprised because no one had ever lost their chance like that before. He asked who he gave this ticket to. The manager said that the ticket was given to Randy, the same martial arts user who recently began to gain popularity. Well, I think it's even better because it's easier to fight with the 20th rank than with the 4th. Glenn asked why Mackenzie did this. The manager was not sure. Well, he assumed that perhaps it was some kind of deal behind the scenes. Glenn began to think about him. The manager told him not to worry, because they only talk about him because he practices martial arts. Surely you will destroy him with your left hand. Glenn was amused by the manager's words that he would destroy him. After all, in every battle he always gives 100%. No matter who I'm fighting against, I always give my best. The manager smiled and said that there is no need to be so modest. In this case, he should organize a fight. Let's show this arrogant upstart what champions are made of. Glenn held his face and thought whether it was worth wasting his time on these games. It will be necessary to completely defeat it. He did this for the sake of the collector of noble crowns and just for fun. Glenn thought that he had no rivals in this division. The day of the battle came. A lot of people gathered because Glenn was very popular. Fans called Randy different names and said that he was a coward. They were very angry about this dirty deal with the Mackenzies. Anthony didn't understand why they were all so evil and he didn't understand why Randy became a villain. Smallwood looked at the phone, and I say that there are also Randy fans, although there were very, very few of them. The main character also noticed how he was booed. He understood that they did not like it when the first rank fought with the 20th rank. 
Randy walked into the fight and thought he needed to win this fight 100% of the time, and then he will come first. Glenn had a lot of self-confidence, and he turned to Randy to show him a beautiful fight. Commentators have begun to comment on this battle. The match for the title of League b rank champion will begin in five seconds. Glenn was already looking forward to this battle. He smiled evilly and concentrated the black mother in his hands. Where I looked at Randy and thought that this brat most likely did not know that I had entered into a contract with the constellation of the demonic god. Well, the main character knew everything a long time ago. Glenn immediately became close to Randy. He wanted to finish this fight with one blow. After all, he was 100% confident in his victory. Literally five seconds passed and all the fans stood silently with their mouths open. They couldn't believe their eyes what they were seeing now. The commentators were also shocked and shock stopped commenting on this battle. Randy's friends couldn't believe what they saw. They didn't expect their friend to be so strong. The commentator said that this is the first time he has seen such a match in the B-Rank League. I would understand if the fighter Glenn did this. Glenn was lying on the ground completely unconscious, and literally five minutes later he came to his senses. The manager immediately ran up to him and asked if he was okay. Glenn didn't even understand what happened to him. One of the commentators said that if we draw analogies, this match was like a spear versus a shield. Glenn was a little aggressive, but his balance of attack and defense remained almost perfect. Everyone started looking at the slow motion. They were interested in the analysis of the battle. While he was attacking, Glenn was simultaneously using defensive magic on numerous parts of his body. It was the perfect balance of attack and defense. However, he did not hit a single attack on Randy. Hunter Randy moved only slightly. The commentators were shocked that Randy dodged all of Glenn's attacks. No one has managed this before. And at that moment, when the fighter Glenn got tired and stopped for a moment, Randy was already behind him in one quick and instantaneous movement. The main character hit him with all his strength in his face. It was easy and natural from the opponent's blind spot because Glenn couldn't see where the attack was coming from. All his defensive magic was useless. This victory was decided in an instant. Glenn could not get to his feet after this crushing blow, so he was carried away on a stretcher. The audience asked themselves one question. What was it? One of the pancakes thought Randy was just lucky. The commentator said that the fight was between the top one and the top 20 rank. The top 20 rank won. It was a very unexpected ending. Well, no one can know for sure what will happen in this battle. Everyone looked at Glenn and thought that he was in severe shock after this blow. And will he be able to come to his senses? The girl thought that the commentators were stupid. And why can't you just say that Glenn would have lost even if he were twice as strong as he is now? The girl looked at Randy and said with admiration, what kind of hunters my father introduced me to. After this battle, the main character went into his locker room and he saw two strangers in front of him who congratulated him on his victory. They said that this fight was simply great. Randy thanked them for their congratulations and for the flowers. Smallwood smiled and said something was a very good fight. It was simply incredible. Anthony remained in his style and said that his opponent must have at least such strength. Randy thought about it and said that to be honest, Glenn was much stronger than I thought. Now his status is higher than mine. He didn't seem like he was going to be easy, so Randy sent him flying with one punch. Well, just think that he has a contract with the constellation of the demonic god. Most likely, they still have many servants on earth who are stronger than him. At this moment, the main character began to see some kind of vision again. Clairvoyance has been activated. He saw many dead people in front of him, which lie on the earth. Glenn killed them all. At that moment, his eyes glowed very purple. Randy thought, although the guidance may be unclear, well, it never just happens. If this is true, then Randy needs to stop emergently. The main character warned his friends and said that they need to prepare for battle. His friends did not understand what he meant and were shocked by these words. At this time, there were many reporters. They were outside Glenn's waiting room. Glenn was very angry. He held his head and could not understand how he lost to such a loser. The manager began to support him and said that his fans were still rooting for him. It's just that this time they had no information about the enemy at all. We will leave, prepare well, and take this first place back. The manager hoped that such words would greatly cheer him up, but Glenn didn't even hear him. The power of the demonic god began to affect him. The color purple began to appear in his eyes. The location changed in his head. He bowed before the constellation of the demonic god. Collector of noble crowns, greatly disappointed by losing to a servant of a low-grade constellation, Glenn very strongly asked for forgiveness and asked to be given another chance. He began to come up with an excuse that he had no information about the enemy. But the collector disagreed. He used his power because he was very angry with Glenn. He said that Glenn is of no value. You should at least entertain them. Glenn did not understand his words and asked what he meant. 
The collector used his demonic power. He began to control Glenn. The manager noticed that Glenn was acting very strangely and began asking him if he was okay. Glenn turned on his manager and called him very bad words. It was clear how angry he had become. Glenn said that he lost because of them, because they did not get information about the enemy. Otherwise, he wouldn't have lost. The manager said that he understood that he was upset and asked him to calm down. They thought that he would take a break and then they would talk to him again. Well, Glenn didn't even listen to them. He used his demonic sword and attacked them. The managers were very worried and asked Glenn to calm down and pull himself together. The collector was very happy. However, this is not enough for him. He wanted more victims. He ordered Douglas to kill everyone. After all, he liked to see people killed. The main character noticed that something had already happened. He heard a lot of screams from Glenn's room. Randy ordered his friends to go to the arena and evacuate people because Glenn could cause them a lot of injuries. Randy asked Anthony to take care of the people in the spectator seats because this is the most vulnerable place for the enemy. The girl asked Randy what happened and why they needed to be evacuated. The main character answered briefly. Glenn went away. Randy walked up to Glenn's locker room and saw this terrible picture. Glenn had already managed to destroy a couple of people. Glenn took the man by the collar and threw himself with all his might into the wall. Randy understood that this man could die and managed to stop him from hitting the wall. Glenn began to accumulate black energy in his hand, which sucked in everything. This energy was like a black hole. The main character began to feel that this attack was quite strong, and the technique itself had high resources. When Glenn had accumulated enough mana, he threw that black mana straight into the Randy. A very strong explosion occurred. It scared the fans very much. They couldn't understand what was happening. The fragments of the fans began to fly, but Anthony, with the help of his magic, could stop these fragments and save a couple of dozen lives. During the fight, Anthony asked Elizabeth why the man was suddenly so angry. The girl replied that she did not know this information. Glenn got very angry about this in the event. He was very angry at Randy because of his first loss in his career. The main character from close range, I wanted to give him a left side kick. He told him that he should have just quietly returned home and slept. The main character dealt a crushing blow to his enemy. From this blow, Glenn flew 10 meters away. The main character did not understand what happened. He saw black liquid on his left hand. Glenn began to laugh hard and shouted that these physical attacks on him were useless. The goddess decided to give him a hint and said that this mana contains existential power, and she advised Randy to be careful. The main character used unfading regeneration. This ability was used to heal his left arm. Literally 10 seconds later, his wounds were completely healed. The goddess said that now he is too weak, and she advised him to raise his level. Randy replied that he understood everything himself. Randy said that if he raised his level and started fighting him, it could affect civilians. At this time, the evacuation had already ended, and no one remained on the battlefield. Elizabeth shouted to Randy that the evacuation was over and they evacuated everyone. The main character said that this was great news for him. He took out his sword and said that he could start fighting at full strength. The man saw a very strong energy and asked Iris to look there too. He couldn't believe that Randy could use such pure and great sword energy. Glenn did not take this technique seriously and believed that he was an invincible champion. Randy used his technique, with the help of which he acquired the sword. The attack was so powerful that his technique cut through the wind itself. Glenn continued to laugh and shouted that this technique would not work on him. Randy's attack hit his opponent right in the chest. These were vital organs. The demon who controlled Glenn began to laugh and he shouted that this was simply wonderful because people are such interesting creatures. He asked Randy, is it because you came back from the abyss or because of the constellation with which he has a contract? In any case, it was really difficult for a demon to fight against such a strong opponent. He had never fought a man as strong as Randy. The main character did not listen to him and decided to use his attack when he speaks. The demon became very angry and shouted how dare he interrupt him during his speech. It was very daring. The main character was surprised with how easily he repulsed his attack. The demon realized that Randy was using existential force acceleration. It was very mean. Randy continued to attack, but was unable to break through his opponent. After all, he used a shield that was much stronger than the heavenly sword. The demon continued to laugh and called Randy an arrogant idiot. Where mine began to use his next technique, a purple circle formed at the bottom of it. In this circle, there were strange symbols. It was a summoning technique. The main character saw unfamiliar faces. He realized that the demon had called the rest of his servants. The demon controlled their consciousness with the help of a demonic call. Randy didn't understand why this topic was doing this, why this constellation would go so far for Glenn. Randy thought that he was doing this for his own pleasure, 
After all, this demon likes to kill other people. The main character destroyed the first assistant of the demon thanks to his sword speed. Randy encountered another warrior. He was called the Samurai of Darkness. He was known as a master of sword fighting. Glenn smiled and asked who you just killed. This man was one of the royal family of the United Kingdom. After his murder, Randy will have very big problems. The main character thought that he needed to be much more careful. After all, all these called servants are living people. And the collector now rules the United Kingdom. Thanks to this, he can summon a lot of warriors to serve him. The demon began to laugh through Glenn's body and asked what it was like to kill other people. The main character was not afraid at all and said that all people die sooner or later. Therefore, he didn't care at all. The demon was shocked by this answer. He realized that Randy was cold-blooded. When the main character had practically dealt with the samurai, two more assistants approached him, who wanted to destroy Randy. The main character let the samurai go because he had no other choice, and with the help of his speed, he destroyed two warriors. At that moment, the samurai realized that he had an advantage because he was behind Randy. I was ready to cut off his head. The main character managed to dodge. Everyone was shocked because it was a very fast attack. Randy struck back, but the samurai swordmaster was able to withstand the blow due to his great experience. Well, the samurai did not appreciate Randy's power. Because of this, his sword broke into two parts. The main character easily destroyed the samurai because he had no weapons in his hands. Randy's heavenly sword turned out to be much stronger than the samurai's sword. The demon was very angry because he thought that this was a good-natured hero, and he didn't even hesitate. He thought Randy was completely heartless. The demon appreciated Randy's strength and said that he would give 100% through this human body. He extended his hand and said that Randy really thought that he would be afraid of his master just because of this. The owner, whose name on earth almost no one knows. From Glenn, even more energy began to come out. The main character understood that there would soon be a denouement. After all, it will be difficult for him to fight with such power. Randy noticed that Glenn was starting to turn into a big, strong monster. This demon was 100 meters tall, almost twice as tall as the arena itself. Anthony and Elizabeth could not understand where it came from. It was the first time they had seen such a thing. The main character was also shocked and could not believe that it was Glenn because a human body of such size should simply be torn into pieces. Elizabeth looked even closer and was shocked when she found out that it was Glenn's body. The demon completely took over Douglas's body and asked Randy how he liked this transformation. This is what will happen if you gather all the powers of the demon together. The demon began to carry out the first attack. He wanted to destroy Randy with one blow. He shouted that today this earth will clearly remember his name. The main character was shocked. He did not expect that the demon would be so fast with such a large and huge body. Just from one blow, a very strong explosion occurred. The shockwave was almost throughout the entire city. All the residents of the city heard that some kind of trouble had happened in the arena. The man asked Randy's friends to stop this monster. After all, they were quite strong hunters. If you don't stop him right now, then everything here will be completely destroyed. Elizabeth said that of course she really wants to help, but what should they do with someone of such size and with such great enormous power? At that moment, the main character landed right next to them and told no one to worry. Iris ran up to Randy and asked if she was okay. After all, there was a strong explosion from this blow. The main character replied that he was absolutely intact. Randy turned to the hunters from the Huashan sect. You can refuse, but Randy had a request for them. The Huashan hunters asked what kind of request this was. The main character asked them to follow him to finish off this bastard. Iris looked at her partners and wanted to know if they were ready to fight. She clenched her fists and shouted that, of course, of course. She was fully prepared for this battle. Anthony turned to Randy and asked if you really didn't need us. After all, we also have great strength. The main character replied that he wasn't even going to ask them because they had to go 100%. Randy attacked this monster and shouted for them to attack. The main character said that the hunter of the Huashan sect used sword formation. They used the sword formation of the Azure prison. The Huashan hunters respected Randy very much and shouted that they were ready to listen to him and do as he said. They used the laser prison sword formation. Randy specially created it for martial arts users. A blue symbol appeared at the bottom of it, which detected the opponent's attacks. It increases the strength of the weak several times so that they can fight the strong. Invincible and the training squad began to lead mortals. The laser prison sword formation skill has been fully activated. They attack Glenn from all sides. It was difficult for the demon to keep track of them because there were so many of them. The demon became very angry and again hit the ground with all his might. From this attack, 
the earth was rejected into two parts, and a strong earthquake appeared. The demon decided to destroy Randy first because he understood that this was his strongest rival. If he destroys it, the rest of his allies will lose morale. But for the main character, it was a simple attack. He stopped this attack thanks to his sword. The demon could not understand what was happening because it was a very strong attack and it was very difficult to block. Even some constellations cannot block such an attack. Randy yelled at them to maintain their ball formation. This was very important to him so that he can defeat this monster. Thanks to this combination, the main character was able to cut off his right leg with the help of his blade. Randy shouted at Iris to use her technique because they had very little time to recover. Hwashan formation, they began to fight in full force. They used their laser blade technique. Thanks to this technique, they destroyed the right legs of this demon, and now he won't be able to walk. This will greatly protect the lives of other people. The demonic constellation watched this from the side and could not understand why simple martial arts could cause so many problems. He didn't understand how it happened. Anthony said that this is their chance. They need to attack with full force until this topic is restored. They all started using the same technique and using magic to fire at this monster. Attacks came from all sides. The demon did not know what to do. After all, it was very difficult to fight against such a bunch of people. The main character jumped on Glenn's head and he began to contact him. Randy screamed for Glenn to come to his senses. And I didn't listen to that bastard collector. After all, he controls his mind. Anthony didn't understand what Randy was doing and why he was talking to him. It's easier to just kill him, where we started attacking Randy and shouting what trick he was trying to prepare this time. The main character was able to pierce his right hand with the help of his heavenly sword, but the demon was still able to move it. Randy started screaming at Glenn and saying that the demon was controlling his thoughts. If he really were your master, wouldn't he have helped much earlier? Aren't you upset that you got involved with some strange monster? The main character was still trying to shout to Glenn. You know how much existential power I used, and how can he stop saying that? Randy tried to put pressure on Glenn's offense and shouted that someone like him would most likely achieve more if only he signed a contract with another constellation. The constellation told Douglas not to listen to him and continued to listen to his constellation. The main character continued to shout to Glenn, don't you think that losing all his glory like this would be a waste? It would be a real shame for him. Glenn began to regain consciousness. I realized that the Collector was simply using him as a toy, and he doesn't have to go to meet the Collector. Glenn began to free himself from the Kaidan. He agreed with Randy that in this situation he was a common victim. Glenn shouted for them to stop and shouted that he had regained control of his body. I will not destroy anything anymore, and asked that they not attack him. The main character was surprised that the demonic god constellation disappeared so quickly. Glint said that it disappeared, and all this time she controlled his consciousness. Glent asked them to stop beating him. He understood that he would spend his entire life paying for his sins. Because over the years, he realized quite a good reputation for himself. He definitely has a good chance of acquitting himself by blaming the demon god constellation. The main character began to flex his fists and said that he was talking complete nonsense. He hit him in the face and shouted that he really thought that everyone would forget what he was wearing with a click. Since the constellation was used as an excuse, he will be punished even more. Randy beat him badly. From exhaustion, he began to turn into his normal form. The main character noticed that he was completely exhausted, and he shouted that for now we were detaining him so he could sleep in prison. Suddenly, his body flew to the east. His body was completely surrounded by black energy. Randy was shocked because he thought that he was completely exhausted and had no more strength. Black energy began to come out of Glenn's mouth. He became weaker and weaker. Elizabeth was in shock. She asked herself only one question. What was happening? She had never seen anything like this. The main character could not believe what was happening and did not expect to see this constellation. It was a servant of the Avatar of Training. His spirit controlled Glenn's body. Start from Jeju Island until now. He will never forget what happened today. Randy noticed how he was disappearing and promised himself that someday he would finish him off. At this time, Young congratulated Randy because he became a rank. There were a lot of congratulations and balloons. Randy thanked for such a greeting and I asked you whether it was too fast for your rank. Hyun said that this is usually the case, but this time the scale of the incident was too great. If it weren't for you, a great misfortune would have happened. This government official is here to officially present you with a certificate of promotion to a rank hunter. He gave Randy this piece of paper and said that you are his new hunter's card and documents, and asked him to look at them. The main character said that he would read these pieces of paper later and did not understand why he needed so many of these pieces of paper. The man said that in this case, 
I hope you will continue to serve for the benefit of humanity and civilization. The main character said that he will do everything that depends on him. Hyung couldn't believe that Randy was already of a rank, and he said that from that moment, Randy became a real hunter. Hyung told Randy that the hunter has two dreams. The main character asked what other dreams the hunters had. The first is to return all the territories of the earth captured by the constellations. The main character said that even if the demon god constellation did not personally intervene, the place would be swarming with their servants. Is it even possible to recapture those lands back? Hyung wanted to talk to Randy about the battle of the constellations. Now that Randy has a rank, people will ask him to participate in the constellation battle. If this happens, then Randy should be rejected at every possible opportunity. The main character asked why he should refuse. He was told that most of these proposals are simply rubbish. After all, while he was away, there were more and more repulsed hunters in the world, which offers very rubbish offers. Hyung gave the phone to Randy and told him to look at this picture. The main character looked at the picture and asked who they were. He replied that they are called Sacred Knights of the Sacred Temple. Sacred Knights of the Sacred Temple. After the demon god constellation took over the United Kingdom, the exiled royal family and their hunters founded this group, and the main goal is to return to the United Kingdom. The main character said that he sees nothing wrong with this. Hyun said that they kidnapped the U.S. president and tried to fire nuclear missiles at Britain. This was just an example, where those who were not interested in you before, as in rank B, will now flock to you from all corners. Hyung advised Randy to be careful. The main character said that he would listen to his advice and asked what the hunter's second dream was. Hyun said that this is a raid at the gates of the abyss. The gate of the abyss is the first gate that appeared in the middle of the earth, connecting it with the abyss. Most raids there failed. Abyss gate is one of the businesses in which our company has invested a lot in the past. But the expedition there completely failed, so there is almost no information. That's all they managed to get. And he let Randy look at it. Among the territories of the abyss that I watch, the first will be the kingdom of the abyss. The main character recognized this place and said that this is the territory of a warrior of sweat and blood. The next day there were a lot of people near the plan and the cross. Smallwood looked at everything around him, and for him it was strange that so many hunters had gathered today. Elizabeth said that he really doesn't know why they came here. The girl said that most likely they are waiting for the hunter Randy, who was promoted to A rank. It's high time for him to return. Smallwood noticed Randy running and pointed at him with his finger that he was running. The main character noticed that many hunters had gathered, and he was wondering what the commotion was about. Anthony was surprised that he left the car and ran here himself, 10 kilometers from here. The main character said that it seemed to him that he had relaxed a little, so he decided to practice a little. Elizabeth smiled and said that nothing had happened, and congratulated him on his new rank. All his friends began to congratulate him. Only Anthony was not happy because he considered him his rival. He said that this time he would allow him to rejoice. Well, don't think about relaxing. The main character said that this was very unlike them. Well, he thanked them for these congratulations. Other hunters said that it would be cool to have at least two more high-ranked hunters with you. The main character clapped his hands and told them all to listen to him. Now that I am a rank, he could not help but feel the great responsibility entrusted to him. He promised to do his best to help other hunters of his clan become stronger. In exchange, he asked that they strictly follow his commands. One hunter decided to clarify the question and said that he probably meant by order during the raid. The main character said that he was wrong. From now on, I will rule the Icaros clan. Everyone was shocked and did not know that he was now the leader of the Icaros clan. Randy said that he was right. My Hyung appointed me in charge. From now on, be prepared for the consequences if you do not show up when I ask you to. All his friends were shocked by this news. The main character was leaving the Icaros building. How they told him that he had guests. The man said that he was waiting for him. He really wanted to meet no matter what. The man said hello and said that his name was Wes Morales. He was a ranked hunter like Randy. The main character noticed how big he was. Wes Morales, one of the main high-ranking hunters in America, nicknamed the Ominous Rock. He asked Randy for help. Randy couldn't understand what kind of help a big guy like him needed. The main character advised him to go to his room and talk there. The man began to congratulate. He heard that he became the manager of the Dragon Artifact. He is now working with the Parker family. The man said it doesn't matter how good the hunter is because all the power is still in the hands of the company. Randy said that this is probably true, so why did he start such a conversation? The man said that he also wants this power. After all, he was tired of being a servant. However, he never received the shares of the company that he was promised. He asked Randy if they did the same to him. Randy said not really. 
He remembered the moment when his young threw him the phone. He said that you are his shares in the company. He did not give them to Randy, not because he was somehow biased, and asked him to understand him correctly. The main character said that he didn't need it. Hyun said that he had already paid the gift tax, so he had no choice but to accept these shares. Randy said that he already had his shares. The man did not believe his words and asked if he was serious now. The man held his head and shouted that they said they would give him shares, and they forced me to work for them. And now they just pay him hundreds of millions of dollars so that he doesn't have any complaints. The main character was surprised that he was being paid millions of dollars and asked if this was not enough. The man said that was why he wanted to work and fight with them. I didn't think Randy was being treated so well. In that case, how about half of my shares from Parker, if Randy helps him? The main character said that he did not see any reason to refuse. Well, how is he going to convince his chairman? The main character didn't understand this. Wes said that it would be quite difficult, but he had his own way of negotiating with him. He took out the pieces of paper and asked Randy to take a look. The main character did not understand what it was and thought that it was information about the dungeon. The dungeon is divided into two large categories. The red dungeon has a limit on the number of people in time, and the white dungeon is much safer due to the absence of restrictions or prohibitions. And it's clear that white dungeons have their own value. In the white dungeon, you can hunt monsters without any time or clearing the dungeon. The man said that this was a rank B dungeon, Randy said it was almost an endless golden duck. Energy Park illegally acquired this dungeon. They use it to finance their factories. The man wanted to stage a raid on him in order to negotiate with him. Since they had already gotten their hands dirty, he was sure they would try to hush up the problem quietly. The main character then asked what the problem was. After all, he didn't understand anything from the conversation. The man said that he was being guarded by a ranked hunter. Even for him, it was very difficult. That's why he decided to ask Randy for help since he is an expert in fighting against people. The man said that he should know her, because she is also Korean. This hunter's name was Seika. The main character was very surprised because he knew her. He did not believe that she was guarding the white dungeon of the Parker family. Wes said that she was the daughter of his close friend. The main character stood up and began to leave. He said that he could not interfere with her work. He asked for forgiveness and asked them to forget about this conversation. The man started to stop him and asked the main character to think about everything. Randy turned around and was surprised that he had anything else to say. The man said that you can include the Seika in the share and divide all the shares into three. Randy asked the men if he himself liked this proposal. The man said that in any case, there's not much difference in dividing them into two or three. Still, there was a lot of money at stake. Moreover, if she joins us, won't our chances of success increase? Randy listened to him and completely agreed with him. The main character told the man not to get his hopes up too much. After all, if she refuses the offer, then you can forget about this idea. The man said that he understood absolutely everything, but I didn't think that she would refuse. The main character called her. He said that he had an offer and was ready to work with her on one case if she agreed. Seika was very happy, and he shouted that he agreed that this should not happen. She told Randy that she would come right away. The man began to laugh. He wasn't upset because she didn't even listen to him. Sia was happy because it was a great opportunity for her to show off her abilities. Seika went to Randy and said that this was a great opportunity for her to make a good impression. The girl came to them. The main character told his whole plan, which Wes voiced to him. Randy asked the girl how she liked this plan. The girl smiled and said that she was happy with everything. Randy said if she doesn't want to, he won't force her. After all, he only works honestly. The girl said in an angry voice that a 10% stake in Park Energy was worth at least a couple of billions. So, it will definitely be much more profitable to participate. Seika took the phone and said that she would break the contract with the Parkers right now. Randy said that's how it should be, and I was shocked that you can break a contract so easily over the phone. On the same day, at 11 o'clock at night, they arrived at the scene. They noticed a guard. There were two of them at the entrance. Randy understood that they would have to penetrate this territory. The girl said that it's not worth it, and you can just go in. The girl approached the security guard and asked her to leave. The security guard asked for her ID in response. The guard looked at her ID, and it said that she was an A-class hunter. Her identity was confirmed by the system. The main character did not understand why everything was so simple. After all, he expected it to be quite difficult. The man said that apparently these people had not yet been told about her termination of the contract. Randy was a little surprised that such a plant processed materials from the White Dungeon. He imagined this plant completely differently. The most amazing thing about this plan is that the dungeon is located right in it. The girl said that dungeon gates can appear anywhere, even on the wall of someone's house.
The man smiled and said that Randy would understand everything when he saw everything from the inside. The guard greeted the hunter, Seika. The girl immediately asked where Loxton is now. The security guard replied that he was talking to the general director right now. Randy asked the man if by general he meant the first son of the Parker family. The man replied that exactly so. And it's quite unexpected. Why would he come here so suddenly? The main character asked if this is important, we can just knock them out and take whatever we want. The man replied that it was so, and more importantly, if we leave right now, we will create suspicion on ourselves. Therefore, we must behave as usual. The girl began to flex her fists, and she said that everything was fine. The plan is still illegal, so we won't get anything for it. The security guard shouted that a meeting was taking place right now. They are forbidden to come here. The girl did not start listening to the guard, and she stabbed him in the stomach. Another guard looked on from the side and could not understand what was happening. He was shocked that their clanmates attacked the guard. The girl kicked the door down and shouted at Jacob and Loxon not to move. Well, when they looked at it all, they were shocked. After all, the leaders were tied up and taken prisoner. Robbers robbed their office. One of the robbers said that things were bad because they were hunters. He started shooting at them with all his might. Wes used his ability called Stonewall. Thanks to this ability, he neutralized the bandit's attack. The bandit told his friend that these were unusual hunters. You need to take the dungeon and get out of here. The girls shouted that they would not go anywhere. After all, they broke the law and broke into Parker's office. The bandit began to realize that he could not escape anywhere. He took the director hostage, and she said that if they take another step, he will shoot him. The girl said that he was threatening the wrong thing. After all, she didn't care if these two old directors died. Markets released her by the shoulder and told her not to rush to conclusions because he wanted to find out what was happening. The main character asked the question, Why do they need this closet? because he is the dungeon. That's why they came here. Randy was surprised that this closet was a dungeon. The man said that it was so. The dungeon space gate is in this closet. So they are industrial spies. The man said that he would save their lives if they gave the cabinet to them. The main character scratched his head and said that he also came here for this cabinet. Randy said that he could do whatever they wanted with these directors. After all, they only need a dungeon. The director began to cry from what they heard. Suddenly, a very strong explosion occurred. The entire plant began to burn with fire. Everyone was surprised what happened because it was a very strong explosion. The deceased shouted that this was their handiwork, and even quietly it was difficult, and said that there was no point in blowing up the station. Randy noticed the slime and said it was a monster. He couldn't understand how they managed this factory so that they turned out to be monsters. The main character shouted that the monster was coming here. He needs to hurry to get out. Everyone began to rush out. Everyone understood that soon everything would blow up. Randy saw a monster in front of him and was surprised that it was liquid slime. The girl immediately began to attack him with the help of her magic powers. She used her technique called advanced mana wolf summoning. Well, this technique did not cause any damage. The girl didn't understand how this was possible because she didn't make a single scratch. The girl smiled and said that in fact she is not so weak. And she said that she would try again. The main character didn't listen to her and was shocked how he ended up here. Randy saved her life. He took her hand and with the help of his speed, they escaped the monster's attack. Randy told her to concentrate because one mistake and she will be in the next world. The girl said that everything would be fine. He didn't understand what it was. After all, he had never even seen him in the abyss. In this case, he thought that maybe this was another search for another constellation. It was more like that. The core processing plant was in very great danger because the monster's slime reached this plant. The monster began to fill with this core. It looked like an inflatable balloon that would soon burst. Randy couldn't believe it because this monster became even stronger as it absorbed the energy of the core. The man handed Randy the phone and said that something terrible had happened. The main character did not understand that something more terrible could happen than this. Randy couldn't believe it because all the nuclear factories around the world were attacked at one time. And it's not clear from what constellation. The main character said that he doesn't know who is behind this, but they are quite smart. Since summoned monsters become stronger if summoned at core factories. Randy shouted that something needs to be done about this. They need to finish this monster quickly. The man asked if he had any skills useful for fighting such a monster. The main character took out his heavenly sword and said that he would cut it until he died. The man thought he was crazy. And I thought this plan was very strange. The main character attacked this monster directly and shouted that he would destroy it. Randy cut this monster into small pieces. No one could understand whether this monster would recover or not. At that moment, other hunters came and said that they were ready to help him. Randy said that they were very late, 
After all, he dealt with him a long time ago. The hunter was upset that he could not help his commander. The guy thought it was surprising. After all, in other regions, there is now a fierce battle going on. The girl gave Randy the phone again and told him to look at this picture. The Colonel Plan of the American Port of Arthur, Garyville's name is Colonel's, and the Korean Colonel Plan of Ulsan. They were practically destroyed. The man was telling the news. What is confirmed is that all these factories are currently under attack by monsters. Hyung called Randy and asked what was going on here. After all, monsters have attacked all the stations and a big explosion can happen every second. The main character said that he himself does not know anything because he has never seen these monsters before. He thought it was the work of some constellation. Hyung shouted that who the idiot could think of this. After all, stock prices are now flying into some kind of abyss. At this moment, when he was talking to Randy, he was also fighting these monsters. He said that it seems that in order to win, you need to burn them until they stop regenerating and asked Randy if he had tried it. The main character said that he simply cut this monster until it dies and stops regenerating. Hyun considered his act very reckless. Randy said that in any case, he asked that he inform him if any new information came in. The girl advised Randy that the best thing to do now is go to Korea. The main character said that, of course, and thanked her for her help. He promised that he would send her share as soon as he finished dealing with this whole mess. The girl smiled and said that she was not here for a reward at all, but he will gladly accept this award. The main character looked back at the closet where the portal was, and he said that it was time to tidy up a little. They took this large wardrobe with a man in it and carried it into the car. When they were carrying this closet, Randy said that after all, who would have thought that a dungeon could be in the closet? The man said that he himself would never have believed it until he saw this picture. Randy remembered the directors. They were in tears and tied up. They haven't untied them yet. Randy untied them. They thanked them for such help. Director asked how they knew this would happen. The main character said that they received some information through their sources. Morales asked us for help for joint defense. The director thanked Morales for such great help. Morales said that he did everything he was obliged to do. The director didn't realize that they were there to take their share. The director said that he was really sorry that the promise was so delayed. He promised that he would definitely be able to convince the other directors to give him his shares. Randick whispered to Morales that this was just dust in the eyes. Sincerity is not felt even an inch. Morales believed Randy's words. The constellation said it was true. This is a constellation acting in the form of a mortal. And he could recognize Jacob's lie as soon as he said those words. The main character said that advanced martial arts users are able to read their opponent's thoughts. It was an amazing technique. Morales said that in any case, they have already finished everything here. They need to move on. They got into the car and left to go about their business. The director didn't even give him a free hand. At this time, in the union of small constellations, they watched the Randy. The main character came to visit them. Randy said that they had not seen each other for a very long time. He asked what the urgent reasons for his call were, and which they told him. The kitten screams that there is a big commotion among the constellations, and a very big disaster is coming. The kitten says that there is a big reward on the head of the constellation that created all this mess. The main character thought that they did this because the agreement was broken. Since you can get soul stones not often, it will be great to get the main character thought to catch this constellation and get a big reward. Randy asked how they were going to find him, and he should start searching himself. The constellation of desires replied that there was no need for this. The constellation participating in the agreement constantly spam him with calls to beat the constellation. The main character asked if he could just give them up. The constellation desire replied that of course it could, but a constellation that avoids constellation battle for too long risks losing its chance to remain on Earth. Randy thought about it and said that he wanted to fight him head on. Well, the goddess said that this is very rare in the abyss. The goddess smiled and said, who would agree to bet their life on someone? What stupidity, unless the constellation turns out to be arrogant or reckless. The main character thought about it and said that he could be called reckless because all he did was risk his life. Randy thought that in any case, there was some more information about him. The constellation of desires opened a hologram for him and asked him to look there. A slippery monster was drawn there. The goddess said that she was a formless comprehender piercing everything. They thought it was a very pretentious name for a stupid monster. The goddess said that this is a very cruel constellation. After all, he was originally a monster. Randy said he felt like he knew the land too well for a monster. Maybe there is some earth constellation helping him. Randy turned into a constellation and went to watch the constellation news. The constellation news was just talking about this case. 
The main character saw on a hologram that the virtuous goddess of Libra was requesting a meeting with him. At this time in the territory of the goddess of the scales, everything was quiet. The goddess of Libra put on beautiful clothes and asked her servants what she looked like. The avatar said that you think the word perfect was created just to describe this day, goddess. The servants behind listened to this nonsense and thought that the same answer to the same question 145 times was already too much. Avatar said that this is simply excellent. Attic Vaniel returned after a thousand years of searching for Randy. The goddess asked her avatar if she could take part in the battle of the constellations this time. The avatar said that, of course. The goddess of scales said that the servant avatar of Tonings would be with her, so she will have to give it her all. But she said that she will give it her all. Attic Vaniel asked if the goddess really wanted to see Randy. The goddess became embarrassed and said that she did not feel anything like that for him. They just have a friendly relationship. At this time, the goddess's garden, the main character, came to visit her. He noticed that things had improved a little since the last meeting. The main character saw the goddess avatar in front of him and already began to understand where this was going. The goddess was very surprised, and she said that she had not seen such strong servants for a long time. Randy asked his goddess if she was really that strong. The goddess replied that she would not be surprised if other constellations were trying to lure her to themselves. Well, this will only happen if she wants it to. The main character saw in front of him the goddess of the scales, who is descending from heaven to him. She said that she is not the same as before, but is still a powerful, existential force. The main character smiled and said that meeting her again would be an honor for him. The goddess immediately got down to business and asked Randy if he knew why she called him. The main character answered that because of the formless comprehender. The goddess said that's exactly what it is. Even though all the constellations are hunting for him, few people risk calling him to the battle of the constellation because they really don't know anything about him. But since the rewards offered are very substantial, it will only be better for us if we win. The main character agreed with the words of the goddess. Therefore, the goddess wanted to join hands in order to participate together in the battle of the constellations. Of course, first, I need permission from Randy's constellation. The goddess at that time did not yet know that Randy was a constellation itself. The kitten began to say that this could be a trap, you think that impudent constellation is capable of pulling off such a scheme? Randy thought the goddess was a little underrated, although it wasn't her style to do something like that. The main character said that he would ask his constellation about this and decide. The goddess was very happy and said, is this really true? Randy said it was true, and most likely he will agree. The goddess took him by the hands and said that this was a great relief for her. The goddess's servants shouted for her to control herself. The goddess remembered that without a shaped constellation accepted the challenge to the battle of the constellation. And she asked Randy if he knew what SSL was. The main character said that this is probably a sport in which hunters fight six on six. The goddess said that he was right. This is also a battle of the constellations. Randy said that he is not very familiar with this sport because I haven't watched it since the entire Korean team was defeated. The goddess remembered that he had not been on earth for 30 years. And I thought how to solve this issue for them. The goddess suggested that Randy should think and participate in a practice match. This will be like a warm-up and training for him. The goddess's assistant began to conduct Randy to conduct a practice match. When the main character was flying, he looked at the area, and I thought that there were definitely more cool-looking buildings and strong servants here, a little different from what Randy last saw. The servant said that they are there, they need to get ready to land, and there the goddess of the constellations was waiting for the avatar. She said that she was glad to see him, and she wanted to quickly fight him and test his strength. She took him by the shoulders and said that she didn't have time to tell him about this before, but she is very happy that she met him. She began to tell him her story, that she really wanted to meet him. Wanderings poured out centuries and unprecedented tears. She cried and was really very happy to meet him this time. After all, she was looking for him for 10,000 years. She turned her back and said that they were starting this practice match. The Battle of Nock has begun the starting point of the Atticonial team. The main character understood that he would not be able to give 100% because in the battle, the strength of the participants is greatly limited. She said that not all skills are allowed and restrictions are placed on stats. On a field divided by three lines, top, middle, and bottom, this is a big battlefield. The restriction will be gradually lifted after killing monsters and increasing the level. This way, all hunters will improve their skills and become stronger. Well, after leveling up in this way, you will attack the enemy base. The first team to destroy the Constellation Sanctuary will win. The main character began to think that he needed to kill monsters, level up and destroy everything. Just his style. 
A system opened that asked you to select a skill. The main character thought for a long time what to choose. Randy started removing skills and decided to choose the Heavenly Strike skill. After all, thanks to this skill, he will improve his strike with the help of the Heavenly Sword. Randy was ready for battle. Ad Caniel said that she was very glad, and then right now they would start the battle. His internal energy dropped sharply. The effect of undying regeneration has been greatly reduced. He couldn't use the Great Absorption Technique. The main character thought it was surprising. It was as if he had become an E-rank hunter again. Adekaniel told him that he needed to take the top lane so he could start the battle. Randy replied, that's good, and they'll see each other soon. The Avatar wanted to give him a couple more pieces of advice, but it was already too late. After all, he picked up speed and was very far from her. While running, the main character thought that this was a training match. Perhaps it will be better to take part in it firsthand. Randy continued to run when he saw the monster's legs. He looked up. I saw a bunch of monsters in front of me. They were called ghouls, used to level up. The main character attacked them and thought, if he kills them, he will raise his level. Since he first of all needs to preserve his internal energy, he was not going to spend money on skills. In this case, the only thing he could do was rely on the muscle memory of his body. Randy began to quickly destroy them. He regained his internal energy. But one monster was behind him and attacked him. The main character understood that things were bad because he didn't notice him and missed him. Suddenly, at the very top of the tower, the blue emerald began to shift. Who watched this battle? He destroyed this monster using his laser energy technique. The main character noticed this and did not understand why he did it. He recalled that he was not told this in the rules. The main character thought it was some kind of street lamp, but it turned out to be quite a useful thing. A bunch of more monsters appeared on his way who wanted to destroy and eat his flesh. Randy began to flex his fists and said that he could go all out here. Literally five minutes passed before all the monsters lay killed on the ground. Randy began to look at his data and said that he had pretty good progress. He thought that he had absolutely no experience. After all, he couldn't even understand whether everything was good or not. He climbed to the very top of the stone and began to examine whether there were enemies nearby. At this moment, one of the goddess's assistants also destroyed these monsters. He pointed his finger at this monster and said that his leveling up was going very well. He read that his opponent is human and even a complete beginner. I don't think he should stay long. Randy ran as fast as he could, shouting that he had found him. He attacked this guy, considering him to be his enemy. The main character said that he had to hit him to get experience points. The servant asked him to stop because he was confusing something. Randy didn't listen to him and hit him in the face with all his might. The blow was very cruel and strong. The servant was very exhausted. He could not understand what it was and what had just happened. The guy said that he just died and was reborn again, unable to do anything to that person. Although he relaxed, the servant realized that this man was definitely experienced in battles. The main character continued to fight against monsters. He destroyed them in batches. Suddenly he noticed an orange ball. This ball appeared behind him. Aquaniel addressed him through this ball. She said that since this was his first battle in the Battle of the Servants, she decided to contact him in case of problems. The main character said that he had just killed some angel, and right now he is protecting Ghoulie. The girl was shocked by what she heard, because not every avatar could cope with it. The main character noticed her reaction and asked if I had violated something. The girl said that not exactly, but rather the opposite. She advised him to continue in the same spirit. It will be very good for him. Randy looked up and saw the angel he killed. He thought that this angel had been reborn and wanted more supplements. Randy was surprised that he returned. He looked very bad. The main character of our warm-up and said that his opponent Fearless once again came to him for battle. The guy pointed his finger at Randy and said that he would never run away because he hit him a couple of times. The guy said he would fight with all his might and called Randy a weakling. He wanted to see if Randy could do anything else for him. Randy got angry. He was curious where he got such skill and provocations. The guy started to get angry and said that in any case, he had no chance in close combat. In this case, he simply wanted to lure Randy into a trap. He wanted to restrict his movement. The guy used the Urkoal skill. This is a magic speed reduction trap. He prayed that Randy would step on this trap and then the guy would have a better chance of victory. Randy noticed his trap and said that instead of provoking so stupidly, he should learn to control his emotions. Randy used the Skyfinger technique. The guy was shocked and just recently he was waving his fists and now he uses ranged attacks. He screamed in pain and said that this was definitely some kind of cheating. He didn't understand how a newcomer could beat him so easily. At the same time, there was a middle line near the Tower of Enemy Angels. The angels dealt with all the monsters in their path. They destroyed a lot of monsters. Another angel flew to them and asked them to help him. He was in tears. He was very upset to lose to a man. 
He flew to his teammates and began to talk about his problem. He was asked why he was not on his top line, and what about that newbie with the man? The main character was close to them and said that it would be difficult for him to answer this question for them. Randy began to flex his fists and said that he just asked him to show the way. At the same time, I talked to him along the way. The other angels were shocked. They did not understand how he quickly got to them. One of the angels looked at him and was shocked because Randy had a crazy amount of energy. They didn't understand how it was possible to reach such a level so quickly. The main character asked, well, what are we waiting for? Aren't you going to fight? In this case, Randy himself attacked them and struck the first blow. The angels screamed in fear because they had never fought against such a strong opponent. Randy was going to beat them very hard and hoped that this time there would be less idle chatter. He was about to strike the first angel when a system appeared before his eyes. It was written there that the training matches ended with agreement on both sides. He will soon be teleported out of the arena. Suddenly there was a large yellow flash. The arena began to shake with very great force. No one understood what was happening because this was the first time such nonsense had happened. At that moment, Atticaniel ran up to Randy. The main character noticed that she was running towards him very quickly. He asked why the practice match ended so abruptly and what happened. The system was highlighted again, on which it was written that the formless comprehender, piercing everything, had surrendered. Randy didn't understand why he decided to give up because they had just started training. Randy asked the girl if this happens very often. She replied that it was very, very rare. She suspected that perhaps this was some kind of plan of the goddess. The virtuous goddess of the scales asked whether the formless comprehender who pierces everything has surrendered. She was surprised and asked what was happening. The formless comprehender striking everything requests a meeting with Randy. Randy didn't understand why he needed this meeting. He was wondering what this monster was up to. The kitten says that this may be an attempt to negotiate due to the feeling of being stuck in a corner. The main character said that such a scenario is quite likely. After some time, the main character from the goddess of Libra arrived at a new location. The Libra goddess was surprised that the constellation Randy sent him instead of coming in person. She still didn't know that Randy was a constellation. Randy smiled and said that his constellation still trusts him well. The formless comprehender piercing everything greets both constellations. The main character told him that he was not going to spare him since he surrendered. As a complaint, I asked him if he knew what damage he had caused to the earth. The formless comprehender says that he had no other choice to contact the constellation, which established themselves on earth. Randy answered him, let him try to say it with a constellation chasing you. I wonder what they'll do to you. The realizer says that this is absolutely dishonest because he was not the only one who planned all this. The Libra goddess was shocked because she thought that he did it all alone. Randy said that he thought so, and if he wants negotiations, then he needs to reveal his accomplice. The Comprehender says that he is not going to hide anything. He was persuaded to do this by a collector of noble crowns. Randy told the beneficiary that he had been framed big time. He used you to anger the other constellations. The Comprehender became very angry. After all, he trusted the collector most of all. The Comprehender began to cry heavily. He was a very vulnerable constellation and he didn't want everyone to offend him. The Comprehender says that other constellations do not even speak to him. He began to beg them for help. Randy thought he was a little stupid and wondered if it had something to do with him being a monster. The main character is thoughtful, but still, if he can take revenge on this bastard collector, then it will be just great. Randy promised that he would help him. The Lava Cat, the Goddess of Desire, and the Goddess of Libra were shocked by this act. After all, he can greatly disgrace himself. The goddess kept telling him to wait a second. Do you really need to help him? And if you get into the battle, the collector constellation. Randy told her not to worry about it because he had the power. Randy smiled and said that he was not going to participate in other people's battles. The goddess then asked what he was going to do. The main character said that he would ask a kitten he knew for help. The lava kitten was shocked and did not want to take part in this. The kitten was stunned and asked if he really has me. Randy continued to travel through the abyss. The system reported that his rank was currently, the main character was happy about this news, finally a double-digit number. Randy smiled and said that soon it would be possible to target high-ranking constellations A. The goddess told him not to try to climb to Olympus so quickly, otherwise other constellations will not be happy. The goddess advised that he better take a break. The main character agreed with her and was thinking about taking a look at his territories, so he came here. After some time, the main character was there, he was shocked when he saw how much everything had changed here. He saw that the orcs take very good care of the animals. He looked at the cow and remembered that it was the cow that he had dragged from the ground. 
he saw a big bird, and I didn't know that they raise birds because he only brought chickens. The guardian king of heavenly weather greeted Randy. Randy said he was very glad to see him. These territories have been transformed so much it was you who did it all. The guardian king of heavenly weather says that he did not do all this. Says that most of it was done by orcs. Randy was surprised that the orcs did all this and asked the keeper if he was seriously saying this. Randy was very impressed. Honestly, if he had been told that orcs were an agricultural tribe, he would never have believed it. The main character landed on the ground. The orcs noticed him and began to greet him. They asked him to see how much they had achieved. The main character smiled and said that he looked at everything while flying here, and he praised them for their excellent work. The main character showed blood and chickens with his fingers and asked if they raised them that way. The orcs replied that everything was exactly like that. Orsic said that they raised them so that they would be strong and fit in your reputation. Randy says he thought about making something out of them, but the orcs put so much effort into growing them that it was a bit of a shame. The orcs asked Randy if they could kill them. The main character replied that he thought it was possible. Randy said that then all their efforts would be in vain, but the orcs did not listen to him. Their eyes were burning to destroy them all. The main character watched the orcs as they killed animals, and I wondered if it would be okay if he ate the livestock they raised. A little time passed, the orcs ate the cow. They were very pleased with their work. Randy prepared this food for them. The orcs blessed him for such good food. Randy was pleased that they liked everything. The main character noticed a strange feeling. He looked at the orcs and noticed that their strength had increased greatly. He noticed that now they were releasing stronger energy than before and did not understand how this was happening. The main character realized that thanks to his influence, they became stronger while they worked and ate delicious food. This time, Randy received a message from a traveling merchant selling fate. He was looking for a meeting with him, and he congratulated Randy on his victory in the Battle of the Constellations. The traveling merchant says that in order to cancel his victory, you can buy something that gives a new building. Randy began to look at his budget and said that he didn't have very many soul stones. The goddess said that it was still time for him to take up the defense of his territory. Then it would be nice to purchase some kind of building. The main character said that it would be great to buy this, but I only have 98,000 stones. Randy again asked for a discount. A wandering merchant, stunned, asks him if he is a thief. The traveling merchant is unhappy because he is constantly trying to reduce the price. Randy turned around and said that he should forget about the deal then. After all, it was he who decided to appear out of nowhere and start pushing something. The traveling merchant cried while making such a deal with him. The lying merchant says that next time it won't work. His main friend thanked him for such a quick deal. Randy held the box in his hands and to him it looked ominous, considering that he had given away all his money. Randy continued to look at this box and thought that he was too hasty with the purchase. But he didn't get upset, he already bought it anyway, and he will soon find out what is there. When the box began to open, he was told that his fate was being decided as house flowed out of it. There was a big flash. The main character was very interested in what it was. The main character knocked out the barrier of the great warrior. It protects from the storm of the abyss and gives strength to servants. There is an opportunity to sell the skill to your followers. Randy said it was very good. The goddess agreed with him and said that barriers are very useful in the abyss because thanks to them he can protect his territories even when the constellation is not nearby. What could be better for my busy successor who is constantly trying at the expense of other constellations of the earth? Randy got the feeling that she was insulting him. But in any case, it's a sin to complain about a good subject. This barrier could have saved many lives. At this time, the young looked at the monitor and said that the price of cores had increased very much. They want the price of his shares. They have lost a lot of money from this stupid slug. He had the main character, while Randy said that he now receives a lot from other constellations. Hyun said that after this news, he felt much better. But the main character didn't tell his young that he was helping him a little. Well, that's only because they were using him against the collector's constellation. The kitten asks in shock, Are you really counting on me to spread these rumors? The main character replied that he hoped so. The sudden attack at the core factory caused harm not only to the good constellations, but also to the constellation of the demonic god. So if rumors spread that the collector's constellation is behind all this, his position will definitely be shaken. The kitten said that he understood. This sounds like a great plan. The kitten says that he got the point, but he doesn't understand why he should do this. The main character said that he is their gossip expert. It was clear that the kitten was shocked by these words. The kitten did not deny this. Randy began to leave, saying that he was leaving this job to him. The constellation was shocked, 
because because of this, now it will be much more difficult than for the poppy. There were manual news a moment earlier, and the ranked hunter Joseph Grant. He stated that he would participate in the raid on the abyssal gate. Young was simply shocked and couldn't believe what this crazy guy just said. At this time, many journalists gathered in the conference hall to ask a ranked hunter all the questions. Joseph said that for too long, mankind has been under the control of the constellations of the abyss, and they are constantly attacked by monsters. And the reasons for all this lie in the gates of the abyss. For quite a long time, out of fear, people avoided the truth in themselves in ways. Well, maybe it's too late, but he wanted to fulfill his duty as a hunter of a rank. The man shouted that he was declaring to the whole world that right now he would go to the gates of the abyss. He shouted that he would not be able to do this alone. That's why he will need help from other hunters. Together with other hunters of rank and above, we will fight, and the rest will be responsible for support. So if you have a sense of duty as a hunter, it doesn't matter what rank you are. If you are a hunter, then join us. Yun and Randy listened to his speech in silence. Joseph clenched his fist and called on everyone to liberate our earth. After all, the future of our generations depends on it. All the people and hunters looked after him and supported him with all their hearts. Randy watched this and said that he was quite passionate. Hyung said that he had been thinking about this for a long time. Randy asked him what the problem was then. Hyun replied that the problem is everything. The costs are simply astronomical. Civilian technicians will need to be hired to install basic facilities in the abyss and people to guard them. So there are just a lot of problems. And the biggest of them is that Joseph Grant is not the kind of high-ranking hunter who will take care of civilians or low-ranking hunters. In fact, he would rather use them as bait to achieve his personal goals. Hyun advised Randy not to get involved in this because it will only cause problems. Hyun looked at his eyes and realized that he was again going to do whatever came into his head. The main character began to warm up and said that it was unpleasant that Joseph was such a vile person. But his success will be useful. Hyun said that's true. The main character began to leave and told him not to worry. After all, he will take care of him if he tries to be stupid. Hyung replied, if this happens, then our company will definitely show itself in a good light. And besides, isn't Randy interested? Hyung asked what he meant. Randy said, if everything is as you said, then Joseph is driven by his own personal goals. The fact that he decided to take action means that he is sure so. Hyung thought about it and said, maybe he's right, but he still needs to be careful. Other people told Joseph that some countries were not happy that he would be the leader. Joseph replied that it did not matter because he was not going to take command of foreign hunters. He needs them to just join the raid and distract the enemies. In the meantime, they will be busy with this. The master of Joseph, this constellation is a general of iron blood exciting the battlefield. Thanks to this, he will carry out his plan. Alex Parker said that no investor would miss this opportunity and he will cling to everything to sign the contract. In return, if there is something valuable in the raid, Joseph interrupted him and said that his master vowed to share everything. Parker, his son, his name was Jacob. The son immediately came to him and began to listen to him. He wanted his son to provide support this time. The son promised that he would not let him down for anything. Parker told him not to think of it as a simple raid. After all, this battle will go down in human history. The son saw that he would keep this in mind and give his best. Parker said while they were hanging around there, he would think about what to do with that land and slowly make plans for her. Some time passed, a lot of hunters gathered at the gates of the abyss, near the headquarters of the leadership. The main character said that he would not look after them at all since they came here themselves, and he asked if everything would be okay with them. The main character said that they could lose their lives. This was the Huashan clan of hunters. Iris said it doesn't matter. Wherever they go, they will fearlessly follow Randy. The main character smiled and said that he heard them. Then we will go there as a small group of elite hunters. After this strong speech, they all went into the abyss to fight for your land. They began to be checked at the entrance so that they matched and their identity was confirmed. The man said that he fit all the parameters and asked him to enter the abyss. The system said that he entered the first kingdom of the abyss. The reward was the maximum number of participants. The remaining time was not available. The main character began to look at everything and saw that this was the first territory of the abyss. There was construction going on everywhere. Iris told her clanmates not to worry, and they remained calm. The main character said that since they trusted him and followed him, he will do anything to protect their lives. The Huashan hunters began to smile because they were very pleased that Randy took such care of them. The main character pointed to the building and said that it was a raid base built by Dragon Industries. The main character began to flex his fists and told everyone to gather there in the training room. 
At this time, a study was taking place. It was in the USA, command base of the American expedition. One of the hunters turned to Joseph and said that the guys were asking when the raid would begin. Joseph told him to ask them to wait for now. After all, the time has not come yet. The hunter decided to ask him what he meant. Joseph said that there are many more other expeditions here than he expected. This means there will be many people whom he cannot control. It is better to give them the opportunity to act on their own. Then they will take care of the orc forts in the surrounding area. As soon as all the obstacles from our path are gone, we will appear, Joseph said angrily. He thought that he would have to wait a very long time, and this irritated him very much. At this time, Randy looked at the screen and said that hunters from other countries showed themselves better than he thought. The girl asked if it was normal for them to sit here without anything to do. Alice would say that perhaps there are some objects there. The guy agreed and said that it would be too late if everything was snatched up by us. Randy thought about it and said that at least this territory is an abyss. He didn't think there would be anything of value in the orc forts. Randy suggested watching and waiting for something. Smallwood asked him if he had any plan. Randy replied that of course there is, although it's not like he came up with it. The young came up with this plan. He said that they were secretly watching what Joseph was doing, and then they use it against him. Randy said that he already understood. Although it's a little mean, well, this way they can reduce the number of victims. But it was still mean. The main character remembered and said that in any case, now it would be better to just wait. This will be the right decision. Randy warned his friends that if they heard anything about the Korean expedition, they should report to him. After some time, an alarm sounded throughout the clan. Elizabeth did not understand anything and asked if the monsters had united. The main character said it looked like that. Elizabeth said that it seems that this is not all. After all, there were just a bunch of these monsters. The main character said that at this moment they definitely can't just watch, and he shouted for everyone to get ready for battle. Rennie turned around and said that, in times like these they should help each other, because this is very important for everyone. The other hunters were shocked. They didn't think there were so many monsters. One of the men shouted that all this was expected. Everyone get in line and don't panic. To begin with, they activated the magic. If they get here, there will be nothing left of their base. The commander himself was very worried because he himself did not expect that there would be so many monsters. But he had no right to show fear in front of his subordinates. The hunter said that there were too many of them and did not understand what to do in such a situation. After all, the monsters were coming closer and closer. At this moment, Randy appeared. He ordered the Huashin sect to be behind him and maintain the formation. Randy began to flex his fists and said that only numbers were on their side, but they are too weak to break through their defenses. Randy smiled and said that he would take care of their leader. After all, when the leader dies, the fighting spirit of the rest will drop. The captain was shocked and shouted what he was doing. After all, if he wants to fight together, then let him stand in the ranks. Randy grabbed him by the shoulder and told him to forget about it. He asked that they continue to support the magic. The main character used his entire history and attacked tens of thousands of monsters single-handedly. The captain could not believe his eyes and thought that this was complete madness. The main character wanted to finish with them quickly because he said that there was no point in delaying this. Randy began destroying these monsters in batches, but there were a lot of them and it took time. The main character came closer to them and asked in a daring voice where their leader was. There was no response to the monster. They continued to attack Randy. Randy doubted and said that apparently he would have to deal with the small fry first. The main character used the Skyfinger ability. This technique had a high range. She destroyed all the monsters in a row who did not want to say anything. The main character captured one orc and destroyed him. After all, he looked away during the battle. Randy decided to continue destroying them in the same spirit and drive them all into a corner. When Randy destroyed most of the orcs, he wanted to quickly find their leader. A message came from the system that this is the territory of a warrior of madness and blood. Quite a dangerous constellation. Vagina said that she assumed this, but I didn't think that he would openly say about it. Randy noticed one of the monsters, and based on its size, he realized that it was possibly the leader. The monster did not listen to him. He had an order to destroy the Randy. But the main character did not stand on ceremony with him and cut off his head with one blow of the sword. The rest of the orcs were simply in shock because their leader died and in such a humiliating way. After their leader died, they began to flee. After all, their fighting spirit has fallen. Randy caught up with them and destroyed every single one of them. He looked back and thought that was it after just how many orcs he had killed. Randy looked at his friends and hoped that they could take care of the rest of the orcs. In that case, Randy wanted to go look at a place. He came to another lair. Randy noticed that the defense was holding on to its last strength, and soon the orcs will break through it. 
While the ranked hunters destroyed them in batches, the defense rested only on these hunters. One of them was a high rank hunter of the Korean expedition. His name was Kwan. He thought that he himself had already killed a hundred monsters, but even then he couldn't rest. One monster climbed behind his back and Kwan managed to block this blow for a split second. Kwan noticed that he was definitely stronger than the other monsters and I thought that he was the leader. The monster was three times taller than Kwan. He had the task of destroying people. The monster was about to strike at the Quan when suddenly he was killed with a sword. The sword went right through his body. When the monster died, Randy said that he was glad that he was not late. After all, the consequences could be very bad. Quan asked Randy if he really came here to help them. Randy asked him a counter question why he thought he came here. The main character said that they need to stop talking nonsense and finish off those monsters first. He has already killed the leaders, so the remaining ones will be easier to kill. Quan shouted to his subordinates so that they all listened to him. Hunter Randy has just killed the leader of the orcs. Let's take advantage of the moment and push them back. Sometime past, all the monsters arrived on Earth killed. The main character said that he thought that was all. Quat bowed to Randy and thanked him for such help. He couldn't believe that Randy had personally come to help them. The main character replied that he didn't do anything like that and they should help each other. Randy asked by chance, not Quan, a hunter, but Ranga. Quan was surprised that he knew him. Rende said that she saw him before. He is part of the representative team of SSL Korea. Randy had seen him before because of Chansik. He always got beaten up. By the way, your base seems to be badly damaged. And he asked if everything would be okay with them. One of the soldiers ran up to Quan and shouted that they were in big trouble. Quan wondered what the big problem was. He thought that they had found some orcs who were hiding. The soldier replied that not really. Quan was shocked by what happened. He didn't understand what kind of nonsense this was. He was told that there was no gate, connected to the ground, completely blocked, and now it's safe there. Everyone gathered near the portal of the abyss to verify their words. The main character wanted to touch the portal, but his hand was thrown away. A strong current ran through his hand. The portal voltage was very high. The main character was shocked that the portal was actually blocked. He asked you how it happened. Quan said that apparently while the orcs were attacking our base, several of them mystery infiltrated here, and they cast some kind of spell. Perhaps their unexpected ambush was part of a sabotage. The main character thought about it and thought that they had outwitted them. He couldn't believe that they had blocked the gate of magic. And I asked myself the question, is this even possible? Vagina said that this is possible if it is temporary. Some magic can block them for quite a long period of time. Randy thought about it and thought that the warrior of blood and madness was definitely involved in this. This could not be ruled out. The main character thought that the warrior was just a fanatic, obsessed with battles. Randy didn't think he was capable of such tricks. The main character suggested that he could break through using force. The goddess said that she was not sure about this, because they did not know what could happen to Randy in this case. In this case, it is better to either defeat the creator of the spell, or remove the warrior from this territory. Randy told Quan that he would return to his base for now. As soon as everything returns to normal, we will need to get together and discuss how to do this. Quan said that he understood and thanked him again for his help. At this time, Randy returned to his base. There was a very loud noise there. The main character told his friends the whole story. Elizabeth was shocked and asked if the gate was blocked. Randy replied that it looked like it. Elizabeth said that this is not some minor problem. And she asked what about food? After all, we have both hunters and technicians here. There are too many to feed. The main character told her not to worry about it. Randy began to collect magic in his left hand and said that since he is responsible for everything here, as a leader, that will not allow his comrades to starve. When this yellow ball expanded, a lot of food came out from this ball. So much food that there is enough for everyone. Elizabeth was shocked that he had been carrying them with him all this time. Randy replied that cooking is his hobby. Elizabeth was shocked and did not understand who generally carries so many things with them for the sake of a hobby. In any case, the hunters, who have nothing to do, ask to move everything inside. Technicians start repairing the base. The hunters listen to them all. Randy told Elizabeth to prepare a message for the Korean Expeditionary Force. Tell them they can use our base while they fix theirs. Elizabeth thought about it and asked why they needed this Korean detachment. The main character remembered her words that she said that the Korean detachment suffered the most from the attack. Since we fought together, we must help each other because we are neighbors. The main character couldn't believe that she asked something like that and asked her if she was really so heartless. Elizabeth smiled and said that it was true because they were neighbors.
The main character turned to everyone that he knows that they will not do this. Well, if at least someone dares to humiliate Koreans or bully them. Thurendi would take this as disrespect for himself because he was also a Korean. All the hunters began to worry and said that there would be no discrimination. They promised that they would welcome them with open arms and there was no need to worry so much. After some time, the hunters of Korea arrived here. They were shocked that they were given a surprise. Elizabeth smiled kindly and greeted their Korean hunters. The Koreans were very happy about such a meeting. Elizabeth said she hoped they would get along while their base was being restored. Smallwood approached a Korean man and offered him kimchi fried rice, packaged for consumption in the dungeons. The Korean hunter thanked him for this. And I didn't understand why all these joyful greetings. Elizabeth said that they would go for now and wished them a good rest. The Korean hunters thanked them for such a greeting. One of the Koreans asked his leader why these Americans greeted us so well. Kwan replied that he could not answer this question. Kwan turned around and said that in any case, they need to rest. In the meantime, he will go and look at the base. Kwan began to look at the base. He was wondering how well everything was organized here, so that they are able to accept hunters from other countries. He began to look at the area and admitted that this place was really just gigantic. He's been wandering around for quite some time, so there is no end to the place. Kwan had been wandering around for an hour and ended up in the training center. Where do hunters train? Randy met him. Randy said he didn't think he'd meet him right here. Quan bowed and thanked Randy for his invitation. He should have gone to greet them as soon as they arrived. Randy told him not to worry about it. After all, they only invited them to share resources, so they didn't have to worry about it. Quan replied that it was just a training center. Randy asked if he came here to train. Quan smiled and replied that he was just wandering around this place. He wandered here by mistake. Randy advised him to rest after this difficult battle. The main character suggested that they practice together later. Quan replied that he is not one of those who train a lot. The main character's mood immediately changed. He asked him what he meant and why doesn't he train? Quan replied that he was already quite strong, even without additional training. Randy wondered why the Jang Six squad kept failing and why do people criticize him? Randy turned around and said that it was all because of people like Quan. Quan began to worry and asked why he was looking at him like that. Randy grabbed him by the shoulder and said that he would go right now and train with him. He can stop only when he allows it. At the same time, there were a lot of people in the American base. Joseph watched the news how the hunters were coping and said that these orcs are extremely treacherous. After all, they move in small groups to steal supplies. They are much smarter than ordinary orcs. Joseph said that at this rate, they will very quickly run out of all production. Joseph gave the tablet to the guard and said that nothing could be done about it and you can't be distracted from their plans. George ordered them to contact the expeditionary force of each of the countries and inform them of their proposal. Some hunters began to prepare for the final attack against a bunch of orcs. Joseph ordered them to say that if they promised to carry out their orders during the operation, they would hand over all their supplies. The security guard was shocked by this proposal. He said that we ourselves lack them. Joseph replied that it didn't matter. After all, we just need to reduce the number of mouths in the form of non-scorang hunters and civilians. We must keep our promise regarding supplies because she just needs them to join the attack. Joseph squeezed his hand and said that they have only one goal. There is still at least one worthy hunter. He promised everyone that they must win favor in the center. This orc fort, this would be the toughest battle of all. Randy was training with the Quan. He was at a loss for words. Did you really think that your opponent would just stand there and wait while his high-level magic flew by? Randy advised him that he should learn to force him open to keep his opponent under control. After all, he has literally zero experience in one-on-one -on -one fights. Randy said that in this case there is no choice. Until they return to Earth, Quan will undergo special training with him every day. Quan asked Randy to have mercy on them. At this moment, Elizabeth runs in. She told Randy that important information had just arrived from the American base. She saw this picture and asked what they were doing here. Randy told her never to think about it. The main character asked again what the American expedition team said about this. The main character was thinking and said that in order to get one supply, they must rush to the final attack and unquestioningly follow their orders. Elizabeth said that's exactly it. It's more like a threat to the boy you're under the guise of an offer. The main character was thinking about it and said that they were slightly underestimated. He would never have thought that I would so openly treat him like a non-entity. Elizabeth asked what they would do in this case. The main character said that they have no choice since we received an offer. You should give a respectful answer. 
Randy pointed his finger at her and advised her to make sure that you convey everything exactly as he said word for word and send reconnaissance to observe them. At this time, Joseph considered all the proposals and asked what the troops from other expeditions had said. The guard said that most understood our proposal. They seemed to have suffered greatly. They responded almost immediately. Apparently, the offer of help worked great. What about the ranked hunters from Germany and France with whom they contacted through a special channel? Ben Nahart and Adeline Bonabalugia accepted your special offer. Joseph said everything is going great. Joseph asked who was left from China and Korea in the Dragon. The security said that yes, China is usually quite closed, so they did not expect a positive answer. We will most likely hear the answers of the others later. One of the workers said that they had just received a response from them. Joseph asked if they accepted our offer. The man said that the Dragon and their allies are Korea. The main character gave them a message that they will attack in the final attack. Since they have enough supplies, we will not obey the order of someone like you. Joseph became very angry at this answer. However, if we want to follow them, they will show mercy and consider such an opportunity. One of the guards said that this is very impudent garbage, but he was told to forget about it. It seems they were well prepared thanks to a good investor. Joseph said they could do whatever they wanted. Nothing will change if someone like them refuses to join. And tell the exploitation detachment that accepted our proposals to gather and bring their hunters here. Joseph said as soon as everyone is gathered, they will begin the final attack on the monsters. Randy looked at the other clans and said that they have quite a lot of hunters. Although these hunters looked very tired and hungry, Randy began to doubt whether they could fight in this state. Elizabeth informed Randy that Icaros and the Huashan sect had completed their preparations. Quan said that the Korean expedition detachment might be ready to move out. The main character praised them and said that they did an excellent job. Elizabeth noticed that Randy was very thoughtful and asked him what he was thinking about. The main character replied that it was so simple because his curiosity and concern decided everything. I think they already have quite a lot of people, so why haven't they moved forward yet? The main character asked Elizabeth if there was any news about intelligence. Suddenly there was a strong explosion. An explosion occurred from the opposing sect. No one could understand what was happening. They only knew that this sound was coming from the great fortress. One of the hunters ran up to them and reported that the expedition alliance had begun their operation. The main character did not understand what they were starting to rely on and asked what the hunter meant because we had not even moved forward. The hunter began to explain to Randy about this. The guy said it was a bait and switch strategy. This was their cunning plan. The low ranking hunters who make up the vanguard will lure the orcs. And as soon as the orcs are surrounded, everyone else will deal with them at once. They will soon move out to set up an ambush. Elizabeth didn't understand because with such a strategy, most of the vanguard hunters would die, wouldn't they? The main character answered that this is their own choice and is not telling us about it. Orcs are pretty simple creatures, so this might work. But on the one hand, it was hard to say. The orcs were too quiet, despite the fact that the gates of the fortress were subjected to such an attack. The main character got the feeling that no one was inside this fortress. The main character turned out to be right. One orc looked at the reconnaissance and called them stupid little people. One of the orcs said, as their master said, they will all gather there. This orc's name was Katala. He was one of the commanders. He ordered his subordinates to advance, all devoted servants of their master. The orcs began to attack people. They wanted to destroy everyone because these vile little people dared to desecrate this land. All the hunters were shocked and did not expect the orcs to ambush them. No one understood why the orcs were here, and they shouted that the orcs had ambushed them. The constellation watched this picture, and they said that people are real idiots. After all, they don't even know the basics of war. Do they really think that the stupid orcs will not understand, that they lie so openly in ambush, and that they have let their guard down? After all, they didn't even realize that among these people there were a lot of my spies. These spies served in the constellation, warrior of blood and madness. Well, this won't make him any worse anyway. After all, the more deaths they bring with their stupidity, the better it will be. A constellation of blood and madness, I hope they would kill more people, and the more people killed, the stronger he becomes. The mad warrior told the orcs to fight more and more. He liked it very much. Well, at that moment, Randy's team and Korean hunters attacked. The warrior of madness could not understand what kind of people they were and where they came from. Vaughn looked madly and recognized Randy. He said that again, this bastard is interfering with his plans. During the attack, the main character thought how the orcs figured out all their plans. After all, it was simply impossible. Quan asked Randy if it would be wiser to retreat in this situation. Randy will answer that perhaps he is right. But if they do this, 
the rest of the hunters surrounded will die, and there will be many deaths. The main character said that in this case there would be fewer of these orcs, and fighting would be much more difficult in the end. Quan agreed with him and understood all his words. Quan asked again earlier why he was going around the battlefield. Are we really not going to help them? The main character answered, all because since ancient times a house should be stormed while it is empty. The hunters wanted to break this barrier, but they could not do it. After all, the barrier was very strong. One of the hunters did not understand why these orcs who were in the barrier did not move at all. He said, if they screw up and run away, not only will we not get supplies from that bastard Joseph, well, we will also be obliged to pay compensation for insubordination and breach of contract. We need to destroy at least the gates of the fortress, since we cannot lure out the orcs. And no one understood why this was happening. The main character said that they still cannot break through the gates of the fortress. Everyone was happy to see Hunter Randy. The captain said that they attacked as much as they could, but the barrier was too strong. The main character said that they did a very good job and they need to rest. Randy approached the barrier and said that he would finish everything here himself. He used his heavenly fist technique. A lot of mana was concentrated in the fist. After all this, Randy launched a heavenly strike. This strike completely destroyed the barrier. Everyone was simply shocked. He destroyed the barrier with just one blow. Then they realized what a rank A hunter was capable of. The main character said that everything is fine. Now we need to destroy the gate and quickly break through. Compared to the barrier, this is nothing. The captain asked if they would really go straight to the fortress now. After all, the rest of the hunters may die. Randy smiled and told them not to worry about them because he was going to help them so they could rest. One of the hunters was furious. He asked himself questions about how they knew about our plans. The best thing to do would be to retreat, but the base was too far away. We'll die by the time we get there. One of the leaders did not understand what to do in such a situation. After all, it was an almost hopeless situation. The main character climbed to the very top of the building. It was the lair of orcs. He shouted that the great fortress had been taken, and he used existential power. Our main character addresses them. Those who want to live, they need to run here. After all, their lives depend on it. The leader did not understand what he was doing, and when he got there, because he was not even here. One of the ordinary soldiers told Joseph that this was their chance. All the orcs watched this and were shocked by the conquest of the great fortress. They were very much stunned. The commander shouted to them that they should stop standing like a pillar and called them idiots. He shouted that they would easily win it back after killing everyone. One of the orcs turned to the Lord of Catal. What will they do if the owner gets angry because of the fortress? And what will happen if they just leave these people here? They still need to retake the fortress first. At this moment, an ordinary soldier asked Joseph, so that he gives the order and goes to the fortress. Joseph was very angry because he understood that he was not the most important here, and I will still consider Randy my master. But there was no way out. He started shouting to everyone and asked everyone to listen to him. He gave orders that they should immediately stop fighting and retreat to the great fortress before the orcs came to their senses. Everyone began to retreat. Bittim was ordered to retreat, and they fled to the great fortress. The main character told Joseph that he was meeting him in person for the first time, and I'm glad to meet them. Joseph reciprocated and said that he was also glad to meet Randy. Joseph said that while they were fighting there, they could capture the great fortress stealthily and brilliantly. Randy replied that a simple thank you would be enough for him. Still, in such situations, they should help each other. Joseph said that they would put it aside. What they would do next, ask them. The main character said that he had nothing to do with it. Joseph was surprised at this answer. Randy said he would assign areas to each country so he would make sure Joseph defended his country well, that's all. Joseph became very angry, and he shouted that they were seriously not going to take control of the fortress, despite the fact that they had captured it. The main character answered why he should do this, and said that he did not think that they would listen to me. Randy said that that's not all. He needed to find out a little about Joseph. He heard from the hunters in the vanguard that the reason they risked their lives in the vanguard it is that Joseph threatened them with fines of an astronomical sum, which they will never pay. Joseph was scared and said that he had been badly set up, and this operation was agreed upon. Randy replied that he must have wanted to tell everyone that it was none of his business. Digging into the past is not worth it. Randy answered him cruelly if George Seff tried to somehow play around right in front of Randy. Randy will immediately throw Joseph out of the fortress and let him keep this in his mind. Joseph replied, that is good, and he will take note of it. Randy replied that he heard him and would look at his future behavior. 
The main character shouted for everyone to be in their places and defend the fortress. He said that he knows everything, that it was very difficult for everyone. Well, I don't think that now there is time to rest. Suddenly the earthquake began. Everyone wondered why the earth was shaking and thought that it was the orcs coming. Everyone shouted that it was them based on how strong the shocks were. Most likely the orcs decided to attack with all their strength at once to recapture your refuge. All the hunters began to worry because they had been fighting stop and go all day and hadn't even eaten anything. Nobody had the strength. At that moment, Randy appeared and asked the hunters if any of them were hungry. Randy used his moving technique and said that they didn't move their supplies to the base, so there's not much here. A lot of food landed on the ground, Randy showed with his hand, and said if everything is okay with this, then everyone can take one before leaving. Randy makes these rice balls as a hobby. All the hunters were shocked. They did not believe that he did so much simply because of a hobby. The man said that the rice in these balls is special. The balls restored mana. The main character held out the rice and said it was better to eat it before moving out, because they are better than most potions. Everyone heard this for the first time, so that rice influences Manu. One hunter can't believe Randy is sharing something so valuable. He asked why Randy was doing this. The main character blinked and said that at such moments, they should help each other. All the hunters burst into tears because it was very touching for them. No one had helped them before. Joseph continued to get angry. He thought that this hypocritical bastard was pretending to be a saint. The aide said he got people on his side. Joseph said it was better for us. For now, all the hunter's attention is focused on him. He will quietly become close to Ben Nahart and Aid Camlin Bonabalugia, with whom he made a deal for priority in receiving rewards for the raid. Joseph wanted him to quickly carry out his sinister plan. The battle began. The orcs wanted to break their shield, but it was quite difficult for them. The magicians tried their best, but the barrier began to fall over time. They were focused to last until the end. Grandfather said that anyone who can use defense magic should go forward. Everything is just like Hunter Randy said. Now we need to help each other. It will all be over for us if they break into the fortress. Elizabeth looked at this one from above and said to Randy that they seemed very fierce. Seeing how excited they are, it seems like they want to finish with one blow. Renke agreed with her and said that this might be so. After all, for them we are rats driven into a corner. The orcs think that we are not capable of anything. Randy said that it is so coordinated to move for the orcs that no one ever listens. It was very difficult. The main character thought that a warrior of madness and blood was behind this. Over there, probably in the back, bosses who all take orders from him. Elizabeth said if there is a constellation behind it, it will be difficult to get out of this mess. The main character partially agreed with her. Randy began to warm up and said that he would personally go and finish him off. The girl was shocked. Do you really want to go and kill the boss yourself? Is this even possible? Randy replied that, of course, in fact, it would be even better if I went alone. The main character believed that if he took on useless hunters, they would only be a burden. The main character noticed that something was attacking the orcs. He was wondering what they were up to. The boss of the orcs was very confident in himself. You thought that they were stupid people who were fighting in vain. Even so, they will still dance to our master's tune. It was the great leader of the Igor orcs. Igor believed that as soon as they let go of their hands, he would personally break into the fortress. He stood up and shouted that he would crush these people and will increase the reputation of its owner. The owner looked at him and said that making him the boss was a great decision. The blood warrior said that these little people can resist as much as they want. After all, these simple people would never harm the orcs. This time the impudent little people will certainly be completely defeated. Jason sneaked into their lair and told his assistants that they were relaxed, just as he thought. Jason asked Ben and Adeline if they were ready to fight. They began to answer that they were in their best shape. The girl replied that she was also completely ready. They were confident that they would defeat the orcs. Jason said everything was fine, and I thought that we would go over the plan for the last time, so as not to confuse anything. As soon as Jason gives the signal, the Adeline, who are good at long-range magic, attack the guards near the orc boss. And after all, Ben, a melee fighter, quickly approached him. And use your power to stop him. Finally, Jason will follow Ben and use the artifact received from his master and has an instant killing effect. Jason held onto his sword and said that he was using extinction poison to suck the life out of him. Ben asked Jason, one blow is definitely enough. Jason replied that, of course, this dagger is the same as the cloaks we received from our master. Haven't you already felt their power on yourself? Jason looked at his hand and said that the speed skill of this cloak is simply amazing. Thanks to them, they were able to travel all this way without using magic. It was as if they had become invisible. 
Well, the owner said that these artifacts are impossible unless there is a constellation nearby. Everyone was calm then. After all, this orc is definitely not a constellation, and he shouldn't notice us. Ben said that in our world, in this world, there is not a single constellation. After all, other constellations are only busy fighting for territory. The main character looked at them from the tree and heard their conversation. He noticed them because Randy was a constellation. Randy remembered his Hyung and hoped that his plan would work. Otherwise, it will be a big failure. Jason advised them not to forget if this boss has a constellation blessing. He will see them if you approach him too quickly. If this causes them to screw up, his security will be beefed up. Then they will no longer have a chance to kill him. The operation must be successful on the first try. If there is even one mistake, they will die. The girl said that she understood everything. She started to attack. The girl began to concentrate her magic and said that she had finished her preparations and was ready to attack. Magic circles appeared at the top of the orcs. They could not understand where it came from. After all, there was no one near them. Adeline began to destroy them using an ultra-magic projectile. The orcs turned to dust. The commander shouted that this was happening. The orc replied that it seemed the people decided to attack them on the sly. That's what I was shocked about such information because their intelligence was everywhere. Jason said that the girl did great and it was Ben's time. Ben shouted that he was going, used an ability called Rocket Dash. Their plan was a success. Ben grabbed the boss and told him that he heard that he's the boss of the orcs, who's only strong and capable. 1772, so I was wondering if you are really that strong, how everyone talks about you. Igor was very angry. How dare such a vile rat compete with me in strength? Igor began to defeat him in strength and shouted that he had very great arrogance and this would destroy him. Ben was shocked because he fought him off so easily when he was at full strength. Ben shouted that he was much stronger than he expected. If you don't end it now, later it will be very dangerous. At this moment, Joseph appears. He was behind this monster and was ready to finish him off with one blow. Joseph shouted that he would send him to the next world and pierced him with a sword. Igor could not understand what had happened and felt that his strength was leaving him. Joseph said everything was fine. After all, the poison went straight into the body. Now you just need to wait until the poison spreads throughout the body and kills him. The blood warrior watched this and said that this blade, given that it is covered with disgusting existential power, he must be pretty strong. Indeed, in the whole song, it is difficult to find such a monster that can withstand such poison. Most likely you can get caught counting them. Just think that he will give an object of such value to a simple man. The general decided to give it his all this time. The blood warrior began to laugh and said that this general does not know something. Igor was considered the strongest of this handful of monsters. Igor began to rise to his feet. He is a warrior with the strongest life force. His mana is the strongest of the orcs. Joseph fell into a panic because he expected that this blade would destroy him completely. Igor took Joseph by the neck and shouted that he was a servant of a warrior of madness and blood. He shouted that he would never fall until he died, and he threw Joseph with all his might into the ground. The girl immediately ran up to Joseph and asked how he was feeling. Ben began to worry and asked what the hell Joseph was. After all, he said that he would die from one blow. So why is this monster still alive and full of energy? Joseph replied that his master told him so. The general sent him a message through the system. He says that it did not work, and he advised them to run away from there because they could lose their lives. Ben was very angry with Joseph because he got them into complete trouble. Igor approached them and said that their tricks were over. He took out his huge sword and shouted that it was time to pay for your stupidity. He was ready to destroy them. The warrior of blood said that he would bring down more and more force on them and finish them all off with one blow. Orc Igor thanked the owner for such great strength he had never felt so good. All three were shocked because the ego was very strong. The ego began to run away from them. And I say that I am grateful for the blessing that the boss gave him. He trumpets the heads of these rats and gives them to his boss as an offering. Everyone was scared. Joseph shouted that they needed to retreat immediately. Otherwise, it would be bad. Everyone thought they were finished. At that moment, Randy appeared and addressed the orc. He remembered his words that he said that he would not go until he died. Randy placed his heavenly sword near his neck and said that he could fall with a calm soul. Igor was shocked. He didn't understand how this guy ended up behind him, and he didn't even feel it. Randy did not stand on ceremony with him, and with the help of a heavenly sword cut off his head. It was very fast. Everyone was shocked and did not understand how he did it. The main character just stood there and made no reaction. It was a normal experience for him. The blood madness warrior was in shock. He couldn't believe his defeat. He held his head and shouted that this was simply impossible. The first kingdom without 
became the territory of the earth. The system reported this message to all hunters. They did not understand what was happening. After all, they didn't do anything. All the hunters began to look at the orcs. The orcs began to glow yellow and disappear. Quan and Elizabeth also could not understand what was happening. After all, they didn't even fight. Elizabeth laughed because she understood that Randy did it all. She was sure that he had organized a thrashing there. Joseph was very angry with Randy because again he became the main character. The main character said that apparently we were both thinking about the same thing. Although thanks to your distraction, it was easier for Randy to cut off his head. Joseph pointed his finger at him and shouted that he did not admit this. After all, Randy just snuck in and got all the cream for himself. Joseph shouted, Do Randy really think that they will just leave it all like that? The main character did not think that he would guess his plan. He's pretty smart. After all, this is almost equivalent to giving him the rights but all the resources of this territory. Joseph thought, since he is alone, we can intimidate him with our power in order to share these rights. Ben did not understand what he was talking about. Ben said that he has no complaints about Randy. The girl also said that she had no complaints. Joseph was shocked that his friends betrayed him. Ben replied that they did not betray him, and he told him to think about it himself. Because of your master's irresponsibility, we were badly beaten. If it weren't for Randy, we would all be dead by now. Ben and the girl went over to Randy's side. You didn't understand why Jezu said that he took all the cream. The girl completely agreed and called Joseph ungrateful. Joseph was simply furious and did not understand what had suddenly happened to them. Ben told Randy he was a little late on this. Ben said that this is not the first time he has been indebted to him. The main character did not understand his words and asked, Isn't this the first time we met? Ben said he ate one of the rice balls that Randy shared. Thanks to him, he was able to significantly replenish his energy. The girl heard that many of Adeline's comrades survived only thanks to them. Adeline said it was so. Ben told Randy that he wanted to pay him back when the opportunity arose. So he's glad he could help him. Joseph listened to this, and I say that this is complete nonsense. Joseph shouted at Ben, Are you really ready to give up the rewards for the raid because of the rice ball? You are crazy. Ben said that he didn't want to hear it from him, who threatened others with supplies. If you're unhappy with something, then you should have been better prepared for the boss fight. Why now you blame others? Don't tell me that this whole game is about kindness and mutual assistance. She was needed for something more, precisely for this moment. Joseph realized that he was outwitted in the torrent. I called him a sneaky bastard. A couple of days passed at this time in the Ikaros clan. Damn news about Randy, the main invader of the raid was the first to be taken into the mouth of the abyss, and the ranked hunter was Randy. Manager Randy read this news and understood what caused such a commotion. He became a hero again. The girl looked at Randy and didn't understand why he was training again and not resting. The main character replied that for him, training is already like a vacation. Randy said that he put the topic of training aside and asked what happened. Weren't you involved in abyss-related business? The girl said she was going to take Randy out to eat. The main character was surprised by such a proposal and asked, Do you really feel lonely because you eat alone? The girl shouted that I was with her. She spoke about the usual banquet where the dragon director gathers. The main character didn't like this very much because he understood that most of the directors were thieves. The girl said that, strictly speaking, Randy is also one of the directors. After all, she had not invited him before. Because I wasn't sure that he and similar meetings were a good combination. Well, Randy accomplished one of the greatest feats, and because of this, people became more interested in the artifacts of our company. The main character looked at the tablet and saw that he was a real star. The girl said that was why he was invited to eat and at the same time discuss a couple of topics. Randy asked the girl if she was sure it wasn't an excuse just to see if I could be a SEO. This question confused the girl too, and he said that perhaps it was so. The girl said that he would have a lot of aggressive questions as soon as he sat down, and she tried to refuse until the very end. The main character said that everything was fine and promised to start preparing right now. The girl was shocked that Randy agreed. Randy said that he already has everything planned, so the girl doesn't have to worry. To be honest, Randy said that he couldn't wait to meet at that banquet. He was interested in what the CEO, the top global corporation, was like. The company has already said this, but I want to say it again. One of the directors said his name was Gold. He congratulated him on the successful raid on the Abyssal Gate, Chairman. All the directors began to congratulate the chairman and clap for him and thank him for everything. Hewn was dissatisfied and called them snotty, everything they do. So this just raises questions about efficiency and disagreements. I call all this business advice. He asked himself the question why they were all quiet and were all on the same side. He believed that something was not quiet here. 
Gold said that Red's recent success is truly an opportunity. They can dominate the market for the next 20 years. One cannot but agree that the hunter Randy contributed more to this. Just think that such an incredible hunter would do such a thing for us. Everyone was simply delighted by how the main character understood people. But Chairman, I was wondering if his skills could be useful in business. They should learn this as his colleagues. Gold said that the young should know about this. What happens to businesses when people trust the reputation of a famous hunter and hire them as SEO? Yoon said that this happens in the case of small and medium-sized businesses. This is different from our situation. The main branch, you are responsible for the equipment needed in other industries. Young understood that his employees wanted to get to the bottom of him. It was a bad deal. The cook saw Randy cooking in the kitchen and were not shocked. An ordinary cook asked his master if it was Randy himself. The chief replied that yes, but did not understand what was happening here. Why does the orang hunter cook in our kitchen? This is not normal. Young heard a conversation outside the door. They were talking from the chairman, and they said that his food was ready. They wanted to start on the bed and table. Hyun said that it seemed to him that everyone was a little worried because they hadn't eaten anything yet. He decided to continue the conversation after a good meal. Everyone said that they had no appetite. The skills of the local chef are quite good, well, too seasonal. Nobody liked this. The chef came out and began to treat all the directors. Hyun thought he was a good cook. Hyun saw the pots and asked his boss why he decided to bring them. After all, he asked to cook more Western food. The cook replied that he did not cook everything. Then Randy appeared and said that he personally prepared these dishes. It seemed to him that it would be wrong to come empty-handed. Hyung was very happy when he saw Randy. He asked what he was doing here. Randy said he thought he invited him. Hyun said that he really doesn't understand what he's talking about now. It was necessary to come here immediately. Why did he cook when he didn't ask to do it? One of the directors said that he did not understand what they were talking about. And how could Randy be late because of them? The main character began to count his illnesses, anemia, hypertension, chronic fatigue, and insomnia. Of course, all this was not true. Does anyone here have at least one thing? The director was asked how he knew all this. After all, information about our health and illnesses is strictly classified. The main character said that there is nothing to be surprised about. 1876. When Randy began to study martial arts, it became easier to gain information about his surroundings and people with just a glance. So to commemorate their first meeting, Randy prepared a dish that could help with their health. It was a spicy beef soup, helped a lot. It can be called a unique medicine. The main character began to scoop soup into a bowl. Bracken helps with insomnia and heart problems. Bean sprouts remove toxins from the body. Beef strengthens the immune system and prevents anemia. And if you add three, which Randy grew in the Orcs garden, someone's combination with spicy beef soup, it looked very tasty. The main character advised them to hurry up before it all cooled down and let them know if they want more. One of the directors thanked Randy for his greeting and concern, but they didn't gather here for food. The main character said that his name is Gold. Gold didn't understand how he knew his name. Randy replied that among the directors, he had the most outstanding business acumen. Since you are holding such a significant position, shouldn't you first of all take care of your health? If something happens to you, our company will suffer huge losses, won't it? It was clear from the director's face that he was thoughtful about his words. He offered him food. Randy said he hoped he would eat it. After all, they did all this to continue to live and eat. Gold apologized and said he didn't like Korean food. But the West was very appetizing. He had never felt such a pungent smell and so tasty. The main character noticed how he was looking at this food and whispered in his ear, doesn't he want this delicious food fueling his interest in food? The director said that it smells very good and he has no appetite but he will eat it because Randy put his effort into it. All the directors began to try the food and hoped that it was very tasty. Everyone liked this food. The directors said that they had never seen or eaten such delicious food. The main character was very glad that they all liked it. They reacted much better than Randy imagined. Randy knew that cows and plants grown by orcs have the effect of restoring mana, but just think that they also help ordinary people restore their energy. I think the taste was also excellent, since even picky rich people eat it with such pleasure. Thanks to this Rende, there is now a ton of useful information. That is, how great it is that he prepared everything and was able to find out something. Hyun told Randy that he had not eaten so deliciously for a long time and thanked him for that. The main character said that he was very glad that everyone liked it. It was simply incredible for him, because if he worked in the food industry, he would achieve great success. Everyone thought so. Gold said that he is the director of the Dragon Artifact. This requires simple cooking skills. 
so they would like to know what their future plans are. It was clear how much he liked it and from the plates he ate. The main character realized that he was worried that the company would fall in value if it is led by an ordinary hunter like me. Gold said that's not what he meant. The main character said that he understood him and said that diving deeper and deeper into the details would be pointless. Randy decided to promise one thing. He pointed his finger at them and shouted if the new artifact that they would soon release did not take first place in sales, he would personally resign from this post. Everyone was shocked by such a statement, and they said that this was a very bold decision. They think that he is indifferent to business, but he has a good plan. Hyung realized that Randy had it hidden in his sleeve, but no one thought that he could convince them otherwise. But still the first place, it is not so easy to do business in this industry. He wondered what plan Randy had in mind.